Hey there, my friend. This is Dave Sharp. Welcome, 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 welcome to day one of this brand new boot camp. I am extremely excited, and I'm going to jump right into the content because you know what? We have um, we've been excited. We've warmed you up. If you don't know your why, you know a lot of times when you start a course, you will start off with this whole "let's go through and let's find our why." You know, and the truth of the matter is, if you don't know your why, why you're doing this, why you're motivated, why you signed up, then that's going to be some man or woman in the mirror time that I'm going to ask you to go do on your own. Because what Matt and I are going to be doing here over the next 30 days is diving deep into hardcore marketing techniques and strategies that are going to help you to take your business to the next level if, if you learn, you listen, and you implement. And so today, we're going to start this week off, okay? This week is going to be how to create the almost, almost perfect offer. And what I want to talk to you about right now is the idea and the thought of creating irresistible offers. Because... There are so-so marketing, <laughs> there are um, uh, you know, decent, good enough marketers out there, and then are, there are marketers who understand and know how to create irresistible offers. And the first thing that I kind of want to talk about, and I'm going to be looking at some notes here because I've got a robust uh, download for you. I'm actually not going to keep you here on this video too long because I've got a download that is going to take you about 10 to 15 minutes to read through. And once you read through this, this is a, an, an irresistible offer manifesto that's going to be accessible inside of this post for you to download. And then you can print it off. You can read it. You can keep it digital. But the inside of this irresistible offer manifesto, complete with worksheets that you're going to be able to access here on this day one, I'm going to have all of this and more that I'm explaining in video to you so you can read it and you can see it and you can really digest it. Okay. So we wanted to make sure, Matt and I, that we gave you a good combination of both video content and also actual worksheets and workbooks. Uh, and that's, you know, one of the things that you see me holding right now. Of course, this is, uh, you know, I always take my worksheets and I, I like to have physical copies and I'll get them printed and I'll staple them together. And by the end of this boot camp, you are going to have lots of that material to be able to print off or keep it digitally on your computer. Um, but the first thing that we're going to talk about today, and this is as we move into how to create the almost perfect offer, which is what we're going to be focusing on this entire week. I want to talk to you about how offers are created, how they go from being so-so to irresistible. And the first thing that I have to tell you before we talk about all of the strategy and technique is that if your offer, the thing that you are asking somebody to buy, cannot stand alone by itself on a one-page document and sell to, to, to at least some people just on a one-page document, then no amount of hype or marketing or story selling or any of the techniques and strategies I'm going to give you are going to help it. So you have to, so what do I mean by that? If I go and I try to sell this iPhone for $14,000, nobody's going to buy it. So, but if I go and I try to sell this iPhone that I just bought, let's just say I paid $1,000 for it. I don't know. It's the newest one. It's got three cameras on it. If I go and I try to sell this right now out in the corner for $300, boom, it's going to go. So when, if I was to write that down, iPhone 11, Pro Max, not the Max, actually just the Pro, iPhone 11 Pro, $300 on one page document, that's going to sell fast, okay? Um, same thing with, with any course, same thing with any software. You see Builder, all the software here, 69 bucks for all of these tools bulleted out, sells, okay? That's a good, that's an irresistible offer. So you want your offer standalone without any of the techniques, without any of the marketing to be good enough to sell. Now, when we sprinkle on some of the things that I'm going to talk about here over the next few minutes and that are also inside of this manifesto in the worksheet that accompanies it, now all of a sudden you get to experience magic, okay? And the first thing that we're going to focus on here, and you'll read this inside of the manifesto, is finding your one big idea. What, what oftentimes a lot of marketers try to do is they try to convince people of multiple things. And the truth of the matter is, is that it's hard enough to convince somebody of one thing, let alone multiple things. Okay. Um, it's, it's, uh, if you look at some of the great marketing pitches over the years, for example, I always go back to Steve Jobs with the iPhone. Uh, when they released the iPhone for the very first time, he presented that, that product for the very first time as if that day he was going to be releasing a brand new cell phone, a brand new internet pocket device, and a brand new music device. But the big idea was, what if we can combine all of those three things into one? That was the big idea. And the way that he went about that was brilliant because he just very simply kept talking about, we're going to be coming out with a brand new um, cell phone, a brand new internet device, and a brand new music device today. And then, again, the big idea was, what if we could put all of those into one device? Right? You see my point? He didn't get up there on stage and try to convince people of, of, of tons of different things, which he probably caught up, could have gone off into multiple different rabbit holes about each one of those features of the new product. But the big idea was, which you want your big idea of your offer to be something that people can grasp. They can put their head around and they can believe it, right? It's, it's, you're changing somebody's belief system that one device can solve three dip, right? In the case of the iPhone, that one device, okay, not, not two, one, one device can solve the problem of having these three things separated. One device, one thing in your pocket can do these three things. And then obviously it, it even did more than that, right? In the, in the initial launch, it even did more than that, but that's not what he focused on. He made it simple. Can these three big features be combined into one? Um, so what you're going to find inside of the, the, the Irresistible Offer Manifesto that I've provided for you here on the first day is, is a bit of me talking about that, okay, along with multiple different examples from, for example, books that I've read, okay? Um, give you some examples from, from uh, one of my friends and mentors, Frank Kern, who's been in the industry for a long time. But even more so, I give you an example from this book called The 16-Word Sales Letter to where Elvaldo Avaldo, okay, sorry to butcher and mispronounce his name there, um, A-list copywriter, highly recommended this, highly recommend this book, goes in to talk about a formula for finding your big idea, and I'm going to pass that formula along to you. Part of this boot camp is going to be about how do we leverage Matt and I's marketing knowledge and connections, and how do we market our library, and even proprietary techniques that we've come up with over the years to hand them to you so you can just put them to work right away. 
So one thing that I'm going to teach you about inside of this manifesto when you download it and read it is, is how to come up with your big idea. Um, one of the elements of the big idea is the new opportunity. Um, that's how you frame your offer. If you do not frame your offer as something that's new and exciting and never been done or seen before, then studies have shown that people will dismiss it as I've already seen that, that's nothing new to me. But if you position your offer, and this is one of the biggest places that I see marketers miss big time, is that they don't figure out a way to repackage their offer into a way that's new and exciting that people have never seen before. And the secret to longevity with your business, and the, uh, the secret to you selling even the same thing for many years to come over and over, is to constantly reinvent your product as being new and exciting. Let me give you a quick example. Um, I actually have one right here, funny enough. Um, uh, I was I snuck some fast food in a Coke today, okay? So um, don't, don't, don't attack me, those of you who are um, gonna be conscious of your health and mine. Um, but, Coke reinvented its product by doing something genius. On the side, they started putting people's names on the side of the can. Same old Coke, even same old colors, but brand new approach which got people excited all over again about their product. They put people's names. This one happens to say Coach, right? So now all of a sudden, people can take Cokes, give them to people, and give them to people with their names on them, and it was a big hit, and they're still using it to, to this day. That's a, a great example of how uh, a company has reinvented itself and made its product new and exciting and never been seen and never been done before, but it's the same old product. The second piece to your finding your big idea when creating your offer is to tap into what their desire is. Okay, what does your prospect want to achieve? And so many people sell their product from the standpoint of what it's made out of, the features, the functions, like oh, this phone has you know, a certain kind of glass on the screen and you know, the buttons are made of alloy titanium. Nobody cares about that. The only thing that I want is I want to be able to take stunningly beautiful pictures so I can post pictures on the internet of myself okay, and feed my narcissistic ways. And I want to be able to check my email and I want to be able to run my business from my cell phone quickly with high, you know, fast download and upload speeds and I want it to fit into my pocket. And I want to feel like I'm on the cutting edge because I've got the brand new iPhone. I want to feel like I'm important and successful. Right? So these are all the things that Apple plays into when it's marketing its products. It's not talking about the, 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 you know, what it's made out of, even the features and benefits. It's a marketing pitch that, that, that encompasses what its primary customer wants to feel and achieve with their product. What is the result that the person is going to get? So the second part of developing your big idea is honing in on that desire that your prospect has, your target customer has, and wants to achieve. And then the third uh, element of finding your big idea is simply, what is this new mechanism? And that's when you actually present what your product is. With Coke, it was that brand new Coke bottle that's sitting in the, the, the freezer at your local convenience store. With the iPhone, it was this brand new iPhone 11. Do you see what I'm saying? With Builderall, as the, the chief marketing and sales officer of Builderall, it will be Builderall, new and improved, new features, new functions, new training, always coming out, reinventing ourselves with something new, okay? so. In this manifesto, I'm going to ask you to actually create uh, your, in, in, with the accompanying worksheet, I'm going to ask you to jump right into the deep end and create your big idea. Now, maybe you're an affiliate for Builderall. Maybe you're an affiliate for some other company or product. Maybe you have a coaching consulting business. Maybe you have an events or some sort of an agency. Whatever it is, I've given you a formula to be able to develop and find that big idea, and I want you to do it, and I want you to then come back and post it inside of this group directly under this video so we can feed off of each other's, we can learn, we can give you guys feedback, and we can see what you come up with. Um, the second thing that I want to talk about is the idea of story selling. Um, I, I've, I've inside of the manifesto, you're going to see an actual uh, formula that uh, was also given inside of this book to structure your copy. Uh, and copy is the words, the text that you use on your pages and inside of your funnels to be able to persuade and influence somebody to actually buy what it is that you're selling. And um, I've given you a formula that was taken out of this book. It's probably the simplest and smartest way to structure your copy that I've ever seen. Um, so I've given that to you inside of the manifesto as well, giving you those cliff notes and broken it down simply. So you now have that sort of structure to structure your sales messages. And, you under, and you're going to understand what are the questions that I need to answer to overcome to actually convert my product. So you're going to find that in the manifesto as well. Um, um, but now I'm going to transition to the idea of story selling because, my friend, the bottom line is, is that there is no better way, and history has proven it with religious leaders and various people who have been in power and who have had influence over millions of people, that the absolute best way to prove a point is to tell a story. And I try never to tell a story without proving a point, right? So, um, again, so many people are standing and, and, and buying and looking and searching high and low to figure out how do I tell a more compelling, how do I develop a more compelling marketing message? And the answer is really simple. You, you weave in story with your message. And what I've done inside of the manifesto is I've broken down an actual formula that you can use that I've used over the years that is a five-step process for you to tell your story or a product story. Now, I, I mentioned this in the manifesto, and I also want to I also want to point out to you right now that when I say story selling, I'm not talking about going out and airing your dirty laundry in the marketplace. That's not what story selling is all about. I've ran into so many marketers over the years who, when I start talking about telling story, they think, oh God, I gotta tell my story. I need to go and basically lay out my whole childhood and life's history to the marketplace, and, and it'll sort of be a you know a coming out party of me being authentic and, and my friend. Trust me, that's not what I'm talking about. That sounds like something that you should do with a coach or a therapist or a, or a very trusted person, advisor, friend. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about using story to tell the story of your product, okay, and to overcome objections, right? It's much easier for 
for me to tell the story of how Sally was sitting on the checkout page, nervous to buy my product. And she reached down inside of herself in that moment and realized that she could either X out of that page and go back to living a life of you know monotonous clock watching and time card punching and not do anything and not make any change. Or she could, she could take that risk to buy that course and invest in her education and learn a new skill set and a new business model and potentially go and change her entire life. And over the course of the next six months, that's exactly what she did. She now travels the world. She's fired her boss. She works when she wants, with who she wants, how she wants, and lives life and does business on her terms. And if you're at all skeptical or if you're at all thinking about, my gosh, you know, is this going to work for me? I want to tell you that not only do I understand, not only does Sally understand because she's one of my personal students, she's one of my friends, she's one of my business partners, right? Insert whatever there. But so has hundreds or thousands of other people who are in the same exact position as you are right now. And although we can't tell you, convince you, don't want to twist your arm to move forward, we can tell you that there's thousands of people who have turned the other way and gone back to their problems, struggles, and pains. And then there's a whole group of people who have moved forward and overcome those those exact pains and struggles that you want to overcome right now and have experienced massive success. So the choice is yours as you sit on this page right now and you make the decision to click that button below and move forward. Um, I just want to welcome you to our family, right? So now I'm going to step out of that role. Do you see how using that story of Sally, right? Instead of sitting there addressing the customer saying, I know you're, or, you know, you may be skeptical, you may be scared, but move forward. Trust me, move forward, right? It's the right thing to do for you and your family. Instead of doing that, which is what almost every marketer that you see out online is doing, who is struggling to make sales, I'm weaving in story of other people's experience or of my experience to relate to what the person is feeling in that moment, okay? There's a technique that I like to use a lot with, with people, and um, it's, it's uh, when I wanna say something to somebody, I wanna say, you know, hey, you know, wake up, like with my children sometimes, wake up, right? Instead of coming right at them and saying, you need to wake up, right? Nobody wants to hear that. That's really probably jarred you just hearing that, me saying it in the camera. But if I say to my child, you know, hey, when I was young, when I was young, you know, I didn't know half of what I know now. And thank God, because life wouldn't have been as fun as it, as it was in my childhood if I did know what I know now. But, but my dad, one time he came to me and, and he said, son, look, I love you so much and I want what's best for you. But if you're going to get out of childhood alive, you need to wake up. Right? So now all of a sudden, and I'm going to step out of that storytelling role, now all of a sudden I'm speaking to my child, but I'm not telling them what they need to do. I'm using my story while simultaneously looking at them and saying the same words to them, but I'm, I'm talking about myself or I'm talking about somebody else. So it allows the person who's listening to be able to hear the advice or hear the experience or hear and relate to the pains and struggles and the courage that it's going to take to overcome or move forward, right, by your product, right, through somebody else's story. Okay? That's why storytelling is so crucial. It's so important to your marketing efforts. So so much more we can talk about, so much more we can get into. But I want you to dig into the manifesto that I wrote for you and dig into the story selling formula. The first part of that story selling formula is what happened. Okay, This is going to be the cause of the pain and the struggle. The second element is what it was like. Okay, um, What did it feel like? We want to tap into the emotion. The third element is what I did about it or what the person who I'm telling the story did about it. Okay, Maybe they bought a course, they started a business, they hired a coach, you know, they, they you know, bought the product that you're selling. Okay, um, What it's like now, the result and the resulting emotion. I also give examples of all of these and what to do right now. Right, So this is a call to action. So after I go through that, I use that formula to tell the story, either my story or somebody else's story uh, uh, and connect it to my product, right? And then all of a sudden, um, I can give a call to action and I can use a transition statement, which I give you examples of that, the uh, manifesto as well. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to read that, okay? Because I go on to further talk about the the how the brain reacts to story as well, which is very different than it reacts to logic. It operates on logic for the most part all the time. Is this safe? Should I do this? Um, does this make financial sense? What's my wife going to think about me? You know, all these things are running on logic, but we want to kick in and tap into that buyer emotion. Okay, and we want to actually we want to we want to tickle both their logic and their emotion. Um, using story will allow you to do this, and using the the uh, the elements that I've, I've I've laid out for you on this day one assignment will allow you to do this. Um, so here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to go and I want you to read that manifesto and I want you to complete the assignment that I've given you alongside of the Irresistible Offer manifesto. Um, here's my final kind of warning to you. I know that you're going to say, I've never done anything like this before. I don't know where to start. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to try. I want you to just give it your best shot. All right. Because most likely for many of you, you've never done anything like this before. So, so completing an assignment like this, you're going to say, gosh, I don't know where to start. And that is the exact place that I want you to start where you've never been before. Because just like a muscle, it only gets bigger, right? And mine are not as big as they, they at one time were, right? Um, but, uh, but I promise I'm gonna get them back here one day. They're, they're, I'm gonna grow them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep working them out just like I work out my story selling and my offer making muscle. If you don't work it out, it doesn't grow. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to drop those assignments back into the comment section of this day one video. And I wanna see all of you guys' big idea statements and I wanna see your brief story, okay? Your story selling templates of your product that you're selling, okay? So whatever product that you're selling, and if you're not selling a product right now, then pick a product. I want you guys to be able to craft a compelling offer 
for any product that you can think of. I want you guys to have that, that, those marketing skills, those abilities to be able to identify any product and know exactly what to do to be able to craft a compelling offer. Okay. Then moving forward for the rest of the week, Matt is going to dig deep to kind of go back towards the beginning and say, okay, now that Dave threw you right into the deep end, we're going to go back and we're going to start digging into your customer avatar. What are their desires? What are their needs? And then here's what you're going to do. At the end of the week, you're going to come back to the same assignment that I gave you today. And you're, you're going to see how much more you feel empowered to be able to write a great offer based on what you learned over the next week. Right? And that is one of my favorite things to do is to create something and then go learn, 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 practice, practice, practice. And then six months later, 30 days later, whatever it is, come back and compare where I'm at now to where I was before and see just how much I've grown. My friend, welcome to this boot camp. I'm your head drill sergeant, Dave Sharp. And it's an honor to have you here. Download that manifesto right now get to reading it reread it it's really really powerful complete those assignments and i'll see you back in the comment section bye-bye hey there my friends welcome back it's day two baby day two hopefully you enjoyed day one of the training with dave there was a lot there baby so hopefully you you were able to digest all of that there's a lot there you could watch that training twice and just keep getting nuggets and keep getting nuggets day two is going to be filled with even more nuggets yesterday we talked about what you're going to sell and what the offer is going to be today we're going to talk about who the offer is designed for and finding your ideal customer we're going to talk about something called your ideal avatar now i'm not talking about the blue people in the movies I'm talking about who is your ideal customer. We're going to dive into it, and I have a little exercise that we're going to put you through as well so that you can actually start writing down who your ideal avatar is, okay? So again, my name is Matt Heltzel. If you don't know me, we're going to get to know each other over the next 30 days, okay? You've probably seen me in the group or seen me in a different video somewhere or whatever it is, but I got started selling things online on eBay back way back in the day. This is 15 years ago when I was in high school, and I just went down to my attic and started selling all the crap that was in our boxes down in the attic. My parents were like, where did all of our stuff go? And I just, you know, I was collecting checks on eBay, but um, I, in college, I then went on to learn how to code websites, do WordPress, run ads on Twitter, Facebook, all these different things, and I bought a bunch of trainings and and trainings and long story short about 15 years later after selling my first things on ebay i've built a massive skill set i have sold all sorts of things online offline e-commerce digital products you name it i've probably tried to or have successfully sold it and so what we're going to do in this over the next 29 days we're going to unpack what are we selling who are we selling it to how do we sell it? how do we craft copy that's going to actually sell and speak directly to the people who want to buy what you have to offer and by the way just so you're aware there are people right now with their credit cards ready to buy what you have to sell. Believe it. They are out there, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch over to the screen. I'm going to bring you, my computer is sitting right next to me. Okay, I'm shooting this in my home office here in Phoenix, Arizona. My computer's right here. We're going to jump right over into my screen right now and get into day two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the meat and potatoes of day two in the live Builder All Bootcamp. Now, week one of the Builder All Bootcamp is centered around the perfect offer. Okay, so the perfect offer. And yesterday, Dave unpacked everything in terms of how to craft your offer, how to position and frame it, and how to sell with story. And today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about who's going to buy. Right. So yesterday was kind of the what. And today, if you're taking notes, is going to be on the who. OK, so let's just dive right into this thing. So rule number one, when you're deciding who's going to buy and who you're going to try to offer this to, when you've clarified your offer, never try to convince people to purchase something they don't need. Instead, here it is. Find people who already purchase what you're offering and have already purchased something similar to what you're selling. OK, so rather than trying to find a new crowd and convince them to think a different way or to uh, adopt some sort of new philosophy, Instead, just find people who already purchase what you're offering and have purchased something similar to what you're already selling. This is called your customer avatar or your ideal avatar. Okay, I mentioned it earlier, and I'm not talking about blue people in the movie, okay? This is called your ideal customer, your customer avatar. The goal of day two is to help you narrow, narrow, narrow who you're going to sell to. So we want to narrow this down into the exact psychographic, the exact person who you're going to sell to, and that's how you craft an irresistible offer, okay? So, why is it so important that you narrow your focus to a singular ideal avatar? Well, let me tell you. Number one, this person, this ideal avatar is going to require the least amount of effort to sell. And this simply just means, guys, you're going to spend less freaking time closing sales and trying to convince and manipulate and on and on and on, right? That is a nightmare and a disaster that none of us enjoy, okay? They are far more excited and happy to purchase what it is that you're offering. And, and there's far less complaining, moaning, refunds, etc. That all sounds pretty good, right? Well, why is that? Because if you offer a product to somebody who's already pulling their credit card out of their pocket, Guess what? They're ready to buy. That means they already understand the value inherently in the product. They are already looking for what's the best possible product I can, I can purchase to solve my problem, right? Your life becomes easier, happier, less stressful, and people actually respond to what you have to offer them. So what this practically means for you is there is less persuasion. Okay, write this down. There's less persuasion. It takes the least amount of time. And guess what it's the most of? Money. There is less persuasion and convincing and, oh my God, please buy my thing, right? It takes the least amount of your time, but it produces the most amount of money. This is very contrary to how most people think about marketing, all right? So rather than trying to sell your product or service to everyone living and breathing on planet Earth, you should only attempt to sell your product to the exact person who is primed and ready and already prepared to purchase what you're offering. Primed and already prepared to purchase what you're offering. Only that person, not everybody out in the whole world, only the person who's primed and ready. 
For example, now let me give you a real world example, okay? I am very into coffee. I love my coffee, okay? And, and specifically, I like artisan specialty craft coffee. I do not like Folgers. I do not like, you know, crappy coffee out of a pod. I, I just, I like the original black coffee that's done well, roasted perfectly, okay? So if I'm in business selling specialty artisan coffee, I would not target people who like Folgers, Starbucks, Pod Coffee, uh, Keurig, nothing against those companies, nothing against it, but it's not my crowd, okay? With that said, I would target people who like Blue Bottle, Intelligentsia, Coffee Fest, Special, Specialty Coffee Association, things like that. Those are the people who I would target. Why? Because they've already purchased or they like or they've shown interest in other companies in the specialty coffee space. They're my exact avatar. It's all about narrowing and narrowing and narrowing and dialing in that ideal avatar down to a specific psychographic of a person, okay? So how in the heck do we do this, Matt? How, Matt, this is all fun and games, this all sounds cute, but how do I even go about that? So let's dive in. First, here's what I want you to do, and you can follow along the PDF guide that's along with this. The first thing you do is list five things, five things that your excited, ideal, almost itching to buy avatars are clicking like on Facebook or follow on Instagram or subscribe on YouTube. What are five things, five channels, five groups, five pages, five Instagram accounts, okay? List five things that your excited ideal avatars are already doing, okay? So we're gonna list them out, give five examples, and I'm gonna, let's just go back to this coffee example since we're here. So I'm gonna stick in the coffee industry since I just gave the example, and, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first look at main brands. If people like and are following and subscribing to Intelligentsia or Blue Bottle or Stumptown, guess what? They probably enjoy their product and probably are on board with their specialty craft artisanal mission as a company, producing the world's best coffee, all right? That's right in line with my goals. Now I also know, Roast Magazine is one of the premier uh, uh, subscriptions or magazines in the industry as well. If people are tuned in and dialed into Roast Magazine, chances are they are very, very into coffee, okay? The Specialty Coffee Association, that is the main worldwide recognized association in terms of specialty coffee. Coffee Fest is uh, an event platform that goes around the world holding these coffee events, okay? It's one of the most famous in the world, and anybody who's anybody in, in the specialty coffee world knows about it, okay? So I guess what if a bunch of people have liked Coffee Fest or follow them on Instagram? That's probably a really, really great audience who's already used to buying specialty coffee. Cold brew coffee, it's huge, everybody loves it, it's a huge fad, so I would go with that. Now, many of you are playing in the freelance digital marketing game or the online uh, internet marketing game, okay? So, and, and I've been very successful in that space and I've coached hundreds upon hundreds of people in that space, so let's talk about that. So for instance, let's imagine that I am an affiliate for Builderall and this whole bootcamp is not just based around, how do I make money from Builderall? Okay, that is maybe an end result of you becoming a great marketer, but that's not the point of this bootcamp, okay? The point of this bootcamp is to hone your skills as a marketer so that you can make more money on the internet, okay? Through the power of the internet. So I would look at some main competitors. If I was an affiliate for Builderall or really any software company, I would look at my main competitors or main players in the space, ClickFunnels, Wix, Squarespace, MailChimp, Instapage. If people are liking and engaging and participating in groups of those people on Facebook, guess what? That's probably a good little excited avatar, right? I can also look at affiliate marketing, network marketing groups, digital marketing groups, sales funnel groups. There are sales funnel groups on Facebook, if you believe it. There are sales funnel groups on Facebook filled with people who are, who are excited, love building funnels. They're enthused by funnels. They're enthused by tools that help you build funnels, okay? All right. So secondly, what I want you to do is to actually go through Facebook and begin searching for groups that your ideal avatar would spend time in, okay? So similar to, and this applies to Instagram as well, Instagram hashtags. Now, the, the, the analogy that I always use for this and pay close attention to this is fishing holes, okay? I know if that sounds weird, just stick with me, okay? Fishing holes. So, you know, uh, Minnesota, for instance, the state of Minnesota in the United States, they are the land of 10,000 lakes, okay? So imagine that these are all different lakes, okay, of, of ideal customers or clients, pools, marketing ponds that you can go fishing in, right? You can take your hook out and you can go fishing for sales, okay? Now, my drawing skills, if you're new to my drawing skills, just just save the comments for another day. Maybe someday we'll meet in person and you can make fun of me there. Just, say, just save the mockery, okay? Now, inside of this, okay, inside of this, there's all sorts of different fish, right? So for instance, remember I talked about coffee. Well, this might be the main brands, okay? This might be the main brands. Um, and then over here we have more fish and this might be the Specialty Coffee Association. Now, in the case of something like Builderall, maybe this is the, um, maybe this is, I wanna fish in the sales funnel sales funnel pond, people who like and are enthused with sales funnels. The point of this is that we're not getting into the whole placing ads thing, right? That's, that's week four. We're not actually ready to generate leads yet. The point of this is just to get ideas about what ponds we could fish in, about what ponds that we could throw our bait out into and see who's gonna grab hold, right? See what kind of action we're getting, okay? Start getting eyeballs on the offer. So the goal here is to figure out what's gonna be some prime fishing holes that we can throw our hook into and see who comes back hungry, okay? See who comes back hungry. So what I want you to do is I want you to write down three potential fishing ponds in Facebook, all right? And let me give you a couple examples to spark your brain and get you going. But I want you to write down three potential fishing ponds in Facebook, all right? So for coffee, I can I can go towards, and I did some research, people who are in the coffee roasters group, 4.6 thousand members, okay? So 4,600 members. Now, it's a little bit of a small group, but that's okay. These people, if they're coffee roasters, trust me, they care about how their coffee tastes. They care about quality. Uh, people who follow Latte Art on Instagram, hashtag Latte Art, 7.3 million posts. Now, if you don't know how to find this stuff or look it up, right? Let's empower yourself 
right? You don't need to come running with a bunch of questions into the group. Rather than doing that, what I'd recommend is Google search. How do I find how many people are following a hashtag on Instagram? And it, you're going to see examples on YouTube, in Google blog, in, in blog posts, etc. All right. So if you can't figure this out, remember our hashtag, figure it out. People who like Stumptown, Blue Bottle, these are the main competitors. So if, if I wanted to go in at some point, someday down the road, we're not talking about generating leads. We're just talking about what fishing holes do we want to, do we want to throw our line into? Okay. Well, if somebody has clicked like on Stumptown, right? They're, they're world famous for their cold brew coffee and it's really good cold brew coffee. Well, guess what? I can run ads to them on Facebook to everybody who likes that page, likes that brand. Okay. So that's really powerful. Why would I run ads to Folgers if I could run ads to people who like Stumptown or Blue Bottle? People who, who are conditioned to like and pay more and enjoy my type of coffee. Guess what? They're going to purchase my coffee and they're going to be excited, smiley faces. They're not going to be, they're not going to walk in. Now, let me, let me just tell you a little, little story. When I was in Denver, okay. And I worked at this coffee roastery and I'm actually going to, I'm going to draw this on my screen here real quick for you. When I was in Denver, I, I worked at a coffee roastery and this is years back. Okay. This has been quite a while back, but I worked at this roastery and, and uh, what that means practically, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't even write what that means practically is that you roast coffee and you have a coffee shop all in one, right? So maybe you've seen that before. There's an actual coffee roaster in there. And we would sell 12 ounce bags of coffee for $20 pretty regularly. Usually anywhere from about 16 to $22 was very common. Now you can go to the grocery store. Okay. Now many of you know this and buy bags of coffee that are one pound for anywhere from five bucks to 10 bucks, which is not all that uncommon. Maybe if you really like good stuff, you're paying 10 to 15 bucks. Okay. Now when we sell higher priced items, Okay. When we sell something at a certain price point, we would get grocery store people who would come in and they would look at our little coffee bags on the shelf. Okay. They would, they would come in and they would look at the shelf and they would look at the coffee bag there and they would get big, big eyes and they would be confused. What's going on? Why is this 20 bucks? This doesn't make any sense. Why? How is this so expensive? Right? So if I'm running ads to people who like Folgers and everything else that you can find in a grocery store, my store is going to be filled with people who are confused. However, if I'm running it to people who are already conditioned to like roasteries and similar coffee companies to me who price things similarly, or maybe even higher than me, guess what? People are going to come in. They're not even going to have a second thought. They're going to say, I'm looking for great coffee. I don't really care what it costs. Grab the bag. They're going to pay and they're going to leave my shop with a smile on their face. Same thing is true on the internet. Same thing. So think through people who, whatever you're selling, think through people who are buying something at a similar cost or more maybe, but a similar cost that offers a similar service or maybe people just aren't all that happy with it. Right. I mean, the obvious one for me, like if I was just an, uh, just a crazy builder, all affiliate, okay. The obvious one for me is, man, I would just set up a great funnel. I would set up my own funnel that brands me. And I would run Facebook ads all day long to people who like click funnels and Wix and all these other companies. I would run ads and say, you know, it's, it, 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 you're paying way too much for your, for your sales funnel service. There's a better way, right? There's a better way. And then I would just take them through my own sales funnel and eventually just pass them on to my affiliate. Like, I mean, it's just not that complicated guys, but I want you to start thinking through that and listing those out right now. Hopefully that analogy was helpful. Okay. So for, for, you know, on Facebook for the internet marketing space, you could do the internet marketing super friends. It's a $23,000, 23,000 member group. Affiliate marketing uh, has 58,000 network marketing pro has 1.6 million likes. Okay. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that gives you some guidance on well, where do I start looking and how do I really dial it in? The other piece to this guys is that you can also start thinking through age groups, right? If your offer, if what you're telling, if you're, if you're talking through your story, if, if that's more specific to a certain gender or a certain age group, like sometimes uh, I've coached people who have, you know, women empowering women. Well, okay. So now we're going to narrow it down to just specifically women, right? Or here's another good example. And I'll draw this one for you guys on the screen as well. Uh, I, I did some coaching and ran some ads for a lady named Kara. Okay. So Kara, this is an interesting story in, in our targeting for Kara. She's very religious. She's a Christian. Okay. So she's very religious. And so we found a bunch of stuff that was around the Christian niche and her whole offer is around eating healthy. So we targeted people, uh, with vegan and or gluten-free interests. And then we also said they must be moms of kids eight or less. Why? Because she's a mom with kids who are eight years old or less. And guess what? This ad campaign crushed on Facebook because she hit exactly her avatar with exactly what they liked. Okay. And she was selling some sort of uh, she was selling meal plan kits. Okay. So also think through those type of demographic options as well. All right. So here's what we're going to do. This is the assignment of the day. Comment below this video in this post on this video with your five things that people are clicking like on or follow or subscribe and your three potential fishing holes that people are already showing interest in and engaging in. So just say I'm selling X, Y, Z, and uh, this is kind of my offer. And this is the product I'm selling. And here's five things that people are clicking like on or they're subscribed to, or they're following this hashtag and give your three potential fishing holes that people are already showing interest in and engaging in. And the fishing holes can be things like, how do I make money on the internet? It can be things that people would type into Google, right? How to, like, how do I, how do I brew the best specialty coffee? Who has the best specialty coffee? Things like that. And then you download and print the PDF guide. If you prefer the hard copy, and I usually recommend that to people download and print it off and actually write these things down or have a notebook that you write these things down in. There is scientific proof that when people physically write things down, they usually remember and it usually cements in their brain further than just typing something on a computer or phone. Mark this unit complete. There should be a done button somewhere around this poster in this unit too. 
there is a done or mark the unit complete, okay? And you have to do that both for the video and for the PDF guide in order for the whole entire unit to be marked complete. You will still be able to view this video. You will still be able to view this video for the next, really, 59 days. We're gonna keep these open for 30 days after the bootcamp is over just in case you need to watch it back or in case you missed something or wanna rewatch one of the videos, okay? So don't panic, don't freak out, but get this done, all right? And we are a wrap on day two. We will see you back same place, same time tomorrow for day three. Greetings, my friends, and welcome back. It's week one, and we are talking through the perfect offer. And today, I'm excited because today we're talking about mastering the four core and detailing your irresistible offer. Okay, so we're going to walk through mastering the four core elements that you absolutely must need in order to create an irresistible offer. Okay, now, just as a little backstory, as just a little precursor, let me just tell you a little story. In 2009, this is really when I got started online. In 2009, I had no clue how to, how to how to put together an offer. I had no idea how to construct an offer. So if that's where you're at today, hey, look, we've all been there. And and one really, but okay, before I get too far into this, just, just a little mindset tip for you, okay? If you are here today, okay, this is you, and maybe you're not quite as successful as you want to be online. Maybe you're not quite fully realizing your full potential, but you see other people out there who are crushing it, who are making a ton of money on the internet, who have a lot of subscribers on YouTube, and you're like, I want to be like that person. And when you look at them, you look down the pike and you, and you, maybe you can't quite see yourself there yet fully, right? It's more of like an admiration thing today, but it's like, I'm not sure if I'll ever get there. Just know that this person down the line, right? Even somebody, you know, David Sharp, he's done 220 plus million dollars worth of sales of his own products on the internet. Even somebody like that started right where you are today with the exact same struggles, with the exact same difficulties, with the exact same insecurities, okay? And it's possible. It is possible to get to that place where you're finally as successful as you want to be, where you're finally making the money you want to be, where you're finally as free as you want to be, okay? Just know that. That's totally possible, all right? So in 2009, I had no clue. I, I really didn't. I was just getting started. I was reading everything I could by this guy named Dan Kennedy. And Dan Kennedy is kind of the, the vintage, you know, main guy who really invented and made popular something called direct response marketing, okay? Now, Dan Kennedy is, is a legend in this industry in terms of copywriting and how to create offers that sell. But I just, I had no clue what an offer really was, right? I just thought, you know, when I got started, I thought, man, I'll show up in Facebook groups. I'll start posting ads on Google. I don't know what I was going to do. I was going to rank ads on Google or rank sites on Google rather. I, I just, I thought people, it was like going to be kind of a unicorn thing. Like I would just pour some magic potion on my business and, and it would just pop out sales, right? I was going to get rich, but I, I was just, I was dead wrong. So for about five years, I, I placed blogs. Uh, I mean, I, I created so many blogs. The hours I spent creating blogs is almost embarrassing to think about. I, I posted to social media. I did, oh man, I did so many solo ads. I did Google ads. I tried everything and, and really like nothing happened. It was it was literally just kind of crickets the whole time. And I, I probably racked up right in the range of, of 20 grand. I mean, I mean, down the road, it was it was more like 40 to 50 grand but uh, of total debt, but really like 20 grand of credit card debt later. I, I literally hadn't moved forward at all in my business. And just, if we're really candid, I didn't even really have a business. It was just kind of this side hobby thing that I was doing. And I had, I had just, you know, years worth of these struggles. We had mounting debt. Uh, I mean, Catherine and I just, you know, the struggle of being financially broke to the point of like worrying about, you know, is my credit card going to be maxed out or, or are we going to be able to pay groceries? Like that's for a man, that's kind of an emasculating thing. It just sucks. I mean, it just does. There's no way I, I woke up most days feeling like a failure. I went to bed most days feeling like a failure. It was just kind of like, that was my perpetual mode I functioned in. But eventually down the road, I, I kind of figured it out. I figured out, hey, I'm going to create my own product. And I did. And it was a big moment. I created my first product, the first experiment. It was called the Instant Expert Blueprint. And, and it was a six module course. Okay. So I put together this whole course and it was six modules. And I had PDFs to go along with them. They were, they were um, video modules and I had PDFs to go along with them. And I thought this thing was incredible. Okay. I, I, I laugh a little bit looking back at it now, but I thought this was going to be the next thing. And basically what I was selling was, hey, look, you can step into any industry as a consultant, as a total newbie and just hack your way to instant expert status immediately, basically hacking your credibility. And I wrote, you know, this awesome sales video and I spent weeks creating an incredible offer to sell it. And, 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 and I asked a few friends, you know, hey, can you write an email to your list and promote it? And I was like, I was all in on this damn thing. I'm telling you, I was absolutely all in whole hog that I was going to make like a million dollars selling this thing. Right. And I, I spent probably... I, I, I don't know. I can't even count the amount of time that I spent developing this. And to be totally honest, I, 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 I made zero sales, like not, not a couple hundred, not 10 sales, not five sales. I made zero sales to this. There's not a single person in the world who ever saw that product. And they, they should probably be thankful for that, but <laughs> not a single person purchased. And the reason no one purchased that, even though I thought, oh my gosh, I, this is the best thing since sliced bread. It lacked the four core elements to what I would call fly off the shelf high converting offers, meaning offers that just fly off the shelf. They're so good. People have to purchase, right? And it just didn't happen. But contrast that. Now, let me give you another example, something called the first page formula, which is a, it's a, it's an info product. It's an information product, videos, PDFs, etc., where I showed people how to rank their websites and videos on the first page of Google. And just so you know, this is way back in the day, but look at these embarrassing photos of me. This is, I mean, this is literally how I would create my courses right here. So on my desk, you can see their pillows, okay? Because it would make the sound like more studio quality. I, I didn't even have a microphone. 
okay? And, and I still have a very similar drawing tablet that I'm using right now as I'm drawing this, okay? And, and what I would do for, for better lighting is I would tip over a lamp towards me, two different lamps, there's not one here, but I would tip over two lamps towards me on this desk and I would have my pillows and it would sound like kind of a recording studio. You can see me doing it here too, which is just almost, I mean, this is just embarrassing, but this is our bed in our tiny one bedroom apartment. We were broke as an absolute joke. I have an incredible farmer stand here. I mean, this is just, this is magical stuff here, but, uh, and, and I created this product and this is actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you in a second about the results of this launch, but this is the bed I was laying in right here in this exact spot. And my phone was on the floor, like right here um, when I made my first, you know, uh, probably my first thousand dollars on the internet. And I'll, and I'll share with you a little bit about how that happened. So, so the first page, back to the first page formula. Okay. So, um, this is about two years later down the road. I would say it's about two years later down the road, uh, from the instant expert blueprint, which I was trying to sell, but two years later, I try to sell the first page formula. Okay. So in this five module course, I, I talk about how to get inside the mind of Google. And that's really what my selling angle was, right? What, imagine you could get inside the mind of Google and see how they wrote their algorithm. What are they looking for? What, are they, what ranks best on their website? Right. And that's the whole angle that I took. And, and this time when I created my sales material, I, I made it my central focus to hammer these four core elements over and over and over again. Now, I had mentors, I had courses I purchased, I had all sorts of stuff. It took me years. I mean, we're talking literally years and years to develop these four core elements. And, and here's the power of you going through this bootcamp is between Dave and I, we have a collective two decades worth of marketing experience, okay? And it has taken us so long to develop what we're sharing with you in these videos. I mean, this is years and years and years. I mean, you're three days into a bootcamp and we're taking care of this for you right now here today, right? now. Remember back, okay, so well, well, let me let me go here. When I launched this product, I didn't really expect much from it, but when I launched this product, I was I was totally shocked. And, and what I did is I actually, and if you don't know what this is, write this down, I JV'd, joint ventured, JV, with a guy who he developed an SEO plugin tool, okay, for WordPress. So people would download his little plugin on WordPress to rank their sites higher on Google. And he had about 30,000 people or so on this email list who were people who downloaded and used the tool, right? Now remember, remember in day two, when we talked about people who are ready to buy because they already bought something similar. Are you starting to see how these pieces connect now? Okay, so when I went out and now I create this product or I have a product or service to offer, right? Guess what? Do you think that these 30,000 people are pretty interested in learning about getting inside of the mind of Google if they've already downloaded an SEO plugin to learn, to basically use on their website to rank their sites higher? Of course they are. They've already proven it, right? They've already proven it. So here's what I did. I sent him an email. I sent this guy an email asking if he could send an email to his list to promote my product the first page formula. And I didn't expect him to say yes, but he said, yes, let's do it. So we split the profits of this. Basically what we did, we just agreed, hey, let's split it 50-50. And the joint venture was born and, and there we go. And the rest is history. But what's interesting is when I went to bed, so so let's fast forward. After we after we basically sign our little, we just kind of called it a gentleman's agreement. Hey, look, you know, we're gonna, I'll take the sale and I'll pay you out 50% of the sale. Let's sign a gentleman agreement. We don't need a huge, massive contract or whatever. And he said, yeah, that's fine. No big deal. His first email went out around midnight Eastern time. And we, and, you know, we took about a week to write some emails and make sure we we're on the same page. But because I was conditioned to fail over and over and over again, I, I just, I didn't expect much. I was like, well, we're going to write these emails and probably no one's going to open them and it's just going to fail and it's going to suck. And again, I'm laying in this bed right here and I'm about to go to bed and the email goes out and all I can hear on my phone right over here is, and it's I, literally my phone's plugged in right here and I, my pillow was right here. And all I could hear was ding, 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 ding. And it was PayPal. It was PayPal. I was making money and I couldn't believe it. And I was like, oh my gosh. And that was really my first thousand dollars on the internet was this, this just little joint venture. Right, this little first page formula was taking off like a freaking rocket ship to the moon. It was crazy. It was the total opposite of the instant extra blueprint. And I did those first thousand dollars worth of sales of my own product online. And from that night on, I never wrote another offer without the four core elements. So without further ado, it's time to get into the four core elements. All right, and we're gonna go through them. So make sure you write them down. And we're gonna end this thing with some questions from the PDF guide so that you can go in and answer those questions. Okay, so first and foremost, number one is urgency. Okay. A great offer allows people to get what they want or do what they want faster. Now this is the key word faster. Okay. So speed is the grease of the wheels of incredible marketing. And, and I can maybe draw a bike. This is the way I always explain. Okay. This is the best analogy that I can explain this. All right. So we got some pedals. We have a bike. We have some, we need a little handlebars. Okay. Whatever. So, and then we got a little seat. So on, on any bicycle, right? You always have a chain. And the way I explain it is a, a marketing plan or an offer without urgency, okay, or without, let's say it even better, without the four, core, without the core four, is sort of like sand in the chain of a bicycle. And I used to live in Chicago, and I went to school in Chicago, and I would ride my bike along Lakeshore Drive, and that's along a beach. And sometimes I would get sand on my tires and sand on my chain, and it was a disaster. And it makes it really hard to pedal because there's friction, right? There's friction. There's there's sand in the chain of the bike. It's friction. It's hard to pedal. Same with your business, okay? If you don't have the four core your offer is going to suck. I mean, your offer is going to have friction. People are going to have something called buyer's resistance, buyer's resistance. Okay. So people have hopes, they have dreams, they have goals. Okay. Of what they want in their business, in their life, in their, whatever you name it. Right. And urgency. Okay. An offer with urgency makes whatever it is that they want. Okay. You push them to make it happen faster. Okay. And let me just illustrate this with a story. When I, when I got started in this industry and actually this was about 2011, there was a live event in Orlando 
Right? There's a live event in Orlando held by this internet marketing company. And it was all about, you know, how to market your business. And I was going to learn copy and all this stuff. Right. And I was, I was kind of playing this unsure procrastinating kid. Right. And I had a mentor. His name was Mark. And he said, Hey, I'm speaking at this event in Orlando and I think you need to get there. And, and I said, Hey, look, I'm not sure I can get there. I just don't think it's in the budget. And he said, Hey, look, man, here's the thing. Um, when I hear people say it's not in the budget, what I hear is people aren't willing to invest in their business and that's okay. That's okay. But just know that dude, this might not be for you. And I would rather see you just get out. Okay. I'd rather see you just get out and go do your own thing rather than, you know, slowly, slowly, slowly spend money endlessly until, you know, you've, you've spent a ton of money, which is kind of what I was doing at the time. And he said, all right, look, here's the deal, Matt. Here's the deal. Okay. I'm going to make you a deal. If you can get to Orlando, get your flights and get your ticket. I've got a spare bed and you can stay there. So you don't have to pay the hotel. You don't have to pay any of that stuff. Okay. But here's the thing is I'm thinking about giving this to another guy. So I need to know tonight, can you make it? Are you going to be able to make it? If not, that's cool. Look, it's not a big deal. Okay. But I got to know tonight on the phone with you right now, what's it going to be? And he made me an irresistible offer, but notice how, you know, before I had a reason to buy, it's a great value. The ticket was like $295. It was nothing. Okay. But then he said, Hey, look, I got to know, I got to know tonight, or I'm going to let Kevin, uh, another young kid, I'm going to let Kevin come and he'll take the spot. And I took it. And I'm telling you right now, here's the best example of this, because this event was my first event that I ever went to. Now people would come in and say, wow, I was really manipulative of him, right? That was really manipulative. No, not at all. Because he knew that I had a dream. Okay. And it's funny because this event was called live the dream. Okay. I, and some people would say right now I am living the dream. I have friends who say I'm living the dream. It's kind of funny, right? So eight years later, and it's almost eight years to the day. Okay. In 2011, I go to live the dream too. And I'll never forget it. I will never forget it. LTD live the dream too. And I go to this event and it is completely life-changing for me. It changed everything. And it cemented all of these dreams that I had had into reality. I saw the people, I talked to them, I shook their hands, I met new people. I was pushed so far out of my comfort zone. Right. And it might've taken me a few years after that to really produce it. And there's probably people in this industry and people outside this industry who said, man, that was just what, what a, what a BS move by that guy, Mark. Right. But what he did and what he knew he was a master marketer is he said, urgency, helps people get what they want or do what they want faster. And I wanted to quit my job and I wanted to, I wanted to, to be free. I wanted to get out of my job. And in 2017, I did, it took me a long time, but guess what? This might've been, this, this might've taken me till 2030 if I didn't have that push in 2011 to show up to that event. And if you believe in your product or service and you actually have the conviction and leadership internally to do this, you will create offers with urgency and you will call people to action with integrity and it will change their life. And that will be the most empowering feeling you will ever have in a business. I promise you that. Okay. Number two, it's something called price justification. Okay. Price justification. What I mean by that is you need to add value to the purchase by offering bonuses and additional value to make it a massive steal in the mind of your prospects. Okay. So here's what, let's just make this super, super simple. Okay. What happens if you, as the seller do not answer the question, is this worth the amount of time and money they're charging me? So in the prospect's mind, look, you have to understand when they sit down on the screen. Okay. And they're looking at whatever is your offer, whether you got a video, whether you got text, whether, whatever it is. Okay. So a little prospect guy is sitting down and he's looking at your offer. Okay. He's getting his eyeballs on your offer. Now, what you've got to understand is that inside of this guy's brain or this gal's brain, there is something called buyer's resistance. Write this down, buyer's resistance. In buyer's resistance, this person, okay, they are resisting. And this is a good thing, by the way. I mean, this saves us so much money, so much pain, so much hurt. We have been conditioned that if somebody's trying to sell us something, we should be skeptical, right? We should be skeptical. And if you don't answer the question, is this worth the amount of money? They are, they're functioning on a scale, okay? Is this worth the amount of money that they're asking? And if you don't, guess what? This wallet that's in their pocket does not move, does not open ever, okay? It does not open right? So is it worth it? So how do you justify that? Well, a great example of this. Let me give you a great example. So Dave Sharp, right? In a lot of his sales material, he'll say something like, look, here's the deal. You can put me to the test, but I've made 250, uh, uh, 200 and ah, man, maybe it's not 250, maybe it's something like 225 or something like that. But let me just give you this as an example. Uh, I, I've done over a quarter billion dollars worth of sales, of my own products online, okay? Of my own products. How would you like to ethically swipe my exact business blueprint and learn exactly how I did it? Well, now it's like, are you kidding me for $7? Like I would be an idiot not to do that. Now you suddenly see how offering bonuses and additional value makes it a massive steal in the mind of a prospect, right? So, so you can also, guys, you can also apply this to Builderall, okay? So you could say something like, you know, Builderall has a team of XYZ employees, like however many employees they have, right? Working in however many countries, okay? And it's cost them X amount of dollars to produce this, you know, you can say millions of dollars to produce the most powerful all-in-one digital marketing platform for entrepreneurs and business owners, right? I mean, they've spent millions of dollars developing and building this groundbreaking service. It should cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars per month for all of the tools that are included. And, and just as a side note, other competitors with subpar services do charge hundreds of dollars a month for a lesser product. What does Builderall cost? It's just $69.90 a month. Okay, so now you can see, right? For those of you who are Builderall affiliates, lots of you are selling Builderall. You can see how you can condition that. Oh my gosh, you're right. I mean, this took years for them to build. Millions of dollars they have. Staff and designers and support and all these people. It's just 69 bucks a month. That's wild. That's crazy. There's people who pay $297 for an inferior product and less features. 
it's the only tool you'll ever need. Pretty cool, right? So, um, you know, I, I feel like I could probably just jump into that right now and start making sales immediately as an affiliate if I was <laughs> if I was just going to go for it right at this very second. Okay. Number three is testimonial. So right now in 2019, look, reputation of a product is huge. What people are saying about a product is huge. Okay. Now, most marketers who are a little new, they feel depressed about this. They say things like, and I hear this all the time. I haven't sold anything yet. I don't have any testimonials yet. Right. Well, guess what? If you're selling somebody else's company as an affiliate, you can use their testimonials for that product, okay? You don't need your own. If they have 100 testimonials of people saying, this product has changed my life, it's the easiest product to use, I got a funnel set up so fast, it's just incredible. Well, guess what? You don't need your own testimonials. Use those. But you need to use social proof because again, when people are asking that question, they're saying, am I gonna look dumb if I buy this? Am I gonna look dumb if I buy this, right? And if there's countless people or even just a few who have reviewed and said, yes, I love the product, well, it lowers, remember this word, it lowers the buyer's resistance of your prospects and opens the door for them to buy, okay? All right. Just as a, as a final note on this, it is crazy hard to sell without testimonials, okay? It's hard to sell. And if you do sell without testimonials, you have to be upfront and say, hey, look, I haven't actually sold any of this before. This is why I'm offering it at a deep discount, okay? And that's when you would sell, let's say a $39 product, you would sell it at $7, right? Okay, and you can say, hey, I'm taking on 10 trial buyers to test out the product at $7 instead of 37, something like that. Um, <clears throat> and basically what that does is it, it just makes the, it makes the purchase a no brainer to your audience, okay? Just makes it a no brainer, okay? Number four and the final one, intensity boosters, okay? Make it your goal to add bonuses to your offer that add up to more than the value of the product price. This is so powerful. So what does that mean though? If you're selling a product for $19.95, let's imagine that you have a little info product for $19.95 where you teach people how to run Facebook ads, okay? Buy my, buy my cute little fast Facebook ads course for $19.95. What you wanna do, if you have a sales video, okay? You create a little sales video or a webinar, okay? You could sell it on a webinar. If you are selling a course via sales video webinar or even just a sales letter, what you wanna do is you want to include bonuses that add up to more than $19.95 or are just perceived as more than $19.95. So if you're, a, if you're a Facebook ads consultant and you charge, which you should, somewhere in the range of $100 an hour to consult on, on Facebook um, campaigns, okay? If that's, if that's your MO, if that's what you do, then what you could say is you could say, hey, look, I charge $100 an hour or $50 a half hour for a Facebook ads console. I will give you a free 30 minute Facebook ads console to, ha to help build out your strategy or if you're already running ads to look at your ads and give you a winning strategy to keep moving forward, okay? And that will be included as a free bonus with your purchase of this 1995 Facebook ads course. This is unlike anything I'm ever offering, but here's the thing. Now, add urgency. Here's the thing. This is only available to the first 10 buyers. And if you see this video right now and it's live, it's still available. So grab it right now because it's still available, but I'm telling you, this is not gonna last very long. And this is not some fake thing. I have 10 spots, that's it, right? So now it's like, if I'm a viewer and I'm actually sitting down and I'm watching your little offer, okay? I'm gonna be like, geez, if I got the buy now button right here, I'm clicking that buy now button. Because now I'm, I'm going to get in this elite club where I get this little 30 minute bonus. Okay. The same thing goes if you're an affiliate marketer, you add these bonuses that add up to the more than the perceived value of the product price. Some people will just buy just for the bonuses. <laughs> some people will just buy just for the bonuses. Okay. And some companies have bonuses built in, right? Like, like if I'm selling builder all, for instance, and this, this whole thing isn't just about selling builder all, but if I'm selling builder all, if I'm selling another, you know, information product of some sort that I'm an affiliate for, okay. If I'm an affiliate for that, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about and sell and sell and sell about the Facebook groups, or I'm going to create my own Facebook group and let them in there. When people perceive that the bonuses are just as valuable as the actual product itself, it, it becomes just a huge no brainer. Okay. It becomes a massive, massive no brainer in the mind of your prospect. Okay. So implement those four core elements and watch your conversions grow. Okay. And just to quickly recap them, number one was urgency. Okay. Allow people to get what they want or do what they want faster. Number two is price justification. Number three is testimonials. And number four is intensity boosters. Okay. So in our worksheet for today, the assignment, okay, I want you to answer the following questions to make certain that you've nailed down the core four elements of a high converting offer. Number one, explain why you have a crystal clear reason for someone to buy right now. And right now, not later, right this second. Do you? Is there a reason? Why should they? What's the urgency? Without urgency, there's no sale. Number two, what goals will your ideal avatar achieve faster if you add urgency to your offer? What are the, what are the goals of your ideal avatar? Now we're connecting the pieces. Will it help them get a sales funnel created faster? Will it help them start generating leads? How will their life change more rapidly if you clearly apply urgency to your offer, okay? Number three, is what you're offering worth the money that you're asking them to pay? Is it actually worth it? Why or why not? List it out, tell us why. Have you clearly communicated to them the amount of time, effort, energy, and money that was required to create the product or service that you're selling? Did you spell it out for them? Number four, have you collected testimonials? Are there testimonials out there that you can use? How can you get more of them? Who can you contact? So figure out where can I find the testimonials that I'm looking for and where can I use them in my marketing? And then number five, what kind of bonuses could you add to your offer that would show your prospects that this is worth my money? What kind of bonuses? Is it a short 15 minute strategy session? Is it a, you'll send them a free book? What is it, right? For instance, as builder all affiliates on, on the first month, you make hundred percent commission. So, so what I have done in, in other, when I was first getting started, this might be worth the entire video right here, but when I was getting started, I was enamored and I was on fire for the four hour work week. And when I was building a team, what I did is I took the four hour work week and I said, Hey, look, 
you're gonna you're gonna buy, you're gonna purchase this product, right? You're gonna get a little trial, and then you're gonna purchase this product. And I'm gonna get I'm gonna get 100 commission. Okay, so I'm gonna actually take some of that commission, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna spend it on you because you are valuable to me, and I want you to excel. So I would buy them a copy of the Four Hour Workweek, and I would force them to read it. Okay, because I wanted my team to start thinking differently. I wanted my team to start functioning differently. Okay, and and as soon as I did that, I said, hey, we're gonna have a 10 minute call. Do you have time for that 10 minute call? Great. Well, it, it, here's the other thing. On, on top of that 10 minute call, I'm also gonna send you a book, the Four Hour Workweek. Do you think you'll have time over the next couple of weeks to read the Four Hour Workweek? Yep. Awesome. Great. Let's get you signed up. And, and the sale is done, right? Because it's like, oh, yeah, of course, duh. I mean, geez, you're gonna buy me a book. You're gonna mail me a book, right? Now, I'm not saying you gotta do all of that, but once you start stacking bonuses, this, the sale, the price, it becomes irrelevant. It becomes trivial, okay? Trivialize the price, okay? All right, that is a wrap for day three. I want you to go through this assignment. I want you to write this stuff down. If you enjoy printing it off, print it off and actually hand write it down or post it in the comments below the video, preferably below the video, not below the PDF. We prefer it to be below the video and mark day three complete. Greetings, my friends, and welcome back to day four. This is Matt Holtzel, and in week one, we are going through the perfect offer, okay? And hopefully, remember yesterday we covered mastering the four core, and that was on day three, okay? The four core elements to a high-converting, amazing offer. And today, what we're going to cover is how will you sell it, okay? So what we're going to cover today is what's going to be the actual method of which you're going to sell whatever it is, the product or service that you have to offer. So perhaps just as important as having a great offer to sell somebody is the ability to actually sell it the right way. Okay. So I've known a lot of marketers and what they'll do is typically here's kind of the journey. Now, let me, let me, I'm gonna actually draw out like a little bit of a timeline. Okay. Of, of the, the newbie marketer. Okay. Now just stick with me because it's kind of a fun little timeline, but generally when somebody starts out on this timeline, the first stage for this newbie marketer is just looking at, okay, just looking at and thinking through what are the gurus doing in this industry? Right. And that's really all they're consumed with. Right. They get enamored with the idea of how do I make money online? They look at a guru and they said, Oh, the guru does YouTube. Okay, I'll do YouTube. <laughs> and six months later, guess what? They have no channel, okay? They have no videos, or maybe they have a couple videos. And I'm telling you, I watch this all day long, okay? All day long. And really, they have no business, okay? Now, if this is you, just give yourself permission and give yourself a little bit of empathy to just to just let this go for a second and just observe rather than judge yourself, okay? Don't judge yourself. Just observe. Just observe, okay? Now, on this, on this little timeline, okay, what happens is, and the goal of this type of a training is, as you learn and as you grow and as you develop into yourself as a marketer, not somebody else but yourself, what you do is you begin to look internally, okay? Rather than looking externally, you look internally for your own skill sets. What am I good at? What am I skilled at? What do I enjoy? Because the trick in this whole online space isn't necessarily just to emulate what some guru guy is doing or some guru gal is doing. The trick is to, to gain self-knowledge about yourself. What do you enjoy? What fires you up? And run towards that. And that's really the evolution of a good marketer. And it's the evolution of, because we're in week one, it's the evolu evolution of a great offer. Okay, so whether you're good at writing or you're super charismatic, okay, there's a way to get yourself out there to the marketplace in a way that actually, and here it is, feels good to you. A lot of times when people look at, for instance, when somebody looks at Dave Sharp and they, they watch his sales videos and they watch him on video and they're just like, oh my gosh, I would kill to be that great, right? A lot of times what people do is they try to emulate that and it doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel right. Why? <laughs> because you're not Dave Sharp. It's not your thing, right? It's not your thing. Does it mean that you can't be as impactful? No, not at all. There's guys like there's guys like Gary Halpert, for instance, okay? Gary Halpert, I'm gonna spell this wrong, but Gary Halpert, the Gary Halpert letter .com. There's people like Joe Sugarman, for instance, who are all incredible world-class marketers and never really did anything on video. It was all the written word, it was all in magazines, it was all written out, okay? So give yourself permission today to not try to emulate or just replicate what somebody else has already done if it clearly doesn't fit you. If you're not a great writer, don't write. If you're not great on video, don't do video, okay? It's not that big of a deal. However, that said, there is a difference between just giving into fear, okay, just giving into fear and deciding that I'm not going to sell something because I'm scared of video, all right? There's a difference between that and saying I'm not skilled, okay? I happen to believe that, for instance, video. For most people, I mean, look, let's just, can I just be really, really real with you? There's some people who just aren't going to get there on video. They just aren't. They're going to spend three years. They're going to spend five years. And it's just never, it's just never going to click. But for 99% of people, it is not a skill thing. It is a fear thing. And once you push through the fear, it's a developed skill. It's a developed ability. So it doesn't matter today if you're scared of video. If you're like, I can't sell on video. I can't sell on webinars. That's BS. Okay. That's total BS. 99% of people can sell on webinars. They can sell on video. It's just that you haven't done it enough. You haven't done it enough. I'll give you a good story. When I first started, uh, it was probably two years in. I did probably 2011, 2012, something like that. And I did my first webinar, okay? And I had a small email list, email subscription list, about 150 people or so. And I emailed out to them and said, hey, I'm doing a webinar. I emailed to them three times a day for a couple of days. And I had zero people show up. But you know what I did? I got on that thing and I conducted that webinar like I had 50 people on who were ready to buy. And I did this a couple of times. And eventually, on about the fifth time, I actually had somebody show up. And then five people showed up. And then 10 people showed up and the rest was history. 
But from zero to 10, I honed and crafted my webinar skills, even though no one was there. I practiced as if there were people there. It's a little mixture of insanity with optimism. <laughs> okay, it's a little mixture of insanity with a little bit of optimism, and that was my magic formula. Okay, so let's just be clear. Okay, I, what I'm not saying is, okay, and, and hear me out on this. What I'm not saying is be lazy, right? Give into your fear. Okay, don't push yourself. But what I am saying is know and write this down. Know thyself. Got it? Write that down. This is important. When I got started, early on I had low self-esteem. My videos sucked. They were terrible. I mean terrible. I was sweaty. I was nervous. I was worried. I would try to sell on video. I would try to sell on video webinars. And people would just, it was a disaster. Now, when people see me and hear me on videos, they use the word talented. And I actually take offense to that. I take offense to that because you know what? I'm not talented. I don't really have this natural charisma. I struggled for most of my life with something called internalized shame. If you don't know what that is, go Google it. It's terrible. But basically, I grew up feeling like a black sheep, like I didn't belong. So when I got on video marketing, it didn't really feel like home to me. I didn't believe I could create these sort of engaging, fun videos that people would love. I just, I just didn't think I had it in me. I didn't, I wasn't really sure that I could pull that off. But if you want to know one of my secrets, if you want to know kind of the deep down secret, right? How I went from this little nervous, sweaty armpit kid to creating thousands of videos, training thousands of entrepreneurs and business owners how to market their business online through video. You ready for it? I made the damn video. Okay. And some of you need to hear this. I made the damn video. I became convinced that I could learn to master video, that it wasn't a talent, that it wasn't charisma. Even if it, even if it meant that the video itself was just a screen share or a webinar where I didn't show up, I believed that if I made it and I mastered that skill, I would become wealthy online. And guess what? I was right. Okay. I was right. The hard part about teaching this to others, the difficulty, the struggle for me as an educator is that it's different for everybody, right? Know thyself. It's different for everybody. So for one person, you know, I might tell them, get over your fear, push through, just make the damn video. For another person though, they're just, they might just be more gifted as a writer or a content creator. Okay? And they'll be able to create income faster if they go out and create a blog like barstoolsports.com or they create a blog like Medium or whatever it is. Okay, And they'll be happier doing it. So there isn't a right or wrong formula to this. But write, when you get started, whether you're writing, whether you're doing video, or whether you're doing both, and we'll talk about this in a second, the important piece is that you know yourself. Okay, Trust your gut, know yourself, and go with your gut. If it feels like, oof, you know what, I'm, I'm holding something back and I can tell. And you got to be honest with yourself here, people. you got to be honest with yourself. If I'm holding back out of fear, out of, ah, I just can't seem to create that video, okay? The only way to know this is you got to create some videos after you. So don't, I, I, here's my secret. Here's my secret. And I have coached thousands of people one-on-one -on -one online. Okay. Over the last decade or so, here's what I tell people. Unless you have created at least 10 plus videos where you have specifically tried to sell 10 or more videos where you have tried to sell something and you have put that in front of an audience, you cannot judge this. You cannot say I am good at video or I am bad at video. Okay. So until you get to that place, you can't judge it because video or writing or blogging, it's a learned skill. It is not something that is just born in your DNA. It is something that is learned, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at a few different ways that you can sell whatever it is, your product, your service, okay? And we're gonna go through a little quick action guide to help you dive into, well, what's the best way that I can sell my product, okay? As an affiliate or as my own product, okay? So you can see in this little bubble here that I've got written out, we have written, we have visual, and then there's the overlap space here that is both, all right? So first of all, under the written category, I want you to write these down. There's PDF reports, there's sales letters, there are email joint ventures, there's chatbots, there's magazines, look, there's a bunch more, okay? And I would say the most common here is sales letters. Can we go through and pour through absolutely every way to write down an offer? Yes, okay, yes. But by and large, these are these are probably the most common ways to present your offer in written form in front of someone else, okay? Now, for the visual, there's really two best ways to sell through visual, meaning getting someone's eyeballs on it. And especially online, it's a sales video, but if you really want to know the very best way to sell something in general, like just overall, it's in person, okay? It's in person. And the real ideal way is, to be totally honest, when you, when you combine both the written and the visual, you can do it in a video sales letter or in a webinar. So for instance, on a webinar, what you can do on Zoom or other platforms is you can share your screen, show up on video, and be providing a presentation to somebody where, look, you don't have to be traveling to hotel rooms and all over the freaking place to present your thing to a bunch of people, right? You don't have to do that. You don't have to show up to coffee shops to try to present your offer to somebody. You can have 500 people, 1,000 people, however many you want on that webinar, you can sell to those individuals all at once, see that you can, they can see your face if you want, you can see their face and they can watch your presentation as it goes. This is so powerful. And most people underestimate the power of selling via webinars. Basically, if I can just unpack for you real quick, the history of webinars, and I've watched this happen over the last 10 years. So take from me just and, and use this as an example. But basically when I got started in 2009, live webinars on GoToWebinar were all the rage, okay? And I've watched this industry evolve. And so learn from not only industry past mistakes, but also from where it's gone. And basically in about 2016, there was a huge flip to automated everything, automated webinars, automated sales videos, automated everything. And let me just tell you, when that flip happened, people stopped buying on webinars because they realized, oh my God, these things are just automated. 
This is just automated. They use automated webinars that appear to be live, but they weren't actually live, and now everybody has access to them. And now what I believe is happening is the live webinar is making a return because everybody is, is so sick of this scammy culture that came from this where everybody appeared to be some guru, person, whatever, and softwares came out with this automated webinar software. The live platform is back, okay? And it's weeding out all the frauds and it's weeding out all the people who wanna hide behind a screen and, it's, and it is making people show up in a real way. And this is super powerful. So just take note of that because as I've watched this industry evolve that way, it has been really, really monumental in weeding out people who are faking it till they make it, okay? Now, just a quick note on this. There are more ways, so quantity, there are more ways for you to sell via written, but one really important thing to remember is that it's better quality to sell visually. You're gonna have higher conversion rates if you're selling in person, or if you're selling with a video sales letter, or if you're selling with a webinar. You're going to have better conversions than you are if you're selling in written format, because, and this has been proven, it's usually because number one, in person is the very best way to sell. Outside of that, video sales letters and webinars are the very best way to sell, okay, period, end of story. The problem is if you wanna grow an online business that allows you freedom, well, guess what? Selling in person really isn't usually the ideal method, right? You don't wanna be traveling around to places all over the world to try to sell and huck your product to people. You want the freedom to be able to do that 24-7, 365, without ever having to really actually sell to somebody face-to-face -face and twist their arm to buy something, right? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to shift over to day four, assignments, okay? And we're gonna go through a couple questions. So number one, Write down what you're trying to sell. Specifically, what exactly are people purchasing? What are they purchasing? When they pull out their credit card, what are they purchasing? And the reason I include this in here is because I want you to, again, clarify what specifically people are purchasing. So it's at the top of your mind as we move into the next questions. Question number two, what is the most common way for your ideal avatar to purchase now? So do they typically, when they're purchasing from a competitor or when they're purchasing something online to maybe you're selling an e-course or something like that, do they buy just from reading text on a website? Do they just go to a written uh, sales letter or do they buy after watching a video? Do they buy after booking an appointment call? Do they book after watching a webinar? Where do people usually purchase? And this might require you go to other competitors' websites and actually take a look at how it all works. Number three, if you had to choose one single method to offer your product or service for sale, what would it be? Would you prefer video? Would you prefer written? What single avenue of selling would you choose and why? Would it be webinars? Would it be VSLs? Would it be just chatbots? Do you love chatbots? Would you do it just a written sales letter? How would you do it? If you had to choose today, you had no other option, okay? Number four, does video freak you out? And we're gonna get into a little psychology here with you. Does video really freak you out? Like are you, like, are you freaked out by it when you try to shoot a video? Are you more or less nervous than if you were talking with a friend? And why do you think that is? Why do you, I'm just curious why you think that is. If you were just sitting down with your friend over a cup of coffee talking about your product, would you be more or less nervous than shooting a video? And if you're not sure, pull open the video and try. Okay, just see how it goes. Number five, would you feel comfortable with the idea of trying video out if you were able to have empathy on yourself and laugh off the mistakes? Okay, part of, part of the difficulty with video is just, it's just, it's hard, people get so hard on themselves. They just, they, they bully themselves about being a failure because they suck at video. It's just a weird, it's just a bizarre phenomenon with humans. I, I'm not sure why that is. But would you feel comfortable with the idea of just trying it out if you were able to have empathy on yourself and sort of laugh off the mistakes that you make? And if it took you 75 takes to get a video that worked, would you be okay with that? Would you feel okay with it? And then finally, number six, do you believe that you really have what it takes to step through your internal blocks and sell the living hell out of your product or service? Because here's what it comes down to. If you want me to tell you how to sell it, if you want me to speak into your life and say, you gotta be on video, or you gotta be on, you gotta be able to write sales letters, or you have to sell on webinars, or you gotta sell on VSLs, or whatever it is. At the end of the day, do you look internally into yourself and say, I've got it, I've got the juice. In the bottom of the ninth with two outs, okay, it's a baseball reference, but in the bottom of the ninth with two outs, are, do you want to step up to the plate, or do you wanna be in the dugout? Do you believe that you can step through the internal blocks and sell? Or do you feel like, I don't know if this is for me? And I'm just gonna be real with you, okay? Most people who step into this industry don't like selling. Most people who become really good at selling and marketing, they didn't start that way. This is a learned skill and it has a lot to do with your gut and what's going on inside, okay? Not literally with your stomach, but like with your, with your internal mind, what's going on in the psychology of your mind, okay? All right, so what I want you to do is answer those questions and I want you to start to nail down, okay, look, I've never tried webinars, but I'm gonna give it a shot, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do 10 webinars selling to my list and I'm gonna go for it like crazy. That's what I'm gonna do. Or I'm gonna create a killer video sales letter and it's gonna be, you know, 10 pages long typed out. It's gonna be a, a, a nice eight to 10 minute sales video. I'm gonna unpack a bunch of bonuses and then I'm gonna point them to my affiliate offer. Whatever it is, okay? I want you to start nailing that down and note that, hey, look, if you do choose the round of video, chances are you'll get more conversions. You have more options with the written word. So meaning you can scatter it across multiple different platforms more readily, but if you're able to combine it in the form of a webinar or video sales letter, chances are, chances are, your conversions will be a lot better. Not even chances are, it's just proven, okay? So this is wrapping up day four and I want you to dive deep internally on this stuff and really explore what's going on in the back, in the undercurrent of your mind, okay? And, and we're gonna start building this offer. And over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna build the funnel, we're gonna write the copy and we're gonna play some ads for it, okay? So day four is a wrap comment on here and mark it as complete. So you can click or tap done when you are complete with this video and with this unit. 
and it'll allow you to type a little bit about what that is and share it with the group. So have a great rest of your day and let's rock. Greetings, my friends, and welcome back. It's day five of the boot camp. All right, we are almost through week one of creating the perfect offer. And today we're going to talk about why will they buy and how to tip the scales in your favor. Now, a quick note about how I'm shooting this video. Basically, I created this little PDF guide and I want to, because you're getting a little bit of an inside look in terms of how this is all created, because I mean, we're creating it live as we go, right? One thing that I'm going to do today is I'm, I'm literally going to scroll through this document with you, all right, with you as we as we go through it all, okay? And the reason I'm going to do this is because when I first got started online, I didn't really know how to create really amazing, like, I just didn't really know what I was doing. And I didn't know how to create amazing slides or make my slides look pretty or whatever. So I would just type out a document and scroll through the document. And it was really powerful. And I still like to do it today. And we're going to do it today on this training. But I wanted to do it for you. And here's a little bit of the reason. I wanted to give you the reason behind it so that you can also do similarly and empower yourself that way, okay? So today we're going to do why will they buy? What's going to be the tip of the scale? Now, when I first got started marketing products and services online and I was an affiliate marketer at the time, my pitch went something like this. This is the best pay plan you'll ever going to see. Just look how much money you can make. You'll be so rich, right? Well, maybe it wasn't exactly like that, but it was pretty dang close. And at the time, I thought the main reason that people bought how-to courses and business opportunities was to make money, but I was dead wrong. More powerful than any sort of pitch focused around money is a pitch that's focused around values. Now, make sure you write this down. Values are greater than money. And in today's training, we're going to unpack the five value triggers that get people to pull out their credit card and buy faster than merely just pitching people based on money. So before we dive right into the five triggers, it's important to establish why these triggers work so well. Okay, so without getting into this hours long lecture about human behavioral psychology, it's important that you understand that humans by and large are driven by something called a hierarchy of needs. Okay, a hierarchy of needs. That's a phrase coined and popularized by a guy named Abraham Maslow in the early 1940s. Okay, so in this hierarchy, and I'll show you a little, a little chart here. He describes a motivational theory that explains not just what humans do, but more importantly, why they do it. Okay, so if you look at the top of this little, uh, this little display, you can see at the very top is something called self-actualization. And Maslow posited that self-actualization or basically achieving one's full potential is at the top of what drives human behavior. Now, how powerful is that, right? A lot of people think it's emotion or it's food or it's, you know, staying alive or relationships, but at the very top, he said, no, no, no. It's actually the feeling that they are self-actualized, that they have achieved their full potential as a human. Now, this is very similar to the layers of an onion, right? At the outside, the first layer is physiological needs, basic needs. Then it goes into psychological needs and then self-fulfillment needs, okay? Now, when I pitched to people about making money, that was all about kind of these outer layers, okay? It had all to do with the outer layers. And when I started pitching based on values, that's when I started hitting this full potential layer and lo and behold, the sales followed, okay? So don't get me wrong, people like their money. Money opens up the opportunity to provide people with freedom, relationships, and more self-actualization. And money can actually be a tool that, that assists in achieving a higher purpose. But pitching and creating offers around, quote, more money is just gonna leave you wondering why your conversions are low or lower than maybe they could be. So I want you to think on this for a few minutes. This is really powerful when you grasp this. Most people in the world function in a state of being bored or alone or worried or stressed or they're insecure. What are other people thinking of me? They're nervous, they're curious. They're basically functioning in a state of being half asleep. They're unfulfilled, they're dazed, they're unsure. Do you realize how powerful that is? Are you living in that state? Many people are standing right at the cliff. They are looking over the cliff of giving up on their childlike hopes and dreams and giving in to a state of false reality that life in the future will be just like their life has been in the past. They've determined that they're no longer going to be, that there's no longer going to be an exciting, invigorating journey for their life. It's going to be monotonous. It's going to be boring and it's going to be worrisome. So let me just be really clear. People don't want money and a little bit louder for the people in the back who are just not really paying attention as they're watching this. People don't want money. They want fulfillment. They want excitement. They want exploration. They want invigoration, right? They want that feeling. On a hot summer day, when you dive into a nice cold pool, head first, you've been sweating all day. I used to do this at my last house. I would mow the lawn. On a 103 degree day in Phoenix, I would mow the lawn and then I would d dive head first into our diving pool. Best feeling ever. That's what people are after. They're after community. They're after beauty. The five value triggers that I'm going to cover right now are going to open your mind. They're going to help you craft your offer around deeper unspoken values that drive human behavior. And just beware, these triggers have been proven to boost conversions and explode businesses at rapid rates. And I'm even going to give you examples of every single one of these five. Okay, so get ready. Here we go. Number one, internal angst and anxiety. How does your product or service relieve someone from the inner negative self-talk and the, quote, soft but certain pain of their current struggles? It's the nagging anxiety. How does your product or service relieve them from that, right? For instance, here's a good example. You ever feel like you're stuck in this robotic, robotic existence where you lack control over your life and every day that goes by is just another day where you don't feel a deep sense of meaning and purpose in your relationships, in your work, in your job, etc.? Or you could say something like this. What if instead of going through all those cold, lethargic rituals in your nine to five, you woke up with a sense of meaning and purpose, right? Can you imagine what that would feel like? You interacted with other motivated individuals. You had the freedom to do what you want, when you want. And when you rest your head on the pillow at night, you have this just peaceful smile on your face and a deep sense of fulfillment and contentment. Wouldn't that feel amazing? Wouldn't that be so drastically different than the world you're currently living in? Well, let me tell you more, right? Or even something to this effect. Some people wonder quietly to themselves if they, they'll ever be able to sleep soundly at night, the haunting reality that they might not ever live up to their full potential that they might work this soul-slaughtering job for the rest of their time on earth, that the reality becomes so much that they can barely sleep at night. You don't have to be one of those people. 
our team is equipped to release that potential, help you find your true calling and set you free to be all that you've dreamt of being, right? So notice how I pull out things like full potential and how powerful that is. It's way more powerful than money. Fear, pride, and ego is number two. People by and large don't want to feel left out. So a big selling point is FOMO. They don't want to feel as if they're left behind the times or lacking in something. So for instance, I was running an ad copy webinar a few years ago, and here's an excerpt from that exact email. It says, how to escape the burning house of average and move into the thriving house of expert with your ad copy. Note, average ad copy acts like smoke in a burning building, slowly suffocating your business to a slow, painful death. And here's another good example. Do not risk sinking back into a state of irrelevance, average, and boring. This slaughters, murders businesses at a rate faster than any other. This type of ad copy speaks directly to the wiring of your ideal prospect, and it causes an emotional reaction in a way that money just simply can't do it, okay? Number three, time is like a currency. So, for instance, when you go into an airport, you walk up to a booth, and it usually says whatever, currency exchange or whatever it says, and you can exchange $100 for other currencies. So in the same way, people can spend $100 on a product, right, in the exact same way, in exchange for sort of saving them hours, days, weeks, or even months, years of save time banging their head on a keyboard trying to figure out how to build a sales funnel that works, right? People are willing to part with their money in exchange for speed and ease. Money loves speed. So here's a good example. I spent upwards of five years dipping and dodging through various get-rich-quick deals and lame money, make money things until I found a real, legit, transparent company that offered incredible education without any frills. Save yourself the wasted hours of feverishly searching online for a way to make a second income and purchase XYZ product today. Okay, number four, keeping up with the Joneses. People deeply desire, deeply, deeply desire to be seen in a positive light by others. For some, this is stronger than others, but we all feel it. Many times, a guy wants to be respected by his buddies and many ladies want to be oohed and odd by her lady friends because she's beautiful, kept up, strong, independent, etc. That's not intended to be sexist, by the way. I'm just using those as generic examples. Now, here's a few examples of how you can use that in your offer creation to tap into the strong desire embedded deep inside all of us, okay? So here's, here's an example. The other night, I was out with my girl sipping some mango margaritas at happy hour, and I looked down on my phone, and I just made another commission from an affiliate product that I sell. Just as I took another delicious sip, my friend Julie sitting next to me said, seriously, I work 10-hour shifts four days a week, and it takes me an entire month to make enough just to get by, and you're making money while we're drinking margs? Right? Notice how that taps into keeping up with the Joneses. It's a feeling of Oh my gosh, wow, you are a strong, independent woman. How are you doing this? Here's another great example. Last night we were hooping out back and we went shirts and skins. And when I tossed off my t-shirt, my childhood buddy Josh, we've been friends for years, said, dude, what have you been doing to get that six pack? If I was promoting some sort of uh, if I was promoting some sort of health and wellness product, or if I was promoting some sort of um, you know, maybe it's a protein shake of some sort, right? People love to be looked at favorably by others. It is a deep desire. Even if you're super secure with who you are as a person, it is still ingrained in our society and in our DNA. It's just reality, okay? It's just reality. All right, <clears throat> number five and the final one, mastery and self-confidence. People feast on the feeling of achievement. They feast on it. Deeply engraved in our DNA is the desire to feel competent and masterful at our craft. For instance, here's a couple examples. What's more, and I, I would use this in a sales letter or a video of some sort, I'd say what's more, you're gonna have the subtle happy butterflies feeling in your stomach because you'll be equipped with the necessary tools of the trade to tap into the secret thoughts of your ideal buyer and pull them out and make them respond. And here's another one. Once you digest this training or once you get inside the product, you'll feel supremely confident to go forth into the advertising world and launch new campaigns that will convert at incredible rates and boost your ROI. Okay, so as I went through all of these, here's the thing. We, are, we don't have a specific answer these questions type of implementation this time for today, but what we do have are uh, area for notes. And what I want you to do today for day five is I want you to go through every single one of these five and ask yourself, how does your product or service relieve someone of the inner negative self-talk or the, that subtle pain that just it eats at them every single day? Or number two, how does it answer the pride, the ego, right? People don't want to feel left out. Like if I, if I don't purchase, I'm going to really be missing out on something. How can you add that? How does it save them time? How does it save them time and even energy, right? Is it going to save them months, weeks, years? How, I mean, what's the time frame it's going to save them? When I was, I, I used to sell a software, uh, this has been years back. I'm not even sure if they're around today, but I was an affiliate for them and it was a sales funnel software. And what I would say is, look, Hey, I spent my first couple of years online and if you guys are new, by the way, if you're newer to the game and you haven't been in this for years, what you can say is, look, there are thousands of people who spend years, there's, I mean, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands who spend years trying to figure the sales funnel thing out. This company, insert company, has spent millions of dollars and countless hours making the process easy and fast. And when you get in here, you don't have to be like one of those people banging their head against a keyboard. You can just jump right to the front of the line and make it super easy and save yourself all of the hours and hours and hours of headache and pain. Okay? Then number four, keeping up with the Jones, being seen in a positive light by others. And number five. Here's another, uh, number five, mastery and self-confidence. And I just want to say on keeping up with the Jones, number four, when you're, let's say you're pitching like, like a, a software service or like a sales funnel builder of some sort or something like that. <clears throat> People have this, have this deeply ingrained desire to be seen in a positive light by others. And, and the way that you can sort of pitch and frame that is by saying something to the effect of, look, your business right now as it exists today is barely in existence. And the reason for that is you haven't found an efficient productive way to sell what it is that you're offering. And here's what's missing. You're missing something called a sales funnel. Okay, sales funnels are the most efficient productive and effective way to sell products and services on the internet, period. It's been proven. And what I've got is this, is this brand new cheetah builder. And I'm telling you right now, it has gone through so many iterations to get to where it is now that you can log in and create a funnel in about 
five to 10 minutes and it's going to look beautiful, right? When you pull it up for your spouse, your spouse is going to look at that and say, you made that? How did you make that, right? You're going to go to business meetings. Maybe you'll go to networking meetings. Maybe you'll share it with your aunt and uncle who have ridiculed you for trying this online business thing forever at home. And they've just been like, what are you doing here? And they're going to look at this little funnel that you've set up and it's going to be so beautiful. They're going to say, wow, this looks legit, right? Imagine how that will feel when uncle Donnie or aunt Lucy looks at your sales funnel and says, holy smokes, that, wow, that's incredible. Do you make that? How did you make that? Well, let me tell you, cheetah. Okay, so that's an example. You can do that with any product, okay? Once you start to tap into those secret hidden desires, everything changes. Okay, spend a little bit of time and go through these five value triggers, okay? Spend a little bit of time looking at Maslow's hierarchy of needs and really think through that for whatever it is that you're trying to sell. And what you'll find is over the course of you pouring through that, your ad copy will begin to get deeper. It'll speak directly to the hardwiring of your avatar and your conversions will go up. All right, that's a wrap for day five. We'll see you same place, same time tomorrow for day six. Greetings, my friends. Welcome back. It's day six of the boot camp, and hopefully week one has been really valuable for you. Now, what you're looking at on the screen is actually our PDF guide, and I had a lot of people reach out to me and say they really enjoyed the style and structure of doing it sort of like this. So what we're actually going to do is, uh, oh, I'm going to do it again. Okay. So uh, day six, I have the PDF open. And look, I'm the kind of person who also doesn't really love learning from slides either. So it's actually more beneficial to me if we can open up the PDF and literally, you know, just pour through it because it's more engaging. It's more present rather than like, oh, great, another slide, another slide, another bullet point. Okay, blah, blah, blah. And we've been conditioned to learn that way, but I want you to be in and involved in the words as we're going through them. Okay. So I'm going to go through this uh, and, and we're going to talk a, a little bit about story branding. And I have a graphic here coming up that you're really going to want to catch and make sure you don't miss. And we're going to go through it, And then uh, I'm really excited because I'm going to take you through line by line through my exact ad that I wrote. I, and I actually wrote this a couple years ago. This is almost two and a half years ago. I still use it. And it has, it has got me countless leads and sales from this one ad. And I use it for different offers and I just adjust it and kind of change it up. So it's evolved over the years, but it's super simple. It's to the point and it develops a story brand around me, which is what we're trying to do for you and your offer. Okay. So copywriting is the art and science of using irresistible ads, emails, sales letters, etc to sell your products and services using just your words. Okay. And I want you to catch this. It is arguably the most important skill you'll ever learn as a marketer. Okay. Even though Copy is usually thought of in terms of written words. Please also just make a note that when you achieve mastery in writing copy, this will inevitably bleed into your videos as well. So it's not just a matter of you being an incredible writer, okay? This will also bleed straight into all the videos that you create. And pretty soon, pretty soon, you'll just have the, the same written electricity will exist for you in video form. It will change the game for you, okay? This is gonna elevate the responsiveness of your marketing faster than anything else will, okay? The ability to sell using just your words gives you the ability and the capability, I should say, to print money, okay? Now, printing money is illegal and I'm not promising you you'll become rich or wealthy as a result of learning this skill. I'm not here to make big, you know, income claims or anything like that, okay? I'm just, I'm, I, my goal in saying the capability to print money means that you can sell so many more uh, of your offer or if you're an affiliate marketer of somebody else's offer, okay? Doesn't matter the product or service. As long as, I mean, the product or service has to be good, right, okay? but you can sell way more when you get great, excellent, way above average. I'm talking prolific with ad copy. Okay, so before I dive into how to actually become an incredible copywriter, we're first gonna cover the most common pitfalls and mistakes that most marketers make when they're writing copy. So if you're taking notes, be sure to write these down. Number one is narcissism, okay? So here's what most newbie marketers do. They write ad copy. And, and look, if you do this, don't get down on yourself or hard on yourself, okay? You just haven't had the right mentors yet. Most newbie marketers write ad copy that they would buy, okay? This is called narcissism or that they would believe or buy into. Okay. And they only sell based on that. But one of the greatest copywriters of all time, his name is Joe Sugarman. He made famous the blue blocker sunglasses. If you don't know what those are, you can go look them up. Okay. Those things, no one would have ever heard about these things had it not been for this guy, Joe Sugarman. And he put it this way. You have to enter the con you have to enter into the conversation already going on inside the mind of the reader. Now, let me explain what Joe Sugarman meant. Okay. If this is a brain, okay. Inside of this, there's a person here who's, who's sitting there thinking about objections. They're, they're hearing your offer and they're already thinking about the objections. They're saying, well, what about this? Or, oh, what about that? Or I don't think that actually works. Or I don't really know. Okay. So what Joe Sugarman meant when he wrote that is look, there's a conversation already happening inside of the prospect's mind and you've got to enter into that conversation. And unless you enter into exactly their train of thought, the sale will not happen. No sales, okay? Because you're not speaking to what they're objecting about. You're not speaking about their concerns, their actual feelings. You're missing the point, okay? You're missing the point. So people who read your copy, they're worried, they're stressed, they're doubtful about what you're gonna say. And you either need to address this or your marketing is just gonna fall on deaf ears because they're not, it's not gonna make sense to them. You're not gonna answer the correct objections that are actually going on in their mind, okay? Number two is copycat syndrome. So don't assume that what works for Joe or Marissa or Matt or David Sharp or whoever will also work for you. You're different, your audience is different. Therefore, your ad copy has to be different. And let me just point out, I use the word unique for a very specific reason, which is potentially the most important piece of any brand online is being unique. It's being your own, okay? So just make a note of that, write that word down. If you go through any prolific, huge brands that, are, that have really blown up, it's because they're unique in their messaging and in their branding. I'm not talking about having an amazing logo, okay? I'm, I'm talking about you, you're the brand. Constant worrying, okay, look, it's time to stop thinking, what other, stop caring what other people think, okay? This will absolutely stunt your ability to be candid and honest in your ad copy. And, and just as a hint, 
being really candid. And you'll see this. I'm going to give you an example of one of my best ads. It's about a thousand words long. You're going to see this in real form. But being candid in your ad copy is extremely powerful and it builds trust quickly with your prospects. Okay. Number four is paralysis by analysis. Look, just hit send already. Okay. If you're scared what people will think, or maybe your grammar sucks, or you're a perfectionist, look, read these words and read them again. Just hit send and get your email out. Just hit post and get the blog or the YouTube video up. Learn from Nike. Just do it, right? Just hit post. That's going to be our new thing. Just hit send. All right. If it sucks, here's the deal. You're going to have failure after failure after failure. And one of the best pieces of advice that anyone ever gave me early on in my entrepreneurial journey right here, maybe you want to write this one down too. fail fast. You're going to fail. Okay. There's just no question. You will fail. So fail fast, get it over with. So it doesn't drag on into five years, 10 years, 15 years worth of sitting around trying this online thing. Just let it happen fast. You'll be okay. All right. Number five is the not good enough syndrome. Okay. Copywriting is a learned skill. Okay. It's not a talent. No person comes out of the womb or is born good at sales or good at marketing or good at copywriting. It just doesn't happen. It's, it's like math. It's like sports, crochet, ride a bike, like all of these things you have to learn and implement. You can't, somebody cannot tell you how to ride a bike and then you expect to just sit on that seat the very first time and be a master. It, nothing in life works like that. Okay. Nothing. So you have to, and look, I have sat on countless webinars. I've taught countless webinars. I am convinced that the best way to become a great prolific copywriter comes down to two things. One, get on the email lists of amazing copywriters and two, write one to two ads and emails per day, as many as you possibly can every single day. That's the formula for every two to three emails and ads that you see from the best copywriters, you know, you should turn around and write one of your own. You learn it, you implement it. And eventually someday you teach it. Okay. I think the big thing that scares a lot of you, and I hear this, I, I get this in messages is that people want to, they think they'll look like, or they'll feel like a copycat or a fraud for copying someone else's work. And I'm not telling you to rip off other people's work, but here's what I'm saying. There's an ancient saying that goes like this. There's nothing new under the sun. Okay. And what that means is that there's never really anything that's written that hasn't already been written to a certain extent. So it's important to not take yourself so dang seriously all the time. If you really like a line from another copywriter or marketer, just freaking use it and then credit them for the quote, right? Say, you know, Steve Jobs from Apple said, you know, in his, in his 2008 keynote speech, Steve Jobs, when displaying the iPhone said this pretty powerful, right? Okay. Something like that. So when you're learning and getting a feel, getting kind of your voice, you don't have time or the energy, frankly, to reinvent the wheel. So don't just don't do it. Okay. If there's marketers that you look up to and preferably in the same industry that niches you, then just study the living hell out of these people. Okay. Look at their marketing, dissect it and make it a goal of yours to beat them at their own game. Being observant is half the battle in crafting irresistible ad copy. Being observant is half the battle in crafting irresistible ad copy. Okay. So speaking of irresistible ad copy, and, and I named this section crafting irresistible coffee or <laughs> coffee. I love coffee. Crafting irresistible copy, your story brand. Okay. So we named this your story brand and there's a reason for that. So speaking of irresistible copy and not reinventing the wheel, remember in day one, on, Dave unpacked how story selling is the key to building a unique brand that's centered around you, lifts up your offer and builds businesses faster than anything else. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this kind of on display, this whole not reinventing a wheel. And I'm going to share with you a little graphic from a guy named Donald Miller and his book, Building a Story Brand. So take a look. Okay. This is from Donald Miller's book, Building a Story Brand, which by the way, I don't have any interest in his business. I'm not a business partner of his, but it is one of the best, if not the best uh, book on marketing that I've read in the last 10 years. Okay. So go to Amazon, grab yourself a copy. Thank me later. Okay. But basically follow this in any Hollywood blockbuster movie that take off and just do extraordinarily well, Miller, uh, Donald Miller mentions that they all follow this framework. Now, even Donald Miller didn't come up with this framework. Okay. This is just a time, a, sort of a timeless model for telling a really captivating story. Okay. So let's go through this real quick. And I'm going to draw on my screen here so you can see, but it all starts with a character, right? And sometimes, um, you know, in, in English class or, or I'm sorry, in literature class, you would call that, uh, the protagonist, right? The main character, okay. The good guy, right. And the character always has a problem. There's always some sort of issue, right? I mean, think about the last time that you opened up a storybook and everything was fine and dandy and it stayed that way through the whole book, right? I mean, talk about a total snooze fest, right? It doesn't work. They always have a problem, a crisis, right? Some sort of crisis. And then they meet a guide, right? And the guide gives them a plan. Okay. So the guide is an expert is somebody who knows what they're doing and gives them a plan, right? The plan, the blueprint is another way to say plan. The blueprint calls them to action and that action ends in a success and helps them avoid failure. A lot of times people leave out this helps them avoid failure part. Don't leave that out of the story. Okay. All right. So there's a character. The character has a problem. The, the character meets a guide who gives them a plan and calls them to action. It ends in success and helps them avoid failure. That's it, guys. That's it. That's the magic. That's really the magic. Okay. There's not some sort of special, there's, there's nothing else to it. That's it. That's the magic. Okay. So now that we have a framework, it's time for you to start formulating the offer. Okay. How are we going to position this? How are we going to really, what's our angle? How are we going to tell the story? And this is where things start to pull together. Okay. So what I've got for you is an example of an ad that I wrote about three years ago and I've optimized it, placed it on Facebook multiple times. It has produced leads for me at an insanely low cost, usually around a dollar per lead or less, or, you know, lately right around a dollar 25 per lead. Just so you know, if you're, if you're new to marketing, if you're not familiar with paid advertising, that is insanely cheap. And what's even better than that. Most marketers pay one to one. To, if you're doing really well, 50 cents to about $3 per click, depending on the industry. Okay. So if you're really crushing it, you might pay 50 cents per lead, but usually people, it's, it's a good statistic to pay $1 per lead or $1 per click. 
And I'm and from this ad, I'm getting $1 per lead, meaning somebody who enters their name and email on my form. So this ad's going to take you start to finish in the, in the story brand framework, and you'll see it in action. And I don't want you to message me after reading this to ask how to purchase. Okay. So don't message me saying, Oh my God, that was the best ad I've ever seen. Please let me buy now. <laughs> okay. I'm just, I'm just being an idiot. Okay. There we go. So here is the actual ad that I have placed multiple times for multiple different offers on Facebook ads, and it has produced tons of leads and sales for me over the years. Okay. So the clock said 3:52 AM. I woke up with sweaty palms and shooting pain in my chest. I could tell something right away was seriously wrong. I nudged Catherine, my wife awake. Hey, I'm not sure what's going on, but my chest is killing me. And I think I need to go to the hospital. Now, everybody, just so you're aware, Notice these top three lines in a Facebook ad, and this is going to get into a little bit of Facebook ad stuff, but look, I don't want you to ask a bunch of detailed questions about Facebook ad. We're, we're focusing on the offer and on the angle here, okay? So in a Facebook ad, and this will be very affiliate marketing focused as well, because a lot of you are affiliates um, for various companies online. And so this is actually one that I've used in affiliate marketing, so it'll be very applicable. But in the first three lines of a Facebook ad, all you're going to see are those kind of top three lines before you have to click see more or read more, all right? So it's important to note here that um, none of this stuff really has to do with my offer, right? I'm not talking about a product. I'm not even talking about the industry. But what I did in this ad is I set it up with incredibly detailed targeting based on my avatar. Remember how we talked through all of the avatar stuff earlier on? Because I did that, I didn't need to talk in my first three lines specifically about my offer. Instead, what I was able to do is use curiosity-based marketing in the very beginning, 3.52 a.m. Think of how many people are going to read that. What happens at 3.52 a.m.? Usually not something very good, okay? So I woke up with sweaty palms and shooting pain in my chest. I could tell something was seriously wrong. Okay, this is interesting, okay? And, and I'll have you note, Facebook... Facebook rates ads on a scale of one to 10 in something called their their um, their relevance score, meaning do people stick around and read or do people disappear and market as spam? And this ad always gets a 10, always. Okay, so take it for what it's worth. This is an incredibly high producing ad and one of my absolute all time best kept secrets in my marketing bag, okay? I'm usually the type of person who just keeps my mouth shut and suffers through it, but the pain kept getting worse, so I had to say something. Now notice that this is called self-disclosure. Okay, self-disclosure in an ad is really powerful when you use it in a way that feels like you're actually opening up and not just complaining. You can't complain and pout and moan, but here I'm getting into the hospital and, and I disclose by saying, look, I usually just stuff it, stuff it deep down inside me and just suffer through it, but it was just, I had to say something. So 20 minutes later, and I'm in the ER at Littleton Adventist Hospital outside Denver. Now, when it comes to building your story brand and telling your story in advertising, the details matter, okay? The details matter of the story. So I get into excruciating detail here. Now, some people are like, well, geez, who needs to know all this stuff? This is what makes ad copy hypnotic, okay? And I'm not talking about, you know, actually hypnotizing people, okay? But what I'm talking about is when people tell stories and they give details and people can actually feel like they're witnessing the story with them, what happens is, and there's been studies, maybe I mentioned this in an earlier video, but there's been studies done where when somebody is telling the story, the person who is listening, their brains chemically are actually synced up. Their brains are going through the same same feelings, emotions, everything. So I say, fast forward 20 minutes later, I'm in the ER at Littleton of Venice Hospital outside Denver. And now their mind is to a map. They're looking at a map that says Denver. They're like, oh my gosh, this is intense. Where is this going? The reality of the situation didn't really stick in, sink in until they started the EKG tests and put the little sticky things all over my chest. How many people writing ads these days on Facebook or Instagram or wherever are using words and phrases like put the little sticky things all over my chest? What is it? What am I doing here? What I'm doing is I'm establishing myself as somebody who's creative plus unique. Okay, I'm creative and unique. I've been doing this for a long time, but I'm creative and I'm unique. I looked over at Catherine as she gripped my hand, the tears welling up in her eyes made me feel the gravity of it all. The next few minutes seemed like hours. I remember the doc's words clearly. You've got so much stress and anxiety with your move and having to find new jobs, not to mention you're newly married. You've got a lot to worry about and your body is literally shutting down on you. Our new jobs paid well, but we were extremely stressed, but were extremely stressful and involved really long hours. Typically I was putting in 50, 60 hour work weeks. And one week I put in a company record 84 hours. Okay, so here's the thing. The reason that I'm that I'm saying this right here is I'm is I'm using a setup. Okay, part of my targeting in Facebook and who I advertise to and who I draw in are hard working people. They they work in in industries where there it's a lot of manual labor and I'm building rapport by showing them, hey, I work my ass off. Okay. I'm not somebody who's looking for something for cheap, free, whatever, and you shouldn't either. So I'm conditioning my audience. Ad copy and offer creation is all about conditioning and positioning. Write those two terms down. Condition, position. So all I'm doing is I'm setting this up by what I disclose is going to help me sell later on, okay? The jobs were demanding. We kept finding ourselves living paycheck to paycheck and I was endlessly frustrated by how, by having so much of my life dictated by my work. It got to me. It was in that hospital that I, I decided something big had to change and I had to be the agent of that change. Now, the reason I say this, okay? Notice in ad copy and in my offer, I'm not saying anything like, hey, if you wanna make a change there, Lisa or Joe or Andy, if you wanna make a change, you've gotta be the agent of that change. No, 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 no. I am couching this whole thing in my story. Because now it's like, hey, man, it was in that hospital bed. I decided something big had to change. I had to be the agent of that change. I had to control my destiny. And now, now, later on, 
maybe in a sales video or maybe in my in, in a bridge page video when i say hey look and i look right into the camera and i say hey look if you want shit to change for yourself you better own it it's on you remember when i said in my ad that i was at the hospital i was in the hospital bed and i decided that well that was the day i decided it but now the ball's in your court okay now i have full i have full accountability i have full integrity to come in and call these people to action and make sh damn well sure that they follow through on it after that horrific trip to my hospital to the hospital i went on a fever search and, and just, I would write this little thing down right here. I went on a feverish search online for some sort of way to start my own company or earn a little extra on the side. I had really no idea who I was, what I was looking for or who to trust. And I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you all right now that this phraseology, okay, isn't even really all my own phraseology. Feverish search online. I first heard this used in a, in a video sales letter in 2012, okay, from one of the best marketers that I've ever heard. And I really had no idea what I was looking for or who to trust. I heard a few years later, I believe in 2014. So this is all at least language or or uh, verbiage that I heard over five years ago. And I'm just telling you, ad copy never dies. This, if there's one constant, it's the psychology of human beings. I had no idea what I was looking for or who to trust. If I'm targeting, if I'm targeting people interested in affiliate marketing, people interested in making money on the internet, and I use this language, do you think that my ideal avatar or prospect has ever went on their own feverish search online? Do you think that they ever had a moment of wondering, geez, is this just a scammer or does this guy actually know what he's talking about? I have no idea who to trust. I am speaking directly to their biggest fears to their worst nightmares and to their biggest dreams. The feverish search, the smacking the hands on the keyboard. How do I figure this affiliate marketing thing out? How do I get there? How do I figure this out? And I'm speaking into their story. Now what's happening? Now, you have to pay very close attention to this because if you miss this, this is, this is everything. Write this word down. Projection. This is a psychology term. Projection. Now, what my, and this is also future pacing, okay? But what the person is looking at now, they up until this point, they've been seeing me as the character of this story. And now what's happened is our brains have really synced up, okay? So if this is me, and then this is the reader, here's what's happening. Something called psychological projection, where they take a look at my story, and it feels like they're looking through the blinds a little. It's almost like voyeurism, which I'm not trying to get into anything weird or sexual there, but it's almost like they're peeking through the blinds, and then they get to say, wow, I've been on that feverish search. I, I know something's gotta change in my life, and I have to do it. Much of my life has been dictated by my work, I'm sick of being paycheck to paycheck. I don't know who to trust. I don't know really what I'm looking for. Jeez, I'm in the same freaking position as he was. I'm in the same position as he was. This sounds like my story. And I can't even tell you on the Facebook ad, how many times some random person I had never met would say, I wasn't sure if this was your story that I was reading or if it was mine. It was like you just told my story of my whole life. That's, that is the trick. That's the magic of what happens when you speak to somebody's avatar directly. And one night I was randomly scrolling through Facebook in bed and I happened to find a really weird video, or you could say a really powerful video. I was really skeptical at first. Think of how many people have been skeptical at first when they find a video online. I'd seen plenty of videos promising a lot, but, but delivered very little. But after just a few minutes into the video, I realized my life was about to take a huge turn and it did. Now, everything after this is, is what happened, is what happened when I saw the video and got my blueprint, right? Fast forward to today, I'm typing this right now at 10.45 a.m. on a lazy Thursday morning. Not long ago, like most people in the world, I was stuck playing, stuck at work playing slave to a 9-to-5 job without any sort of real freedom to live life on my own terms, but not anymore. Now that my work is no longer tied to my location, in the last 12 months, I've been to Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Japan, Guatemala, Indonesia, Thailand, and hit my first cruise, too, with some friends. And, and hit my first cruise with some friends, too. And we're finalizing plans to hit the beaches in Mexico this summer. Why does any of this matter? Well, for instance, take our most recent trip to Thailand. We spent two weeks there, and our vacation was filled with nights in a romantic treehouse bungalow on the beach, feeding elephants at an ethical elephant sanctuary, mind-blowing, authentic Thai food, cat's absolute favorite. My wife's name is Catherine, but notice how I just, notice how I even make it feel like we're just talking with friends. I, I even shorten her name, right? Notice the level of detail here, right? This is hypnotic, snorkeling in crystal clear tur turquoise water, lounging on white sand beaches beside some of the most awe-inspiring limestone cliffs on earth. Now here's the deal. Most people, most newbies who write coffee and even most pros would just say, we had an amazing time in Thailand. It was dreamy. It was so amazing. You'll never believe how great it was. I just tell them, I tell them exactly what happened. The entire time we were there, my business was working for me around the clock 24 seven. I didn't even do an ounce of work, but my business was working for me every second of the day. Cool, huh? Now, this is so informal. This feels like when you craft an offer, when you write an offer, it needs to feel like you're just talking to a friend or a cousin or an aunt or an uncle. It needs to feel like how you would say it. You don't need great grammar in ad copy or offer creation. In fact, it usually, doesn't, it usually works against you to be perfectly grammatical, grammatically correct and buttoned up on everything. We were so broke when we got married, we couldn't even afford a honeymoon. We just stayed one night in a hotel, then it was back to the normal 9 to 5 grind. How sad is that, right? If I'm brutally honest for me, not being able to give the love of my life or dream honeymoon felt pretty emasculating. Now, When's the last time you read in an ad the word emasculating? How powerful is this? I mean, there's nothing more candid. There's nothing more honest that I could have said about that than that sentence right there. Everything I've got is on the line for these people. But notice how I'm not being a victim or complaining, right? 
I'm just saying, look, back in the day, we were so broke and it was my fault. It was my problem. It was my issue. And I took responsibility for it. Right. And it all feels like a former life now. Now for people who are projecting their story saying, man, that's incredible. Maybe I could be like that. Well, guess what? Now they're starting to feel the butterflies in their stomach a little. Okay. Wow. Maybe I could, maybe where, where I'm at today in life could be a former life for me. Maybe that could be my past instead of my present. Maybe I need to take action. Now we can literally pack up on a moment's notice without ever having to worry about boss giving us time off or having enough PTO saved up to travel. Anyway, more important than any of that stuff. Now, so I go into all of this lifestyle, cute, oh, fluffy, it's amazing, blah, blah, blah. Now, now here's where it gets good. More important than any of that stuff, I feel like a new person. Between buying our home together and finally putting an end to the 60-hour work weeks, I've never been more happy, optimistic, and carefree. It ain't about the job. It ain't about the money. Who gives a crap? That's not what people are after. They're after optimism, carefree, happy, freedom. That's all that really matters, right? Well, to me at least. Not to mention my marriage and friendships are flourishing in a way that I've never experienced in my life before. Relationships. Happiness, carefree, optimism, relationships. Most couples begin to lose the passion and romance as their marriage progresses. But, in eight, but eight years in, Kat and I are at an all-time high. And that's actually true. All of that change, simply a result of finding that one weird video. Crazy, right? Now, notice how powerful it is when I'm speaking to... I'm not speaking about the features of a product. I'm talking about the benefits of it. So I'm not, I'm not even getting into like, what am I selling? I'm talking all emotional here in the actual crafting of this offer, okay? Of them trying to get to my ad, of them actually learning more about it. I'm talking all about the benefits, the emotional benefits, and that's how you rope people in and create loyalty. So at this point in my journey, I'm on a nonstop mission to share that same video with as many people as possible. If you'd like to see it for yourself, here's how. Now, remember the call to action, right? Click or tap the learn more button in this post. Number two, enter your best email address to see me on a short video with instructions of what to do next. Okay, let's go. Click or tap the learn more button next to the photo, and I'll see you in just a few seconds. Now. That's the entire ad. Tens of thousands of people have read this ad. Many of them have responded, joined my email list and said, this is just so unique. This is so, I love your stuff. It's so interesting to me. Okay, so what I want you to do now, now we can get lost in the, well, what are we doing here? All I'm trying to point out and help you with, let's go back up here, is to start the process of building out this story brand, a character. Character has a problem, meets a guide, gives them a plan, calls them to action, ends in success, helps them avoid failure. Okay, that's what this is all about. So what we're gonna do in the assignments is we're gonna begin the process of you building your muscles to start telling stories that captivate, that motivate, that inspire, and that sell for money, right? <laughs> That's kind of what we're getting after here. Okay, so number one, who is the main character of your story? Who is it? Is it you? Is it some other affiliate that you want to talk about? Is it, who is it? Is it the CEO of the company? Who is it? Who's the character? Who are you going to tell the story about? What's the problem that they're facing? Number two, what are the deep-seated fears that keep them up at night? What are they feeling inside that they're too scared to put words to or voice? Number three, Who's the guide or the individual that's going to help show the way to the main character? Okay. Who is it? Who's the, who is the guide, right? And what's the plan? So what's the blueprint? What's the plan, right? What's the secret? Okay. So maybe for, maybe for uh, an air conditioning business who doesn't have a website, the secret is uh, they found a little PDF report about how to create an amazing sales funnel that, that gets leads on the internet 24 seven instead of placing ads in Groupon and, you know, having 40% of their sales taken away by Groupon, right? They get empowered to create their own sales funnel and generate their own leads. Is it a business plan? Is it a video? Is it a webinar? What do they find, right? What, what's the ticket? Was it just a YouTube video? Who knows? How does it help the character get what they want? And be specific. How does it help them get what they want? What's the piece of information? What's the principle they learned? Number five, what is the call to action? Specifically, what does the guide say to do? And what is going to be the outcome if they do it? And, will be the, and what's the outcome if they don't do it? So if they do it, what's the successful outcome? If they don't, what's the failure outcome? Okay, and now number six, I want you to fully unpack that. The successful outcome, the failure outcome. So for example, Here's how to do this. If you're brand new, look, you might not have a successful story like I have it. That's not a problem. What you can do is you can say, I looked five years down the road, okay? And I just, I didn't like what I saw. I didn't have enough safe for retirement. I felt like, you know, I didn't have the skill sets to compete in the information age. And lo and behold, I started a feverish search and, and what I found was this video. And, and so my, my vision for my future went from really quite depressing and sad and worrisome to suddenly it was lifted up. It was elevated. I felt alive. I looked five years down the road and I saw myself with a thriving online business that was running itself 24 seven. And this video explained everything. Want to see it? See what I mean? So you can just paint it down the picture of, I looked 20 years down the road and I even do this a little bit with my story. I looked 20 years down the road and what I saw, what I saw was me grinding 60 hour work weeks. Do you think I wanted that? Hell no. I did not want that. So I needed a change. I needed to figure out a change. And long story short, I went on a feverish search and eventually found the answer. I saw a video that completely changed my life and I want to share it with you. That sounds cheesy, I know, but I want to share that video with you and I'll do anything to get your eyeballs on this video. It is so powerful. Want to see it? Click the link below. Get access right away. Okay, so what we're going to start doing is beginning to craft this story. You don't have to put together a whole ad. You don't even have to write the sales copy for your offer. 
We have a whole week around co copywriting. That's week three. This is beginning to build the muscle. It's like walking into the gym for the first time. Why do you say, hey, this, this, this stuff's hard, man. Well, guess what? When you walk into the gym for the first time, you put 50 pounds on, on the dumbbell, you lay down on your back and try to do bench press. Well, guess what? What happens? The bar just falls on your neck, <laughs> right? It just falls on your neck. Like you don't have the muscles to push it up. So if the assignment is, you know, craft a 1500 word Facebook ad and tell the story and unpack it. Yeah. You're going to feel like you're suffocating and dying, right? So we're going to start with something a little easier. We're going to answer these questions. We're going to start to craft and put together a hypnotic story that really brings people in, that really, really brings people in, helps them project onto your story and helps them ultimately take action. A lot of this ad copy stuff, a lot of times newbies will come at me and say, look, this feels manipulative. This doesn't feel, it feels weird to me. That's because either number one, you don't believe in the product that you're selling or number two, that you're forcing it, that you're lying, that you're not being honest and candid. So unless you're doing those things, yeah, it's going to, it's going to feel that way. So if you feel that way, it's okay. But let's, let's ask yourself, how am I not being honest with myself or with the offer here? And until you feel that, until you feel in that place, chances are you're not going to make very many sales online. It's just not going to happen. It doesn't work that way. Okay. All right. That is a wrap for day six. We're almost at 70 pages worth of PDF content with notes, everything. So I hope my, my sincere hope is that you're, you feel as if you're getting the value uh, and, and it's only going to get better and better and better as we go. Okay. We're going to get into funnels next week. It's going to be amazing. Tomorrow, what we're going to do is we're going to connect all the dots. Okay. And Dave's going to be back for the beginning of the perfect funnel on day eight. Okay. So let's rock and roll. Answer the questions. Mark this as done and mark the unit as done and leave a little bit of note. Uh, uh, when you do that, what was the main thing you learned? What was the big takeaway today? Okay. Rock and roll, everybody. Take it easy. Let's do this thing. Hey, I am, I am, I just want to say this to everybody who made it this far in this video and in, and in the boot camp so far. We are extremely proud of the amount of effort and energy and kick-assness that you guys are taking. It's, it's, it's astonishing, honestly. So well done. I know that this is a fire hose of so much stuff, but really, truly well done. Keep taking action. Keep taking imperfect action, and you are building the muscles right now. You can't see it. It's a little harder, right? It's almost like, it's, it's almost like you walked into the gym, and you were 30 pounds overweight, and you've already lost 10 pounds, right? But in a gym, you can see that. You can measure yourself. Well, here, it's a little bit more tricky, but I'm just telling you, keep going. Don't die off. Keep going. Keep pushing forward because I'm telling you at the end of this 30 days, you're going to be a marketing machine. Okay. So you have to implement though. It's not about just sitting here watching the videos and contemplating. You have to take action. You got to force yourself into a brain space that you haven't been in before. That's the only way to grow. All right. We'll see you back tomorrow for day seven. Peace. Hey, my friend, this is Dave Sharp here. Welcome back to the Builder All Bootcamp. In this video, we are going to start off the week talking about sales funnels. We're going to teach you about sales funnels. We're going to teach you about the dynamics of sales funnels, which is how they work, how to leverage them, how to understand, how to use them to their full potential. And then we're going to move from the dynamics over to the mechanics. And Matt is going to take you into the pointing and the clicking and showing you how to actually go from concept into application. So the first thing we need to do before we even go any further is really fully understand what a sales funnel can do for you and why you want to use one. Listen up. All right, so let's jump into the first important lesson you're going to want to understand before we move on. And that's the difference between a website and a sales funnel. Since the beginning of the internet, when you talk about your business, people always ask you, do you have a website? And it's really awesome to have a website so you can take orders if somebody is ready to buy. The problem is most people don't come to your website ready to buy. They need to be sold on why your product is the best solution for their problem and why they need to take action to buy it right now. So let me illustrate this point with a story. John, he has an awesome secret family recipe barbecue sauce that he wants to sell. Now, normally John would pay thousands of dollars to have a website built. And usually after someone like John has his beautiful website built, he ends up sitting around and wondering why his website that he paid thousands of dollars for isn't converting any sales. And the answer is because websites aren't really designed for making sales, but sales funnels are. So John runs into some smart marketers online who teach him about sales funnels and he sets one up. The first page of his sales funnel is a lead capture page where John offers the visitor a free gift in exchange for their email address. We call this free gift a lead magnet, something like a, a short two page PDF called the five secret barbecue recipes that'll make your taste buds explode. Now, John can follow up via email even if the person doesn't buy anything from him right away. And this is smart since email will top 3 billion users worldwide by 2020 and studies report for every dollar spent on email marketing, a whopping $44 is made in return. Now, once they've opted in for John's free gift, John emails them the free gift and he also takes them to a sales page. This is where he's going to pitch them on all the ways that they can transform their basic meat into a Southern treat with a secret family recipe barbecue sauce. In his sales video, he shows people how to prepare the meat, cook it, and even what the finished product looks like. Another tip to make any sales page convert more sales is that there should be no other distractions on the page for the visitor to click around and get lost or confused by because a confused or distracted person will never buy. Well, good news because John offers so much value upfront with such a clear and compelling pitch to buy his barbecue sauce. His sales funnel is converting a good percentage of people who come through it. Now, most people would stop right there to celebrate, but smart marketers know better. With advertising prices going up every year and competition getting stiffer, marketing legends like Dan Kennedy have prepared us to win in this exact situation by teaching us that whoever can pay the most to acquire a customer wins. So let's say that John makes $10 profit on every bottle after he covers his hard cost to make each bottle of barbecue sauce, but he has to pay on average $20 in advertising to generate each sale. Oh no, he's upside down $10 on every bottle. 
John and thousands of other businesses like his would be out of business in no time with these margins. But that's where having a sales funnel gets exciting because after the initial purchase, we ask ourselves, what would be the next obvious thing to offer a customer who just bought our product? Like what would they need or want that would make their purchase more complete or convenient or add more value? In the case of John's secret family recipe barbecue sauce business, the next obvious offer to make and upsell with would be a discount for buying multiple bottles, like buy six bottles and get one free. Let's say that 30% of people take that multi-bottle upsell. Now for every 10 customers that came through, three of them bought the upsell and John was able to collect around an extra $150 in profit with no extra work. So let's recap. To get 10 customers, it cost him $200 in advertising. He made $100 on the initial 10 customers purchases. At this point, he's still $100 in the negative. But three of his new customers took his upsell to buy five additional bottles and get one free. So John made an additional $150 in profit, which took him from a $100 loss on those 10 customers to now profiting $50. A sales funnel. It allows us to have the best possible chance to make money on a new customer or at the very least break even on their initial purchase after we cover the cost of our ads. So we've essentially generated a customer for free. And now anything else that customer purchases from us in the future is all profit. The mistake most people make is they try to make all their money on that first initial sale, when really the key is to have that initial sale just break even on your advertising cost. That way you know for a fact that you're able to generate more and more customers for free, and then on the back end, you can focus on maximizing your profits. So after a month, John, he emails all his new customers and he says, hey, I hope you loved my barbecue sauce. And if you did, and if you want to get set up on a subscription for me to send you a new bottle every single month, you can sign up and do that right now. And a percentage of those people will want to do that. And every dollar that he makes at that point is all profit. All made possible because John utilized a sales funnel to make it all happen. Now you might be thinking at this point, wow, this is cutting edge stuff. But the truth is sales funnels have been used all over the world by almost every successful company that you know. McDonald's, for example, they spend millions of dollars in advertising to get you in the door to spend a buck on a hamburger. Then once you're at the register, they ask, would you like fries and a Coke with that? And before you know it, you planned on spending a dollar on a hamburger and it turned into 10 and you're leaving with a full blown bellyache. Dentists, they do the same thing. They might advertise a free teeth clean. And then once you come in, they sell you braces and crowns and teeth whitening services, and you leave with another checkup scheduled for six months from now. I think one of the best sales funnels of all time is Disney World. You buy a ticket for a reasonably affordable price, and not only does every single sip of water or bite of food cost you a premium, but after every ride, you get shot out into a gift shop where you and your kids are all bombarded with an onslaught of toys and action figures and clothing items, along with a special deal to buy those photos that they secretly took of your shocked face on the ride that you just got off. You may not be used to noticing sales funnels all around you all the time, but they're there and being cleverly used by the most successful companies in the world. Only now you're going to learn to profit from them instead of just being sold by them. Awesome. So the next thing that I want to teach you about before we move on and delve and dive deep into sales funnels is I want to talk to you about how to maximize your sales funnel. And this is something that we're also going to talk about here later on this week, but that's the idea and the power of a value ladder. Now, a value ladder has been around for a very long time. It's been around for, for decades and decades and decades. As a matter of fact, it's been around since the beginning of any sort of commerce happening anywhere. And one of the easiest examples to really wrap your head around this is when you go into a restaurant, you never start out with a T-bone steak. You always have a drink or a, an appetizer. And then if that's good, you progress up and order more food or more drinks. The same thing happened at Apple. And I'm gonna talk about that more here in a second to where you started off with your iPhone and, and maybe you liked it, maybe you didn't, then you got it, or at least you were nervous before you got it. Then you got it and you're like, hey, I love this. And then you went and bought an iPad and then you're kind of like me to where you look around and it's like, how did I get all these products, right? For those of you who are still on PC, you'll be there one day. Um, but anyways, so I wanna to talk to you about a value ladder because in order to really maximize the effectiveness of your sales funnel, you have to be leveraging multiple products at multiple price points so you can increase the overall lifetime value of each one of your customers. Listen up. So let's jump into the next important lesson you wanna understand before we move on, and that is the power of a value ladder. A value ladder is a complicated and powerful sales and marketing strategy, but I'm gonna make it really simple for you to understand. Remember when I said earlier that the goal of a sales funnel is to break even on the front end and you make all your profit on the back end. Well, this is where your value ladder comes in. Think of your value ladder simply as your product line. The more value that one of your products provides, the higher the price is. Now let's take Apple for example. They've always sold computers, but Apple really exploded in 2007 when Steve Jobs announced the release of the very first iPhone. Now, everyone had a little bit of a lower price product they could enter Apple's value ladder of products at. Because once they owned an iPhone, they realized they might want to switch over from their other computer and get an Apple computer. Nowadays, Apple's value ladder is much more complex. It's probably the most brilliant value ladder ever created. Most people will start off with an iPhone and then slowly migrate up the value ladder to buying an iPad. Then they make the switch to getting all Mac laptops and iMac desktop computers. Before they know it, they're fully integrated into their entire ecosystem with Apple TV, Apple Music, and Apple Pay. By creating a lower price product at the bottom of their value ladder, Apple created a doorway for customers to buy all their other high ticket and subscription services. When you combine the power of a good sales funnel with a value ladder of products that offer more and more value at higher ticket price points, you get something magical that's truly the secret sauce for even the average person to succeed selling products and services online. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna take you onto my computer screen and I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw and show you some graphics. I'm gonna show you how this, this sales funnel and this value ladder would work in terms of, of, of seeing it on paper, seeing it actually work. Because the truth of the matter is, is 
that it's very difficult to visualize something when it's a website, when it's a, an actual sales funnel. But if I put it down on paper and I show you how the various pages actually interact with each other and how they all work together to build you a thriving, profitable business, then it's going to make much more sense to you. So let's jump onto my computer screen right now and I'll break it all down for you. All right, so here we go. We are looking at a diagram of a online sales funnel. And I'm going to explain all of these pieces to this funnel here in a second. Um, understand that there's going to be some things that I explain here that we're going to get deeper into in future lessons. Okay, so just roll with me. I'm literally throwing you right into the frying pan so you can get as much value and information right from day one. First and foremost, again, what we're looking at is we're looking at an online sales funnel. Particularly what we're looking at is we're looking at an affiliate online sales funnel. Okay, one of the different business models that you can run is actually affiliate marketing. Now I'm going to teach you specifically how to do affiliate marketing the right way because I will tell you straight up right now, the majority of people who do affiliate marketing do it the wrong way. We'll get more into that later. But the thing that you see here over on the left hand side is this is traffic source. So the traffic um, is, is really the, the first part of any of any system of any sales funnel that happens online. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to drive traffic to a sales funnel. That traffic can come from email. It can come from Facebook, maybe Facebook lives or organic posts, or it can come from Facebook ads, Instagram the same way. No matter where your traffic's coming from, we're always going to be driving traffic into what's called an opt-in page. Okay. What is the purpose of an opt-in page? Very simply, the purpose is to collect an email address. Not only so we can immediately follow up with somebody, but so we can build something that's called your digital database, okay? And by having a digital database, the beautiful thing that you get to do is you get to send emails to people ongoing until they either unsubscribe or become raving fans. Now, the reason why it's so important at the very beginning to collect somebody's email address in exchange for them continuing through and learning or finding out more about what you have to offer um, is because we know from being in marketing sales for as long as we have, and trust me, I didn't invent the statistic, that the majority of people buy after five to 12 exposures to your product or service. So if you're not collecting the email address and you're not following up with people at a later date, then most likely you're losing out on the majority of the sales that you could potentially be getting. Now, the next thing that's happening here is we're bringing them to what we call a bridge page to where we're introducing ourselves a little bit. And then, and I'll talk more about that in coming lessons and why this is so important. But then they're moving on to the sales page, okay? They're gonna buy something. Typically, they're gonna buy something that's say low uh, low price. Let's just call it, just for an example, $7. Then they're gonna immediately go to an upsell page, which let's just say that this is something for $97. And then they're gonna come to a thank you page. Now, I wanna stop right there because most people who attempt to do online marketing, whether it be affiliate marketing or any of the other business models out there, there's so many different ones. Um, there's e-commerce, there's... Um, there's creating your own product. Um, they're selling your, your services online. Um, so many different people have attempted to sell things online, and this is the exact strategy that they take. They say, hey, look, I'm, I'm even going to be fancy, and I'm going to do it right. I'm going to launch a sales funnel, and I'm going to sell my little product right here for 7 10 12 bucks. I'm going to even implement an upsell. Great, look at me. I'm, I'm, I'm hot stuff. And then they stop there. They bring somebody to a thank you page, and they just go out and try to sell more of their low-ticket products. But here's the problem with that, okay? If you look up here, this says the number one purpose for this section right here from here to here is one thing and one thing only. And that's simply to pay for your advertising. I want to let that sink in for a second. Because so many of you guys, if you've attempted different online marketing ventures before selling lower ticket products, and you haven't been able to actually scale your business or even get ahead, the reason why is because you're approaching this completely wrong. Even with the, with the wrong mentality, you simply have the wrong blueprint. The only purpose for these low ticket products right here is to simply pay for your advertising or to break even. As a matter of fact, some companies on the front end between this point and this point actually take a loss. And maybe you've heard of the phrase sometime in the past, loss leader. Well, the reason why a lower ticket front end product is called a loss leader is because you actually sometimes take a loss. Now, here's where this gets really sexy and exciting is that it's absolutely necessary and it's smart to have a sales funnel that sells your lower ticket front end products. Not only does it provide value, but lower ticket products on the front end. And I can tell you this from testing thousands and thousands of different offers of my own and, and, and of my clients that lower price products to a cold audience absolutely converts better. Why? It's common sense because somebody's going to be that much more apt to spend a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars with you than they are going to be to spend two thousand, three thousand, five thousand. I think that that's pretty common sense. We can all agree to that. So it's absolutely necessary and it's intelligent to have lower ticket products on the front end. But again, their purpose is only to pay for your advertising. So where does your profit come from? Well, as you can see on the diagram, the number one purpose of your back end products is to create profit. And here's some examples of those back end products. You've got your subscription products, you've got high ticket products, and then you've got other offers that you could make in the sequence as you bring them through your sales process. You could also be sending emails, making other offers down the road. So these back end products, these subscription products, these high ticket products, these other offers that you're making to people down the road, that's where your profit comes from, not from your low ticket products on the front end. And if you understand this, you're going to save yourself so much time and so much money. All right, last but not least, what I want to do is I want to take you into a recent event that I did to where I actually broke down yet another funnel. Now, this was a real world example of a funnel that I ran in the network marketing space. This was selling an information training product, a course, a digital product. I was selling to network marketers, training them how to actually market their business online. And at this event, I broke down the actual numbers to where I used utilized a sales funnel with an effective value ladder. And you're going to be able to see with crystal clarity the difference between actually just running my front end sales funnel that sold my various lower ticket products 
And what would have happened if I wouldn't have had a higher priced product on the back end, which was my, my iMac computer or my MacBook, right? If I would have just been selling iPhones, this will all make sense when you see this clip. So welcome into one of my recent events that I did. I hope to meet you one day at one of my events somewhere soon. But listen in very closely. Let me show you and demonstrate the power of having a sales funnel with an effective value ladder. Facebook, whether it's email traffic, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Google, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Bing, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's uh, uh, solo ads. You're driving your traffic into what's called a capture page, okay? From the capture page, you're going into a sales page. Simultaneously, you're adding that email address to your, to your, your, your digital database or your autoresponder, okay? For those of you who don't understand the, the need for building a list, that is the value of every company these days. Why is Facebook so valuable? It's because of their data. It's because they can take that data and create these little artificial intelligence, which is what they are, algorithms, are artificial intelligence to where it's able to somehow know that my wife has a brand new baby and that she wants to look at baby shit. You know what I mean. <laughs> Somehow they know that I'm involved in this whole online thing. And so I see ads every day, all day about internet marketing and like all that kind of stuff. Anybody else in that same boat? Are you just like, holy crap. You know, we see our friends and buddies on the internet all day, you know, trying to sell a shit, you know, not baby shit though. Over time, um, we email those people back to our offers. We also, a portion of those people who go into our, to our, to our funnels um, will buy immediately. Okay. On the back end is where the real money is. And again, why I have here break even is because the only real purpose of that front end funnel that's selling those, 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 there's many different names for it. Tripwire, um, front end offer, low end, for, you know, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the, you know, here's the appetizer. You never walk into a restaurant and they say, ready for your T-bone steak and dessert? No, because everybody's going to order a drink. So start off with a drink, right? It's kind of like, you know, going on a date. You know, you guys have all heard that one. Fellas, we've made the mistake before of trying to, you know, hit a home run in the first two minutes, right? And she looks at us like we're a pig, really. It's because we were being pigs in that moment, right? But then, we, then she slaps us and we snap out of it and we go back into realizing that everybody has to go to first base and second base and third base and then home, okay? And so on the back end, after we, after we put our, our customers and our traffic through this specific front end process, then we can offer them our premium price products. And that's where you can do that through webinars or you can do that through a conversation. Now, typically, if you want to sell something for more than $2,000, sometimes even more than $1,000, it, it requires a human conversation, okay? It does. Because it's a, it is a, it is a, 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 you know, it's not a $20 financial decision, Okay? It's a, it's a five or a ten thousand dollar financial decision. So having that conversation with somebody is 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 ninety nine percent of the time necessary, right? And oftentimes, what we get a lot is you know is this real? You know, it, it, because if somebody finds something on the internet, because there's so much of this social programming that things are a scam or it's not real, and that's again somebody being burned. We all got burned, and that's just how they're choosing to show up. Okay, skeptical. So hey, you know, is this real? But then it's also there requires follow up. There requires relationship building, rapport building. You heard chat up here yesterday. Sometimes it's it's five calls. Sometimes it's ten calls. Sometimes it's eleven calls. Okay. Now, the reason why the majority of people avoid the phone is because those calls can be somewhat painful. But if you're good at it, then, and it's what you do every day, then it's not as painful, right? And if, there's, and if you're making money, then obviously it makes it worth it. It's when you're pounding the phones and you're not making any money and you don't really know how to do it is when it sucks, okay? Would you guys agree with that? Okay. Yes or yes on that, okay? So let's look at what we call the value ladder, okay? And, and, and the value ladder is, is, it's real simple, okay? It's real simple. It starts off with maybe something for free and that's on your landing page. You give away something for free. It's the same in every business. Maybe a free consultation, maybe a free cupcake, maybe a free th whatever. It's some sort of a, right? A cupcake like at a, like what? Oh, I don't know. Anyways, we're moving on. Um, whatever you're giving them as a, here, take me on a test drive. Let us show you that we're willing to give you some value before we ask you for some money. When you go fishing, do you just put a hook down in the? No, you put bait on there, right? So as a salesperson, as a marketer, that is your bait. It's the free thing. And you can give that away on your landing page. You can even give it away on, on, you know, throughout other parts of your funnel. But typically, our, our quote unquote bait. And I know it's like, oh, bait, like, oh, bait. no. But they, I mean, let's just let's just cut through the bullshit. It's it's like it's something to get somebody to to just nibble, right? Typically, what that comes in is the form of, of like education or knowledge or how-to stuff, right? So on a landing page, maybe maybe somebody's giving away a free video that's going to show you how to make money online, or a you know a free PDF download that's going to show you something about you know Facebook traffic or setting up your autoresponder or whatever it is, okay? And then you're going to you know ascend those people up. The longer, sometimes immediately. But oftentimes, the longer they become a customer, they buy more stuff, okay, if they're getting value, okay? And it's sort of the same thing. The problem why most businesses don't, you know, they leave a lot of money on the table is because they don't make other offers to their customers. Maybe it's a money block thing. I don't know. Hey, they feel fine charging somebody 20 or 30 bucks, but once we get over 1,000, I feel like I'm, you know, I wouldn't pay. So maybe there's a money block thing there. Maybe it's just a lack of marketing knowledge. It could be that too, right? Not knowing, hey, man, I could double or triple the size of my business by making a premium priced offer on the back end, okay? So let me give you a, a, an actual in, like, like behind the scenes look of one of our funnels, okay? Now, this is a funnel that we ran in 2016. At the end of 2016, I'm gonna give you some numbers for some current stuff that we're doing as well here in a second. But this was one of the, 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 uh, the funnels, the offers that we ran in 2016, okay? Uh, it was, it was uh, uh, this particular, these particular numbers. Um, anybody ever seen my simple sign up system funnel? Okay, so we sold a, um, uh, many of you actually are in this event because you came through that funnel. I think you are, Merle, is that right? And you are as well. Tell me your name again, sir. Yeah, right here. Greg, and then Merle, and then Tom, you did too? Okay, so that, and then Corey, you came through that as well. Now, this is very interesting. You came through that as well, Mark. Okay, so this is, this is kind of interesting, right? These guys, you know, a few of them, you know, came through. 
they bought something for a couple of dollars, right? The, 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 the front end offer, I think, was um, uh, we, $3.95, I think, was the, was the front end offer. We gave away some, some videos. Great content, huh? Powerful content, especially for a guy who is not an internet marketer like you, Corey, right? You, I know, I know, I'm talking to you because I know uh, a bit about your story. But being mostly an offline traditional business guy, came from the network marketing space. Not a whole lot, of, not a whole lot of internet marketing knowledge. None. Okay, it comes through uh, that simple sign-up system. I was targeting network marketers. Okay, because I, I know that industry, and so I was teaching them how to make money online or how to build their business online. Corey comes through. I want you guys to listen to this very, very carefully because this is how this works. Okay, Corey comes through, spends three dollars and ninety-five cents. You know, uh, did you did you take any of the other upsells? Okay, he took two of the upsells, and then he comes through. Uh, did you did you uh, attend the master of enrollment workshop or no? Okay, so we didn't take the, the, the $1,000 Master of Enrollment workshop upsell, okay? Then all of a sudden, we start Duplicate Dave at the beginning of 2017. He comes in, he enrolls in Duplicate Dave for 5000 right? Because we've got a 50% pre-launch special right now. Comes in, no internet marketing knowledge whatsoever. Comes in, and you're at what now? 32, so 32000 in actual take-home money. Yeah. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. 30, so, and because of that 32000 he's done a significant amount of sales, too. So we, you know, it's just, it, 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 this, this business continues to blow my mind. Right? It continues to blow my mind. Just a few months ago, I had no idea who he was. He saw a freaking ad on most likely Facebook, clicks it, opts in, okay, opts in for the free thing, buys the $3, $4 thing, takes a couple of the upsells, doesn't take the, the $1,000 master enrollment upsell, goes and enrolls and takes the duplicate day, 5000 Within 30, 45 days, he then, because there's an affiliate program, earn while you learn, makes 35000 not 35 or 32. Okay, makes, let's, just go, let's just go conservative. Let's not, $32,000. How many people are here because of Corey? Give him a round of applause, guys. So it really is a, you know, it's, it's, you know, we're empowering people to go into, you know, but now you're actually making videos every single day. You started a, a little brand, right? Social entrepreneur. So I see your videos, you're, you're uploading videos. And, and so hopefully today, you know, this YouTube training will help you, you know what I'm saying? Maybe take that to the next level. Okay. So that particular funnel that he came through, let's go through some of the statistics. Okay. Cause I want to break it down for you to, to get you to understand exactly how this all works. So in the first week of, of December, we had uh, 367 opt-ins and you see over in the, in the far left side, it looks like a little bit of the, the, the lettering's cut off, but I'll, I can tell you what they'll say. Number of opt-ins, 367, 404, um, uh, 324, 435, with a total of 1,530 opt-ins throughout that month into that particular funnel. Okay. So uh, uh, 1,530 opt-ins. Now, a lot of this other information is, is just information that we track in-house, like number of applications. So people who filled out applications, coaching applications that came through there. Um, the, 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 the important numbers I have an arrow on. The total revenue for, for that funnel that month was $40,511.15, okay? Now, the, when, I, when I tell you um, that that initial front-end funnel, so that's the lower price products, and in that particular funnel, we were selling simple sign-up system for $3.95. We were selling um, 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 network marketing launch formula for, uh, we had a traction code as an order bump, for, uh, $19.95. Then we had a uh, network marketing launch formula for 47 The upsell rate on that network marketing formula at 47 was always like about 40%, so that's why we know that really that $47 upsell number really works real well. Um, and then we sold story selling formula for 197 on the back end as that, and that as well. So those were the break-even components of that funnel. Those were the, the products that you saw when you immediately first came through the funnel. You would buy the simple sign-up system, and then you would see one upsell, two upsell, three upsell. And that's why I asked if anybody, anybody did not know what a one-click upsell was yesterday, and I explained that to you guys. You remember that? Where you buy something, what's, when's the best time to sell somebody something? When they just bought something else. Now, let me relate that to something else. Do you know when you go through a grocery store and you come up and they got all that shit there? And it really is shit. I mean, it's the five-hour energies. It's the candy bars. It's all that kind of stuff. They know because you're in buying mode. The, the Inquirer magazines and all that stuff, they know that you're in buying mode. You're about, and that's the best. And obviously, if something's there, if an ad is still running, you know it's successful. And it, it, have you guys, some of you older folks in the room, has that always been the case with cash registers? They've always been there. So that is an, that is a, an obvious, effective upsell, folks. Okay? So that's why those front-end upsells. So in this one, like $40,000. If you look right below that, you'll see the number $11,916.30. That's how much we spend on advertising, okay? But if you go back up a couple of lines and you look at that $13,037.15 number, that's how much came from the online funnel. The rest of that money that made up that $40,000 came from our back-end telesales. And that was the majority of the money. So the front-end, what the front-end did was the front-end just paid for our advertising costs. Is this making sense to everybody? The, the front-end products were our break-even products. Now, the reason why most people fail at internet marketing is because they don't understand this concept right here. And that's why they can't make their paid advertising work. Is this valuable? Okay. That's why they can't make their paid advertising work is because they're just running a funnel or they get involved in affiliate opportunities. Or for example, why are most people never able to really scale or advertise network marketing companies? Although we're now in this age to where social media is, it's, it's, it's an obvious no brainer, right? But unfortunately, there's a lot of companies in direct sales who don't really understand the power of the internet. So they don't really know what to do with people who are marketing online, right? But the reason oftentimes why you can't scale businesses that don't have a bigger back end is because if I was only driving traffic into these front end sales, I wouldn't have made any money. I would have. Typically, most marketers lose money. Even if I would have lost money on that 13000 that we made back, say I only made back 5000 and so I lost about $6,000 in that advertising. I still would have made it back because I have a back end. Does that make sense? So the problem why most people can't make money with, advertise, with paid advertising is because even if they lose a little bit of money on the front end, they think, oh my God, my advertising is not working. I'm losing money. But you don't have a premium price back end that's kicking in. Does that make sense? 
Equipping. Did you have a breakthrough, brother? All right, my man. So here's where the, here's where the, you know, I like, I like seeing this. Like, it's like, it's like, if what would be cool as hell for me is if there was little light bulbs on top of everybody's heads. And as they had a breakthrough, it was like their light bulb went off. It's like, oh, okay, I see you, bro. I see you. Oh, okay, I see. Give a round of applause. Here, light bulb just went off. So what's really interesting, if you want to break this down to the, 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 the granular level, which is my final arrow down there, we made $26.48 profit for every person that opted in after advertising. Let's really just make sure that we all understand what I'm talking about here. That means that there's a capture page there, okay? And every single time somebody puts their email into the capture page, it's, 26, it's, it's like depositing $26.48 into my pocket. Yeah. Right? Now, I want you to imagine if you had a, 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 you know, a system that was set up that did that for you. Now, that's after advertising costs. There is, this is the most transparent I can be with you showing our internal numbers. These are the reports that Jeff sends me, okay? And it's right here. Every single time somebody enters their email, not bot, just enters their email, it's like $26.48 profit. Okay, my friend, welcome back, welcome back. This was, this was a lengthy video. This was a, there was a lot of meat and potatoes inside of this training module. And what I want you to do is I want you to really go and get used to just grabbing a piece of paper and mapping out your sales funnel and your value ladder, okay? Um, I do this all the time. When I, whenever I'm coming up with an idea, I need to be able to look at what are the products that I'm gonna be selling, which I'm gonna list out on my value ladder, and then how am I gonna sell those products? Am I gonna, um, what, what are, the, what are the, the products that I'm gonna sell on the front end? What is my upsell gonna be? What is my second upsell gonna be? And then um, am I going to have any offerings that I'm going to make over the phone? Or is there any subscription services that are going to continue to rebuild that are going to actually create real profit for me? Because remember, as I trained you in this, in this uh, video, that initial sales funnel is really only there to help you to break even um, or, or just, you know, pay. if you can pay for your advertising dollars and break even, you're doing really well. If you can profit on your front end funnel, then that's fantastic. But I want you to, to play around and begin to think about, okay, I have this offer. Uh, how, am I going to, how am I going to actually bring people into my world and then begin to develop a relationship with them by first giving them something to test, uh, an appetite? if you will, before I begin to introduce my other offers. Now, some of you guys may be wanting to do some sort of coaching or consulting offer, or maybe you have a service-based business. Heck, maybe some of you guys have some sort of a brick and mortar business to where you really need to first develop the front of your sales funnel needs to just be some sort of a free giveaway that gets people into the door, maybe onto a webinar to where you sell them a high priced offer, or maybe into your store to where you have uh, some sort of conversation or some sort of demonstration of your product, right? The bottom line is, is it does not matter if you have multiple products at multiple price points, meaning you have low ticket products that then lead up to a higher price product, or if you just have one higher price product, you're still going to need some sort of an offer on the front and to get people into the door. Does this make sense? Onto your webinar, onto your phone call, into your store. And you need to be able to draw out and map that out uh, on a sheet of paper, on a diagram. So we're gonna provide you with some resources. I want, you to, I want you to begin to scribble and scratch and develop what your value ladder and sales funnel actually look like, okay? So you can then now begin to, in these uh, following days, begin to actually build the marketing assets, okay? So you're gonna build the actual funnel. So if you have just one product that you're selling for $997, you're gonna have a really awesome opt-in page with a great free gift on that opt-in page that's gonna get people to come onto your webinar. If you have a brick and mortar business, then you're gonna have a really awesome free gift on on that landing page that's then going to get them to opt in. So you've got their email and then you're going to give them directions or instructions to come into your store and you're going to have another free gift for them when they come to your store. You're starting to get the picture, right? You want to give them lots of, of, of lots of bait, right? Lots of free gifts to get them to continue to come to you, right? Um, a lot of people only do free giveaways on an opt-in page. Well, if I'm getting people on the phone, I'm going to do, if that's ultimately my goal on the back end of my funnel, I'm going to be giving people free giveaways on my opt-in page. I'm going to be giving people free giveaways to come onto the phone, right? Every, the more value you give people, the more that they're going to continue to come and, and pursue you, okay? So what I want you to do again is I want you to actually map out and write down what are you selling, okay? What are you selling? That should be able to be listed out on your value, value ladder. And then on what particular places inside my sales funnel am I selling those products at? In the very beginning, again, I'm gonna have a free gift. And then I'm gonna have some sort of an offer, maybe a low ticket offer, $7, $19. Maybe you're an affiliate. So if you're an affiliate, what I want you to do is I want you to map out your opt-in page, your bridge page, and then I want you to map out the actual sales funnel of the company that you're promoting. Does this make sense? You need to understand the, and this is something that you need to understand in order to be a good affiliate marketer, you need to be able to identify, okay, what, what is the company that I'm promoting? What does their product value ladder look like? What does their sales funnel look like? That way I can determine whether this is going to be a good product for me to promote if they actually have high enough priced products in their value ladder for me to make significant commissions. They have to have some sort of reoccurring or subscription. They have to have some sort of higher ticket product, you know, at least a few hundred dollars so I can make $100, $150 commissions, $200 commissions. Um, and you know, they have to have a good sales funnel leading up to that to be able to get people to convert into it. So again, whether you're promoting your own products or whether you're an affiliate for another company, you need to understand how to identify and draw out a value ladder and a sales funnel down on paper because that is your blueprint. That's your marketing plan. And then you take that plan and you go and you build those assets. So see the instructions and the downloadable PDF that we gave you with this video. And we look forward to seeing you on the next day kind of this bootcamp because we're going to actually begin putting the pieces into place. Let's build. Greetings, my friends, and welcome to day nine of the bootcamp. Day nine, can you believe it? And today we're going to talk about choosing a winning funnel. Okay, so what we want to do today is we want to match your offer with, you know, whatever it is that you're offering with a certain type of funnel so that you actually know well, what's the right type of funnel for me to generate traffic to. Okay, so in day eight, 
we unpacked the variables required to have a successful funnel. Remember, uh, Dave kind of opened up the whole chart, uh, the whole spreadsheet, went through all of the different figures, the upsells, the phone sales, all of that stuff. He actually <laughs> went through everything, uh, which was really cool. And now it's time to it's time to actually lay it out and decide what type of funnel do you want to actually create, right? So before we dive head first into actually looking of, you know, where do I point and click and what do the funnels look like? Okay, we're not there yet. We're not getting into all the techie stuff. First, it's important that you have a solid framework of what the different types of funnels are, how they work, and when and where you might use them. This list is not the most comprehensive list of all time, okay? So you can get more comprehensive and complicated than this list, okay? Do you need to? No, you don't. So the truth is when you get in the private circle of six, seven, eight, nine figure business owners, what you're gonna find is that most of them don't even really know a whole lot about the super advanced, weird, quirky funnels. They just don't know about them. They don't really use them, okay? Most of them just focus on mastering one or two simple sales funnels and they work tirelessly to make them convert better rather than trying to master all the different types of funnels and seeing how complicated they can make it and on and on and on and on, okay? So as you begin building funnels, what's more important than all the techie elements is actually the messaging and congruency. I want you to write that word down right now because it's gonna be one word that throughout this week, you're gonna hear me harp on over and over and over again. It's congruency. I want you to write this term down right here, congruency, okay? All right, we'll get to that in, a few, in, in the future days for week two, but for right now, let's dive into the various types of funnels and let's try to understand them. I'm gonna give you five types of funnels. They're the most common, they're the easiest to use and understand. Again, there's way more funnels than this, but I'm telling you right now, you probably only need one or two funnels to really start to generate a profit through whatever offer you have. And the goal is to kind of unpack a few examples of what you can, what you can do and how it would work, okay? So number one is the video sales letter funnel, VSL. So if you've ever heard of VSL, that's what it means. It's one of the most common types of sales funnels, okay? There are four main components to this funnel. Opt-in page, video sales letter page, the VSL, checkout page, and order confirmation page, okay? So as we go down in the video sales letter funnel, you start by collecting a name and email on the opt-in form. So the first step of this funnel is you collect a lead. That's called a lead. So you collect their name and email. And if, it, if it's applicable, right, let's say you're in the AC business, uh, the HVAC business, or you're a plumber, or you're a chiropractor, you can also collect phone number, relevant information about the client, et cetera. Um, in general though, a name and email is most common and it's the easiest and cheapest to get. The more elements you add to an opt-in page, the more expensive your leads will get because you're requiring more of them, right? So less people are going to have the energy and the time to actually fill out a longer form. So the more you request of them, the more it's going to cost. However, they're usually more qualified leads. Okay. So it's a trade-off. Okay. So after the lead is opted in, then they're going to be sent to a sales page. On that sales page, there's usually a headline, then a subheadline, and then a video. Beneath the video, there's usually going to be a call to action. So something, a button, right? You've seen this before. You've probably purchased from a page just like this before. In fact, if you purchase this bootcamp, there's a very good chance <laughs> that you purchase from a page just like that. Okay? There's a video. There's a button beneath the video. Click to purchase. That's how this works. And beneath that button, there's usually some text that explains the offer. That's optional. So if you want text to go along with the video, that will increase conversions because some people just want to read. On the sales page, you're going to find an offer for your. You're going to make an offer for your product or service. For, for instance, maybe you're selling a course that teaches someone how to run Facebook ads profitably. We'll that the Facebook profits formula. So on the sales page, you'd say something like this for a limited time. You can get access to my FPF for just $37. Click the button below to get immediate access today. So when the lead clicks on that button, then they're sent to a checkout page. This is where they're going to type in their name, billing address, payment information, all that good stuff. And you collect the sale. Okay. After that, they're sent to an order confirmation page where they can actually watch the training. So that might be a membership back office or a simple web page with the videos. Sometimes after the sales page, by the way, there's an additional page, which is called an upsell page. And Dave talked about that yesterday. Upsells are useful in, in raising your average cart value. So your ACV. So if you want to write that term down, average cart value, it'll improve the efficiency of your funnel, okay? So they're not required. You don't have to have an upsell, but if you can have a subtle upsell, the goal is to break even, right? The goal is to break even if you're paying for your traffic. So VSL funnels are most commonly used if you're doing digital products, reports, or other electronically delivered items, educational programs, things like that, okay? Now, just so you have a visual of that as well, here's kind of what that looks like. You have an opt-in squeeze page here, okay? It's gonna have a name and an email. You're gonna have a VSL page here, okay? And I'm not gonna go through all these right now because we'll, we'll go and set them up and actually create them a little bit later in this training, okay? Once we go through the foundations of funnels and I want you to get some core foundations built first and wrap your mind around that before we just start diving in and looking at all the elements and getting overwhelmed and panicking and everybody quits, okay? <laughs> so I've been through this a few times. We're gonna take this nice and slow, but we will get to the techie stuff very soon. You're, you're gonna have a video sales letter page. Again, there's a video. You can kind of see the elements on here. The video, there's a couple bu uh, bullet points, maybe an image and then a check and then a button that appears. They'll go to a checkout page. Then they'll go to an OTA page, OTO page, which is optional. And then to the thank you page where they actually get access to the product. Okay. All right. Number two is the bridge page slash affiliate funnel. So if you're an affiliate marketer, this is going to be the one for you. A bridge page and affiliate funnel is very similar to that of a VSL, except it's geared towards affiliate marketing. Okay. So if you're an affiliate marketer, just know this. The main thing that most affiliates miss when they're trying to promote various products and services is that you are the brand, not the company you promote. And that's the point of a bridge page funnel. Most people just try to launch traffic into some company corporate uh, funnel to promote that company or whatever network marketing thing that they're doing but you're dead wrong there, okay? You are the brand, which means you need to, throughout your ads and throughout your sales funnel, brand yourself so that you build an asset for yourself. What's, what business owners typically understand that most online people who are new to this game, who've been employees their whole life, business is about building assets. So if you just run traffic to some random affiliate offer, right? And then suddenly, for whatever reason, that affiliate offer is no longer, um, let's just say it's just gone out of existence. Let's just say the company gets bought out or it goes out of business or whatever. You no longer have an asset. You just pointed people past yourself to other offers. And now you don't have an audience that you can speak to and sell something else, okay? So write that down. You are the brand. I want you to get a piece of paper literally right now. Pause this video. I want you to write, I am the brand. 
Okay? Write it down. In the story, just like in the story brand framework, the hero isn't the company that you're promoting as an affiliate. You are. Just never, please, never forget that. What a bridge page funnel allows you to do is bridge the gap between your marketing and story selling and the sales page for whatever you want to pass your traffic onto. Okay? So whatever offer it is, whatever piece of software, there's builder all, whether it's just anything. It can be absolutely anything, but whatever affiliate products you're sending people onto. And it goes like this. First is the opt-in page. Then you have the thank you bridge page. Then you have the VSL page. Then the checkout. Then the order confirmation. Now, what's great as an affiliate is really all you have to control are these first two elements. And here's what I mean by that. Here's what this looks like. So we have our squeeze page or opt-in page. Those are kind of the same thing. You collect the name and email here. You send them to a bridge page where you have a little video, some bullet points and a button, and then they go on to the affiliate offer here. So you send them on to another funnel for the company or whatever. When they click this button, you don't have to do anything beyond that. No fulfillment, no support, none of that stuff. So this process is essentially the same as a VSL, except that you intercept the process with a bridge page video or just text that explains who you are, why people should listen to you. And then you give them a specific call to action to click the button below and go purchase. Okay. Number three. If you've got any experience with funnels, you've probably heard the term lead magnet before, right? So the, the term itself is pretty self-descriptive. It, it is what it sounds like, okay? It's a valuable piece of information or content that attracts leads to your business, sort of like a magnet. This can be a PDF report, a short video, a book, or really anything else that you have of value to your avatar. And I've talked about this in previous days leading up to this. I also talked about it in the live, but you can, if I was an HVAC person, I would immediately, the first thing I would do, if I had to start a business in, in the HVAC air conditioning niche, the first thing I would do is create a 10 things you didn't know about your HVAC unit or, or 10, uh, uh, the number one scam in the HVAC industry. And I would, and I would launch ads to all homeowners in my area. And I would give them away this free book. And I'd follow up with all of them after they give me their name, email, and phone. I would call every one of them and get them signed up for a free consult. That's a lead magnet. So it goes something like this opt-in page, lead magnet, delivery page. So you actually give it to them. And then if you want, if you're selling something digital, you can send them onto a sales page, checkout and order confirmation page. Okay. So we're not going to get super complicated on this one, but it's just a lead magnet page and a download page. Okay. And look on the download page, if you want to say, Hey, by the way, or if you want to have a little video that says, you know, or you can even put a one-time offer right between these two. That's totally fine. You can, you can add, watch this. You can just add an OTO page. Okay. Very easy. Add OTO page. Okay. And then once they go to the lead magnet, okay, check out and I can link these pages here. Oops. After they go to the OTO, OTO page, they can then go on. Oh, this is not linking. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just not linking this properly, but you, you, you get the gist, right? After they check out, then you can redirect them to this download page. So you can, you can do a lead magnet to the OTO, to the checkout, to the download page. And that would allow you the ability to sell them something as an upsell for somebody you already know interested. This is something called a tripwire. I won't get into that right now, but if you want to look into it, it's called a tripwire. You can Google it and you can find out exactly what it is. And then they can either say yes or no. If they say yes, great. You charge them, you get a sale. If they say no, you go straight to the download page and they'll get what they were looking for. All right, number four is the webinar funnel. So aside from selling in person, and I've said this before in this bootcamp, there's no better way to sell other than through a webinar. So selling in person is the best way because it's the highest converting way to sell anything, but there's no better way to sell online than through a webinar, okay? So with a webinar funnel, there's two primary ways to sell your products or services. The first is live, okay? You can do a live webinar. When you do a live webinar, you're actually presenting to an audience who's watching in real time. So this puts more responsibility on you because you're on the spot and you have to perform but it also means you have incredible potential for sales. Now, in the world of automated everything, most people don't realize that the power of live interaction, okay, is, is intensified and it can do wonders for your conversions. So if I were to start over, here's just how I think of it, okay? If I were to start over and try to build this, another six figure from home business, starting from scratch, here's what I would do. The first thing I would do is I would host webinars and drive traffic through a webinar funnel and I would host live webinars. They are so insanely powerful and they are so, in, they're, they're so, What's the right word? They are so transparent. I mean, seeing somebody live at 7 p.m. Eastern on a live webinar is so powerful. I just want you to grasp how powerful that is because a lot of times people set up these automated webinar funnels and they come back to me and say, well, I can't get anybody to buy. Nobody buys, blah, 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 my conversion suck. Well, hey, I get it. I've been there. Try hosting webinars. It'll transform your business. All right. The other, the other way to go about that is through an automated webinar. So unlike a live webinar, this is done on autopilot. Okay. So you pre-record a presentation on your computer, you drive traffic to your webinar regist registration and the software handles the rest. Okay. So the whole presentation plays for your leads in a video on a website as if it's real time. The offer will be displayed on the page and people can just purchase, AKA put money in your pocket while you're out on the golf course or swimming in your pool or whatever you're doing. You don't have to be there. You don't have to be present. Live webinars and automated webinars. Look, they both have their benefits. There's not a right. There's not a wrong. Okay. So if you want to go the webinar route with your funnel, choose whatever feels best to you and go with that. If you want to start with automated and eventually move to live, that's cool. If there's no, there's not a right or a wrong answer to this question. The webinar funnel is most powerful though, for selling items that cost over hundred bucks, because it allows you enough time to demonstrate the value of what you're selling. So higher ticket items are a little bit easier to sell on webinars as opposed to a short video sales letter. Okay. So this one goes registration page indoctrination page, which is a page where you give them additional value that helps that kind of give them a taster of what's coming. Then you actually have the webinar page or the room that they watch the webinar in a checkout page and a confirmation page. And it looks something like this. So here we have the webinar registration indoctrination. Once they sign up and actually register, they watch a video that gives them more information. Then they'll have the broadcast room or the broadcast page where they can check out and then a thank you page after they purchase. Now, if you're a coach or consultant, okay, the application funnel is the one for you. It functions exactly like a VSL funnel, except that instead of having a buy now button, you'll have an apply now button. Okay. So when the lead clicks apply now, they're gonna be sent to a page that'll allow them to apply and pre-qualify themselves to have a sales call with you or sales rep for your company. So it's kind of like a webinar funnel. Okay. It's super powerful and it's most powerful for selling high ticket items, especially items above a thousand dollars. 
when you utilize an application funnel, it's important that you pre-qualify your audience extremely well. And what I mean by that is in the opt-in page and on the video page, you need to condition them and tell them, hey, here's the best people who should apply. And if you're like this, you should not apply because otherwise you're going to waste your time and money on unqualified leads. And that will, that will absolutely destroy your morale and it will hurt your business. So the funnel looks a little bit like this. You have an opt-in page, then you have your VSL or your sales letter page. Then you send them instead of to a checkout page, you send them to an application page and then to a thank you page and an instructional page, which will give them more details on if they set up a call with you, it'll give them the details of the call. Okay. So it'll look something a little bit like this. You have the opt-in page, you have the VSL page, you have the application page, and then the thank you page. And it's pretty straightforward. In some cases, people will add an OTO after somebody applies, they'll send them a short little $7 offer just to, just to help break even again, if you're, if you're running paid traffic. So after somebody applies, there'll be a tiny little $7 offer or $37 offer for a product. And then they'll do appointments with people who purchase that product. Okay. So there's lots, look, there's no right or wrong way to do this. The only right or wrong is that you set up a funnel and you drive traffic through the funnel. That's the right or wrong answer. So this type of funnel is most common for people who have credibility in a niche or an industry, coaching and consulting, for instance, and they're looking to capitalize on that with a higher ticket item. So if you have a specialty around some sort of knowledge or whatever, um, let's say that, you know, I've run a, a, a coffee business for a decade and I'm super successful. It runs profitably. I could advertise to other coffee people in magazines or through Instagram or Facebook. And, and I could say, Hey, I have a winning formula to be more profitable in your coffee shop. If you're struggling or breaking even, um, I, I will, you know, coach or consult you and I can create a video around that and then have, you know, coffee shop owners apply to, to be in a three month coaching program with me where I fix their profitability or something like that. You can do it around weight. You can do it around digital marketing. You can do it around all sorts of stuff. So those are the five main funnels. Look, are there more? Sure. There's plenty more funnels, but we don't need to get into those. We're going to focus on one or maybe two max. But what I want you to do is I want you to comment below this video and I want you, I want you to tell me what type of funnel you're going to use. Okay. What type of funnel are you going to use a bridge funnel? And then what are you going to be offering with that? So connect the offer with a funnel. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to start thinking through how are the pieces going to fit together? What are the elements that I'm going to need to put in this funnel? And over the next few days, we're going to put it together. We're going to talk about how best to craft all of your funnel offering so that it's the most congruent and the highest converting funnel possible. Okay. So that's what we'll get into in the coming days. Comment below with what funnel you're going to use and what you're going to sell in that funnel. And we'll be on to day 10 tomorrow. It is week two of the boot camp, and we are talking through the perfect funnel. And over the last couple of days, what we've what we've done is unpacked the important elements of a funnel. Went through the value ladder right on the first day of this week, and then we had you unpack what type of funnel are you going to use. So yesterday we talked through the five different kind of main core funnels, right? And many of you commented below. Here's the funnel that I'm going to be using. And now that we've got that sort of cemented, today what we're going to do on day ten is we're going to talk about a little principle. My my high school football teacher used to say, "Keep it simple, stupid." Okay, and it was I don't mean that to be demeaning. He kind of did, right? He kind of did, but he's working with a bunch of high school kids. So what can you expect? But he used to say, and he used to give the acronym KISS, right? And this is this is very common. Everybody uses this acronym, but KISS, keep it simple, stupid, or keep it simple, smart. Okay, so when he would say that, we in high school, let me give you a little bit of an analogy. We we ran an offense on our football team that was just extremely simplified and dumbed down, right? And so what a lot of coaches would do is they would they would create this fancy offense that was confusing and not realize that they had 15 to 18 year old kids who just barely had an attention span, an attention span of focus beyond just, you know, who am I going to take to the high school prom? Okay. So so they would create this fancy offense and this fancy cute thing, right? And what our high school football coach did, and he's he's one of the best in the entire state. He's been given, I don't know, he's been doing it for 45 years. He's been named coach of the year multiple, multiple times, won many championships, five or, I don't know, five plus championships. Anyway, long story short, this keep it simple, stupid mentality, what it does is it dumbs down everything into a super simple formula that even, you know, kids or whatever can remember. Make it super easy. Kids who are new to football, haven't really been in football before, it allows them the headspace to compete with those who are a little bit more talented or more skilled or have more experience. Same thing is going to be true here in sales funnels. There's people out there with more experience than you who maybe are better at business, business management, better leadership, creating sales funnels, marketing, all that stuff. But what I'm going to unpack for you today is the, the most simple way to break down a sales funnel and keep it, and here's the word, congruent. Keep it congruent. Okay. And I'm going to go through what exactly that means here in just a second. Okay. So 
Congruence is the quality. This is just a dictionary.com definition. The quality or state of agreeing and corresponding. Okay, so what it means is that, and it, let's apply this to sales funnels. In sales funnels, it's important that each of your pages or each stage is congruent in its messaging. Okay, and I actually have a little clip here at the end of this video. I have a clip that's about 15 minutes long or so that I'm going to share with you. Okay, and I'm going to walk you through the four different stages of the sales funnel: the ad, the capture page, the thank you bridge page, and then the final sales page. I'm going to walk you through how you can sort of reverse engineer how to create it in a way that's super congruent. Okay. So don't try like those other coaches I was just talking about. Don't try to get overly cute and sexy with your sales funnels. Okay, unique being unique in your brand messaging is crucial, but it's different than being cute. Being cute will actually kill your business. So try to get overly cute. What I mean by being unique is I mean speaking with your own voice. Okay, speaking with your own voice and having a unique angle, but being cute. Trying to get overly clickbaity. Trying to get trying to get um um lots and lots of clicks because you're using headlines that you think are catchy and and stand out and all this stuff while lacking in congruency and here's what i mean by that so I, I think i do need to quickly explain what exactly i mean by this so if i have an ad right here and then i'm pointing that ad to a capture page or an opt-in page same thing okay and then they're going on to and let's just apply this to affiliate marketing they're going on to a bridge page okay we talked through this yesterday all right so what a lot of times people will do is they'll sit down for a day and they'll write an ad okay they'll write an ad to go on facebook or google or whatever okay and ooh, that was my day that was a long day wrote my ad though got it done all right great well done and then they'll come back two or three days later and write their capture page and the opt-in page okay they'll write all the headlines and everything okay ooh, good job got that done all right ooh. all right now we're on to the bridge page then no three days later they'll come down and sit down and write all this bridge page and each of these pages turns out to be totally different totally different they look different they feel different they're completely different so what's the takeaway then the takeaway is when you place a facebook ad and let's say i'm your ideal prospect and i look at your facebook ad and i get my eyeballs on it and and the headline says free seven day trial free seven day trial okay so i look at it so oh, okay interesting and then i get to your capture page and the capture page says nothing about a free seven day trial it says exclusive video discover how i use the one most simple tool in the world to build better opt-in pages or whatever you want to say but but the lingo here does doesn't say anything about a trial now you might be saying well that's stupid why would anybody do that it happens all the time it happens all the time so so the important piece is congruency right and if it says it here and it says it here like if i do get it right and it says seven day trial here it says seven day trial here on the opt-in page it had better say seven day trial here on the bridge page too so that all of your messaging is extremely, extremely congruent. Hopefully that makes sense. So I want you to employ a straightforward approach that is concise, that is clear, concise, and to the point. Very simple. And I want you to just get it done, okay? I want you to take the approach here that we're just going to get this thing done, and it's going to be a clear, concise, and to the point approach. We're not going to get super fancy. Look, there's a day where you can get super fancy with your marketing. I'm not saying have bad design. I'm not saying don't be creative. What I'm saying is the, the main thing you need to focus on, and write this down, the main thing you need to focus on is making sure that your approach is clear, the messaging is clear. It's unmistakable what you're offering people. Okay, so we're going to do this. And I'm going to give you a little demo here right now of a simple two-step sales funnel process. Now, this process can be upgraded to include more elements, a checkout page, an upsell. Okay, what I'm going to share with you applies to all of these different things. But just to demonstrate the importance of congruency in advertising, I'm going to take a two-step affiliate marketing funnel or a bridge page funnel and kind of give you a demo. The, this principle is, and I don't want you to miss this, is arguably the single most important principle, not just in sales funnels, but in all of advertising. And if I could go back, if I could go back. As I look through hundreds and thousands of people's advertising, I've consulted with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, at this point, maybe thousands of people's marketing. If I could go back and look through all of their advertising, all of their funnels, all of their websites, the main thing that I would be looking for isn't cute design. It isn't amazing graphics. None of that stuff. It's, is the messaging clear and compelling? Is it clear? Do I know what I'm going to be getting? And then if I click on this link, do I still know what I'm getting? And is it the same as what I clicked on? It's super important. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop you in to a, a video with me. It's about 15 minutes long, and we're going to walk through every single step of this entire process. And I'm going to unpack for you how conversion rates in sales funnels are impacted by, the, by, by congruency. And there's a reason we're doing this now as opposed to later, because a lot of people come back and evaluate this later, and they have to recreate their entire funnel because they realize it's not congruent. Well, we're going to get that out of the way here first so that moving forward, as we move forward, you're going to clearly be able to create your funnel for whatever you're offering and, and with this principle of congruency in mind, okay? So let's dive in and make sure you pull out a pen and paper. If you don't have one right now, get a pen and paper out right now because this is filled with tons of helpful nuggets and this is probably gonna be the key to, to your conversions more than anything else that you do online. We're gonna talk specifically about ad congruency and if you've heard of these things before, sales funnels, you're like, oh, I'm a little bit familiar, stick with me because I think that this is gonna be really helpful just in terms of understanding conversion rates, how things convert and why maybe, uh, this is a question I get all the time. I get this question, I'm getting a ton of leads but I don't seem to be getting any buyers. Let me just provide maybe one possible solution, but it's usually the solution that most people need. And I'll kind of break down each stage of the funnel and where things can go wrong, because that's gonna be really important for you knowing what do I need to test? What do I need to change? How can I adjust some things, okay? So 
first of all, what we're going to do is we're just going to start out with the, these are four main pieces to a sales funnel. Really, if it's your own sales funnel, like let's say you have your own product, you can just have an ad, a capture page and a sales page, right? You wouldn't need a thank you bridge page, but as an affiliate, we do need a thank you bridge page in this whole, in the whole sequence so that you can actually bridge the gap between you going out and placing an ad and the final sales page. So here's what I mean. The example I'm giving you, let's just, let's start at the beginning with your ad, okay? So we have your ad, we have a capture page, we have a thank you bridge page, and we have a final sales page. There are four steps people will go through for most affiliate type offers, okay? So let's just, let's start for instance right here right now with the ad part of this. So when it comes to your ad, this can be a solo ad, right? Which is, as we have already learned, solo ads an email ad, it can be a Facebook ad, it could be an Instagram ad, it could be Google, I mean, you name it, right? But whatever whatever kind of ad it is, <clears throat> that's the starting place, that's the first place somebody hears of you. Uh, it could also be a banner ad, you know, there's lots of different ways to advertise. The example I'm gonna use here is just a Facebook ad because the rest of this training as well will kind of go through a little bit of Facebook advertising. Now, I just pulled this, this is from AdEspresso, they're, they're a pretty well-known company in terms of um, managing your Facebook ads and how, you know, it's a, it's a tool to automate a lot of advanced features in Facebook ads. Um, you, I'm not advertising for them or saying that you need them, I just literally, I just pulled this off, off the internet as an example for an ad, okay? So I'm not gonna get deep into all the different elements of the ad, but I will just say this, this is kind of the starting place, the first ever message that someone will hear in your sales funnel, okay? That's the first contact point, okay? Now, in the whole of the sales funnel, let's go back here. From there, when they click on, let's say they click on this little sign up button, they're gonna pop directly over to here, which is a capture page. This is also known as a squeeze page, a uh, lead capture page, an opt-in page. A lot of people call it different things, but generally you're gonna have your uh, name and email field on this page for people to fill in, okay? And let's quickly jump over here so you can see that a little bit better. So on the capture page, generally you're gonna have what's called a headline and a subheadline, and these are gonna be just basic pages, okay? You can you can put all kinds of designs on this, you can put more info, all of this stuff, but typically the more you add, the lower your initial conversion rate will be. I'm not saying anything against doing that, sometimes giving more information up front is helpful, but generally if you wanna just keep your opt-in rates pretty high, meaning the percentage of people who see, who get their eyeballs on this page, and then who actually put their name and email address in here, you wanna keep that up, keep these very simple, straightforward, and to the point. Keep it simple, stupid. It's a <laughs> it's an acronym, KISS, um, that my high school football coach used to always say, KISS, keep it simple, stupid, right? Don't overcomplicate things, do what's worked. So this is the capture page, and then they're gonna go, after they put their name and email into the capture page, they go over to a thank you bridge page. Now let me explain that page really briefly. The thank you bridge page typically has some sort of video on it. If you're not comfortable with video, you can always delete the, the video element and just put text in here. I would encourage you to put video. Video transcends, it connects with people, right? It gets into the unconscious people's brains. I would highly recommend video on a thank you bridge page. Now this is important because as people are going through our funnel, now just imagine this, let's pop back over to this more 9,000 foot view. As people are going through our sales funnel, your ad is talking typically about you. You're giving a little bit of your story, a little bit about you and, and you know how this video changed your life, right? That's typically, I'm gonna talk about that in later videos, but generally you're sharing your story and the name of your Facebook page is usually your name. It's like Matt Helsel or it's Lisa Anderson or whatever it is, it's usually your name. And so the bridge page, the thank you bridge page is, is basically connecting, um, it's bridging. That's really all it's doing. So imagine a little drawbridge. <laughs> I'm gonna try to draw a drawbridge or, or just like a little, um, you know, I'm just going to try to draw a bridge. Just bear with me. My drawings, is, it's not my strong suit, but you get the point. So, okay. So a little bridge that people step across to get to this final sales page. The bridge page is super crucial because in the video, you're going to describe, hey, my name is Matt and I'm so excited that you made it to this page. On the next page, you're going to see a video with a guy named Dave. And lo and behold, and I'll give you, a, for anybody who's watching this, I'll give you a, a script that you can kind of base your video off of. But this is where you really bridge the gap and show people and give people a little bit about, hey, here's what's coming right? Get ready for it. On the next page, you're going to see Dave. You're going to see this guy, Dave, or whatever it is. Even if it's not that, you know, maybe you're promoting click funnels. I don't know. But, you know, generally people who are here are, are trying to run some traffic to legendary stuff. And so um, if you want to do it with click funnels, if you want to go and do it with, you know, let's say you have an e-commerce product, you're selling something that you bought wholesale from Alibaba and you're selling it on a Shopify site. Like it doesn't matter. What you need to do here on this bridge page is you need to give them a little context. Okay. Hey, well done on taking action and clicking on my ad, reading my story. I'm, I'm really excited you're here. I love when people check out my videos. And here's what's coming next on the next page. You're gonna see a video with Dave. I believe it could change your life. I truly believe that because it did that for me. And I wanna share it with you today. So directly beneath this video, there's a little red button. See that red button beneath my video? Click that red button. You're gonna be sent to the video immediately. And I can't wait for you to take action on what you learn and blah, blah, blah. So what you're doing is you're bridging the gap and providing a little context and just letting people know what's coming next and telling them what they need to do specifically. It's a leadership page. Okay, and then you have the final sales page. This is where the sales are obviously collected. This is where the, the whole sales pitch happens, right? Whether it's a 15, 20 minute video or whatever. Okay, so this is where typically someone else is you know, doing the selling for you. Now, let's get back here because I want you to write this word down. It's one of the most important words in terms of sales funnels. And the word is congruency. It's something everyone gets wrong for some reason. I don't know why. 
But what I mean is that from your ad to your capture page, to your bridge page, to your final sales page, there must be congruency. And a lot of people say, well, I'm getting a bunch of leads, but they're not converting into sales. A lot of times that's because the messaging isn't congruent from start to finish, or you're fishing in the wrong hole. So you might be advertising to the wrong audience, to a non-buying audience, right? That's potential. Just might be fishing in the wrong pond, right? There's a million places online where you can fish in, and maybe there's a bunch of buying fish in pond number four here, but you're fishing over here in pond number one. See what I mean? Right? The buyers might be over here and you're 500 miles away fishing in a different pond, in a different state, in a different country. Right? So that's one thing. But then one constant thing that I see is when people tell their story in a Facebook ad, this is a lot of times what people think Facebook ads don't work, is the language they're using is so disconnected from what's being educated on or told or pitched in the final sales video. So what I tell people to do, this is super ninja, is, hey, why don't you actually go watch the sales video or from the funnel you're trying to promote? Go watch that video. And in the first one to two minutes, even in the first 30 seconds, Actually, on a piece of paper, write down what are some key words and phrases that jump out to you and stand out to you. And then reverse engineer and come back and put it inside of your ad copy, right? Wouldn't that like just completely change the game? Because now people who click and sign up and become a lead for you and go through the bridge video and go through that whole process, they, they initially clicked because they liked some part about what's actually going to be in the sales video. That's called a buyer as opposed to a lead. Everybody is crazy about lead, 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 build my list, build my list, build my list. But I wanna focus more towards people who are gonna be preconditioned to buy, and that's what we can do if we keep our sales funnel congruent. So that, what, what does this practically mean? It means that when you go and, let's say you create a Facebook ad or an email solo ad, uh, and you create or edit the capture page, and you create a bridge video, which I'm gonna encourage you to do, and we have an example of one of these that you can use. Um, but when you go and create all of that, you should be embedding little nuggets from the final sales pitch from the final sales video into every single step of the funnel so that by the time they get to this final sales page there's no confusion when they sit down to watch that video they're they're saying yep this is exactly what i signed up for this is exactly what i thought was coming rather than clickbaiting a bunch of people into you know your story and, and figuring this all how to start an online business whatever and the, the messaging the words and the overall message isn't what's over here and then you have what do you have the story of so many internet marketers which is 500 leads and no buyers. I have a huge list of leads, but I don't have any buyers, right? So mastering each stage of these uh, of a sales funnel is super crucial because it will it'll change your conversion rates. And one final note on a sales funnel, just to kind of wrap this up. What you'll find if you're if you're able to do this well is that your conversion rates will go up. And here's what I mean by that: um, your conversion rates are the percentage of let's say people who see your ad and click on it. So people who click on your ad, click the sign up button, and get to the capture page. So person comes to your capture page and they look at it and then they enter their name and email. Let's say that that's 25%, right? 25% of people. Of all people who come to this page, one out of every four of them opt in, okay? And then let's say, once you get to the Thank You Bridge page, let's say 50% click the button to watch the video, okay? And then of those people, let's just say 5% of those buy. Now, people start to get through this whole process and they don't realize sometimes if your conversion rates aren't performing well, I mean, 500 people could come through here and not a single one could buy, right? Why aren't people buying? Well, if you fix the congruent message, and it's actually good marketing, right? You have, to, you have to be a good marketer, and that can sometimes take time. But congruency throughout the whole sales funnel, all right, can up all of these numbers just based on what people are actually looking for. That's why a lot of times when I'm coaching people, I tell people, hey, this free video right here, this headline should be identical to the headline of your ad, right? And even very close to the first sentence, right? I, my strategy for this is I usually take my first sentence from my ad and make it my subheadline, and I match the headline verbatim. That way, if somebody just reads the first sentence or two of my ad and click sign up, they're going to see this. And then if they see my headline and click sign up, they're going to see it in the headline, right? So it's just a stepping stone. There's really nothing super creative or tricky or ninja about it. It's actually just keeping it very simple because what they clicked on in this ad is, oops, what they clicked on in this ad is exactly what they're looking for on the capture page. And then lo and behold, guess what? When they get through to here, what am I going to say in my video? I want to say something like, here's what I want to share with you. I want to share with you exactly how our team can help you personally launch an online business together right? I want to be saying that phrase. I want to say that phrase exactly in my video in the first 10 to 15 seconds. Why? Because it's going to create congruency and they're going to, they're going to say, yes, I just read that. That is why I'm here. I remember that. So this congruency changes the game. It'll change your conversion rates. And ultimately, if you can do it well, what it does is it helps your odds of somebody getting on this initial ad and making it all the way here and saying, yep, here's my little credit card. Here's my money. Good job on your advertising. <laughs> So that's kind of the, that's the backstory of congruency. Master marketers know it, implement it, and just do it with everything they do, like it's the back of their hand, and you need to learn how to master that as well. Greetings, my friends. Welcome back to day 11. Congratulations on making it here. You're doing amazing. And we're just about to get into really the fun stuff over the next couple of days and weeks here. So 
creating the offer is all great and fun, but when you can actually get your hands on something tangible, that starts to change the game a little bit, okay? So what we're gonna do today, and I wanna frame this up for you just a little bit, what we're gonna do today is we're, as you can see, we're actually gonna log in here, and we're gonna just do a little bit of work uh, in the actual funnel world, okay? So what we're going to get into is we're going to, we're just gonna create a simple two-page funnel, all right? I'm gonna show you how simple this can look, and then we'll create one, or maybe two, that are a little bit more souped up, just so you can start to get some like, design ideas in terms of how to create your page, all right? So the first thing that I want to do is I'm just going to open up a little um, two-page funnel that I created so that you can see it and so that we can kind of talk about just how simple this can be. All right, so first of all is I'm going to open up the landing page that I created. And, and here's what most people do when they see this page, okay? Most people say, are you serious? Like, that's it? This is the desktop and this is the mobile. And I'm here to set you free today, okay? I'm here to set you free today from the belief that your funnels and your websites need to be complicated and confusing, all right? What most people don't realize is that it's not even just when they got started, but really throughout their entire career, most people who are successful online use very simple sales funnels, That's especially in industries like affiliate marketing or network marketing or coaching and consulting, all right? So what, what we're going to do today is we're going to look not only just at design, but we're also going to look at, uh, for instance, the, the congruency of the sales funnel. So I've kind of set this up, and what we're going to do is evaluate it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back and create it so that you can sort of watch as I create it and the things that I think through and the things that I check, okay? Now, before we get too deep into this, number one, I want to establish a couple ground rules early on in this video. Number one is uh, this is not the space to go through and report bugs on the tool or report issues with the tool or if something isn't working just quite right in your funnel or there's a something's missing right that goes into a support group okay what we're doing here is we're kind of building the groundwork for your funnel so what we want to focus on here is the messaging of your funnel okay so if there's something that's just a little bit off or whatever look we still have another couple of weeks here in the boot camp so number one is figure it out number two is there's support groups or support tickets that you can submit for any even if you're not using builder all there's tons of support outlets uh, for any tool that you're using to build sales funnels okay so you we don't want to fill this group with a i can't get my padding to work on the mobile i can't get my blah 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 to work okay that's that's not the place for this all right so First things first, free seven-day trial. Discover the one tool you need to crush your digital marketing. Okay, now, this is is that a great headline? Probably not. I just threw it together quickly so I had a headline, all right? And this is this is just enter your name and email below for instant access, right? So if I was writing a Facebook ad and I said, hey, I, I, have, the one, I have the one tool, the all-in-one tool that you need to crush your digital marketing. Here's a free seven-day trial. That's, that's how I would maintain congruency with this landing page. I want you guys to start to think of this landing page, this capture page or opt-in page. It's all kind of the same thing. As just a stepping stone. Most people confuse this. And look, could we get a little bit more... Sure. Could we get a little bit more fancy? Could we add Could we add additional things and, and make this a little more fancy? Sure. I could probably do that. But the point here is, the point here is you don't need to do that in order to be successful. In fact, a lot of times it will detract from just the simplicity. So sometimes what people do is like I just did there is I, they come in and they're like, oh, I got to have this amazing looking. And look, there's nothing wrong with having amazing looking things, right? Like, look at this. This is beautiful. This is great. And we'll go through some of this stuff. But I want you to know that people have built six, seven, eight figure, nine figure businesses on the backs of funnels that look just like this. They have. So it, it, the reason I say that, the reason I emphasize that so strongly is because a lot of times people blame their lack of success on not being able to design pages beautifully or not being able to make their pages look as good as that guru's page or whatever it is. And they spend all day trying to make pages and, um, and, and design funnels that look as good as them when in reality, it's not even the issue. It's not even the issue. The issue is the messaging. The issue is just being simple and clear. I promise you that. Okay. So this would be just our basic little funnel. You have a first name. Generally, I like the first name to be the top one and then the bottom one to say email address. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and change that in our forms right now. All right, we just don't need to deal with that right now. Um, but this is it. And then when they claim their free trial, they're going to land on what we call just a simple bridge page. Awesome. Let's do this. Watch the short video below and get instant access to your free trial. And I would even say here, you know, we might want to say seven day because we said seven days over here, right? Free seven day trial, right? So this should say, not seven day free trial, this should say free seven day trial just like it did on that other page. Now, whoops. Now this is on a different line, right? Well, let's make that a little bigger and let's center that puppy. There we go. All right, and then I would have just a short little video and claim seven day trial. Now again, with a bridge page, this is a bridge page here, okay? Because right here on this button, I would link out then to a to an affiliate link right here, right? That's where I would put my affiliate link. All right, so now could we get a little bit more fancy with this as well? Sure, why not, right? We have lots of different options here. For instance, this panel right here is a great panel for a bridge page right here, okay? All I gotta do is just adjust this text a little bit here, adjust this here a little bit and voila, right? Now, this would look a little bit better. I, I like to not make these massive video things, but you know, you get the gist, right? We don't need, to, again, this isn't all, this isn't some super special design lesson that we need to go through right now, but you get the gist of, of how easy that is. And then you have a little bit of lines down here. You can change the photo out and then you have another button down below. Okay. So um, can we get a little bit more fancy? Yep, we definitely can. But again, remember the whole point behind this, keep it simple, stupid. Okay. Just keep it simple. That's what this is all about. Just keep it simple. 
So look, if you're brand new to this thing and this, and this stuff really overwhelms you and it's difficult and it's confusing and, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so tough. Just look, this is all you need to do. Okay. And really quickly, I'm going to actually show you how to set this up really quick. So you can get a little bit of a, just a little bit of a gauge of, of what to put in certain um, areas and, and things like that. Okay. So I'm going to just, I'm going to get you a new page. We're going to set this up together real quick. Welcome. I'm going to title the page. Welcome. Look again, don't get into the details of all of this stuff that can be figured out later. What we're focusing on now is just the simplicity of the design. All right. So first thing I do is I go in and I'll welcome or I'll edit the welcome page rather. All right. And then I'm going to add a panel. Always need to add, just add a panel right away, a blank panel. That's just how this tool works. So you just need a panel right away. Okay. Once you've got that, then we can start to add text. All right. So let's add title and let's say, um, free seven day trial. The only tool you'll ever need to crush your digital marketing. Okay. So then I'll save this thing, right? And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Now, one, just one little tip that I always like to pass on in terms of design for people is number one, center this, all right? But with, with sort of um, your headlines, I usually push for three lines max. Okay. That's generally a, so, so what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't try to go on like five lines and do it like this. All right. Generally best conversions that I've ever seen are usually in three lines like this. Is that, look, is that a hard and fast rule that must be followed like a religion? No, but just why reinvent the wheel? Okay. All right. So uh, then I'm going to add another one and let's just make this a title five, I guess. Let's do this. Okay. So then I'll say, enter your name and email to claim your trial. All right. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, about size 22. Okay. So it's 22 and I'll save it. All right. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's center that puppy. All right. And then we're going to add, we're going to go to elements and we're going to go to email marketing form. Let's just grab one of these now. All right. This one looks good to me. Let's just do this one with the square. Okay, there we go. So now let's just make that like that. And there we go. So can we get into general settings, getting all this stuff, field style? Can we, yeah, can we adjust all this stuff? Yep, we can. Um, for the background, um, yep, we can just leave that as is, that's fine. Okay, if I want a round border, well, there you go. Okay, now it's a little bit rounded on the edges. Maybe I want that more. Oh, I guess I was rounding the border of something else. <laughs> all right, so let's do five, 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 five. There we go, there we go, okay. Now you can see I got a little round border. Okay. All right. So pretty easy. Now, always remember to center these elements. Okay. Now, if you want to, you can make this a little bit smaller. That's fine. But I usually recommend something between 50 and 60 for the headline. All right. So 50 will look something like that. And then uh, 60 will look something like this. All right. So usually somewhere in that area is usually a, a good place to play. Okay. Uh, if you go into the uh, fonts and you can go into the line height, that will adjust it like this. Usually for a headline, I recommend either a 0.9 or a 1. Usually just 1 is perfect. Okay. Um, getting line height and making that look good is, is pretty important. All right. So it's important in the design of that. I can't really give you a, a rule that's going to apply to absolutely every single one, but I can just say, um, you, it's important that your headlines have the proper line spacing. What I mean by that is when you go over here to fonts, the line height, that's a really, really important one. All right. Okay. So now we just need some terms, conditions, everything like that at the bottom. All right. Now one little trick, just if you want to use this, you can, you can just go to add, go to add panels, go to blocks. And what you can do is you can go down here to one of these and just click on it. And even if you're, well, that one doesn't have it. Let's see. Let's try this one. There you go. So you can, you can get these links here. Okay. And the copyright just by using one of those blocks. So let's go up here and I'll click and drag this up here. See how easy that is. That's just a little trick. So you don't have to type all that stuff out. Don't waste time if you don't have to. Okay. And then if I'm not going to use that, I can just delete and just delete all this stuff out. Okay. All right. So, um, let's see, there we go. Perfect. All right. So that's, that's the look. And then I would just link these so I can click into that and then I can link these in a menu. When I go to settings here, there we go. Now I can edit where these actually link out to. All right. So perfect. Good to go. All right. So now we've got that set. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save it. All right. And then, and then I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to duplicate this. So the reason I'm going to duplicate this is look from font to font, page to page. It's important that it, it's super important actually that thank you too. It's super important that your fonts stay the same or relatively close to the same. So why change up my headline size or my headline font or anything like that, right? Let's just keep it all the same. So what you can do on, on this one, remember what I did is I said, awesome, let's do this. Watch the short video below and get into next free trial. All right, that's fine. But I think what would be more congruent actually would be, let's look at this here. So on this one here, we have free seven day trial, the only tool you'll ever need to crush your digital marketing, right? So let's probably just keep that the same, right? If somebody opts in looking at this headline, don't you think that it's probably smart just to keep it the exact same? So this is the second one. This is the thank you page. So on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to say, watch the short video below and claim your trial. All right. So now if I'm going to do a bridge page, this is what I would do. So maybe on this bridge page, I'm going to delete the uh, email form and I'm going to bring in a video here. Okay. So there's our video and I'm going to drag this down on the page a little bit, down on the page a little bit. All right. Now, there we go. I'm going to click on this panel here and I'm going to make the size a little bit bigger. So we have room for a button. I'm going to add a button in here. 
button. Let's just do this. There we go. That looks a lot like the button on the other page, so that's nice. Very congruent. Okay. And then let's drag this down the page towards the bottom. Again, always remember to center these elements. All right. And let's make this button just a little bit bigger. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to edit this button. And for the headline, we're going to say, claim my free seven day trial. Again, because we want to make sure that these fonts are matching. So right here, what is this font? It's, it's Muli, M-U-L-I. Okay. So let's not, again, reinvent the wheel. Let's just make these fonts the exact identical font, size, everything. Okay. If I want to bold it, I can bold it or unbold it. Usually on buttons, I recommend that they are bolded. All right. Now I'm actually not liking how this button looks. I don't like this font all that much. Okay. Um, actually it doesn't look like it's the exact same. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this headline to Leto Black, which is one of the best headline fonts out there. Okay. And I'm going to change this here as well to Leto. We're just going to do the regular Leto. Okay. It is one of the most modern fonts and it works super well. Okay. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. All right. 20. Sure. There we go. All right. Watch a short video and claim your, claim your trial. Okay. Um, and actually we should say, click the button below. All right, so then that way they actually know what it is that they're supposed to be doing, right? Okay. So free seven day trial, we selected the font of Leto, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here, and we're gonna make this Leto black, okay? And usually on these buttons, I like about a size 24 to 28, or you can go a little bigger if you wanted, but it's important to have this spaced properly again. So um, look, there's no right or wrong rules around this, but you don't want a button that looks like this, okay? That looks bad. And you don't want a button that looks like this. You want a button that's just got some good spacing. Even if you wanna do it large like that, that's okay. All right, that's fine. But I would probably go with just about right, here, something like this. Okay. And then I'll hit center on the element. All right. And let's make sure this is centered. There we go. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Here we go, guys. Here we go. All right. Now this all looks fine. The other thing that you must remember on both these pages. Now I know that these fonts are different from page to page because I just changed that. Don't worry about that right now. Obviously I would come back here to this text. I would change this to Lado black, just like the other one. And we'd be good to go. Okay. Um, I'm just, I'm not going to change that right now. So, um, so on this page, the last thing that you need to do is go into your mobile. You need to make sure that this looks good on the mobile. All right. So now I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, wow, there's too much padding between all this stuff, right? There's too much padding. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to come in here. We're going to go to page, all right? And uh, we're going to go into, or I'm sorry, we're going to click on the element and you're going to go to advanced and adjust the padding. Okay. So let's just adjust those down to zero. Let's adjust this one down to zero. Okay. So now this is starting to look good, right? Okay. So let's adjust this to zero. Okay. Now we can leave this footer menu just like that. That's fine. All right. Or you can kind of do whatever you want to do with that. We don't need to mess around with that right now. Um, okay. So all of this is looking good. Okay. Look at the, spa the spacing, the padding, all that stuff looks great. And then you would go and do it with the same thing with the thank you page. So we have a welcome, a landing page or an opt-in page. And then we have a capture page. Now here, things are out of whack. Things are out of order. So we're going to click it. We're going to move this menu guide down to the bottom of the page. Okay. And we're going to move this up a little higher. Okay. There we go. And again, you're just going to, you're just going to mess with the padding here and just make that a little bit smaller. There we go. Now look, you might just have to play around and figure it out a little bit. Ideally, you don't want the button to have, um, to have multiple lines. Okay. So, um, a, a couple things that you can do right now, as the tool is, there is not the ability to set a different mobile size for the button text that's coming. So I, that's just where we're at in development right now. And it is what it is. So what I'm going to do as a, as a, as I'm making my website is I'm going to just adjust. Okay. All right. And I'm going to remove the word free here and then look at my mobile and see if that fixed the issue. Play my seven day trial. Looks good. All right. So we're all good on that. Now, if I click the button, we also have padding on the left and right. So for a button, I'm going to make that zero. I don't want any, I don't want any padding. Okay. So I would set that to zero. All right. All right. So, um, there we go. So this looks fine. All right. This looks fine. This looks good. It's good to go. This would get people through to a free trial for something like builder all. Okay. It would. If I was an affiliate for Builderall, I could put a video right here that says, hey, here's been my experience with Builderall. I just wanted to welcome you in. Look, they have an affiliate program. That's why I'm do shooting this video. And just so you know, as an affiliate, uh, I might make a commission if you do go through and click the button below, just so you're aware of that. And I have to say that for FTC compliance, okay? So um, this is a pretty simple two-step funnel that you can utilize and implement for yourself right now. And it works super well. Like this, this actually works. I know that this is shocking to some people, but it actually works, okay? All right, so... Now that we've got this kind of set up and established, here's what I want to do is I want to take you through just a nicer looking funnel. Okay. Even if you're building funnels on a different platform, you might use something else to build your websites, not builder all. And you're just getting familiar with builder all. Um, that's fine too. Okay. It's not a big deal. We're not, you know, going to hunt you down or whatever, but, um, if you're getting into builder all right now, just know that this cheetah is, uh, the cheetah builder is, uh, it's, it's really about 20 days from just being fully, fully, fully done. Um, so it, it's looking like the end of November, 2019, and it will be done. So number one, if you're watching it now, or if you're watching this later, some of this stuff might change a little bit on the page and that's okay. All right. It's just, you got to figure it out. Okay. That's how software companies work. That's how, if you want to be a digital marketer, surprise, surprise, you're going to have to mess around with a lot of different software changes. It's just how it goes. Okay. So you're just going to have to learn to get over it and figure it out. Okay. No complaining, no whining, just figure it out. Okay. All right. That's what top earners do. All right. So let's say we want to make this look a little bit better, just like a little bit more quality with some, a little bit more souped up style, for instance. So if I go into blocks, 
or really you can you can get into just any of these contents call to action features whatever you want but but i'm going to try to here's what i do this is my strategy and why i've done so well in this industry and affiliate marketing and everything is i keep this super simple so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and i'm going to just look for a beautiful opt-in page all right so let's do this thing um let me grab let me grab let me grab let me grab this one here um, this one's pretty simple and straightforward okay so let's do this guy all right so a couple things when this first pops up on my page um i'm not going to delete this i'm just going to hit copy on this if i want to keep this headline all right so um i can then come down here and bring it into oops, this box so let's there we go so uh when this first pops in based on page settings that we've got you might just have to quickly adjust a few elements on these remember always always center the element okay after you move anything always center the element make sure it looks good right so if i click on this text i can always just paste in here just to see what's going on okay so what, what we're going to do is for the red part we're going to do seven day trial Okay, there we go. Perfect. The only all in one, I like to use all in one tool you'll ever need to crush. And then let's say your digital marketing. Oops. Okay. Which, by the way, I'm just going to clear up for you. Not a great headline. Okay. <laughs> Not a great headline, but it's going to do the trick today. Okay. All right. There we go. Perfect. It's ladle black. It looks beautiful. That will get the job done. All right. All right. So I'm not even going to change this right now. I'm just going to leave this, but I would actually go through and change that to, to sort of fit my thing a little bit. Fill out the form below to get your free video sent straight to you. Okay, perfect. This looks great. There's nothing wrong with this. It looks beautiful. Uh, we don't really need to change much else. And I'm going to delete that. All right. So there's a couple things you can do. If you want to drag these up further on the page, you can do that. It's not a big deal. Um, but really, you're, you're just kind of good to go on this thing. Okay. You're kind of good to go. And this is just an easy way to do that. Okay. So now we're just going to quickly go and check the mobile. Mobile looks good for the most part. I mean, there's nothing really to change here. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, there's just nothing. It looks beautiful. It looks good. One little tip that I just noticed right here, though, that I, I do want to show you is sometimes you'll notice how transform right here, where it says transform is, is kind of on its own line. It looks weird. The reason for that is primarily because it's the, when this got set up, somebody hit the enter key. Okay. So what I'd recommend is not doing that. I'd recommend instead just sizing this like properly like this. Okay. And then let's center that element. Okay, center element. Then when you go to the mobile, it doesn't put the word transform on its own line like that and look weird, okay? It, it just won't look weird. It'll look proper, all right? And on mobile, if you ever don't want, let's say I don't want this image to show up on mobile, I can always just click this little I and poof, it's gone, all right? So maybe I didn't like how that looked or maybe it came beneath the fold or something like that, poof, it's gone. And I can go into hidden elements and um, if I wanna bring it back, I can just click that. So very easy, very simple, straightforward. Uh, most, uh, if you're using something else to build your, to build your uh, funnels, most other funnel softwares have that as well. So that's just, I mean, that's pretty simple and straightforward. Yeah, that's that's as simple and straightforward as I can make it, to be totally honest with you, okay? It, it, and it looks beautiful, okay? And look, I didn't really even do much here. I didn't really change much, but it's if you want to soup it up again, you can do it that way. For the for the thank you page, then I would add a different panel and I'd go into blocks, okay? And let's say I want a little bridge page on this, okay? So let's do our little bridge page. Easy, right? Congratulations. Watch the short video below, okay? Now, this isn't very descriptive of this free seven-day trial, okay? So maybe what I'll do here is I'll say, congrats on claiming your trial free trial free seven day trial <laughs> all right so um that's a little bit long i don't love that i don't love that okay so let's just say congratulations on claiming your trial okay so there we go i'm gonna center that element all right okay so don't love this font here it, it just looks a little bit big for me so i'm gonna make that smaller size 24 let's maybe make it a little bit smaller than that maybe we can make this h3 or h4 Okay, let's just make it smaller. There we go. I like having that just a lot smaller. It looks a little bit better. Okay, then we have our video. All right, and then we can put this right beneath the video. All right, so whatever your name is, you can just put your name in right there. Okay, good to go. And then on this video, again, this is where you'd actually send them to the trial. So this looks pretty good right now. I just make this button a little bit bigger. Okay, boom, there we go. Now, if I change the button here, I've also got to change the button down here, right? So what I'll do is I will uh, clone this button then. So what I usually like to do, and here's just a quick tip for videos, what I'll do is I'll come in and click on the little link to link out to a URL. So this would link to, you know, if I'm promoting Builder All or promoting some affiliate offer, that would go to my actual link where they would see the page to sign up. And, and you can send that to whatever page you want, but generally that'll go right to the page where they're gonna either check out or they're gonna read through the features, all right? And then, so I can put in my name here. You can also put in your name down here. So you just, you wanna read through this and make sure it actually fits your offer, right? But once I have this button ready, I can then, I can then, um, let's see here, duplicate it. And then I would delete this one down here, okay? Very simple. And then I would drag this one down here, perfect. There we go. All right. There we go. Let's center that element. Good to go. All right. So again, guys, I'm going to say this and I'm going to beat this dead horse until it's dead. This is simple.
keep it simple, right? Just keep your messaging on point and make it clear and easy to understand. And all of this suddenly becomes very easy. The reason we don't even get that far into design necessarily, which look, design's important, but the reason we don't get super deep into design is because there's so many templates. There's so many pre-done things these days. WordPress, ClickFunnels, uh, Wix, Squarespace, they have these pre-done templates, right? They're just kind of sitting ready to go. So the design piece of it isn't as important. And the reason we know that is look, so many people have access to these softwares like Builderall, right? And yet such a small percentage of people actually use them to become wealthy on the internet. Why is that? Why is that? It's certainly not because they don't have pre-done templates to create beautiful landing pages and funnels. That's not the answer. The answer is your messaging. The answer is your marketing. That's the answer. That's the difference. Okay. So we've gone through a very simple two-step funnel. Now for whatever business that you're in, let's say if I'm in an application business or if I'm in a kind of a lead generation business for HVAC, I could use a panel that looks like this. And there's more of these coming just so you know, lots more. And we have a whole design team working on those. I'm not going to get into what's coming with the tool and what's not right now. Okay. I'm just, we're not going to get into that. Um, but you can just, if you were in lead generation for HVAC, you could say, you know, uh, free video demonstrates the one hidden secret to building, growing your social media presence. You could say free video demonstrates the five things you must know before getting your HVAC service. All right. Something like that. And then you can get their first name, last name, email, and phone number. Okay. Pretty simple. Um, if you were in an app and, and you would do that on your first page and then on the next page, I mean, you essentially just use a bridge page funnel, but, but here's, um, if you wanted to do like an application funnel or something like that, you could use a, a panel like this, right? Just a sim and we have used this to generate tens of thousands, actually, yeah, I mean, maybe six figures in sales using a very similar page to this. I personally have very similar to this, okay? And then look down here below. Check it out. Here's an actual application. Here's an actual application you can use, okay? So let's just be very clear. The stuff is here for you, okay? The stuff is here for you. You can go into Mailing Boss and mess around with this and actually get this set up and ready to go. So if you're doing an ad agency, you're doing a web design agency, you're doing whatever, you can use this exact thing and it's very simple and straightforward, okay? All right, so you would just come in, customize this. This would be your thank you page. And that's all. You don't need to create some fancy video. You don't need to do any of that stuff. All right. So hopefully this is helpful and makes sense. Now, are there going to be different things that show up on the page? Are there going to be different headaches you're going to have to work through when you're building your funnel? The answer to this is yes. All right. We're not going to clog this Facebook group in, in the, in the bootcamp. We're not going to clog it with support tickets. We're not going to clog it with any of that stuff, but here's what I want you to do. If you have a funnel today, if you have a funnel done, ready to go today, here's what I want you to do. I want you to paste the link. I want you to get the link to that. And I want you to put it in the comments. Okay. Here's what we're going to do tomorrow, whether it's pre-recorded or live, that's to be determined. We're going to go through various links for people's funnels, all right? So even if you're just getting your funnel set up right now for the first time, I want you to get it set up, I want you to get it created, and I want you to send me the link to your funnel in the comments of this video. That really simply by just coming right here and hitting go to website page, it'll pull open your funnel, copy that and paste it, okay? It's very simple. If you have your actual domain set up, like you go through the whole thing in the site settings and get everything all set up, okay, go for it, that's great. But all we really need is just this, this link right here and that's totally fine, all right? The last piece of this, I need you to commit to figuring it out, okay? Whether you're creating it on Cheetah, whether you're creating it on Pixel Perfect, doesn't matter. Wherever you feel most comfortable to create the site, create it, okay? It's not a, it, it, I, I am so unfocused with the little minutia and little tiny things about, well, you know, what about, what, what about, uh, should I use this tool or this thing doesn't seem to work perfectly or what? Any support stuff, take it to support with whatever company you're building your funnels with. If it's Builderall, go into the Facebook Builderall support group, post whatever's not working. Submit a support ticket in the back office, okay? That's all very easy to do. You can come into your back office, okay? You can go to help and you can go to support or you can go to tickets. Either one is fine. Very easy to get help. Okay. Very easy to get your support tickets taken care of. And furthermore, I'd probably recommend starting there rather than jumping into Facebook quick because that can sort of create a culture where people start to nag and it seems like there's issues all the time and it creates kind of a negative energy. I would just go and create a support ticket if you have any issues. All right. So hopefully this makes sense for whatever business you're in, for whatever industry you're in. I want you to go ahead and I want you to start creating that funnel. Today's a national holiday. It's Veterans Day. Maybe you have the day off. I want you to create the funnel and I want you to post the link in the comments here. And whoever, whoever posts it, guess what? You're going to get a free website critique, a little hot seat critique tomorrow, which is Tuesday for day 12. So congratulations on making it through this long video. Hopefully this was helpful for you. All right. Hopefully this was helpful and let's rock and roll. Hey again, it's Matt and welcome back to week two, the perfect funnel. And today we have something really special for you. I'm excited and I think you're going to love what we're going to do today. We're going to do some live hot seat critique. So yesterday, the call to action that I gave and thanks for everybody who followed there and did it. And I know that there's still many of you who are working on constructing and putting up this first funnel. So if you haven't got there quite yet, no problem. Don't worry about it. Um, but for those of you who are on it, who are hammering through these day after day and are caught up and, and completing everything, I'm going to reward you with a live hot seat critique of your website. Now I'm going to try to go through all of these. I don't know how long it's going to take. Okay. So um, I'm going to try to just kind of hammer through all of the people who up until recording have left their link. Okay. So if I don't make it through all of yours, uh, please forgive me, please. And maybe later on at some point in the boot camp, um, as we get closer to placing ads in week three and four, I'll be able to go through yours. Okay. So, um, don't, don't freak out and don't lose your mind. If I, if I didn't make it through yours, okay. It's not the end of your offer. It's not the end of your world. You'll be just fine. Okay.
All right, so first of all, um, I'm gonna jump into these, and in some of these cases, I'm I'm actually not going to know exactly who the person is, okay? So first first things first, when I give critiques, many of you have never been involved, but I do these kind of hot seat critiques almost on a weekly basis, okay? And what you need to understand about me and how I do this is I'm, I'm extremely objective. I am not, just to be very clear here, I am not subjectively trying to pick you out. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm not trying to say anything personal against you whatsoever, okay? I just wanna be very clear about that. Very, very clear about that because I'm going to tear these things apart, okay? And look, the only benefit that can come from that is that you finally make some strides in the area of funnel building, okay? And these are hard, transferable skills, and I want you to be able to create these funnels much better moving forward, okay? All right, so um, again, I don't I don't even really know who these are unless I scroll down and find it somewhere. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't even have it, okay? So, um, which is totally fine. It's actually just not a big deal. I, I just, um, yeah, we're, we're gonna just bang through this stuff right, right quick, and, and I'm actually gonna pull open my highlighter as well so that we can do a little bit of drawing on the screen so i will uh, as we go through this i'm gonna i'm gonna do little drawings on my screen and let me configure that real quick so i have a good color for this okay we're ready to rock so uh, a couple things here i'm gonna just basically go from top to bottom on this website and give you some feedback okay um now uh your cash flow plan okay so we have what we're looking at on this website is we have a lot of buttons uh which is okay but let me i'm just going to try to give you a few little pieces of advice in terms of design on this so when, when I hover over this link, okay, it, it comes up lime green. And then if I click it, it takes me over to this survey, which is actually pretty cool. So this is this is pretty cool um, and looks nice. I'll, I'll just let you know one thing just off the top, using a URL like Easy Profit Site, when you put easy or profit or, for instance, passive income on a site, I'm just going to let you know you won't be able to run Facebook ads later on in this training with that kind of lingo on that. We're going to go through Facebook's uh, compliance policies later on. But for right now, I'm just going to let you know that... Um, that language is going to be blocked from Facebook and, and it won't work. So I'm just giving you kind of a precursor right now. Um, okay, so so you have this image here and for your background. Now, I'm just going to give you a design tip. This is is just not a good color choice, okay? With the lime green here, the lime green is never a good, it's it's outdated. This is kind of what you would see in the in the late 90s, early 2000s when people are just starting to make websites. Um, it's outdated and it looks old and it looks not very well put together. Um, in addition, from yesterday, I gave some I gave some tips on, on uh, fonts that you can use, okay? So I would avoid fonts that look like kind of Times New Roman. And then you have multiple different fonts happening here on the page. I would recommend to you that you stick with maybe one or two fonts only, like whatever this font is here looks beautiful um, and it looks like it's kind of put together well. So Lato is a great font and I would recommend using Lato uh, for that. Now. One little tip and trick that you need to play around with. The reason I think that you made this all green like this is because this background image is is, um, is kind of hard to see. So what you can do, I won't do it with the whole background image, but what you can do, I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this image and save it to my desktop, okay? So what you can do is go into Builder All Tools and lighten or darken this image. I only used a tool called PhotoJet for years, and so I'm going to just really quick, it's, it's just in my, it's in my, um, it's in my bookmark, so I'm just going to do this really quick so you can see this and it won't take very much time. Um, what you can do with image, guys, this is a huge design thing, is you can darken the image, okay, or you can blur the image to make it look better. So what you can do here um, is with the exposure, okay, so you can turn down the brightness of an image. You can also put a box over the image and then set the opacity of the box to be less. But, but generally what you can do is you can take and just darken in any image like that. And then when you have the words come over it, it just pops right off. So what I usually do for better design is I'll take and darken the image like that, about 85%, and then put white words over the top of it, and it usually looks really, really good, okay? So that's just one little tip because you've got too many colors happening. So so good design online, guys, is about less is more. Less is always more, okay? Less is always, 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 always more, okay? So I wouldn't recommend having it go from this kind of, this color here, this this pinkish color, salmon color, that's actually really good, but I wouldn't have a blue outline on it. That's that's also not very good design. I would have something more of like, uh, just a, whatever this color is, this pink color, just a couple shades darker for the border of that, okay? I would also make the buttons a little bit, have them have, them have more spacing around the words. So, you know, just make the box a little bit taller and make this a little bit wider because it just, it looks... It's just not uh, your standard web design, okay? There's a lot of space. There's excess space between the, uh, this headline here and this headline here. There's different fonts. It's all too overwhelming, okay? When you get somebody to a website, now you're gonna say, well, I only have one button. It's, you know, my info survey, my express lane. When you get somebody to a, to a landing page, you want them to have to make one decision and you want as little as, as uh, stimulation or overwhelm as humanly possible, okay? So <clears throat> for instance, um, all of this text that's why we created our free business jumpstart program. So, you can, so this is actually really good, but it's just kind of unclear about what what is a what's a free cash flow plan here. What what's my cash flow plan, right? So it's it. I'm sure you're familiar with how most people struggle with any type, business type startup or growth frustration. That's why we created our free business jumpstart program. So you can quickly accelerate into producing spendable paydays. So I I would also think through: Is this what people really want, right? So I might I might say something more like, "That's why we created our free 
I, I would, there, there's too much words here. So here's what, exactly what I would say. I would say, um, um, and, and you could probably combine all of this into this right here as well and just have one single headline with a tiny sub headline like I explained in yesterday's video. So you could say, you could say, um, free cash flow plan, colon, um, discover how to quickly accelerate your business and turn it into a dream and turn it into a dream rather than a nightmare. And then it, for the subheadline, you could say, finally become that financial rock star you've always wanted to be. Something like that, right? And then have the button below that. Now, all of this would be one, you know, text. It would look, it would just be very easy to read. The other thing here is paydays is, is kind of off of the grid, off of this block. And so you just want to fix that as well. Um, um, step by step instructions, you know, passive income, one to one mentoring. Second mediocre traffic stinks. You deserve much better. Um, so, so I, I don't even think you need this. I, I just think it's kind of excessive. This picture is a little bit blurry, but I, I get that you like it and it looks okay, but at least make it, you know, a Leto font that's really heavily bolded, Leto heavy or something. Um, get into your express line here. We don't, and again, with this image back here behind this, this is pretty blurry. So it just looks low quality. Like these icons, they look low quality. Um, so I, I just, I would probably get rid of this whole section. Um, here's how it works. Info survey, tell us how to customize your cash flow plan. Um, so, so info survey, right? I would say, Take our, take our, inf, take our, uh, take the free survey to customize your cash flow plan, approve your new cash flow plan. Take it for a spin and experience your new cash flow plan benefits. Um, one to one customized cash flow plan. Okay, so, so uh, I think you're listing a lot of good stuff here. Accelerator is spelt wrong. Okay, just as a heads up, um, I'm not going to be able to catch all typos, but amenities is spelt wrong. Okay, so um, make sure that if English, and, and then look at this right here. There's the P right here is cut off and the Y here is cut off at the bottom. So there's some issue with your line height there. Okay. So those little details really matter because then people are going to come to your website and be like, I don't even know if this person's legit. Okay. The last piece here, what I would do from a strategy standpoint is, is I would, when people click on this, I would make it pull open a pop-up rather than just going straight to the survey, make them give you their name and email address. And then after they do that, then send them onto the survey or email them the survey. That's what I would recommend because right now when you click it, they're just going to come to the survey and drop off and disappear. And you're never going to collect that lead, but that might be a good quality lead. You never know. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, ultimately, I would just, I would highly recommend that you remove more than you add to this page and that you simplify it. Less fonts, only use one font, right? Only use one style. So on a button right here, if you have the underline, then use the underline on all of them. I would recommend just never using underline on buttons ever. It's just not good styling. It's not, it's not the standard for um, web design. Okay. Um, so anyway, hopefully that's helpful. Again, you can go back through day 11's training and, and get some ideas on what, how to make your buttons look and how to kind of format uh, the headline and the subheadline for this. But well done on taking action. Uh, whoever you are, I'm not going to pull up people's names right now, but whoever you are, well done. Good job. Um, and let's, let's optimize and make it even better. This is the point. The point is that you create something and then it's just amazing and it works perfectly. This is never how life works and this is not how, certainly not how marketing works. Everything is a test. Okay. So I can give you all of this good feedback. The best thing you can do is to implement any feedback that you get right away. Okay. All right. Well done. Okay, so this one is a little bit more simple. Uh, well done to, it looks like uh, Gordon. I'm not sure if that's actually you or if that's someone else, but um, it looks like this is in German uh, or maybe both languages, I'm not sure. Um, really well done. I mean, this looks really good. Uh, I have a few ideas about design that maybe we could help you out on, um, but this is free ebook. I would capitalize the B generally in an ebook. Uh, usually the B is capitalized. Um, not a big deal, but just a thought. Affiliate marketing starting booster. So. I, I don't like the title of this affiliate affiliate marketing starting booster starting it just the the English of it doesn't work so if this is gonna be launched in a different language that's okay then I would I would just like kind of assume that this is more easily understood in a different language but um, you know I would say affi affiliate marketing business booster something like that right now that sounds a lot better eight now here's the thing um, successful is spelled wrong so there should only be one L here eight simple steps to starting to start a successful affiliate marketing business so this is great this is great um, however just I you know I would I would make sure to either have this be a little bit different font size or font weight. Um, or I, I think that because when, the thing is, is once you get down to a mobile device, um, no, it still looks great. No, you know what? I think you're good. I think you're good. I wouldn't change much here. Um, and then down here, the only thing that I would do is um, I usually like to have this font here say email address. So just make it say first name and then email address. Um, and that's, that's perfect. I do not like the, the shadow behind this button and then making the hover purple. This purple is, this is, this is bad. Okay. I'm just going to give it to you straight. This purple is real bad. And the, and the back kind of shadow on it being purple is not great either. When, when it comes to shadows, they need to be extremely subtle. Okay. Extremely subtle. And I would just recommend not even having one, maybe just having like a one pixel border around the edge. That's very similar to this color. And if you're going to do a shadow, I would, I would just recommend doing like a black shadow. That's just very subtle and barely visible, like super blurry. Um, but I would just get rid of that because these colors don't work. And this purple is so out of place here. Um, it just doesn't, just doesn't work, but Hey, well done on this. Okay. Okay, if you're looking for a job, start stop searching. In about 10 days, you'll learn to generate income for yourself. Subscribe here to access my solution. Make sure that this is centered. All right, this is 
looking like it's not fully centered. Um, but otherwise, good job. Well done. I would, my recommendation, I think this is a mirror. My recommendation is I would, if you're going to use a background color, don't make it just the background color of that panel or that block or box. Make it the background color of the whole page. But I, I would just try to choose or find a background color that's a little less bright and overwhelming to the eyes. Okay. So that's why I just tell people stick with a white background. I know everybody wants to get cute and put different background colors and lots of different shadows and text shadows and all this stuff. I'm just here to tell you that the less is more. Less is always more. So if you're looking for a job, stop searching. Here's, here's Amir, what I would recommend is I would recommend telling this a little bit more and couching it in your story. If you're going to talk about income, it's got to be couched in your story. Um, you can use it like this, but it won't work on Facebook. I'm just going to let you know that right now. If you don't have plans of, of launching on Facebook, then awesome. I mean, more power to you. It doesn't matter. But um, I'm just letting you know. I would probably make this text down here a little bit smaller and then just make it white so you can see it, right? This gray, it really doesn't fit into the overall style of the page. Um, Okay, and then I usually recommend to everybody that you have first name on the top and email on the bottom. So it says first name up here on the top and then, and then email address on the bottom part, okay? Um, I'm not sure what font you're using. It might looks like you might be using Leto. Uh, the other thing is you should capitalize the first letter of each of these, okay? If you are looking for a job, words like, um, words like R or A, you can leave not uppercase, but the word job, the letter J should be capitalized, okay? Um, and then I think, I think everything else is, is good. Um, I don't think you need to say subscribe here to access my solution. I think you could just remove that completely. It could just say, if you're, if you're looking for a job, stop searching in about 10 days, you'll learn to generate income for yourself. What are they going to do in 10 days? Right? So, so what I would describe this a little bit more. I would say, um, you know, what are they going to learn? Or what are they going to do? What's, what's the action needed, right? Enter your email below, enter your name and email below, and you'll, you'll get instant access to a seven day or a 10 day video series where, you, where you're, where you'll learn to generate income for yourself. Something like that. That's what I would recommend. Okay. Well done. Good job. This looks, this looks really good. Okay. It looks really, really good. So well done on taking action. All right, live webinar. All right, I like this kind of um, just one little thing on this. You could maybe make the webinar, uh, the outline on that, just a little thicker. It would, it would maybe look a little bit more authoritative, but this, this looks really good. Um, the other thing, guys, when you use logos is I always recommend having the equal amount of space from the top of the page to fr – from the top of the logo to the top of the page up here. From the bottom of the logo to the start of the page down here, I, you should have equal spacing there doesn't really matter what the spacing is. It just should be equal spacing. Okay. All right. Free webinar, create a website that makes money without frustration, free training reveals how building a site with support gets you more sales and makes you money faster. So building a site with support. So unless if this webinar is about building sites with, with like a support uh, plugin or, or um, like you can see how this is confusing, right? So first of all, all the formatting on here and stuff, this actually, this looks really good. I mean, good job. Okay. I want to be clear on that. Really good job. I would make this free webinar, right? I would make this so that it only appears on one line. So either make it a little smaller or um, you could say free webinar, create a website that makes, um, um, create a website that makes money without frustration. Yeah, I might just make that a little smaller. Um, I would center this, make sure to center this because it looks like it's not quite centered. It looks like it's off to the left a little bit. Um, and then, you know, if you make this smaller, make sure to make this match that smaller size as well. Um, okay. So free training reveals how building a site with support. I, I, this is confusing. How building a site with support gets you more sales. Okay. So I would say, um, and makes you money faster. Um, so is this actually about uh, how to use a support system? It is about a support system. Okay, so never mind. Um, how building a site with a support system or how, okay, so what I would say is how adding a support system can increase your conversions on your website and make you money faster, right? Create the site of your dreams while having, I, I would I would get rid of this. This doesn't create the site of your dreams while having someone guide you. It's just more fluff. It's more things for them to read. I think I would just get rid of that. Um, then down here, I mean, this looks good. Okay, this looks great. I would keep this text, the hover text white. And then the, when you hover over the button, just make the button a little darker, but keep the text white when you hover. Okay. Um, I would, I would make this white, 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 white. Okay. That'll look a lot better. Um, and I would probably even get rid of this blue back, this light blue background. If you can, I don't think you really need that. Um, it looks fine though. I mean, you don't have to, but I would just, if you want my suggestion. Um, okay. So I would capitalize the word having your and website have the first letter of those capitalized. Everything else here looks good. Okay. Um, now these are not level. Okay. I can tell these are not uh, aligned. These kind of these three uh, row, this this row basically of text, right? So how to attract clients? Um, that that should be at the exact same height on the page as this. So you want to make those fully aligned. Same with the same with simple system of building, right? Now here again, in terms of design, look at how look at how these letters are all capitalized. The first letter of these are all capitalized, but over here it's not, right? So this is a lack of congruency, and it's going to make people look at your website and say, oh, this isn't professional. So same with this image right here. This image is not. It's blurry. It's it looks a little sloppy. Okay. So it's not, again, it's, it's not really professional. Here's a taste of what you'll learn during this training. I, I would just say, here's exactly what you're going to learn. Here is exactly what you're going to learn. Okay. Um, just simplify that, make it easier. Um, and I would space this a little bit further 
So I would, I would make this go down on the page just a little bit to like right here, just to give the eyes a little bit more breathing room, okay? And then I would do less spacing between each of these. There's too much space between these. It looks just a little weird. How to overcome the single greatest hurdle in selling and no, it isn't price. See, this is great. This is, this is incredible copy, okay? <clears throat> How to use a support system and get your site making life, uh, life-changing life income at 50% less time, okay? Bonus, um, three secret steps you can start. Uh, immediately is not spelled correctly, uh, so just check that uh, to get your website for free. Good job. Um, there's too much space beneath this to down to the bottom of that little spot like right here there's just too much space from the bottom of these words down to here so i would decrease that so what you want guys when you're when you're creating websites like this okay here's what i would make this look like okay i'm actually going to take a screenshot for you real quick and i'm going to show you on keynote really quick how i would make this look okay so i brought it into keynote okay i brought it into keynote now what i would do here is first of all i would um i would just grab all of these okay and Save to clipboard, paste. I'm going to show you how I do this too, because I think this will be valuable for you. And I'm going to create a little box, okay? And I'm going to cover all that stuff up. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to drag this up and bring it to front. You guys can rewatch this if you want to see me do this again. But basically, what I would do is do this, okay? So I would make it look something a little bit more like this. And here's why. Here's what I mean: is from the top of these words right here up to the to the bottom of this white box, and from the bottom of these words to the bottom of this tan box, there's the same amount of spacing, right? Now, if I was going to get really picky, here's here's just one other thing that I would do is I would I would make these spaced a little bit closer together. I'm not going to get crazy here, but um, I would make these bullet points spaced a little bit closer together. All right, and here's what I mean. Oops. Now let me make this the same size as it was before. So something like this, guys. Something like this. So they're a little bit closer together. And it'll just look, it'll look a little bit cleaner, right? So that's what I meant by there's too much space between these is just put them a little bit closer together and it'll look a little bit better. That's, that's really all that I meant. So here, let me do this one final time and then I'll show you kind of what I would recommend. I'm going to pause this for just a second. It would look something like this after everything is said and done. It would look something like this, right? And if we compare that to this over here, right? If we compare that, it just looks better, right? It just looks cleaner. There's less space. There's just less kind of random spacing. So it's those little spacing and padding attention to details that'll make all the difference. So hopefully that's helpful. All right, on to the next one. After a year spent in the military, could a career in digital marketing be for you? Check out all, check out the top 10 businesses to make money online within 2019. And the, okay, so this looks really good. Well done. I mean, yeah, this looks really good. Um, you might be, you might want to make, I'm, I'm glad that you have a disclaimer down here. I would have terms, privacy as well, terms and conditions and privacy policy. You can find templates for those, by the way, of what to write and everything and put it on a, on a website in, in Builder All. Um, anywhere online. <clears throat> so go find a template for those. Everybody, go find a template and put terms and conditions and privacy policy at the bottom of your pages. Um, now, in terms of the page, it looks really good. I would make this just white. So I would just make this white and maybe darken the background a little bit. Make it make it darker and then just make this white because it would really pop off and look amazing because you've done a great job at design on this. So uh, whoever this is, really well done. And then I would make this white as well and make this white as well. I would decrease the line spacing here. So I would make these uh, uh, basically appear closer together. There's just, there's too much space between these. Um, and then I would capitalize the word with and online, okay? So if you're capitalizing top and businesses and make and money, I would capitalize this with and online as well, okay, in 2019. And the all-in-one marketing software that can help you crush it. Yeah, that looks good. So I would, again, if you're going to be compliant with Facebook, they don't like it framing it around you, around, meaning they don't like you you pointing out people or calling them out in, in headlines or in your ads. So you could also say, after a year spent in the military, I decided a career in digital marketing was for me. Same thing, because ultimately, look, you're not using the word you, which is more compliant with Facebook, okay? But when you say after you're spent in the military, ultimately, at the end of the day, um, people who resonate with you are going to are gonna respond to this, okay? So, hey, well done on this. This looks really dang good. Take a couple of those, a little bit of that feedback, and, and you'll be rocking, okay? All right. So, um, you are invited. Get a seven-day free trial. Sign up today. Get digitally empowered. All right. So, um, let's see. Seven-day free trial builder. all helps entrepreneurs, digital business, and get your platform on the web. Get your free trial today and get digitally empowered to build something incredible. Okay. Um, once you have solid business... You know, sure, user can be one of, as you can see, I can just really build a business. Um, okay, got it. So I would just, on this, since you're an affiliate, I would just make very clear, not only that it's owned by an affiliate, but I would look up the FTC disclosure for affiliates. Okay, you can Google that, uh, FTC disclosure for affiliates, and I would include that down here at the bottom, along with the terms and privacy. Um, okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, I would just, so this the shadow on this is a little intense. I would use a, a more subtle shadow. And um, it just says you are invited. Get a seven-day free trial. And then I have to scroll all the way down to this stuff to really even see what's going on. Okay, but the other thing is, is that nowhere on this page does it tell me that I can build websites or that I can create sales funnels or that I can do my email marketing, right? All it says is complete digital marketing, business builder and marketing platform. So it's online business builder and marketing platform. So what I would, I would recommend is the first things first, digital online business, that's kind of the same thing. 
So online and digital, th those are synonymous. Those are basically the same word. So I would just use one of those, probably digital. Um, I would center the Builderall logo. Okay, I would center that on this page. And then I would use a longer headline. I would say, discover the world's most powerful sales funnel, sales funnel builder um, or website builder. Uh, get, you know, whatever, get a seven day trial of the world's most powerful website builder, whatever your ad angle is going to be. Okay. Because getting digitally empowered, it's vague. It just, I don't even really know what's going on here. Okay. But everything else here looks good. So uh, I would just be more clear because this is not clear what even builder all is. So what they're going to do, why that's so important is they're going to go Google builder all and they're going to sign up with some other affiliate. That's why it's important as an affiliate marketer to be really clear. Super important. Okay. All right. Vision marketing and design. Okay. That's a very cool logo. I like that a lot. Um, and I might even just as a tip on your logo, I mean, this is just me, but I might even remove marketing and design from this, from the bottom. Cause that looks a little, I'm not trying to be mean, but it, it looks like it cheapens it a little, right? So Apple, it, when you look at the Apple logo, all it is is an Apple, right? It says Apple. If, if it says anything, it says Apple. It doesn't say Apple iPhones and Macs. <laughs> it doesn't say iPhones and MacBook Pros, right? But we don't really think through that, but that's the truth, right? It doesn't, it, when you look at the logo for Target, it doesn't say Target retail stores, <laughs> right? Get everything you need. Um, when I look at, uh, there, you can look at just any, any big company like that. Google, if you look at the Google logo, it doesn't say web search. Okay. So I would just, I think it cheapens it a little. And I think honestly, if I look at everything above here, just vision and then this graphic, this is awesome. I really love it. Um, want to start an online business? The first step, find your niche. So make this, when you're using headlines, make this as bold or as heavy a font as you can. So Lato heavy is great. Uh, or any other font that's really bold and heavy feel, it needs to feel heavy to it. Um, I think as well, I would just subtly, I would make the, the, if you can, I would make the, um, the, the font shadow, the text shadow, a little less heavy. I would make it more subtle. And then I would never use, um, my recommendation to you at least is I wouldn't use uh, a text shadow on like sub headlines like this or on just normal text. I would just use white with no text shadow because the thing is, is on a background that's as dark as this is, it actually makes it harder to read rather than easier to read. And the goal is to make it easier to read with a text shadow. So I would make it more look like this down here. Um, check your image right here. So, um, I would make your button, your button, um, if you can center aligned and, uh, I would make it, uh, just a, a bigger, make your, make this bigger. So claim your free copy. Now I would, I would make that probably double the font size and I would make this in all caps, uh, the whole thing, every word, all caps and double the font size and make it a heavy font, make it really heavy. I would also recommend, um, just putting first name here and then getting rid of last name. Just a lot of times it's not all that helpful in marketing. And ultimately at the end of the day, well, it does deter a lot of people. It just does. Um, I'm happy to see though that you have a Facebook pixel. So great work on that. Um, and then for the email, I would put email address. So email address for the placeholder. Um, but everything else here looks really good. I'm glad to see you have privacy policy. You have a disclaimer. Good job, Bridget. This is really, really great. Um, I love to see it. And uh, just as one final tip, I would decrease the amount of line spacing on this. It's, it's, there's too much space between want and then first, like there's, there needs to be less space, but not a lot. Not a lot. And then I would also just subtly increase the space from the top of like the top of these words to the top of this. I would maybe double or triple that spacing. And then I would decrease the amount of spacing between here and here. So whatever the spacing is from the top of these words here to up to, to, you know, where this meets here, I would make that equal to the bottom of these words and then the top of this image. And, and ultimately I would make the top of that image and this little thing, make sure that they are aligned horizontally so that the top of this photo is also the top of these words here. It'll just give your overall feel of the website more of a put together feel. And it will, that increases conversions by a lot. Okay. Well done, Bridget. Well done. All right. Day 11, constructing the funnel. What are the top 10 businesses do you think to make money with? So don't ask a question in the headline, just as a tip. Um, tell them what they're going to learn. Okay. But Hey, good job. I'm glad to see you got this thing up like and actually working. So well done. What are the, so I would say discover the top 10 businesses to make money online with in 2019. Okay. Um, but Hey, nice job, man. Good job. Good work. Looks great. All right. Uh, want more, wanting more hours than you want missing your family. I think there's two spaces right here. Yeah. There's two spaces. So just make sure to correct that. There should only be one space there. And, and this attention to detail is something that's learned over time guys. So I've learned that over time. Hey, good job putting legal info terms, privacy, GDPR, and the copyright down here. Good job. Um, wanting more hours than you want missing your family. Are you looking for a marketing tool that can change that? Start growing, scale your business quickly and easily. Okay. Hey, good job here. This looks, this looks really good. All right. Um, a couple things. So, um, I would make this smaller. Okay. And I, as we learn copywriting a little bit, I think you can combine these. So, so I would just say, um, um, discover the, and, and I, so I would probably delete this. Okay. Delete this up here. And I would probably just say, discover the all in one marketing tool that can, that allows, that can allow you, or has allowed me to work less hours and spend more time with the, with my family and the people that I love. And then I would just make this a little bit smaller and say, start, grow and scale your business quickly and easily. Okay. And so I would make this about half the size, something like that. Um, and then I don't, I don't really think you need enter your name and email address. I, I don't like this beneath the, the email, the name and email spot. So if you're going to put it anywhere, it needs to be above this, but I think you could probably get rid of it. Okay. Um, um, and, and then you could, you could change this lingo here that just, you could say, enter your name and email below to, to learn how to start, grow and scale your business quickly and easily. And then just make this smaller. So it all fits on one line. That's what I would recommend, but Hey, great job. This looks really, really good. Well done. All right. Must see video. This is a little hard to read. So, um, 
you might want to just brighten this up a little bit. Okay, just brighten it a hair. Picking the perfect product, but I really, I like the, the font weight and everything that you've done here. This is heavy. It looks good. Picking the perfect product to promote as an affiliate. Missing one of these five must-haves can make all the difference between success and failure. Hey, good job. This looks really good. Provide me with your name and email so we can reveal to you the PPPA formula. Hey, great job. This looks really good. Whoever did this, great job. This this is beautiful. It looks well put together. You have your legal disclosures at the bottom. Um, just uh, just hand claps to you. Looks, I mean, it looks really good. Nice job. Um, this up here is blurry. So up here, this is something about this is blurry, and you never want blurry images. That is the death of a website. Uh, same with this over here. This little arrow, it's blurry. So overall, I like I like the 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 thought behind it, and I like how it's set up. Just don't use blurry images as well. Um, gain transitional skill from this all-in-one digital marketing tool. So. Uh, Gain it here. Just here's a tip, William, on ad copy. People don't want to gain transitional skills. It's not what they're after. They're after benefits, right? This is a feature. This is what, what they'll actually do. What's the result of this? That's what we sell to, okay? So just think through that. But you, it should be, say, the word skills it should be plural. Um, but good job. This looks good. Um, I might increase the amount of space beneath digital marketing tool and then the arrow here. They're a little bit too close together. They're kind of smashed together there. Um, but this looks really good, man. I mean, good job. Now, I would also have... Um, I would also have this be a pop-up, right? So when they click the button, they should go to a pop-up, not just straight to a page so that you collect their name and email address before they come here, before they come here, okay? And then you can have them create their seven-day account and sign up, okay? All right, well done on this, though. This looks really good. Um, you know, this here, I mean, free proven method generates business. If you're going to say generates business for you while you sleep day after day, you've got to have some sort of income claim or some sort of uh, disclosure at the bottom of your page or even up here because that's it's kind of like it's claiming. So, um, hey, everybody who submitted their sites, well done. If you didn't submit a site yet, look, we can get to more of these later on in the bootcamp. Hopefully this is helpful, all right? Now, would I have loved to go through and correct all of the different all of the different stuff in here? I would have loved to, but there's just not enough time in the day to do that with these. Uh, but hopefully I give you enough tips and looking at other people's will give you enough of a guideline to go and make corrections on your pages. So well done, everybody. We're wrapping up day 12. Greetings, my friends. Welcome back to the bootcamp. I'm pumped. Today is day 13. We're almost halfway through this freaking bootcamp. Now, for those of you watching this video, here's one thing you're going to notice. If you go back and look at day one of the bootcamp, and now look at day 13, look at how many less views there are. Look at how much less engagement there is. So if you're watching this and you're engaging with this whole process, just know with anything you sell online, anything that gets purchased, any kind of course or bootcamp, or you freaking name it, there's going to be people who drop off all the time, okay? So uh, that's just life. That's how it works. And look, I'm not even trying to shame the people who aren't. Things come up in life, right? Things come up in life. And, and guess what? They'll probably be back ready to go in no time flat, okay? So, but here's the deal. I want you to pat yourself really freaking hard on the back. Well, don't hurt yourself, but pat, pat yourself hard on the back and give yourself a well done, all right? That's important along the process. One of the big mistakes I made as I was getting started is I never congratulated myself. I never awarded myself. Okay. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to pound through a few slides about week two, the perfect funnel. And today, what we're going to talk about are the 13 secrets to video mastery, the 13 secrets to video mastery, because we've been talking through the funnel. And we've been talking about adding webinars or videos. This is going to apply to whether you do a video, a webinar, any kind of thing that you do, this is going to apply. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to pound through my 13 secrets and we're going to start right now on number one. Okay. And notice how just at the beginning of this video, I am ready to march. Take notes on that. I am ready to march forward on this video. And that is a posturing. We're going to talk about that in a second, but that is a posturing you must have when you get on video. Okay. So number one, Lean in and embrace your future self, okay? So when I first got started, I was super scared of video. Now I don't really sweat. I'm not nervous. I'm not anxious, none of that stuff because I learned to lean in and embrace my future self, right? So maybe today, maybe right now today, current day self for you is scared of embracing video, of really lighting it up on video. Draw this out because I think it'd be helpful if we all got on the same page in terms of what I mean. So if this is current day you here today and this is future you, right? What you have to realize is there is a future version of you who has no fear of video, who is not scared at all, who doesn't stumble, who doesn't, who doesn't uh, uh, fumble over their words or, or get scared or get worried about what people think. None of that stuff, okay? And that is future you. So today, I'm telling you today where you are today, you've got to realize that all of the fear and all the worry and all the, I'm scared, I'm, I'm worried about what people are going to think or any of that stuff. None of that will matter when you hit your future self. But guess what? The only way to hit that is to step into it, right? It's kind of a catch-22. But in a very real way, I'm here to promise you, I'm living proof of it, that you must step into that today. Visualize the mental state. Vis visualize the, the physical posture and start creating it now. Throw your shoulders back. Say, damn it, I have this. I am going to crush this. I've got this under control. I am going to master this. Okay? And that is very much a mentality that you have to take when you get on video. You have to embrace that future self. For instance, here's a good example. Look at me. This is about seven years ago. And the pillows, you can see how I kind of set up my own little studio here. These pillows that I would set up acted as sort of a sound studio. So what most people do is they say, well, I don't have the money for a great microphone. I can't drop $300. I'm just not going to create videos. I said, to hell with that. I will figure out a freaking way to make awesome videos. So I would set this up with pillows on each side, right? And what it would do is it would muffle the sound and make it sound like I had an awesome microphone. But really, I just had my, I just had a little MacBook Pro 13 inch laptop that I was doing it on. Same thing with webinars. I didn't know how to get two screens to host a webinar so I could share my screen but still be looking on the screen. So I hooked up my TV. I bought a cable, hooked up my TV, and I would host webinars from my living room floor. The first course I created online, I created from my floor, sitting down here with my shirt off in farmer's tan, and I, I generated thousands of dollars from this desk on my bed. I mean, how much of a joke is that, right? But the reality is, is that when I did that, when I stepped into these videos, the reality was, is I was fully convinced that there would be a day where I would have my home office set up and I would be wealthy from the internet, that I would develop and build the skills and I become wealthy about it, right? And so for me, when I see people who are complaining about not having the money for the equipment or complaining about not having the ability to create videos like somebody else does, look, 
I'm just telling you right now, you had better realize that everybody started exactly where you're at. Everybody who's become successful at what you want to become successful for has started right where you started. Okay. So I just wanted you to know that. And once you realize that, that everybody started in a place that's not glamorous or cute, everybody did. Every, every person online started where you're at. And now they have the results that you want. It's possible. It's totally possible. But on video, you have to figure out a freaking way to gain some confidence, walk into a video and own it. That's the end of the story. That is it. If they feel a lack of confidence, if they feel a lack, a, a little hesitation or a little, oh, I'm nervous, right? They're gone. Unless you name it, unless you say it and you say, hey, look, I'm a little new to this thing. I'm just, I'm doing this webinar on my laptop here in my home office or here in my home office or even just in my living room. I mean, I'm literally just sitting in my living room. Look, I know I haven't, I'm not some guru who's got a billion dollars online, but I'll tell you this, I'm on a freaking mission. And if you want to come along on this mission, let's go, right? That's a compelling message. Most people are scared of them being a beginner. You don't need to be scared about it. Just own it, all right? Number two, get a crystal clear vision, visual of your ideal audience, tribe, etc. So how big is your audience? What types of videos do they watch? This is stuff we talked about in the avatar earlier in the bootcamp. What types of video do they watch? What type of content do they eat up? Who are they currently following? Why are they following them? So you need to get into their current state of mind, right? My email open rates right now from my personal list are over 50%. Why is that? Because my, my brand is valuable. My, my brand is authority and influence. Why is that? Because I give them value. It's not because I have a great status. It's not because I'm, I, most of this people who open my emails are cold traffic who don't know about all of my history of coaching people and, and being in front of people. They open because I'm, I'm just giving them straight value, right? And you've got to get a crystal clear visual of who these people are, what frustrates them, what, what triggers them, what gets them excited and happy and fantasizing about a different way of life. You've got to get into that and you've got to tap into that the same way I did. I know who's watching these videos and I know when I put these photos up, some people are going to go, oh shit, that's me. I, that's me. I'm doing that. I don't have a good studio. Maybe I could be like Matt someday. All right. Number three, immediately without hesitation, rid yourself of naysayers. Okay. It's almost like getting rid of a dog, like a little nagging dog who's biting your ankles. Just flick them away with like a flick of a wrist. Just get rid of them. They, they have no space. If you want them to come back, those, those naysayers in your mind, if you want to let them come back at some point, you can, but here's the thing. They don't get space while you're creating videos ever, never, ever. Okay. People who laugh at your blogs, people who comment on your YouTube channel. Okay. Those average people don't deserve a damn space in your world ever. They do not deserve to speak into your life. They do not deserve to have any space in your brain while you're creating video. All it will do is kill your confidence and make you look bad. That's it. Number four, lighting and microphone are key. They're really important, okay? So the low budget grainy videos are a thing of the past and they immediately give you away as not knowing what the heck's going on, okay? And this stuff doesn't need to be really expensive. It's just a couple hundred bucks, okay? For less than a thousand bucks, you can get yourself a really good microphone, micro uh, uh, lighting and camera, okay? And if you don't wanna go that route, that's okay too. It's not a big deal. You can use your iPhone, the iPhone works. But here's, a, here's just a few pieces of equipment. I'm not gonna get deep down the equipment path. I'm not gonna go crazy on you right now, okay? But this blue condenser microphone on Amazon is something that you know people from anywhere from just getting started all the way to running seven figure businesses with podcasts, with videos, all that stuff, they still use these microphones. They work great. Hint, I'm using one right now. And it's only $123. It's absurd. Uh, this <clears throat> mountain dog lighting kit. So this is, uh, this is really helpful to give soft lighting. Lighting is super key. Okay. A lot of times people think the video, the camera is really key. You can on, a, on an iPhone alone, you can shoot incredible video as long as you have great lighting and a great microphone. So something like this for 38 bucks, it'll do the trick. Then if you do want to, if you want to level up, if you're not comfortable using an iPhone or a Samsung or whatever, and you want to level up on your, on your camera, you can grab a T6i or a T5i or a T7i by Canon. The reason I recommend Canon is because they have great autofocus, some of the best in the industry. So not only is it a, a cheaper option, you're not going to have to drop $2,000 or, or $2,500 on a, on a camera, but it will also give you an awesome autofocus, which just means for instance, on the T7i, that's the one I use at my house on the T7i, it has a little thing, a little, uh, a viewer on the back where you can flip it around for like selfie, uh, uh, video mode. So you can see yourself while you're shooting the video. It's really powerful. Um, and that'll help you. So what this does is it gives it more of a touch. It, it'll, it'll give it just kind of that added level of professionalism and legitness. It'll make you seem more legit, right? So if you want to go down that route and you're not going to break the bank to do it, I would highly recommend these Canon, uh, the, the Canon DSLR cameras. They're just, they're amazing. So the T6i is one that Dave has used for years and years creating most of his courses, content, videos, all that stuff on that camera. Uh, I have the T7i, which just came out a couple years ago. So uh, look, it's not super expensive to do uh, and you can get really good quality from them, okay? So number five, tempo and speed are crucial for watchability, right? You wanna lose the ah uh, and the um and you want to move through your video with a quick tempo. It's like you're on a march, the cadence, there's a forward motion, right? People are sitting there in the video, they're asking, where is this going? Right. And if you're not able to guide them to where this is going quickly, or at least show them that they're gone. Attention spans are gone. Okay. Number six, follow the four P's here. They are posture, presence, practice, profit. Okay. Listen to this shoulders back, chin up, smile, get ready. Okay. The more you practice video and put them, it, meaning put your videos in front of the world, what you start to do is you begin to embed yourself into the hearts and minds of people watching. You begin to feel like here it is. You begin to feel like a long lost friend or even a brother, sister, father, mother, son, daughter to them. It feels like they know you. And at that point, the sale is pretty much halfway or more complete. So posturing, it's important to throw those shoulders back, bring in some confidence, give a little fist pump before you get into the video and say, I got this. Have the presence, practice, 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 and then profit. Follow the four Ps. Number seven, ditch the script as much as possible. So look into the eye of the freaking camera and ditch the script. Okay. Now there's a trick on your iPhone. There's a great app. It's called the teleprompter app. Okay. And, and Android has something similar, but on an iPhone, it's called teleprompter app. Okay. And you can, what you can do is move the words 
So what the, what the iPhone does is it essentially functions just like a teleprompter would, okay? So it'll pull the words up. You can get your screen or you can get your script up on the screen. And then what you do is you, you literally put the words as close to the eye of the camera as possible. So you put it way over to the left so that the words are scrolling right next to the eye of the camera when you're, when you're doing a selfie video. And then as you're reading on the screen, it looks like you're looking right into the camera. It's super powerful. Okay. So, um, but ultimately look, I would say, ditch the script, look right into the eye of the camera and deliver. Okay. Practice and practice and practice. And then when lights, camera action time comes, you ditch it, you ditch that script and you free flow. Okay. And you let yourself go. That's important. Number eight, you've got to use metaphors, right? Rather than just saying, Hey, buy my thing. Right. Okay. Trying to sell people without using metaphors or painting picture. It's sort of like riding a bike with sand in the chain. Think about it. It's literally a grind, right? If you've ever, in, in Chicago, for instance, we used to ride down something called Lakeshore Drive. And when we would ride our bikes, it was sandy along the trail. And eventually you would get sand in your chain and you had to clean it off at some point, but you would get sand in your chain and it was literally just grinding your gears. That's what it's like when you try to sell or convince or convey a, a point or a message to somebody without using metaphors or painting pictures, right? But when you start to use metaphors, when you paint pictures for people that they can see, selling to people feels more like riding a bike with a brand new chain, fully greased up. And it just, it just rolls like butter right? You can use phrases like he's a walking encyclopedia or, or you're the apple of my eye, right? Words are just abstract. Pictures though are concrete. Words are abstract. Pictures though are concrete. They get cemented into the brains of your watchers. This is super important. There's nothing more important than this. <clears throat> Number nine, movement in action. So one of the most memorable videos that I've ever seen was a guy, he was, he was actually one of my close mentors and, uh, he was, he was pushing his kid on a swing set, right? And he steps away from the swing set. I'll never forget this. And he says, Hey, we're out on the playground today, but you know what? You mean a lot to me. And I just wanted to shoot you this two minute video just to say dot, dot, dot. And he brought over his kid and his kid, his, he, he said, Hey, Hey, I can't remember his name, Micah or something. Hey, Micah, I want you to tell the people in the camera to watch daddy short video. And then he goes, Hey, you watch daddy short video. And that video, generally when you're running cold traffic, you're looking for like a one to 3% or 4% conversion. And, and to this specific traffic that that was running to the average was about a 1% conversion rate. And what ended up happening is that video converted into a sales video that converted at 5%. So literally five times higher than the, not even the average above what had previously been the best re response from that email list. It converted at 5%. So movement, action, bringing other people in, it's, that will help sort of make you feel more normal and make, make you feel like they know you a little bit. Number 10 is just that. Involve others, okay? Family members, friends, pets. Pets are a great one. Everybody loves pets. Everybody loves a cute little dog. Bring your freaking dog into it. Just say, hey, I'm out on a walk here with Happy or with Mia or whoever your dog is. And uh, we're just out here walking through the woods. I just wanted to pop on and say hi. Here, Mia, say hi. And then, you know, make your dog bark or something, right? People are gonna be like, oh man, I like this person. They seem normal, all right? Involving others helps you uh, seem and feel more normal because your guard drops a little bit. Number 11, be you. And, and what I want to emphasize here is be your best you. Okay. So if you stay in your sweatpants till 2 PM every day, maybe don't do that. Okay. <laughs> maybe just don't do that. Maybe that's not your best you. So for example, I want to show you a photo of this guy, Pat. I worked with Pat. Um, he was an affiliate marketer and still is, I think, but, um, this has been a couple years back, but basically Pat, you can see he's got all the, he's got, you know, the, the full biker gear. He's a biker man. All right. Former vet. He's a biker. He wears skull rings. I mean, he's got the whole freaking thing. Okay. Now, Pat, started out with a, with an affiliate marketing funnel. And in his bridge video, his first video, it looked like he was tucked inside a closet with just a weird kind of blurry, um, laptop screen or whatever. And I said, Hey, Pat, here's the thing. You're not believable. People are looking at you like, who is this guy? And, and like, what's his deal? Why is he like tucked in? You know, he wasn't in a closet, but the, the angle of the video and just everything looked crappy. And I said, Pat, look, do you have a, do you have a smartphone? He said, yeah, I got an Android. I got a Samsung. I said, look, man, you're a biker. Go out along the cliffs of California and shoot a video just off the cuff. You being yourself, go in all your biker gear. And, and here's the thing up until that point, up until the point of him doing that, he had spent about $900 on Facebook ads and he was trying to sell a $50 product. And, and he'd spent $900 on Facebook ads trying to sell a $50 product and he had made zero sales. Okay. So he goes out and he says, Hey, I, you know what? He started to get mad actually, because I was helping him do it and he was paying me for coaching or whatever. And he started to get mad. He, and I was like, Oh man, I got a biker guy who's, he's going to chase me down or something. And the moment he changed. Okay. So he went out in, in his gear and this isn't from his video or anything. He actually did the video on a cliff, uh, out in California, kind of, kind of a roadside. And you can see there's a cliff and then the ocean is in the background. I mean, it's just beautiful and didn't change his script, didn't change his approach, changed nothing other than he was out beautiful, bright lights. Uh, the sun was bright and, uh, he shot this video. It was about three minute bridge page video. And it was just amazing. It was super good. And guess what happened? The next day he made his first sale the next day. All he did was change the video. That's it. Same script, same everything. Okay. So what I'm telling you is lighting's a big thing. He had bad lighting in his house, but then he got outside, got in nature and people started to see him for who he actually is. And suddenly it just started taking off. It just started people started resonating with him and who he was, right? He was running traffic to people who were biker type guys, but they didn't see the biker in Pat. And once they did, he made his first sale the next day, made another sale the next day of his $50 product. Uh, and then two days later made another sale. He had spent $900 and he was only spending about 10 to 10 to 20 bucks a day on ads. So you can see how that all turned around for him, right? That's the power of being you, but being your best you being the best possible you that there is. Number 12, volume and tone. So there, look, if you are naturally sarcastic, here's what I want you to do. I want you to work on changing this into a more universally likable humor. Okay. Some people don't enjoy sarcasm. Most people don't enjoy it. If it's, if it's not from somebody they know, 
So if I know somebody, I've been friends with them a long time, sarcasm, sure, it's fine. But but listen, I'm not trying to attack your character. I'm not trying to put you down, but it's got to change for your videos. Has to change, okay? Make sure that you are not hunched over on your, so, so that your volume when you're doing videos actually projects. So don't be hunched over so you're quiet and you can't really hear, right? You need to command people's attention. That's the bottom line. Okay, number 13, this is really just a bonus, but number 13 is just get started, right? So people often ask, okay, with video or with this or that or the other thing, what do I do? How do I actually get started? What do I do? Well, you get started by just creating videos that give sort of a, a hint at, in terms of, well, you need to make it clear what the offer is that's coming, right? And you can look back to day one. Dave gives an example when we talk about the perfect offer of a bridge page script, a thank you bridge page video script, okay? So what I recommend is that you just go back and you look through that, okay, and create yourself a great bridge page script or a sales page script. Or if you're doing, there's some of you I read who are doing application type funnels, go and create for yourself a little script and actually shoot the video, okay? Just get started to shoot the video. Even if it sucks, shoot the video, okay? You can upload it to YouTube. You can upload it to Google Drive. You can upload it to Vimeo, Wistia, wherever you want to upload it to. And I would love to see a bridge page video or a sales video video or uh, even just a thank you video that's just saying, hey, thanks for coming. I'm so excited that you're here. Uh, I mean, I know Bridget, you have uh, an ebook that you're giving away so you can create a video around the ebook. If you already have one created, I want you to paste the link. If you just create one today or at some point today, I want you to paste it into the comments here and we'll do a live hot seat critique on some of the videos and we'll pause the videos as we go through. We'll actually look at them. We'll kind of digest them and dissect them. Okay. And we'll give some feedback on your guys' videos. Okay. So just get started. We'll give feedback on all of these 13 different elements so that you can really get a grasp on what am I lacking in my videos? What are people actually feeling about my videos? Because ultimately videos are all just, it's all about feeling. How does it feel? What are the gut reactions people are having? That's what video is all about. Okay. So just get started, create your video. So on that thank you page, on your bridge page, on your sales page, on your application page, whatever it is, if you've got a video on your page, what I want you to do is I want you to upload that link to the video or to the page where it is, either or is fine, and put it in the comments of this video. And uh, tomorrow we will do a little hot seat critique for those brave individuals who have gone out on a limb and created their first video or second or millionth video. I don't know. Maybe some of you have done a ton of videos. Okay. All right. That's a wrap for day 13. I am pumped to see some videos coming out from you guys. All right. If you need a reminder, you can go back to day one's PDF for a little bit more details on, on how to craft and how to kind of put together that offer in a way that's going to make sense for you. All right. Take it easy and we will see you tomorrow. Hey everybody. Welcome in. Let's see. I'm going to pop over. We are live. It is day 14 of the Builder All Bootcamp. And we're going to do a little Q&A session today. So let me pull this open. I just got to make sure that we're actually live. Oh, yeah, baby. William likes the video. Okay, perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let me try to get in here and see if I can. I want to see myself in the group. And that's kind of how I know that we're ready to rock and roll. So if you're here, why don't you give me a quick comment? Oh, we got a lot of people commenting. All right, nice. What's up, everybody? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, cool. All right. I got my coffee this morning. It's a coffee from Columbia. It's delicious. It's beautiful. I, uh, okay, who do we got on this thing? Let's see. Jose, Eugene. Hey, Eugene. Good to see you. Ernest, good to see you. Uh, Tina, is that right? Uh, Dennis, Cindy, hey, can you guys comment here real quick and let me know if my if my voice is coming through loud and clear? That would be great. I um, what do we got? Jerry, Frankie, Cindy, William, Dan, uh, three other people. I can't see the three other people. Mugisha, uh, you, Cindy, Cindy, I saw your video. I was gonna take a look at it. I just didn't get to watch it all. I was just I just saw it come across my thing just like a couple minutes ago. So, uh, Dan, Sean, Frank, Jerry, Amir, good to see you, my man. Caroline, good to see you, Elisa. Donna. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Desmond. Hey, Desmond. Good to see you. Perfect vocal. <laughs> perfect voice. I have the perfect voice. Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate that. All right. Beautiful. Hey, well, welcome in. It's pretty early for me over here. So if I'm looking like a, like I just rolled out of bed, I didn't just roll out of bed, but it takes me, it takes me just a little bit to get looking great. Okay. So just, just go easy on me here. Okay. And so I got the, so I got the coffee too. So, all right. Awesome. This is, very, this is cool. So, all right. So far this week, guys, so far this week, we've gone through uh, quite a bit of sales funnel stuff. And I think, you know, if we go back through this week, well, actually, I mean, you tell me, tell me throughout this week, whether it was congruency, whether it was keeping it simple with just two step funnels, uh, whether it was um, actually just going in and clicking around and, and just making this simple funnel and just seeing how easy and quick that can be or watching me do it uh, or yesterday's video hacks. What was it? Tell me, tell me one kind of big takeaway that you're pulling from this week. Um, what stood out to you? What was like kind of a breakthrough moment? Type it in the comments. I'm just curious. I'm always trying to get a gauge of what, what people are working through, what they're doing. And by the way, by the way, today or tomorrow, uh, I will do some some critiques and, and put up a video. It might actually be today, in addition to this live, uh, some critiques of your all videos, okay? So that's going to be really fun, and, and uh, we'll have some fun with that, guys. So um, you guys type to me in the comments. Type, type what's, a, what's a takeaway? Mike's in the house. Ruben, Jerry, Michael, Jason. Awesome. Welcome in, guys. Pumped that you're here. <sighs> Hola. Uh, let's see. Good news. Congruency, video tips, simplified to amplify. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Keeping everything congruent, fonts and sizing congruence, keep it simple. So, hey, hey, here's just, here's a, here's a couple tips for you guys when it comes to like, like doing funnels, making funnels, things like that. Okay. What you should, like one of the main things that I recommend to people is when you're first getting started, a lot of times what people will do is when they start making funnels, they'll, they'll just kind of log in and just start, just start moving stuff around and start, 
uh, changing fonts and using random fonts and colors and all of this stuff. Here's a couple. Here's a couple little tips. Um, number one, start with a color palette, and if you can, start with a like a more modern uh, like color scheme. Okay. Uh, from like a different website. So again, this whole thing has been don't reinvent the wheel, right? So for instance, I'm gonna put this little link here in the in the colors uh, or in the comments. I'm sorry, I was thinking about colors. So here's here's a link to Canva right here with website color schemes. Okay, so if you scroll through this site, they'll actually give you the exact color hexes of, of various websites. Okay, so whether you want something more muted or whether you want something more modern and clean, whatever it is, they'll actually give you like color palettes from other websites that are successful, that are designed really well, okay? Does that make sense? Is that helpful? So look in the comments right there. I just put it, it's from canva.com. Look, that's not the only place you can go for this, okay? You can go here as well. Here's another one. And guys, here's the thing. I can give you these kind of resources all day, but you, do you wanna know the reality of what just happened here? The reality is I just typed into Google. Here's what I typed into Google. I typed into Google, color palettes for websites modern. That's what I typed into Google, <laughs> okay? For those of you who just joined, look up in the comments of this live. That's all I did, right? And so rather than getting into my sales funnel and starting to develop and design my whole thing from scratch, Guys, just start with something really simple that's already been designed by probably, you know, some of these websites, some of these, some of these companies probably paid ten to fifteen thousand dollars to have their website designed and have a whole color scheme designed for their site. Why, why pay that money or reinvent the wheel if you can just hack it? You can just look at theirs and be like, wow, that's beautiful. Do you think a color scheme is is something that's proprietary? Nope. Okay. Um, no, the words don't need to follow. Uh, the words used don't need to follow the color palette. Not at all. Now, like. If you want something that's more legacy branded, like a little bit more timeless, maybe don't use super modern bright colored fonts, right? So there is a little design element to it, but it's really like, it's really just on you, okay? Yeah, Caroline, that's a great idea. I like that a lot. Um, but ultimately, for those of you just joining, ultimately when you go and create a website, when you go and create a sales funnel, um, the bottom line is like, don't reinvent the wheel, right? Look through the comments up above. If you're just coming on, I'll say this just one more time. Uh, and I gave some website, some examples, but you need to empower yourself to figure these kind of things out, right? So, so what I'm actually hoping for many of you is that when you purchase something like this, you don't just come in and look for me to give you these websites like Canva or whatever else. What, what I want to empower you to do is know what I typed into Google and how I figure it out, right? Because then you start to make this shift from just consuming, 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 endlessly consuming to finally being able to figure it out and then give back. And you create the course next time. You create the bootcamp next time. And you get on a Facebook Live and you say, hey, if you're designing a website or a sales funnel, guess what? There's, there's a couple of really great websites. I'm gonna go and type it in right now into Google. Check it out. You wanna take a look, okay? All right, hopefully that's helpful, okay? Hopefully that's helpful. Um, the other thing with sales funnels is like with elements, for instance, okay? Um, with elements on your page, with buttons in your sales funnel, with, um, with headlines, with fonts, with font sizes, okay? Um, <clears throat> here's a good example. So. Let's say that um, let, let's say that I really really like a certain website. Okay, so um, I'm trying to figure out if I can share my screen on this, and I don't think I can, to be totally honest with you. Um, you know what? This example is not going to work because I'm not I'm not on Zoom. I'm just here on Facebook Live, so we'll scrap that. But if you use so it, like in Google Chrome, for instance, I'll just explain this really quick. If you go if you go into Google Chrome at the top of your menu at the top of the of your computer, um, there's a view, right? You can click View and then click Developer and then click JavaScript Console. And in the JavaScript script console, it's going to look weird. It's going to look confusing. But you can go to any website and figure out what font they're using, what the font size is, what the line height is, all of that stuff on any website, any website. So if you really like somebody's sales funnel and you're like, man, I wish I could design just like that, just pull it open on your screen. If you have a big screen, I'll pull, I'll pull sites open on, on one side of my screen and I'll pull another site open on another side of my screen and I'll just basically mirror the design and maybe change button colors and move, a, move an image around or something. Like, I, like great sales funnel builders know one thing and it's just you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just don't, okay? Uh, suggestions on headlines. Yeah, sure. Um, well, oh, suggestions on headline for Builder All. Oh, okay, I got you. So you're an affiliate for Builder All. Like, what's a good headline to use? So <clears throat> here's the way to re reverse engineer this. Okay, so let's imagine for a second. Now, watch me really quick. Let's imagine for a second. And let's try to go right to left here. So, okay, so over here, um, actually, let's start on the side. So over here is your marketing. Over here is the Builder All final page where they're going to purchase, right? If you're an affiliate marketer, if you're selling anything that's somebody else's product, then what you need to do is look at the actual company's language and, and their website and their product where you're going to be sending them and you need to mirror that language on all of your marketing over here, right, Sharon? So again, that's down to congruency, right? It's down to congruency. So if I was to go to builderall.com, here you go. This is exactly what it says right there. Look in the comments. All the tools you'll ever need to, to quickly and easily grow your business online, start growing, and scale your business all in one location. That's what I would put. Because then when people go through my sales funnel, if that's what I'm marketing, if that's the, the pitch and the angle that I'm going with, at least I know that if they go all the way through this freaking thing, then they're going to get to the builder all page and sign up most likely going to increase my conversions. Uh, can you go from an opt-in page straight to a webinar replay page of a ClickBank product and run Facebook ads to it? Can you go from an opt-in page straight to a webinar replay page 
Dennis, it depends on if the ClickBank product is, um, are you talking, you cannot run ads to an affiliate link. Just to be very clear with everybody here, on Facebook, and Facebook and Instagram are the same thing, but on Facebook and Instagram, you cannot run Facebook ads to an affiliate link. You can't do it. So uh, it's prohibited by their ads. So if you can't run uh, ads to uh, an, an affiliate link, then no, you can't do that. But if it's your own webinar replay page of a ClickBank product, um, yes, you could do that, I guess. I guess the question is, is that webinar replay page um, an affiliate? If the opt-in page, Dennis, is your opt-in page, and then as soon as they opt-in, they go to the affiliate link, that's okay. As long as that initial page that you're sending them to from Facebook ads is going straight to your own page, then you'll be fine. So what other questions do you guys have? Anything? What's on your mind? What have you, these are good questions. These are helpful questions. Let's see. Mine's a little bit delayed. James in the house. What's up, buddy? Raymond is in the house. Gordon, Eli, Julia, good to see you. Gil, Cindy, Lisa, Josh. I didn't mention you guys before, but welcome in, guys. I got my coffee. It is early here. We're like 7 a.m. here, but I'm pumped. I'm a morning person anyway. I like coffee. So um, the other thing with so the other thing with sales funnels, we talked a lot about congruency this week, and it's just a never-ending kind of thing, but um, never buy ads for something else than a lead capture page. So in, in, in the world of congruency, so here's what most marketers miss, right? Here's, here's kind of the journey, the timeline of a successful marketer, okay? If, if this is, uh, this is, let's see, I can't tell if I'm doing right to left or left to right. If this is your starting point over here, right? Starting point here, this is successful, let's say your first million dollars online, okay? So this is just getting started. This is million, first million online. Most people spend about this far of the timeline, almost all their timeline, purchasing courses that talk about the new secret hack or the, the new copywriting secret or the new Facebook ad secret, right? And then once they actually start making money is usually when they realize that most of those hacks don't really work. The reason the hacks worked was because the marketing and the message was clear and congruent. That's really it. And then there's this gap of time right here where they learn it and then they go super quick and start making a, a bunch of money and it actually works. Even a sales page should try to get leads in addition to sales. Do you suggest you put the story or video? Uh, Cindy, I would recommend putting both on a thank you page. Okay. Um, so, so the, the way that I suggest to do it is to, to basically have a headline up at top, a video, and then beneath it, have a bunch of, have a bunch of words. Okay. Um, actually I might have a great example of this. Hang on one second. Um, something like, I do have an example. So bear with me one second here. Let's see. Now, Cindy, you were talking about, I, I believe you were talking about the sales page. So let me, um, here, I'll, I'll just grab you a, a quick little link you can go look at. So bear with me one sec here. So, um, yeah, guys, so here's a, here's a good example. Here's a good example of a page where it's got the video. Uh, this is this is actually just a, a random guy, client, whatever. Um, but Cindy, in the comments, you can check that out. Basically, that was built in Builderall. And... Um, yeah, I mean, it just, it looks beautiful, looks great, and it just works. Um, the only thing that's missing on that page, I think he might have edited something, is there should be a button as well at the bottom of the page. But um, yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. I don't I don't have, I'm not a partner with him, so if you go purchasing something from him, I'm just, I'm not going to make any money off that. But uh, at least you guys can kind of see the headlines, what that looks like, the line spacing, line height, all that stuff. So um, what's the next review? When is the next review of sales funnels? Uh, hopefully soon, I might do a review video today of some sales funnels and then some videos. Hey, welcome in, Bonnie, good to see you. Um, in the last example with ClickBank, there was no bridge page. Yeah, you don't have to have a bridge page. I mean, I look, you're going to, if you're if you're in this for the long haul, which you should be, the important piece of the bridge page is, is that um, you're connecting people into your brand and integrating people into your brand, okay? So here's, here's, the, here's the myth of affiliate marketing. Here's the myth. The myth is that you can set up some ads or you can set up a blog or whatever and just hammer people and point people to one single offer, always to just your affiliate link, right? The reality is, is that most Google, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all of these social media networks are realizing that most affiliate marketers are bad marketers. They're, they're kind of scammy. They're, they're, they're bad at marketing, right? They're misleading. So what they've done is they've essentially blacklisted URLs and sites and, and ads and all this stuff that just leads straight to an affiliate link because they're just like, okay, this guy is just, he's not really marketing a valuable product. So because they've done that, because they've done that, the importance of the bridge page is now you're disconnecting anything you're advertising, anything you're pointing people to. There's no tie to an affiliate link. The other piece is that, guess what? A lot of companies go out of business or sell. Right. And so now if you are sitting there and you're on all your blog posts, on all your videos, on all your stuff, you're just pointing people out to an affiliate link. And then suddenly that goes away. Guess where your income goes away. Right. As where in a different case, you can, you can take that URL and point them to a different offer through a different funnel. And you can do that pretty quickly while still maintaining your brand. If you're only ever just pointing people to an offer five years down the road, these people aren't going to buy from you again. You've built no relationship. You've built no trust, which really means you've built no asset. You don't have an asset. So you've, you essentially, you just don't have any business. You might be making a little bit of cash flow, but it's more of a hobby and it's not really a business. All right. 
uh, for a landing page with video, should there be a verbatim of the video in any part of the page to reinforce the message or slow uh, earnest? So I would always look if there's if there's ever the option, always just essentially have a video and then a transcript of the video and script beneath the video. So I posted a link to this guy Stafford's in the comments. You can see there's a video and then it's literally the exact script for the video down below. So if anybody can't watch the video, like, I mean, think about it. Maybe you've marketed to somebody who's deaf, right? Most people don't think of that. Advanced marketers think of that. Uh, so, or yeah, so anyway, um, or blind for that matter, right? And usually their accessibility thing will be able to read out for them uh, words on the screen. I mean, they can hear it from the video too, but uh, so anyway, long story short, if you can have that and then type the words down below or a brief summary, you're gonna increase your conversions. That's just, that's just proven. Cool, good question. It's a great question. Let's see. I'm moving this around, moving this around. Oh, there we go. Um, William has a question, but he posted it somewhere else. Um, look, William has a question. Should I create my own privacy policy, earnings, disclaimers, GDPR, et cetera? Here's, here's what I, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving you legal advice, but the easiest way to do that is just go find a template online, right? So again, here, let me show you how to do this. Template for privacy policy, GDPR. This is what I just typed into Google. And there's tons of them, tons of them, tons of them. And some of them are gonna charge you, so maybe don't do those. <laughs> but you can just download a PDF version and then upload it, okay? Look, guys, here's the thing. Some of you, and I'm not even saying this about William at all, this is a valid question, but some of you really need to, you need to take stock of like, what am I doing here, okay? And that's the reality for most people. A, a lot of people are coming into the online space and I'm not trying to poo-poo you or put you down or anything like that. Some, you need to take an inventory of like, what are you actually doing? Do you want a business or do you are you just kind of playing around? Do you want a business or you just type it in the chat? Type, type in a comment. And if you're just, if you're just kind of checking it out still, that's okay. Just be honest. Just be honest. Don't, you don't need to, but type to me in the comments. Like, is this real? Because if it's real, right, you should have your own privacy policy. Like a business would, you should have your own terms and conditions like a business would, right? A real business would have those things. Right. And if you want to know, if you want to know a real trick, once you start, once that little mental shift happens, if you've ever wondered why you're not as productive or why you're, maybe you don't create content fast enough, or maybe you have a hard time creating videos. Maybe it's because that shift hasn't happened yet where you've taken the steps to turn this into a real business. Have you set up an LLC or a corporation? Have you started tracking your expenses? Have you set up a business checking account? Have you got your own privacy and terms? See, like those kind of things, what happens in your mind when you do those things is your mind actually registers like, holy crap, this is a real business, like a real one, not, a, not this cutesy little freelance thing. Like I'm, I am the CEO of a real business. And then what happens is you want to know the most powerful question you can ask yourself. Would I hire myself as the CEO of this company? Would the work that I'm doing on a daily basis here, would I hire myself? Or maybe you're just, you're focused on the marketing end. If I was the director of marketing and sales for my company, would I hire myself or would I fire myself? Because a lot of us have lived our whole lives being employees. Just push the little like, if, if that's true of you, just hit like a little thumbs up. If you've been an employee most of your life, and now the shift is happening where you've been a great employee. And now when you start to frame it, when you start to frame it in terms of, would I hire myself as an employee? It shifts it a little bit, right? Because now you're seeing yourself as working in your business. And now it's like, well, geez, maybe I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. I sit around on Facebook and just jerk around all day and don't really do much. <laughs> all right. MBNS Enterprises LLC. Um, we all have disclaimer templates. Got to create email consistent habits. I don't even have to think about it. Yeah, I like it. Sebastian, welcome in. I mean, so Vajko, um, translate every funnel, every script, every email when I want to use it in my language. So look, Vajko, I mean, that's that's one way to look at it, right? Right. Everything is perspective. And I understand I'm an English speaking white kid who's 30 years old. So I've got it pretty good. I get it. I don't take that lightly. I don't take it for granted. But here's the other reality, Vajko. 30 years ago, the internet didn't exist. Or if it did, it was very limited. It didn't exist. Sales funnels didn't exist. You didn't have the opportunity to use sales funnels to sell on autopilot, right? So, so for somebody else out there in the world who never had this opportunity 30 years ago and died without ever knowing the internet, they would say, you're, you're saying it's not simple for you? <laughs> Are you kidding? Like literally for most people throughout all of history, the odds of being born in the age of the internet where we can use sales funnels or we can use email automation to sell products, products that aren't even our own, that, that people have spent millions of dollars creating, right? And, and this is a translation issue for you? See, I'm not even trying to put you down. All I'm doing is, all I'm, doing is I'm trying to create perspective. Vajko, would you agree with me on that? That it's a perspective thing? Does that make sense? Um, look, the, just the reality is, is like the odds of us being, did that make sense, guys, in the comments? Does that make sense? The odds of us being born human are more than one in a trillion. And then the odds of us being born in the age of the internet is even way, way, way lower. It's not even calculable. So I, I think if we're all sitting and if we're honest with each other, like if we're honest, we're just kind of look each other in the face, we'd say like, 
we're extremely blessed. Like we are extremely lucky to be on this Facebook live in this moment, being able to go on the internet and literally figure anything out in the world that we want to. There was a time where somebody's car would break down and they would have no clue what's going on with their car. Did AAA exist? Nope. Roadside assistance? Nope. Did YouTube exist where I could look up how to change a tire on my car? Nope. Like it's just, it's mind boggling. It's mind boggling. Yeah, we've been conditioned to not figure things out on our own. I mean, that is just, that is, that is the most, yeah, that is the most true thing ever. And at some level, guys, at some level, like, I don't know when that shift happens for you or for, for people. I, like, I don't, people are so different, but at some level, and this all really ties into our whole sales funnel thing, because when it comes to like, well, how do I integrate my autoresponder and how do I create a sales funnel? And even I have a funnels team, okay, at Legendary, I have a funnels team that builds out funnels and it's like, oh my gosh, this has been so, so terrible. This has been the worst funnel ever and everything. And I'm just like, I get it. But like, you realize what we're doing here, right? We're signing into a, a software back office. We're creating a sales funnel that's going to sell products and it's going to work. And one way or another, it's not really a question. Here's my last point on this. I know I'm going into some mindset stuff and maybe this isn't what you were looking for today or maybe it was, I don't know. But I think you might need to hear, some of us, some of you need to hear it. The reality is, is that, and I just know this because I've, I've, I've gone to the point of being successful in affiliate marketing or, or in just all of business. Not even, I mean, I own my own company right now, but here's the thing. Some of you are still wondering if this is going to work. Some of you are still wondering if this actually works, let me just break that ice for you. Everything works. Okay. Everything works. It does. I've owned multiple different companies. Some have failed. Some have done really well, like very successful. I will own more companies in my future. All right. Like I have owned many, many different companies. I'll just tell you this. I've, I've sold many, 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 many different products online as well. Everything works. It will work. The only question, the only variable is your resilience and persistence. So the question isn't, does this work or or is this whole online thing just kind of a, a gamey scam thing that people are hyping up that doesn't actually work? No, it will work. The question is, will you work? Will you figure it out? That's really the only question. That's really the only thing. There's no secret formula. There's no secret sauce. There's strategies to be learned. There's ways that you can grow your skills and that's all true. But it's, will you work? It's not a matter of, does this work? Or is this the right thing or the right way? Have congruent marketing, have a clear message, design your page decently well, make it look nice, both on a desktop and mobile and run freaking traffic through that funnel. That's it. Like, just keep this freaking simple. Okay. All right. Um, best book to learn copywriting, Kadam. Great question. So Kadam, I would say um, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Okay. Building a Story Brand. Okay. And also, also, hang on. I have a really cheap book recommendation for all of you guys. Let me see if I can find it. Um, here, let me grab you. I'll show you 16. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Here we go. This is not an affiliate link. All right. But it's this, if, if I were to tell you guys to pick up one book for, for copywriting, this, this company, Agora, this is written by one of their copywriters and they are one of the most legendary, incredible copywriters of all time. The 16 word sales letter. Um, for some reason that's really expensive though. Hold on. Yeah, it just seems pretty expensive. So either I would say. Um, either grab that or building a story brand by Donald Miller. Either of those are just, they're great. Um, okay. Let's see. Cindy wants to know how long does it take to work? I mean, Cindy, here's the thing. So for me, right, here's, here's a little backstory on me. When I first got started in, in affiliate marketing or selling other people's products online, it was probably nine years ago. Here, here's what my days look like. I worked as a barista in a coffee shop for minimum wage plus tips. Okay. And Catherine, my wife was going to grad school. So she was not bringing in income. We were completely broke. So com by completely broke, it's actually beyond completely broke because we were in debt. And when we would pay the bills, we'd have like I, pretty much every month we'd have like seven to 30. Like it was a great month after we paid rent. If we had like a hundred bucks. <laughs> okay. Uh, we were like, I had spent so much on this internet stuff. I was like 45 grand in debt. Uh, minimum monthly payments were like $1,500 a month for, I'm not talking for like a little while. I'm talking for like four or five years. Okay. So like, let's have some perspective here. So it was pretty bad. Right. But here's my day. Here's what it would look like. I would get up really early and go to the coffee shop. I'd be at the coffee shop around 5.00 AM, 5.30 AM. I would work until about two, 1 to 2 p.m. So like a pretty full shift, seven, eight hours, uh, come home, um, take like a 30 minute nap, work on my business till dinner. We would sit down, have a meal. And then during the evening while we were watching TV or whatever, I had my laptop open and I was just, I was slaving away on this stuff, watching trainings. I was on webinars, training, all this stuff. I was just learning, learning, implementing, implementing. And I did this for years. Back then it was way harder, like building sales funnels. Like I had to code sites and stuff. Okay. Like this is the other thing is, is like, if you had joined this industry 10 or 15 years ago, some of you maybe had like builder all didn't exist. None of these funnel builder things existed. It was just try to figure your website out yourself by coding HTML. I, like perspective people, perspective. My learning curve because of all of that was like six years. Yours is probably like two. 
But the reality is, is like some people are going to put in an hour a day. Some people are going to put six hours a day in, right, Cindy? So that's how fast you go is just in your court. Like, what can you stomach? What can you put in? Like, what's your tolerance, basically? So um, the shift, and look, there's kind of a rule. There's a law of 10,000 hours before you become an expert in something. So it's like, you can hack it and you can try this and that and try the fast way out. But just look, the reality for anything in life, if anything is really good and you want it in life, chances are it's going to take time. All good things do. The shift happened when I realized playing poor me, victim of life, and I'm hooked in blame games. So I chose to break free from the. I like that, Tina. That's great. Yeah, I mean, good, good call there. Anybody who's giving you a definite time frame is probably scamming you. That's probably true. Um, imperfect action. Um, building a story brand is the second book, um, or the first book maybe. Sixteen word sales letters, the second book. Um, All right, can the opt-in page have video in it? Yeah, you can You can have a, a video on the opt-in page, that's fine. All right, I'm just catching up on comments, sorry. I have a short video on my opt-in page. Um, Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not telling you guys not to get sleep. I'm not telling you that whatever, but it is just the reality, right? Like I read a great book by Elon Musk. It was, well, it wasn't by Elon Musk. It was about Elon Musk. And uh, I'm not even sure that I would recommend trying to replicate his formula. But basically the way that he says it is, look, I'm not, I'm not any more genius than anybody else in the world. Um, I'm not any, like, I, I might be just slightly smarter than some people, but the reality is, is I'm not like any better than most people in the world. I just sat down and I looked and I said, and here's exactly as Elon Musk says it. He says, most people in the world are going to spend eight to 10 hours on their business. And I just calculated in my head, if I spend 16 to 18 hours on my business, that's an average of seven more hours a day on my business, which over one year is 2,555 more hours on my business than other people, which is 106 more days per year worth of work. Do you think that you can outgrow people or outperform people or speed up your timeline or whatever? Right? So what he said is just, it's just an hours thing. It's just how many hours am I going to put in in a day? And, and I know that that doesn't sound sexy. I know that that doesn't sound whatever. But then every year, let's say you run this business for 20 years, you're going to end up with an extra 2,000 days worth of work, days worth of work over 20 years, or an extra 1,000 days over 10 years. Like, do you think that that amount of knowledge, the, the things you'll learn, the, the tests you'll do, if you don't think that that's not going to put you exponentially ahead of everybody else, you're just, well, you'd be wrong because Elon Musk has proven it right, right? He owns three companies that are valued at billions of dollars. So here's the thing. I mean, if, I think if you dig into Elon's life, there's probably some imbalances, like his relationships, like just from the surface don't look great. And I think there's probably stuff there that's not super healthy. I, I don't know, but that's kind of the, that's the gist I would get. Um, but, but the reality is, it's like, if this is really what you want, right? If this is, and you got to just ask yourself, like, is this really what you want? Are you going to put the hours in? Like, that's just really it. It's a business. So, all right. But here's the other thing. But here's the other thing. On that same note, I'll tell you this, it can happen faster than anything else online. So I'm usually more of a conservative, like, hey, just tone it down a little because everybody else in the industry is hype, 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 hype. You can get rich so fast, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, just hold your freaking horses. But the reality is, it's like, there's so many tools, builder all, like, there's just so many tools out there that make things so fast and easy. It's absurd. I mean, it's crazy. So it can happen faster than you would think, just for what that's worth. Um, nice. Yeah, that's great. Uh, would you get the same impact if you use a video with stock photos and overlay text? Um, Cindy, like a motion graphics video is actually pretty good. So like what, what we found to convert best would be something like this. So if you go to this, let's see. Um, like if you were to go to this website, Cindy, like um, that I just typed into the comments, just watch the video there and watch the motion. It's called motion graphics. Watch the motion graphics on that on that page right there. Um, and, and yeah. Um, Mark, good question. I started working with Dave. Um, it's been a while back now, but basically what I did guys is I'm not a David Sharp. I'm not this, put my name and face up and be kind of the, the big time CEO founder of, of a company, at least not on the internet type world. What I did is I focused on building a skill set, And then I just approached him and said, Hey, look, man, I, I don't think you're gonna find anybody quite as skilled as me with, in terms of making training simple and easy, running Facebook ads, Google ads, things like that, and copywriting, which are all three things that you really need in value. And I think I can, I think I can prove myself. So I started working for him for just a, a small amount of money each month just to cover my bills. And then once I proved my value and worth, we, we built that up because it's a high income skill. So, um, but again, I mean, that's seven, eight years worth of just time, energy, tons of reading books and tons of implementation. So, um, yeah, Bridget, I mean, you're a great example. Work 20 hour days every day. Yeah, me too. Four hours of sleep, get back up. I mean, there's just, there's no secret sauce here, guys. It's just, do you want to grind and do it or do you not? Some people just don't. And that's okay. Like, it's just, it's okay. But you just be honest with yourself, right? That's the big thing. Just have self-awareness and be honest with yourself. And there's nothing wrong with you if you don't want to do that. The fact it might be healthier if you don't. It might be. I don't know. All right. Um, 
when it comes to creating pictures on those sites, there's generally a, a need to cite the source for credit. Um, Ernest, just use pictures from pexels.com. Pexels.com, no need to credit, okay? So yeah, Pixabay, pexels.com is one that I always use and it's great. So P-E-X-E-L-S.com, pexels.com, works great. Um, there's no magic button, you got it. It does take time and hard work, <laughs> to say the least. Okay, cool guys, so uh, here's, here's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna take a look at a couple of your guys' videos and I'm gonna get some feedback and upload a video later today that'll have some feedback on those things. Um, Cindy, I love that at the end there, that's awesome. Um, and we're gonna end this live video. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, whether it's morning, evening, afternoon, I don't know where it is for you or what time it is, but um, have a great whatever time, you know, afternoon, evening, whatever. Um, enjoy your weekend. Hey, keep up with these bootcamp trainings because we're, we ain't stopping. We're halfway through at this point or close to, we will be tomorrow. But um, let's keep rocking everybody, let's keep rocking. and. Um, and uh, yeah, let's keep rocking. Kadam, yes, organic traffic still works in 2019. <laughs> All right, guys, signing off. Take it easy. Look uh, later today in the unit 14 for day 14. And uh, we will have a, just, a, just a quick little critique video about uh, a couple of your guys' videos that you put up. Okay, so hey, have a good one. See ya. Peace out. Hey, what's going on, my friend? This is Dave Sharp, and I'm actually sitting here putting together a headline document for you that you can download here on this day in the boot camp. This is me in the office on a regular, what is it, Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, this is what looking, this is what, you know, looking, can't, can't actually talk or think straight. Uh, I've actually been writing copy all day, so it's interesting that I'm going to talk to you in this video about writing email copy, because sitting in front of the computer sometimes writing copy is, uh, you know, can be an exhausting effort, and the reason why is because it, you know, you're, you're becoming a wordsmith. It's wordplay. And it is really something that I've developed a love-hate relationship with over the years. So I want to try to give you a perspective that's really realistic and that also lets you know that no matter what kind of a writer, what, uh, you know, what level you're at right now, that you can actually, you can actually do this. And if you continue to practice, you can actually become a world-class copywriter. Now, if you haven't heard of that term yet, a copywriter is, is very simply somebody who writes persuasive sales copy. And that's what email, and that's also what any copy that's going to go on a sales page or a sales video or even a webinar, that's the type of writing that that is. It's not creative writing. It's not um, content that's going to go on a blog. It's it's persuasive copy to sell something, to in, influence somebody. And when it comes to emails, we're trying to get somebody to click. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get them to open the email. That email headline needs to be persuasive enough to actually get them to open the headline. Then the next thing that we need to get them to do is read the email. Okay, so that's the next thing. And then actually click on the link if we've provided a link inside of that email and then go wherever we're sending them. And so that's a sequence of events similar to the, the idea or goal of writing a book. Well, what is the goal of the first page of any book? It's very simple, to get people to read the second page. I like to keep things extremely simple when I think about them because the goal is it's we get lost when we start to future trip in these big, long, uh, you know, perfectionist and unrealistic goals that we set for ourselves. Very simply, the reason why I'm providing you with this with this document that's going to give you 250 email subject line ideas is because the very first part of writing emails is actually learning how to write a good headline. It's really that simple. The beautiful thing is, is that that skill alone can spill over into your headline writing for your YouTube videos, your headline writing for your social media posts, your headline writing for different sales letters that you're going to be writing these skill sets overlap and, and spill over into these different areas. So when you get good at writing powerful, curiosity-driven headlines that make somebody so engaged and curious from that first sentence that they want to open the email and then read the email and then continue to click through, you know, this is a skill set that will benefit you in many different areas of your marketing. So when I first started, and this is what I'm going to leave you with today is to think about this. When I first started, my wife reminded me of this actually last night. I forget what we were talking about, but something about where we came from. We often reflect about where we came from. Because when I started in this marketing journey, I, I had... Not only did I have no degrees and I had no business experience, and this was 10 years ago, but I also could not write. I literally could not write because I was a eighth grade educated, ninth grade dropout. I, my spelling was horrific. As a matter of fact, it still is to this day. I've got people around me. Matt is one of them uh, who is constantly, you know, <laughs> grammar checking my writing. Uh, and when I started, I would send out an email. I had very few subscribers on my list, just maybe like you do. And I would send an email out. I would send a broadcast out. And somebody would send it back to me and then another person would send it back and another person would hit reply and send it back and you might think that's good. But unfortunately, what they said was that was the worst thing I've ever read. Never email me again. And that hurt my feelings. But as any entrepreneur who has grit and perseverance is going to do, I said, ah, okay, I'm going to send this over to my college educated wife, who was then my girlfriend at the time. And I'm going to have her proofread these, send them back and then I'll send them out. And so that at least took care of the majority of the spelling and grammatical errors. And I, I wrote every day. I wrote every day. At the very least, I wrote an email that I also posted on social media. And 10 years ago, it was the very beginnings of things like, you know, uh, Facebook, MySpace was just phasing out. But I would write one email every day and I would send it out to my list, even though I had a small list. And I would also post it on whatever social media channels I had. And through that practice over now 10 years, I've become a, a you know, industry renowned copywriter who my specific words that have come out of these fingers onto these keyboards have, have generated me a quarter billion dollars in sales in companies that I own. This is not my consulting clients. This is companies that I own. So a quarter billion dollars in sales. Think about that. Regular dude, just like you, 
just like, you know, uh, that started out maybe even in a worse position with less education, less experience, and my communication skills, my ability to talk into a camera like I'm doing right now, and also my ability to write, okay, type, like I do now, th that those skill sets have been developed over a period of 10 years. Uh, and it didn't take you 10 years to start getting good. I started getting good after about 30 to 45 days because I just learned. And then after six months, I was pretty good. Then after a year, I was really good. Imagine doing something for 365 days. You get good. You've got a job or you've had a job in the past and your first 30 days, you sucked. You were new. So I'm getting used to it. But after doing it for a year, every day, you were a vet. You were seasoned. So copywriting is one of the high income skills that you need to learn and develop. And writing emails is a perfect segue into that, into that developing that skill because they're short, they're punchy. It's not writing an entire sales letter. It's just writing an idea. And you can tell stories. Uh, you can just write direct promotional emails to where you're sending somebody to a sales page or a webinar. You can uh, provide value in emails. I mean, I like to I like to fall back on the learn, do, teach formula, which is I learn something, I go out and do it, and then I share it in emails. I share it on social media. I share it in videos. And if you follow that formula, you're going to never run out of things to say to your audience. I've turned every, nearly, which my wife has even gotten upset at me in the past, nearly every situation in my life I've turned into an idea in an email. I mean, actually, in the last couple of years, I've, I've kind of taken my privacy back a little bit, but... For the first five years of my career, my email list knew every damn little detail of my life. And the more intimate and the more vulnerable that I got with my audience, actually the, the deeper of a bond and the deeper trust that I actually built with them. So I encourage you to, to realize that every piece of information, experience, and, and little tiny thing that you know is email content. All of it. You don't need somebody to give you an email template or swipe. You know, all of those things are helpful. Just like this 250 word email headline swipe or 250 uh, headlines swipe file that I'm going to give you. It's helpful. It's helpful to get started. It's helpful to go, to go to something like this when you need it, when you when you need an idea, like an artist who needs some inspiration. But when it gets time to get into the content of your emails, I just, I just want to remind you, you have a wealth, an absolute endless wealth of email content. And things are happening around your life every day that you can take and you can use those stories to prove points, such as analogies, you know, metaphors, to prove points and, and actually engage your list. So again, I encourage you not to just fall into a fact giver, you know, somebody who just uh, you know, remains boring with facts and figures in your emails, but learn to be a storyteller. Learn to be somebody who, who leaves cliffhangers in one email and is not afraid to say, tune in tomorrow to hear what happened, right? Those are fun. I get a lot of my ideas from movies and, and, and shows and I look at, gosh, what, what, what made Seinfeld? What made Friends? What made uh, Sopranos? What made all these shows so great? And even all the ones that are on Netflix and Amazon Prime now, what made, well, man, they're cliffhangers. They keep you, they keep you coming back, right? So you can take all of that experience and all of those lessons and add that right into your emails and set yourself apart from all the other marketers who are just, you know, slamming promotional stuff into people's inboxes. You know, you really want to learn how to become a storyteller and how to be not only educational, but engaging and entertaining. You know, one last tip that I'll give you is that with your emails, stay away from needing to always be so proper. One of the, one of the, the absolute most profitable rules that I've followed and tips that I've adopted and secrets that I've used is that I like to write my emails similar to the way that I talk to people, you know? So don't be afraid to like use a dot, 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 or don't be afraid to, you know, Think about how you text your best friend and don't be afraid to, to be a little bit politically incorrect and grammatically improper with your, with your copy. I got one more tip for you too, is I like to, and I'll tell you where you can find this. I like to really make my, uh, I, I like to really try to focus on making my copy as easy to read as possible. Okay. So there's this little thing called the Hemingway app and you can just Google it Hemingway app and it'll, and you can also go directly there, Hemingwayapp.com. And what you'll do is you'll, you'll, you'll post your, uh, you'll post your words right here. Just, just, you know, delete all this. And if something comes up red, then it's really hard to read. If it comes up yellow, it's not so hard to read. Right. And it'll give you the legend over on the, on the side. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can actually see that or is that showing backwards, but anyways, the reason why I think Hemingway app is a really powerful app and you can even write your emails right in Hemingway app, or you can write the email and then copy and paste it into Hemingway app. What Hemingway app will do is it will teach you how to write clearly and simply, which means that you don't want any big block chunks of text and you want to keep your paragraphs to one to two sentences. Okay. And you want to really write in a fourth or a fifth grade level because if something's difficult for somebody to read or there's a big block of text there, it's going to be really, somebody's just going to, their eyes are going to gloss over and they're just going to move on. So you want your reading not only to be engaging all of the stuff that I talked about in the first part of this video, but you want it to be clear and simple and easy to read. And the Hemingway app will give you actual, you know, colors and tell you, hey, the sentence is hard to read. And you can play around with it. And you can, a lot of times, if a sentence is long, I'll add a dot, 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 and then move down and create another paragraph and start that next paragraph off with dot, 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 and then the words. So I'm breaking up paragraphs, right? And you'll see that if you read marketers' emails and you really analyze great marketers' copy, which nowadays you can do all over social media. You probably subscribe to 10,000 marketers' list in your inbox right now. Don't lie. Um, and so you can see how a great marketer writes copy oftentimes just by looking at them. But um, Hemingway Editor, great, great little app. It's totally free. You don't have to opt in anything to get it. And it'll just, it'll just, you know, it'll help you to write clearly. Uh, with your copy. So I look forward to seeing your breakthroughs on these coming uh, videos here this week that have to do with emailing your list and, and kind of writing copy and understanding the difference between, you know, automated autoresponders and broadcast and sort of some of the tips and secrets that we use in our business to be able to be successful with emails. So make sure you download the headline swipe file and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.
Greetings and welcome back. It's day 16. Hopefully you've enjoyed day 15 and the headline swipe file. Today, we're going to get into kind of the question. Here's the question I want to post to you. His email really dead. Over the past few years with the birth of chatbots and messenger marketing and all the various ways to contact customers, some people have said email marketing is dead, right? And I just want to tell you today, at least according to the data, whoever has said that is just dead wrong, okay? They're just dead wrong. And if we look at the conversion rate by source, and you can see these conversion rates, uh, they're compiled by the reputable marketing company, HubSpot. Email marketing is not dead. In fact, if you look at it, right, paid, email, social, referrals, organic, and direct, you have email marketing has one of the highest conversion rates. Email marketing, I just want to tell you guys, sometimes it's not sexy. Sometimes people don't love talking about email marketing. It's not dead. And in fact, it's one of the best ways to grow your business and grow sales and revenue, okay? So before we get too far into the weeds on how to turn your visitors, visitors, into a highly engaged email list, let's just cover some basics, okay? So first of all, why is email marketing so effective? I wanna convince you on this right now so you understand. Because a lot of people, when they're newer to this industry, they're trained to believe that this stuff doesn't actually work because they, they haven't developed skills yet. And so what happens is they start out trying this whole thing called email marketing before they've actually built skills and it doesn't work. So then they're convinced that email marketing doesn't work. Make sense? So number one, email marketing is an instant way to reach your audience, okay? AKA your email subscribers at just the push of a button. You sit down, you type an email, you hit send, okay? But it's also extremely cost effective, right? You don't have to pay for ads every single time that you launch that, right? So according to the Direct Marketing Association, email marketing yields an approximate 4,300% ROI for businesses in the United States. How powerful is that? So what email marketing does is it allows you to provide value, la build lasting relationships, and stay in contact with your prospects for an extended period of time. This means you're creating an asset. And I want you to write that word down if you haven't already, asset, okay? There's a difference between you running ads to a certain offer, right? And just pumping Facebook ads or Google ads or YouTube videos or whatever to an affiliate offer or to whatever product or service that you have. But building an asset is building a business. And so if you're serious about building a business, you need a long-term asset that you can go back to the well over and over and over again for more sales. So rather than trying for a one-off sale of a random product or service or whatever, you need to have a list of people that you can nurture, give value to, and occasionally ask for a sale over and over and over again. And that's what email marketing allows you to do. So with powerful software these days, you can also segment audiences. You can give them audience scores. You can send them targeted emails directly geared towards what it is that they've already shown interest about. This is super powerful. But you can also make them time-sensitive offers like Black Friday deals, other holiday promotions, etc. You just sit down, type the email, click send, and watch the sales pour in. I call this something, and if you want to write this down, write and grow rich. If you've ever read the book, Think and Grow Rich, this concept is write and grow rich. Well, it's, maybe it's not that easy, but you get the point, right? It's a skill you've got to learn and cultivate and build. So in the land of email marketing, there's various types of emails, okay? So we'll get, we'll get to that stuff a little bit later in the week. When do I use a broadcast? When do I use an automated email? We'll get to all of that stuff, but for now, let's just unpack the different types of emails, okay? So there's different categories of emails. First and foremost that we're going to cover here is transactional emails. So these are usually the types of emails that would go out for updates or notifications, right? Such as order confirmations, receipts, shipping notifications, account setup, returns, support, password updates, unsubscribes. It's transactional, right? There's a transaction happening and that's where those function, okay? Now there's also relational emails. We're gonna happen to hit a lot more on relational emails in this week, but these are used to build on deeper relational, deeper relationships and gain trust with your readers. According to HubSpot, if you use relational emails to nurture your leads, you're likely to generate 50% more sales excuse me, 50% more sales ready leads at a 33% lower cost, okay? So these would be like a welcome email or a high value content or a story. Sometimes people don't even realize stuff happens throughout your day that you should be telling your email list about. You should email them about experiences that you've had throughout your day. Entertaining opinion pieces, one of the best emails back when the 2016 election was, ha was happening and I had my email list and I, I sent them an email that said, Trump plus Hillary, Hillary thoughts. <laughs> and that was, that was my subject line. And uh, lo and behold, it got the best open rates for the year. Lead, see, that kind of stuff is stuff that people don't just, when people sit, this, this, this used to be me all the time, and maybe this is you, with a, when you sit with a brain that's in overwhelm mode because you feel incompetent, you feel overwhelmed, and you feel scared and insecure about your identity as a marketer, when your brain sits in that space, it doesn't allow you to start thinking through ideas like this. So what I want you to do is realize that this whole three, this, this whole boot camp, this whole 30 days, is really meant to, in a way, sort of reduce this level of overwhelm that's happening in the brain and free you to bring you to your marketing, okay? This can also be links to blog posts, FAQ, or just share personal experiences, okay? So these relational emails are super powerful in developing a relationship with your audience, super powerful. Promotional emails is the final type of email, okay? So these are used to get people to take immediate action, okay? It would include things like promo content, new product offerings, sales, trials, event announcements, and webinars. These are more promo, limited time offer, okay? Limited LTO time offer, okay? Or an offering. Just, they're more geared towards special, specials, unique, coupons, those types of things, right? Black Friday, those types of things, okay? So the end goal then, the end goal is to create a mixture of content that goes out to your email list so they're not always feeling like you're just pitching the next hot thing. So if you intertwine personal stories, webinar announcements, new holiday specials, or even just one-time offers, what'll happen is you'll get your audience more engaged. You'll build more trust. And as a result, you'll get more sales. So, so to, wrap this, to wrap this sort of introduction up, when you've got your email list, right? So, so far we've talked about your offer, okay? And we've talked about your funnel, okay? And now we're talking about the email. So when people go through your funnel, 
remember one of the first things that we have them do is give us their email address and become a lead, right? So then from that moment on, you have this, this person, we'll call them a contact, right? And that email list builds and grows and evolves over time. But you have a contact, right? Who from that moment forward in the timeline of their relationship to you, they need sprinkled in promo emails. They need sprinkled in relational emails, okay? And as you do that, and if you can do that well, what'll happen is just like in a relationship, right? Sometimes there's transactional things. Sometimes there's just relational get to know me things, right? There's a lot of different inner workings. The, your email list functions essentially just like a relationship. You are in a relationship with your email list. And, and a lot of people don't see that these contacts are a relationship and they're people, they're people, right? We have become now, now here's a really good, here's just one little nugget and take a note on this. Remember back to when email was first started. What was email used for? It was used for writing to friends. And really the whole point of email is communication. And it was originally intended between friends just to have a fun, hey, how's it going? Catch up. Right now we text message or WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever, but the original, right? And so what I want you to do is I want you to shift away from what email has become, which is this very businessy uh, corporate type thing. And I want you to sit down and write emails like you're writing to friends. And even if you don't do it all the time, I want you to get in the habit of writing to friends, just writing to a pal, writing to a friend. Right. And so today for the first thing in, for the first assignment here in your notes, I want you to just sit down and I want you to write about 300 or more words, ideally a thousand to 2000, but that's a lot. But I, I just want you to sit down and write a little story. So you'll intro if I'm going to do a 300 words. Okay. I'm going to do 100 of just an intro to a story. Okay. I'm going to do 100, oh, 100 of sort of a segue into a product and then 100 with a call to action. What do you want them to do? Okay. I want you to practice this. Okay. Intro, which is really problem. Segway is agitate and CTA is solution. Remember we talked about the PAS, the, the problem agitate solution formula for writing copy. Problem agitate solution, problem agitate solution, problem agitate solution, right? Call to action, call to action, call to action. I want you to sit down. I want you to just write an email and I want you to practice the habit of writing every day. That's the important piece of this bootcamp. I can give you all of the secret hacks. I can give you all of the secret uh, uh, the, the secret emails that convert, right? I can give you them all. I can give you the whole chest, but if you don't build a habit in these 30 days to sit down and write and grow rich, it'll fall on deaf ears. Okay. So I want you to sit down and I want you to start building that habit today. Now, not later, not tomorrow, not next week. You're watching this right now. I want you to go in. I want you to start doing it. So, so here's what I want you to do. When you finish this video, you're going to go write a 300 plus word email. And if you have an email list, I want you to send the dang thing. If you don't just type it out on your computer, that's fine too. And only after that, I want you to mark this day complete, click done, mark it complete, and let me know that you wrote it, okay? Hey, congratulations, just just wanna say this, congratulations and really well done on, on just sticking with this. I know that sometimes it's easy to fall behind and that's okay because there's a lot going on, but really well done to those of you who are just sticking it out, catching up if you were behind, and for those of you who are staying on task, just amazing job, well done, and I'll see you tomorrow for day 17. Greetings and welcome, it's day 17. How you doing? Hope you're doing well and hope you're getting some value here in the perfect email series here. So day 17, we're going to talk about using email like a pro. Okay. So how to deliver the right message at the right time. There's different types of email marketing messages. And if you don't understand that, and this is going to be a big key about today's lesson and for the remainder of this bootcamp is you've got to understand that marketing is sort of like a relationship. Email marketing, it's like a, it's like a human relationship. It's like a, if you're dating or married or if you're in a friendship, right? It's just like that. And I'll explain what that means here in just a second. But so far we've got a funnel, right? We got a funnel. We're capturing our own leads and we're starting to remember build an asset, right? Asset. Don't forget that term. So what the heck do we do with these leads now? <laughs> okay. So how do we turn these leads into paying customers? How do we, how do we start ringing the cash register, right? Because, okay, great, Matt. Yeah. I'm going to build this email list. I'm going to start pumping traffic to my funnel, whatever. Well, how do I start to ring the cash register? Cause at the end of the day, this isn't all about, you know, rainbows and unicorns and having fun and being cute. It's about building a business, right? So there's multiple different types of messages, AKA campaigns that you can do that you can run to further engage and attempt to convert your leads into paying clients, okay? So we're gonna go through a couple of those right now. The first one we're gonna start with is a welcome indoctrination email, okay? A welcome indoctrination email. So this type of campaign is used right away when somebody subscribes to your email list. The purpose is to introduce the leads to your brand and help educate them. Email is really all about education. Educate them on what they'll learn and what their experience will be like when they open your emails, okay? So again, it's sort of like getting to know somebody. Here's what it's like to be in a relationship with me, okay? And here's what it will be like to be in relationship with me in the future. It's important. So this phase usually consists of one to four emails in total. And there's a few main things you're going to be looking for. So this can be anywhere from one single email to up to four emails. Again, there's no right or wrong here, right? So you ask anybody in this industry, some people say, no, the right amount is two emails. Some people say it's four, right? Kind of a magic number is three emails. Okay. So first of all, you're, you're, you're hoping to accomplish a few things. Thank them for subscribing. Okay. Say, Hey, thanks. I really appreciate you. Tell them what they can expect. Explain the benefits of being on their email list, on your email list. 
tell many stories about your journey, your brand, etc. I mean, just even just the beginning frustration. Let's say that you're starting a that you got so frustrated purchasing a bunch of Facebook courses on uh, how to run Facebook ads, right? You got so frustrated that you eventually just started your own course because you had to figure it out. Well, you want to go back and you want to tell the story of that. You want to explain that, or maybe you were figuring a way to make money online and you were trying to find some sort of business model that would work for you. And lo and behold, I finally found what I was looking for. But you want to tell them that journey. You want to explain that story to them. That's what you do in the welcome indoctrination series. And then you got to tell them what to do next. Tell them what they can expect. Tell them what they need to do next. Okay. So here's an example of a welcome email and I'll actually give you a specific example of it right here. So the subject line uh, and here, let me just say this just for everybody. So we're all clear on this. There is not a right or wrong way to do email marketing. Okay. What we're talking about here is theory, but what I'm about to explain to you isn't just theory. It's a proven method. But what I mean by there's no right or wrong is lots of different people have been successful with email marketing using different theories. So this is one theory that's been shown to work and has, and has worked beautifully. So it says, hi, first name tag, where to start. And by first name tag and most email marketing sequences, guess what? You can insert their first name if on your funnel. Okay. So on your funnel on this page, if you ask for their name and email, sometimes people only ask for their email. I usually ask for their first name and their email. That way I can use it in my email marketing. So hi. And then let's say Joe is, Joe is on my email list. It would say, hi, Joe, where to start. And then here it would say, hi, Joe, right? So then it would say something like this. My name is insert your name and I'm excited to have you as a subscriber. I wanted to take a quick second to say hello and welcome you. Okay. On behalf of myself and everyone in the company. Now, maybe you don't have a company. That's okay. <laughs> All right. I just wanted to say we value our subscribers more than just about anything. So look on behalf of myself, you, I mean, you can just remove all of this and you can just say, first of all, I just wanted to say we really value our subscribers more than just about anything. I, maybe that sounds cheesy, but it's true. Like you are the lifeblood of my business. You are the reason I started this whole thing. Of co over the course of the next few days, weeks, and months now, here I'm giving them, remember, what they should expect. We'll be sending you emails with some of the best Facebook advertising tips and tricks you're going to find online. While other gurus out there are hyping this new hack and that new shiny object, we teach timeless principles to market your business on Facebook that just plain work. You're going to love it. For now, here's what you need to know to get moving with your free training. Click here to get immediate access to our free training portal. Everything you need is at your fingertips. Look for an email again from me tomorrow and sign off. Okay. So look, we, we kind of cordially invited ourselves into their lives as, as a friend, right? And we told them what to expect. This is key, right? This is key. If you don't tell them what to expect, they feel lost. They feel confused. They feel almost, it's like a sense of like, why am I here? What, what's in this for me? I mean, what, why are you sending me emails? Is there something, do we have a relationship? What is that relationship? Is it defined? Okay. So the second main type of campaign and, and the first one is there's, there's a lot of different types of campaigns. We're really going to hit the welcome indoctrination and engagement because those are the two main ones. Once you've made that solid introduction, that welcome, you've really brought them into your brand. You've told them, here's what's going to happen next. Really the re the remainder of your relationship is an engagement kind of thing. You can sure you can run promos, you can run all sorts of specials, but really all of that kind of falls under an umbrella category of engagement. Okay. So this campaign is specifically designed to warm up. Now in the customer journey, there's sort of a cold, there's a warm and there's a hot. Okay. Now the engagement is designed to warm up. So when people first hear of you, they're cold. They don't know who you are. Uh, they, they feel a little bit distant from you, just like in a relationship, there's a little bit of a kind of a coldness there. Right. And then as things warm up and I'm not talking now, get your mind out of the gutter. We're not talking, you know, whatever. Once it starts to warm up a little bit, people become friends, right? You share things that you might not share with a total stranger. Right. And then hot is where you just have this intimate relationship. And I'm not even speaking, I'm not getting into like deep, intimate relationship. I'm just talking about maybe a good friend, right? A great friend is somebody you're going to share. That's where you enter this zone of trust, this zone of, I, I don't feel any sort of weirdness between us. It's just a natural flowing relationship. That's where you're trying to get with these engagement campaigns. So you're trying to warm up your subscribers and eventually turn them into buyers, people who love your brand, people who are excited to hear from you. And they feel like they get value when, they, when you email them. Like there's a sort of buzz when you email them because there's something exciting. There's something to look forward to, right? So there's a couple main goals of this type of engagement campaign. The first is to just continue to remind subscribers of their previous positive actions. It's just as simple as saying, hey, remember a few weeks ago or remember last week when you signed up to get my free Facebook ads course? Well, hey, I've got a really special announcement for you. I'm hosting a webinar this week, right? You remind them, hey, at some point in time, you clicked on my ad or at some point in time, you subscribed to my email list and you were pumped. You were excited, remember that? And that reminds them of the goodwill. That's a big reminding, like reminders and the memory of those types of events again, both in relationships and also in marketing is really key. These will help you build the know, like, and trust factor by continuing to educate them. Remember I said the trust factor, right? Before any money is coming out of somebody's pocket, before anybody's really going to purchase, they need to build, you need to build a no like, and trust factor, the KLT, write that down. KLT, no like, and trust factor by continuing to educate them. Show them the next logical step for them to take the next, like it, you don't have to overcomplicate this. You don't. If I'm selling a Facebook ads course and I, and, and I start them out with a three page, free three page PDF guide with a single video that shows them how to launch a Facebook ads campaign. Okay. What's the next logical step, how to track and measure the Facebook ad campaign that you just set up. Okay. Or maybe a live webinar training that goes a little bit further and beyond the PDF. 
What's the next step after that? That's what you need to answer. Then you need to ask, ask them for the purchase or to take a specific action, right? The, the goal is that we want to turn subscribers and onlookers into clients, okay? Through engagement, through storytelling, through relationship building. That's how it's done. So ask yourself the following questions. And I want you to write these down, okay? Now that my subscribers have opted in to get a lead magnet or to get some information or whatever they've opted in to see or get, what does that say about them? This is, a, this is such a good question to ask. What does it say about them? Specifically, what does it say about their desires? What does it say about their hopes? What does it say about where they want to go, their goals? I want you to take a second, even if you need to pause this video and write those things down right now. Write them down right now. What are they interested in learning more about? What is the next action I want them to take? And, and maybe I could even phrase this a little bit better. What is the next action they're looking forward to taking? What is the next action they are looking forward to taking? And if you can answer that question, selling becomes trivial, okay? We always get into this, you know, I'm a closer and I'm gonna sell, 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 and buy now, buy now, buy now. The reality is, is that you want to do such a good job in your marketing that, and when I say the word trivial, it means like, it, it doesn't even really feel like a sale. Like, I'm just so happy to buy it and so happy that it exists that like, I, I really am not even like the money. Okay, sure. I'm, I'm trading you a little bit of my money, whatever. But really, I'm just so happy because the next action that I wanted to take, you just put it in front of me. That's, that is marketing. Some people view marketing as manipulation. Not at all. Marketing is knowing your ideal customer and client so well and you don't overcomplicate it with your ego or by being narcissistic, but you actually just look right at what they need and want and what they want to do next. And you just, you set out a little platter and you say, hey, here's what you need. Here's what you've already told me you need. Here's what you want to do next. You've already told me you want to do this next. So let's just do it, huh? Here you go. Here it is. So even though you're looking to convert people into buyers, asking too many times for a sale can hurt the relationship. Don't forget that. Asking too many times can hurt the relationship. It's the same in human relationships. If you're asking, 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 well, chances are you're in an unbalanced relationship. The other person's just going to get annoyed and leave. They're just going to peace out. See ya. So give value, give value, give value, then ask, and then rinse and repeat. Give value, give value, give value, then ask, rinse and repeat. Give value, give value, give value, give value, rinse and repeat. Okay. All right. To wrap this up, every single time, oops, every single time that you're sitting down to write an email, always be asking yourself, what is the next step that I want them to take? And like we just said on the last page, what is this next step that they're looking forward to taking? And if you start with that question, you'll always be sure to point your subscribers in the right direction, which is the direction of taking action. The direct the direction of taking action. In addition, you'll always need to be asking yourself, have I built good enough goodwill into our relationship to ask for the sale? Like, do I have enough goodwill built into our relationship to even ask them to even say, hey, would will you buy? Because sometimes you just haven't given them enough yet. So if you haven't given them enough value and health education, you don't have the right to ask for the sale yet, okay? So what you actually need to do in that case is keep giving value until your audience is overwhelmed. The sale is trivial at that point because they're overwhelmed at your generosity that they feel they need to reciprocate to pay you for your products or services. So if you have a buyer, and then this is just as a final little uh, annotation of this whole thing. If you have a buyer specific email list of people who have purchased in the past, the big question you wanna start asking yourself is, do I have anything else to sell them? Right? So there's a couple ways to build revenue and to grow your business. One is to go out and find new customers. The other is to sell your existing customers more, right? So these customers, if they're happy with their experience so far, can be monetized with the additional products, coaching, or other services. Never underestimate the value of existing clients to bring you more revenue. Ultimately, ultimately, at the end of the day, if we were to sum this whole thing up, it's important to deliver the right message at the right time when your audience is primed and ready. This is the grease on the email marketing wheels that allows less friction, more happy clients, more sales, and more revenue, okay? So well done on day 17. Take a second to answer the questions that I gave you. They're powerful questions. And down here on the notes, just take a second to go through those questions and really dive in, okay? Write your first welcome indoctrination email if you haven't already and put that into play and we'll see you for day 18 tomorrow. Greetings, my friends, and welcome back. It's day 18 of the boot camp. How you doing? Before we dive into this, how we doing? You doing okay? Maybe take a second to pause this and just type to me in the comments of this video. How you doing? You doing okay? You, are you hanging in there? Are you feeling overwhelmed? Are you feeling empowered? Really, what we're going for here is we want you to feel empowered. All right. So today, what you know, throughout this boot camp, we give strategy and strategy and strategy and do this and do this and do this. Today, I want to point out because email marketing is it, it can be tricky. It can be tricky because a lot of times email marketing, what happens is people they'll do certain things. For instance, I'm being very big. For instance, they'll they'll copy the marketing style of somebody else without realizing that one important thing about their brand is you need to be unique, right? So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna unpack the top ten mistakes that most newbies, or not even really newbies, just, I mean, I see big corporations making these mistakes, but newbies, people who are inexperienced and, and not great with connecting people through email marketing, we're gonna go through the top 10 mistakes. So what not to do as you're building your email list and as you're trying to create more sales and more flurry of excitement through your email marketing, here are 10 mistakes that I see companies, individuals, businesses making in their email marketing. So let's dive right in. Mistake number one is assuming the job of email marketing is just to sell another click, okay? So email marketing is far more than just a tool to sell. It is that, but it's far more. 
As we've mentioned in previous days, email is used to give your clients high value content, tell compelling stories, voice your opinions, overcome objections, all of which allow you to build a no like and trust factor with your audience. We talked about this, I believe it was yesterday, the KLT, no like and trust. So if you try to sell before you have the no like and trust factor, which I actually, the word that I really love to use for this is influence. If you try to sell before you have influence, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It falls on flat ears or on deaf ears, it falls on deaf ears. So the no like and trust is really influence. And if you try to sell before that happens, it just doesn't work, right? Once you've built that no like and trust factor, the long-term result is that you can drive more sales and increase revenue in your business and change the lives of others by giving them valuable information. Okay. These are really the two core things that we're trying to do via email marketing, increase revenue, change lives. That's it. And that's, I mean, if you think through like, what's the purpose of a business, that sounds very elementary, right? But a lot of people don't really think through what's, what's the whole point of all of this? What am I here for? Am I, am I trying to sell something? What, what am I doing here? Right. They just kind of jump into a business because it was the best thing that they had on their plate in front of them at the time, or they frantically started looking online for some sort of way to make money, or they got fired from their job. But it's like, have you ever sat down and really thought like, what's the goal? It's to increase revenue and to change lives. That's it. Okay. Now maybe you have other deeper whys behind that. And I'm not trying to take away from those either. Okay. <laughs> Mistake number two, sending short emails pitching offer after offer. This is, this is pretty easy to do. Okay. Especially if you listen to some of the, some of the gurus in the industry who don't really know what they're doing, but they, they just pitch offer after offer after offer. And their email marketing is just filled with a pitch fest of emails. Okay. The tricky part about sending these types of short offer focused emails is that you can actually generate some sales from it in the short term. Okay. It sometimes will produce sales in the short term. All right. The thing most marketers don't realize is that this can kill your email list like a toxic poison. Building a business is about playing the long game and very few companies do this well in email marketing or overall. You have to remember, I want you to write this down. I'm playing the long game. Write that down. I'm playing the long game. When you start to take business as a long game, all of your marketing will shift, right? It won't, it won't feel so like it, it won't feel so spammy and so needy, right? You'll just start to give and give and give and ask when it's appropriate, right? Ask when it's appropriate, just like in a relationship. We've talked through that already in the bootcamp. Mistake number three, this is, this is sort of the opposite actually sending education, educational, high value emails without selling anything. So unlike mistake number two, this is the opposite. Some individuals are scared to ask for the sale for a variety of reasons. And thus they continue to do everything they can to educate and entertain their readers, but they never actually get to a clear call to action. They never actually say, will you buy? <laughs> so if you're constantly giving incredible content without ever asking for a sale to balance those scales, your audience gets, they, they are trained to expect everything for free. They should say, expect, expect everything for free. Now, look, there's somebody like Gary Vaynerchuk. He, he's written a book. If you haven't read it again, I, I don't have any financial interest in this, but if you haven't read this book, it's called jab, 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 right hook. Okay. Gary Vaynerchuk wrote this book, jab, 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 right hook. And what he says in this book, essentially, if you haven't read anything by Gary Vaynerchuk, I highly recommend it. He's got a couple books, jab, 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 right hook and crush it. Uh, both are centered around marketing. They're very important to this very idea. So I would go pick those up. If I were you give them a read, grab them on audible, give them a listen. Okay. But his idea is give value, give value, give value, ask, right? Build up, build rapport, build rapport, build rapport, build trust, build trust, build trust, ask. Okay. And if you're lacking, here's the, here's the weird piece of this. If you're lacking this, people get trained. Okay. I get everything for free from this person. They never sell me anything. And then when you ask for a sale after having done that for so long, what happens is, is they're like, well, what? I don't buy things from you. I don't pay you money. It needs to be a balanced relationship. Okay. All right. Mistake number four, tiptoeing around the sale. This is, this is so common. This is so common when people lack the self-confidence or self-esteem, they find it hard to believe in what they're selling and they act timid about the sale. But here's the catch. If you believe in your product, it's important that you don't withhold the grain from your audience. Lives aren't going to be changed. Revenue's not going to be generated if you're too scared to ask for the sale. This is super important. This is actually an old proverb. Okay. So look, if you're not religious or whatever, that's okay. But this is an old ancient proverb from the Bible where it says, uh, essentially it, it, those who withhold the grain will starve. And those, those who, those who, um, and, but those who essentially it says those who sell will have a feast. Now I'm paraphrasing here, but don't withhold the grain. That's the point of it, right? The point of that proverb is don't withhold the grain, but instead sell, give the value you have because it's, it's valuable, right? The people in, in the marketplace, the people in the town, the people in the world, they need the grain. It's good grain. It's a good product. Sell. When you're apologetic about the sale, your subscribers can feel a hesitation and they won't perceive you as a leader. They're going to see you as a newbie, somebody who lacks confidence and not somebody they're going to trust. Or you could even say this, not somebody who they're going to follow. They're not going to follow. Okay. So don't tiptoe around the sale. If you're going to sell something, ask, be bold and go for it. Go for the sale. Okay. Number five, mistake. Number five is being inconsistent with sending. So look, this is a real easy one guys. Okay. The more emails you send, the more sales you make. The data proves that to be true over and over and over again. Some people say, well, geez, I, I don't want to email them too much. I don't want to No. The more emails you sell, send the more sales you make sending emails infrequently, not only reduces your sales, but it also increases spam complaints from subscribers because they're unfamiliar with their name. They open the email. Okay. They open this little envelope email thing and your name is here and they don't even know who you are because they barely ever hear from you. Okay. So some people are like, well, I don't want to bother them. It actually does the opposite. You're going to increase spam complaints and it could hurt your deliverability overall. Not a good solution, right? 
Number six, overly obsessing over open rates and click stats. Okay, look, I'm not saying that these stats aren't important, but these clickbait type subject lines can get a ton of opens and clicks. But if you're not measuring the sales data, you're going to be confused as to what's really working. So writing quality emails that actually help people is more important than getting your open rates up. Okay. Once you see, here's the thing. And I found this to be true over and over and over again, both in copywriting and video creation and content creation and emails. If you focus yourself down on quality that actually helps people, that actually helps people. Okay. What happens is the open rates eventually go up. You'll get the unsubscribes. Okay. That's okay. You'll get unsubscribes. That's okay. I'm going to talk about that next. But the thing is your open rates will go up because the content, the quality is there. People, people know you to be somebody who delivers. Okay. Mistake number seven. This is a big one. Worrying about unsubscribe rates. Unsubscribes are good. Okay. I want you to read that twice and I want you to write that down for yourself. Unsubscribes are good, a good thing for your business, for your email marketing. It's healthy. Okay. It's sort of like if you have weeds overgrowing your, your lawn, right? Unsubscribes are like pulling the weeds and getting the weeds out. Okay. When you, when you email consistently with high value content and ask for a sale at the appropriate time, anyone who unsubscribes is just genuinely telling you that they don't want to be contacted. That's it. That's fine. All that's happening in the scenario is that you're attracting more buyers. You're attracting more buyers. That's the mindset shift you got to have and speaking directly to your ideal av avatar, which means that you're repelling, you're, you're sending away non-buyers. The cool part is, is you reduce the risk of spam complaints because unsubscribes essentially clean your list. And that helps to not have deliverability issues with your emails. It's really powerful. And, and guess what? What that does is that frees you to not feel bad or to feel like you're failing or to feel any of that stuff. You don't have to feel any of that. Okay. Mistake number eight, sending boring or misleading emails, meaning clickbait type emails. Nothing kills sales more than boring or misleading emails. People don't want to open an email from a company to discover there's a snooze fest of irrelevant content. That's just like, what are we doing here? On the contrary though, what you probably don't realize is that people actually love to purchase from interesting, compelling emails or emails that deliver a perfect offer at the perfect time. Hey, people love to buy. You love to buy. This is what a lot of newbie marketers forget when they get started online. People love to purchase. Write that down because this is super powerful, right? A lot of times when people start marketing and because they're now on the other side of that relationship, that marketing relationship, they forget that they themselves enjoy buying things. It's a rush of adrenaline. It's the excitement of opening a package or watching a training or trying new software, guys. It's invigorating, right? Never forget that people love to buy and then just become a master at story, story selling and emails to captivate your audience and call them to purchase. People love to buy. And now that, you know, when you turn into a marketer, you start experiencing people reject you or say no to your offer and you, and you forget that when you do marketing well and you, and you put the offer down in front of somebody's face at the right time, they love to purchase. Don't forget that. This is so huge. Mistake number nine, not using value triggers. Earlier in the bootcamp, remember we talked about the value triggers that are more important than just saving money or making money or losing weight or anything like that. There are psychological triggers that cause people to purchase. And if you're constantly only using one angle to pitch, you're really only targeting one type of person. So if I've got a list of a thousand people, there's definitely gonna be different types of subscribers who respond to different triggers. They're different. Different types of people are gonna respond to different types of triggers. If you send out emails that use different triggers, you cover a much wider audience and you'll be able to maximize your sales, okay? So different types of triggers, different value offers. Mistake number 10, this is the final mistake. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's more mistakes, but these are the top 10. Copying the style of other marketers, copying the style of other marketers. So usually when somebody is new, they feel lost and overwhelmed. Maybe you feel that way, okay? If that's you, just don't worry. Every single marketer has been there. But it's important to remember that each human has their own voice, their own viewpoints, and when harnessed, they can usually be very entertaining when you become you and embrace you. There's only one Dave Sharp in the world. There's only one Frank Kern in the world. There's only one Gary Vaynerchuk in the world. You don't need to try to emulate them. Their styles work because they are unique. Look, when it comes to a brand, when it comes to email marketing, when it comes to all of this stuff, this applies way more to email marketing, to, to all of marketing than it does just emails, but their styles work because they're unique. And I want you to write that word down in big, bold letters. I am unique. My brand is unique. My voice is unique. It deserves, and write that word down. This is a really powerful word. It deserves to be heard. Some people, uh, for cultural reasons or for religious reasons, or maybe even for gender reasons, have had their voice squashed or pushed down or said, you should be seen and not heard their whole life as kids. And then they don't really believe that they deserve to be heard. So don't let that happen to you. That's the most important mistake that most marketers make. They become a copycat of somebody else because they, they don't realize they've lived their whole lives as a copycat of someone else. They've lived their whole lives emulating their parents. They've lived their whole lives falling into the trap of the nine to five and blah, blah, blah. And they're just, or whatever it is. And then a few months into their marketing, they wonder why it's not working for them. Like it did for the XYZ guru, right? You have your own voice. There's only one you in the world. So harness that voice, get good at story, story selling and write copy every single day with the intention of getting better at your ability to captivate people with the written word. Okay. Remember your style is unique. Your voice is unique. You have a unique message to get into the marketplace. So don't withhold the grain, give it to the people. Okay. Now I want you to take some notes here, especially centered around. We have a, a little page in this, in this, uh, in this PDF guide, we have a little page for notes. I want you to just sit down and just take a couple minutes to think through this whole unique voice thing that I talked about here. Has your voice been squashed? Has it been, have you been able to clearly get your message out with your unique voice, right? Your sense of humor, right? Your sense of empathy, right? Your set, whatever it is. I mean, whatever is really your brand, maybe it's grit and resilience. What is it? What is your voice? What's sent? What is your voice unique around? What does it center around? I want you to leave a comment. I want you to talk to me. Tell us, tell us a little bit about your voice. Has it, has it been heard? 
Do you want it to be heard? Is that important to you? Tell just process that a little bit, right? Okay. Now I'm going to leave this a little bit more open ended and here's why sometimes, and maybe this is you, we're so trained to be students, right? Well, here's what I, here's what I, my, one of my biggest regrets about school is I learned what to think rather than how to think. So I'm going to leave this one a little bit open-ended because if you're anything like me, you love to be trained to, to have a certain set of questions to write down and I have an assignment to get done and, you know, on and on and on. I'm going to leave this open-ended and I'm just going to make the instructions here for you to process it. Just process your voice. What's it been like? What's it been like? Do you feel like it's been heard? Do you feel like it's been squashed? Do you feel like it's been pushed down? What's it been like? What's it been like for you? I want you to process that in the notes of this and you can leave a comment here in this video as well. There's no right or wrong answer to this. We're not gonna come after you if you don't leave a comment, okay? <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your voice. What's unique about it? What's important about it? Is there anything important that you think you, you needs to be heard in terms of your marketing? Okay, we will see you again tomorrow for day 19. Have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is for you. See ya. Greetings and welcome to day 19. In week one, we determined that selling via story is one of the most, if not the single most powerful ways to sell. And in day 19, we're going to actually craft four core relationship building emails. And I'm even going to give you templates to guide you along the way for each of those four emails. So essentially, once someone actually enters their name and email into your opt-in page and they're put on your email marketing list, it's important that right away you onboard them. This is the process of onboarding, just like you would if you were at a job and HR. You onboard them by allowing them to get to know you better and know what, what their purpose is for getting your emails. Okay. So now you could sit down one by one and email out each of these leads, which would take forever and make you want to pull your hair out. That doesn't sound very fun, right? Or you can use what's called an autoresponder sequence. If you're not familiar with that, basically most email marketing services like Mailing Boss, Aweber, GetResponse have the capability to automatically send out messages to your leads every day or how, however often you want them to send out. So if I today went to your opt-in page and I enter my name and I enter my email for more information, you could send me an email per day automatically really for as long as you want. You could have five emails in that autoresponder. You could have 500. I've known marketers who have over 500 emails and they go out once per day for over a year. The choice is yours, how long you want to make that happen for. Ideally though, just because I'm sure you're sitting there looking for a number, ideally you'll have at least 10, at least 10 follow-up emails that build trust and then call people to take the next logical step. Okay. So the more you have, usually the better your results, as long as the emails themselves are actually quality. And the first three to five emails should be focused around letting your subscribers get to know you, why they should trust you and the journey that you've been on to get to where you are today. Those are kind of the key things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you a four part email sequence of emails that you can plug and play and make adjustments to fit your story. And just to be clear, these are designed to be emails number one through four of your, of your initial email sequence. The moment somebody gets on your email list. Okay. Now you have to alter these to tell your story. Some pieces can stay kind of the same, but the emails are not going to produce a good result for you unless you do the hard work of customizing them and really working your own voice into them. This is the key to building a really long-term powerful brand. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through them. We're going to go through them email number one through four. And the goal of these emails is to number one, help people get to know you. And, and really it's sort of communicating. I'm like you, I've been through what you're going through. Let me suggest a solution to you. Okay. So let's get into it. Okay. And email number one, you can see the subject line is, and, and these have been tested by the way, and proven to work. Okay. So this isn't just some theoretical thing. I just swabbed up. Okay. This is something that we have tested. I've used this exact subject line. Okay. I've used this exact email. So is Dave. Okay. So it says, Hey, insert first name tag one quick thing. Okay. And then, so where it says insert user first name tag in most email autoresponders, for instance, uh, in builder, that's one of them in mailing boss, there's a thing where it says, usually it looks like this F name. Okay. F name. And what that does is it'll actually pull in the first name of that subscriber. So it'll say, Hey Matt, one quick thing. And then in the actual email, it says, hi, username, first name tag. So it'll say, hi, Matt. And then when it goes out to Amy, it'll say, hi, Amy or Joe or Lisa or whatever their name is. Congratulations. And welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. My name is, you just put your name there and I'm the one who's going to be, op uh, who's going to open your eyes to the very harsh realities that are keeping you stuck, stressing out about money, robbing Peter to pay Paul and living paycheck to paycheck. And I'm going to show you. So this is centered around sort of a make money uh, education. Like how do I make money on the internet? Right. I'm broke. I'm sick and tired of being paycheck to paycheck. I'm sick and tired of living like this. How can I get out of this? And I'm going to show exactly how you two can break away from the spell and finally live the life of freedom and prosperity that you and your family deserve. So I hope you're ready to take a deep dive down the rabbit hole because what I'll be, what I'll reveal to you in the next few days might shock you. Okay. Now, if I scroll down. There we go. But it'll, it'll prove to be immensely profitable for you. If you've got the guts to swallow a large dose of harsh reality, that's notice the language here, harsh reality. You ready for it? It's a challenge for now. And then I'm going to insert their name again. I needed to whitelist the email and then whatever your professional email address is that you've selected that you've purchased, you're going to insert it right here. This is the email address that all of your emails are coming from. And if you're using Gmail, make sure you have it delivered to your important folder. Okay. So I'm giving them instructions what to do next. Go and do this. Trust me. You won't want to miss any of these eye opening truths. I'll be sending your way. One more thing. Now watch how this, watch the segue, watch the transition I do here. One more thing. If you don't mind, I'd like to take a quick second to share a little bit about my story with you. 
Okay. So I give them instruction. I tell them, Hey, there's going to be more coming, but just, you know, before you go, can I just share one thing? If, if you don't mind in 2009, I began this feverish search, write that term down feverish search for some sort of way to make an income online. I really had no idea what I was looking for, who to trust. Notice in the parentheses here, the parentheses are usually a way for you to, to sort of give a look inside the inner workings of your brain. What's really going on, right? I spent years floundering around trying this system and that buying just about every online business course you can think of saying it was rough doesn't even really do it justice. I would stay up late in the night and wake up brutally early before work, just slaving away on my business, four hours of sleep per night for months. And one night I woke up with intense chest pains and went into full panic mode. My wife drove us to the hospital. I still remember her tearing up as I was laying on the table and that's when it hit me. Long story short, the doc said my body was shutting down due to all the stress and lack of sleep, but I was desperate. I was desperate. Find out what I did in tomorrow's email. Talk soon, Matt. P.S. In case you weren't, in case you missed it or weren't able to watch, click here to watch the super important video I told you about earlier. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm dripping out curiosity right? I was desperate. My body shutting down I'm in the hospital bed. I was desperate. Find out what I did tomorrow. Do you think my open rates are going to be better? Open rates, meaning the amount of people who open my emails, right? So if I have hundred people on my list and only 10 open on average, that's a 10% open rate. That's actually the industry average. Do you think there's a reason that my open rates are 50% plus usually to cold traffic? I know that sounds crazy, but they are. It's crazy, right? It's because of this type of hypnotic copy. Click here to watch a super important video that I told you about earlier. So in this first email, I'm giving them just a, a little reminder, okay? And this actually would go back to my bridge page. This would go back to the bridge page that they already saw, but I want to remind them of it and send it back there just in case. Now, moving on to email number two, a quick follow-up from yesterday. It says, hey again, yesterday I mentioned how desperate I got with my never-ending search to try to create a profitable online business. Now, all of my marketing, all of my bridge page video, all of everything is really centered around how to create a profitable online business. How do you set it up? What's the structure? What's the function? How do you set up the business model? And to be honest, I would stop at nothing to figure this damn thing out. Excuse the language. Here is a big time tip if you're ready for this. I, I put this in here very specifically. Figure this damn thing out. And here's the interesting part too, is I market to a lot of people, like just the, the people who... The people who come on my list are usually kind of um, um, not really like spiritual, but like I, I come from a more conservative um, kind of religious background and I, I not to get into it today or right now, but I don't even really identify a lot with some of that stuff today. But um, but I have a lot of those people on my email list and I and I still use the word damn and I say figure this damn thing out because it, it captures a deeper level of frustration that's that's real and raw. And people sometimes don't feel permission to say it like that. But when you say it, they're like, oh, this is real. Something feels raw and candid about this. So hopefully that makes sense because this is insanely powerful. That's how you build trust quick. Day after day, I'd be learning code, building a website, launching some social media campaign. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over while expecting different results. Well, I may have been slightly insane, <laughs> but I never... now notice how there's a little bit of there's just subtle humor worked in here. Do you guys notice how I went from how, how mad I was and figure this damn thing out to like just a little bit of subtle humor? It's, 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 it feels comfortable. It feels trustworthy, but at every juncture, it felt like I was turning a corner. It didn't really look much on the outside, especially to my friends and family. And I know that friends and family are some of the first people to make fun of people to say, oh, you're doing that stupid online thing. So what do I do? I work it in here. It's a pain point for my avatar but it sure felt internally like I was moving forward. The problem, the results just weren't there. It felt like forward motion, but my business and bank account were still bankrupt. This is the problem for most people online. I'm turning a corner, I'm turning a corner, I'm turning a corner. But it's like, are you just walking in circles, right? I guess you could say I was ramming my head into a wall over and over again, but the turning point was coming. I just didn't know it yet. Find out what it was tomorrow. See you soon. See you tomorrow. First thing, okay? So that's email number two. And I don't even include a link here. I just say, find out what it was tomorrow. The instructions are open my email tomorrow. And then we go to number three. So in email number three, I give a subject line that's really powerful. It says, can I be really honest with you? Okay, so hi, first name. If I can be candid for a sec, when I had my what now moment a few years back and I was in a really scary spot, both from a health perspective and from an emotional perspective, it was actually a lot worse than I described. So now I'm saying all of that pain, right? Remember when I talked about massaging the pain points, okay? Remember when I talked about that earlier on in week one, massaging the pain points? Well, when you give pain, the second thing that you wanna do is you wanna massage it and really work it out. So I say it's a lot worse than I actually described. Why? Because beneath the health issues that had surfaced was a mountain, was a mountain of self-doubt and anxiety. I'm not saying I was anxious and nervous. I am saying that there was an actual mountain, right? That you could go skiing on. That was my anxiety, a mountain of it. I hope you guys feel how different this is than saying, yeah, I was anxious all the time and I was weird. No, no, no. A mountain of self-doubt and anxiety that I didn't know what to do with. It wasn't bad enough that my business was really a hobby and that I'd been trying for years to generate some sort of income online, but every single day that passed felt like a ticking time bomb. Notice, notice. My business was a hobby that I've been trying to that I've been trying for years to generate some sort of income online. That's a statement of fact, right? I give a statement of fact. And then I give a, a, how did I feel about it, right? How did I process it? Well, it felt like a ticking time bomb of failure ready to implode in my face. Lots of people are feeling this online. Back then, now this, this email guys is just so powerful. Back then, nobody ever took me by the hand and just said, do this, not that until I reach success. I don't know where you're at with your finances or your dreams, but I know I put my dreams on the back burner for years because you know what? I didn't have any legit reason to bother dreaming. But when I, what I discovered through a little help from some amazing mentors was it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. I had never been shown how it all works. I wasn't really plugged into the community and teaching I needed in order to get the results I was looking for. Well, I'm here to tell you today, once and for all, that if you've been clicking around, looking for a way to start an online business, whether Amazon, Etsy, affiliate marketing, consulting, selling webinars, et cetera, and you found it to be complicated and confusing, well, guess what? It's not your fault either. 
all caps, bold. It's not your fault either. You haven't been shown the right information yet. You haven't been given the right leadership yet. You haven't been part of an insider's club yet. What exactly am I talking about? Stay tuned for tomorrow's email to learn about the one thing that's turning the lives of many people upside down and could be the answer you've been searching for. See you tomorrow. Insert your name here. So again, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not even giving it to them. I'm almost taking it away from them. I'm saying, hey, you got to come back tomorrow. Tomorrow is the big day. And then look at the email. This is email number four, subject line. Insert user's first name. Today's the big day, right? Today's the big day. It says, hey, again, today could be the day where, ev where absolutely everything changes for you. Now, that's kind of a cheesy claim, so I actually say it. Big claim, let me back it up. Over the past few days, I've let you into my internal world, and we've explored my years-long struggle, struggle with building a business online. The shame, the self-doubt, it's all very real and difficult to relive. But today, I want to share with you a video and a person that really turned things around for me. At the height of my anxiety and stress, watching this short video created a shift inside me that changed everything. Sorry if that sounds cheesy, but it's true. I went from, and, and notice how I'm not even saying, after I watched this video, I made six figures online, and I became this blah, 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 right? No, it just created a shift in me that changed everything. And I'm peaking curiosity now. I went from feeling distracted and unfocused, feeling misguided, cheated, and hung out to dry, self-doubting and unsure of myself. Now, whatever the pain points are for whatever that you're selling, you just insert them there. It's simple, guys. It's simple marketing. I went from that, and now I feel this. I feel confident. I feel welcome to a new team and culture that was positive and affirming. I, fo I felt focused with my eye on the prize every single day. What did it? What could create that type of transformation in a single video? Watch this video and find out now. Give it a watch. Take immediate action on what you learn. Your first name here. Now, in just a small matter of time, just a small matter of time, we went through four simple emails that you can edit and create right from this little PDF guide. You can have it open on your desk. You can have the emails open, ready to go, and you can sit down and actually craft your first four emails for your autoresponder. And I want you to do that as your day 19 assignment. Go through this video once, maybe go through it twice, okay? And either in the notes section, you can print off a couple of these pages if you like writing, or... The other thing that you can do is just pull out a journal or pull open a Google Doc or a Word Doc. And I want you to type out these four emails. If you already have an autoresponder ready to go, go into your four first emails and just insert these things, okay? Start to drip that curiosity. The important piece of this all, the important piece of this all is that you maintain congruency with whatever your funnel is, okay? I'm going to draw this right here. I was looking for a little blank white space. So whatever is on your opt-in page, guys, this is the important piece. Whatever is here and you have a little headline, okay? And then you have an opt-in box. Now they're going to start getting these 15 emails or however many emails, 10 emails or four emails, whatever. But these four core emails, okay, guess what? These need to be very reflective of what was on this page that they opted in for. It all needs to be congruent 100% in order for your marketing message to work. So that's day 19. Hopefully you enjoyed the emails and got value from those. Go ahead and write your first four emails right now and comment below this video when you've got those done. This is a big assignment. So take your time, put them together, and I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow for day 20. Well, greetings once again. It's day 20 of the Builder All Bootcamp. I am so excited that you made it this far. I mean, give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back because this hasn't been easy. And I know that a lot of you have been just pushing through so many blocks. So well done, seriously, well done. Throughout this week, we've been we've been covering, you know, is email really dead, right? We talked through the statistics and conversion stats of email marketing, right? Uh, we talked through how to use email like a pro, delivering the right message at the right time. We talked through, uh, and, and even we gave you four uh, emails, four email templates to customize and make yourself. We, we went through the top 10 email mistakes that we often see with newbies in them making. So today on day, 20. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep this super short, quick, and to the point. But here's, I wanted to lay out for you sort of the customer's journey. Okay. And here's what I mean by that. So in terms of, in terms of, you know, somebody getting in contact with you, whether they see an ad or whether they see uh, a YouTube video or whether they see your blog post or whether you talk to them in person, it doesn't really matter. But in terms of the customer journey, think of it kind of like a timeline, right? Okay. So we talked about this earlier and forgive my drawing skills here, guys. I'm just, it's, it's what it is. <laughs> but in terms of somebody, let's, let's say the, the first point of contact for them is they find you. Okay. They find you. Then there's this little moment where they see an opt-in page and maybe they don't even opt in the first time, but eventually they opt in and give you their name and email and then starts these sequences of emails. Okay. Now this is the pivotal moment where they start to really trust you. They start to see, wow, this person is, you know, candid with their journey and their story. They're candid with the mission of their company and what they're about. They're candid with all of this stuff. And this is really where what we talked about it yesterday and the day before that, the no like and trust factor really starts to build. And then this is usually where money comes. Okay. Now look, can money come earlier on in little spurts throughout? Yes. But the underlying it's, it's sort of like if you've ever seen a photo of an iceberg, right? If this is the water, if this is the water surface, and then you see this little iceberg sticking out of the water, right? underneath the water, the iceberg is usually at least two to five times the size. And don't quote me on that, but it's usually way, way larger. The iceberg is under the surface than it is above, right? So a lot of times people think, here's the, here's the thing. A lot of times people think that all of your money should be coming up front and that everything's about conversions and money. That is true. I mean, we're here to make a profit as a business, right? We're here to do two things, change lives and make money. But the bigger undercurrent, sort of the underbelly of your business is this no like and trust factor. And what you're trying to do is build this. And you've got to have trust in the process that this is going to make you money at some point. 
Okay. So in terms of the customer journey, then in email marketing, you're trying to do two things. You're trying to engage people and you're trying to convert people, engage and convert, engage and convert, right? So over the past, well, this was just yesterday, we gave you four emails and these four emails are designed to start to build a relationship, right? And we had you customize them, make them into your story, build a relationship. Okay. Now, just want to give you a quick little side note. If you're not great with English, if your grammar isn't perfect, hire somebody on fiverr.com who's good with grammar. Okay. Just search grammar correction or grammar and have them look through your emails, read them and give you a correction for five or $10. Okay. It's worth the investment, but those were to build a relationship. And now what we want to talk about is conversions. So today here's the end goal. So emails one through four are building relationship. Now emails five through 10, which we also have templates for today are about converting your customers. Okay. So what you're going to see here when you, when you scroll uh, through this, through this day 20 document is five, uh, email five through 10 rather, uh, that are going to focus on conversions, education and conversion, education and conversion. Okay. So for instance, in this one, um, we're talking through sort of a make money online sort of pitch. Okay. So what you'll have to do is for whatever industry you're in, for whatever, um, for, for whatever industry you're in, whatever you're selling, you're going to have to sort of convert these and switch these up a little bit. If you're in the make money online education space, then maybe you can keep that. Um, but what you're going to want to do, so for instance, um, I had, and let me scroll up here to number five, okay? So you got played, right? The angle is what can stay here. So I want to make this really clear for you. The angle you got played is, is taking the angle that somebody is to blame, right? We talked about this earlier in the bootcamp, but somebody is to blame, right? Be a good little girl or boy, get good grades, go to college, find a job, right? Put money away in retirement, you'll be fine. Charade is collapsing right on our noses. We've been played. Now, I can take that angle in so many different ways. We, we, I've talked about coffee, remember this? Now, this might be a little extreme, so just bear with me here for a second. But I've talked a lot about coffee over the last, you know, whatever, 20 days of this boot camp. In, in the coffee industry, a lot of times people will say that dark roasted coffee tastes best. So, so let's imagine for a second that I have a little website for a coffee business, right? And people go there and they say, I want to subscribe to sign up for updates. And then I have a little autoresponder sequence set up for people that just is focused on education. Okay. So this autoresponder sequence is just educating people. People have been, people have been scammed into thinking that dark roasted coffee is the strongest coffee online or, or the <laughs> strongest coffee online is the strongest coffee available. Dark roasted coffee tastes, it tastes terrible to me, but most people think, you know what, when I taste a really dark, strong cup of coffee, it's going to have the most caffeine. People have been scammed. People have been played, right? So I can talk to that point. I can say, look, did you know that dark roasted coffee has the least amount of caffeine of all coffee? It has the least. Actually, light roasted, light to medium roasted coffee has the most, most caffeine because the longer it roasts, the more the caffeine comes out of the bean. And that's why we roast only light to medium, right? You know, whatever. At our coffee company, we only roast light to medium. And that could be one of my emails, right? You got played. For instance, surveys show, and then I give a little bit of, remember, this is all about education. Surveys show one in three Americans have no retirement savings. Well, if it was coffee, I would say surveys show one in three Americans don't really know the story behind where their coffee is is um, is being roasted or, or is being grown or being roasted. Survey show Americans don't really know that. And what happens throughout that food chain is people get lost. The, the farmers get screwed on their money. They end up living most of their life in poverty. Um, and we do things differently. We buy our coffee directly from coffee farmers, which goes directly into their pockets. And they end up living a much more fulfilled, happy, abundant life because of that model, as opposed to the Keurig, Starbucks, all of these other models. Now, if you're sitting here, it, it, so you might be just be sitting here watching this, reading this, whatever, as a bootcamp member thinking like, wow, okay, like that's a great little angle there. The thing of it is, is look, if I was, let me give you a real example. If I was, if I was a builder all affiliate, this whole we've been played, all you got to do is play on the angle of how greedy software companies charge you X amount of dollars every single month for their funnel building software, for their email marketing software, for all of this software. The problem for some of you with builder all um, who are affiliates is that you actually haven't spent enough time in this industry to know how expensive some of these things are. You haven't used Infusionsoft, you haven't used ClickFunnels, you haven't used, um, you haven't used, uh, for instance, um, um, any number of I, I don't know, any number of other expensive softwares to build uh, websites. You haven't used WordPress or tried to use WordPress and realized how difficult and struggle it is. You have two major issues in the, in specifically in that industry. One is price. The other is it's it's super hard. <laughs> what is it, it costs a lot of money, and the other is it's hard. And you can use these email templates and the angles in them to start to build and educate your audience. Okay. So number six is the biggest lie we've all been fed. Again, in coffee, I would just say, this is that dark roasted coffee is, is the, is the strongest, uh, in terms of caffeine content. It's just not true. Or I could say it's also that, um, coffee can't taste like it smells. It's false. You can, if you roast coffee, right. And get the best coffee in the world, you can make it taste just as good as it smells before you brew it. That was always a struggle for me. Right. So, so, and in all of that, what would I be doing? I would be, I would be building trust for the purpose of eventually driving e-commerce sales, right? Most coffee shops and coffee roasteries that I've ever been a part of don't have an educational uh, element to them where they educate their consumers and drive more e-commerce sales because of that. They just don't do it. Okay. So throughout these emails, right, get this out of your head. Email number seven, um, email number eight, how to fix what's going on upstairs, right? So a lot of this has to do with mindset and shifting your mentality and shifting your mindset, which is really helpful in, in many cases, in many industries, in the health and wellness industry, right? If you're selling pills and potions and shakes and all that kind of stuff, right? If you're trying to build a business, any of this stuff.
Okay. And then email number 10, maybe this will do the trick, right? Most of us would do much more to avoid pain than we would to gain pleasure. That's a weird, that's an interesting thing, right? So this is all about building an online business. And it talks about, you know, barely having enough money to retire. Look, if it's, if it's, if it is to get better, it must be by change. It might take you a while, or you can use this to get there faster, right? So that angle here is all about speed. So there's different angles. And what I want you to do is read through them because here's what I found in, in the last eight years of teaching people how to write really amazing copy. What I found is the best way is to have people actually read really compelling, really good copy. And you'll notice here that there's little, little spots uh, throughout these emails where you can actually insert. So if I was copying and pasting this into mailing boss or Aweber or whatever, where it says till then go ahead and watch this video now, right here, this is where I would hyperlink to go to my bridge page or to go to my sales page. They've already opted in. So they've already seen, you know, the opt-in page, of my funnel. I don't need them to opt in again. I would say, go watch this video. Now I would send them straight to my video page. Okay. So wherever it says insert user first name tag, that's where you're going to put in the, the F name tag, the first name tag. And if you don't know how to do that, contact whoever, you know, if you're using mailing boss, go watch a tutorial or if you're using Aweber, go watch a tutorial. Okay. And then right here, this is where you would obviously put your name. Okay. So day 20, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go through these emails. Okay. And I want you to take them to whatever email marketing service you're using, whether it's mailing box or others, Aweber. Okay. You're going to go in and create a little campaign and you're going to put them into a sequence. So you're, then you're, what you're going to have at the end of all of this is a 10 part email sequence. If you're not sure how to put together a sequence, contact support for your email marketing service. Say, Hey, I want a 10 part email sequence. I've written these out there here in my Google document or in my Microsoft word document or whatever. And how do I make them into an autoresponder sequence? Okay. And, and guess what? Remember this, figure it out, figure it out. Okay. That's day 20, ladies and gentlemen. You've made it 20 days into this boot camp. We're going to start wrapping up the the perfect email uh, part of this boot camp. And then the, the final week is we're going to move into the perfect ads. And we're going to talk specifically about how to get more eyeballs, more traffic on your opt-in page. Because at this point, we've already gone through the offer, the opt-in page, or the, the funnel and the emails. And now it's all just about getting eyeballs on all of this stuff and then maximizing conversions. So have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is for you. And we'll see you again tomorrow for day 21. Hey, we are live. Oh, hold on, let me grab my mic. <laughs> there we go. All right, I think you should be able to hear me now. All right, welcome in, everybody. Well, I don't know if I should say everybody quite yet. I don't think I have anybody here with me. If you're with me, if you're with me, just give me a hello. Let me know that you're here. Oh, there's Eugene, Michael, Douglas, Elisa, Gil. Good to see you, Donna, Mark. All right. Cindy, hi, Gil. Good to see you, Cindy, Frankie, Jerry, Deborah, Diana. All right, right on. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, or wherever you're at. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, can you hear me okay? Am I coming through loud and clear? I didn't check my hair this morning, so let me. <laughs> uh, good to see you, Michael. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, just because I like doing this at the beginning of lives, and because uh, I always think it's a fun idea, I'm going to demo it for you, uh, or not really demo it, but just kind of model it for you. Um, when you guys, where are you guys calling in from? Just, just uh, give me a quick, give me a quick little. Um, I'm, I'm calling in from where? Um, it's always cool to see the various places in the world where people are calling in from. So, let's see, let's see, let's see. Where are y'all calling in from? Oh, thanks, Cindy. I appreciate that. <laughs> Hey, hey, Mark, good to see you. Gerson, good, always good to see you on here. Ron, Rachel, thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for being here. Chicago, I love Chicago. New York, D.C., all right, awesome. Hey, Desmond, good to see you. Thanks for all your engagement in the in the boot camp. Love it. Uh, let's see, let's see, who else? Who else is in here? Nebraska, okay, Kansas, Northwest Florida, Midlands, U.K., I love it. All right. I got my coffee today. Coffee today is brought to you by, no free ads, but Sweet Bloom Coffee Roasters. They're out of Denver, Colorado. Great, great uh, coffee roasting company there, so. That's what I'm drinking. All right. Atlanta, Georgia, Spokane. I love it. Desmond, all the way from Singapore. I love it. Sing Dude, Singapore is one of my favorite, all time favorite, favorite um, cities in the world. I love it. Anita, welcome in. Hey, so, so let's do this. Let's kick this whole, let's kick this whole party off here. Uh, so what I'm most curious about with some or all or most of you is, is how you're feeling. So the point of a bootcamp like this is to sort of gauge how people are feeling, how they're doing as we go. Right. And so as we go through all of this process, right, we head into the last week. So we've gone through the perfect offer. We've gone through uh, the perfect funnel and now the perfect emails, right? We've given you templates and kind of um, demoed and modeled for you how to sort of get all of these pe the, the, the pieces in place, right? I'm just curious how you're feeling about all of that stuff. Are, are you feeling overwhelmed? Are you feeling, I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling good because in this, in this last week, we're going to go full kind of guerrilla marketing. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to go really into, we call it perfect ads. It might just be better named perfect traffic. The goal is that, you know, now that we've got this funnel set up, right? Now we just need to start dumping traffic into it, right? Getting eyeballs on, on what we're working on getting set up. And so, um, and so look, if you're behind Anita, if you're behind anybody who is just like, oh my gosh, I'm so stressed. I want to catch up. Look, just give yourself permission. It's okay. You're still going to have a whole 30 day period. You're going to still have a whole 30 day period after this bootcamp is done where you can re-reference videos. You can come back to them at any point. Okay. All right, so let's see. Um, let me close this out here. There we go. Okay, perfect. Hey, Gordon, good to see you. Uh, Desmond says the pace is just nice. I think that these lives as well are helpful in breaking it up a little bit. So um, 
10 emails to create in two days feels like a lot. So, so uh, Douglas, or I guess you go by Chip, I think. So Chip, when it comes to writing 10 emails, you're right. You're right. It's a lot, right? And here's the goal, guys. So even if you write 10 emails over the, over the course of the next 10 days, the goal is creating a new habit. That's the real point of this bootcamp. If you don't get anything else, it's just creating a new habit because once you get into the habit of doing that regularly, then what happens is writing an email a day doesn't feel so bad. And so, and so what it does is it frees you up to be even more productive. So, so if you go from a place where writing an email a day is really tough and it's really exhausting and oh my gosh, this is so exhausting. If, if you are able to create a new habit of implementation, a new habit of speed and efficiency, then what happens is this, this new thing, let's say it's hold, hold, uh, hosting webinars. Let's say hosting webinars is your next thing, right? You wouldn't even get to hosting webinars if you didn't first create the habit of writing emails, right? So it's sort of a, it's a collective thing where each new habit opens up a new potential marketing leg for you. Um, I feel great because I have some, I love it, Donna. That's great. Um, let's see. Loving, loving it. Each day can be selling program. I've been through thousands for nothing. Each training is wonderful. Yeah, that's great. Thanks Rose. That's really nice of you to say, uh, feeling a bit behind because I got stuck with creating the actual funnel. I need to learn some mailing boss. Um, the lines are helpful. Good morning, Gloria. Good to see you. Format and content has been tied up. Loose ends. I appreciate the hot seat critique. Feel overwhelmed, but happy I have access to this stuff that, that works. Need to redo a lot of things, but I'll get it. All right. I love it. Elisa. That's awesome. Um, in the past, I was, I love this pace. Rainier, good to see you. It would be nice to have more feedbacks. Um, so Eugene, so Eugene, here's just here's just an interesting thing. Um, and, and I'm gonna just, guys, if you're here on this live, I'm just gonna speak directly to Eugene because we've worked together a little bit in over the last couple of months, actually. Um, Eugene, I've noticed with you that it's really important to get feedback on, on certain things, right? And so here's what I would recommend is I would recommend find, maybe pretend, potentially finding somebody to pay to get one-on-one -on -one feedback with, um, or there's that option, okay? Or the other option is, I, and this might, I don't know if this is right or wrong, but the other thing is like some of this marketing guys, all of marketing is a test. Sometimes, sometimes people come into these things and they assume that me and Dave, we just have it all together. Well, not really. What we've done is we've tested enough and failed enough to figure it out for ourselves, right? And we find these big, broad principles. So sometimes we don't do click by click stuff for certain things. In certain places, it's helpful. But for certain things, we don't go click by click on all of these things because at the end of the day, you have to test and figure out what works for you. And so what, maybe we found that for us, but for other people, it looks different. And, but the overarching umbrella marketing principles are still there and they still work for everybody. So Eugene, I think maybe the first thing to do rather than just give me all your feedback, I need feedback, I need feedback. Instead, just test it, right? Just test it, see if it works. Run some ads, send people like me or leaders screenshots and say, hey, I did a test, I spent 50 bucks on ads. I, I ran some YouTube ads, I, I set up some videos. What can I improve? Does that make sense to everybody here? Just type to me real quick. Hey, good to see you, Jeannie. Good to see you, Tina. Awesome that you're here. Glad you're here. If you if you just came in, if you just came in, uh, type to me where you're calling in from, and then tell me how you're feeling about the process so far. Tell me how you're feeling. Give a little feedback. And Eugene, with that feedback that I'm giving you now, I don't mean to to tell you to go kick rocks or get lost. Don't hear that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is. It, for, sometimes sometimes we get so caught up in like just needing to know that it's right or it's wrong. And, and sometimes it's just a freeing feeling to know that there isn't a right or wrong. There isn't. It's all a test. So, so for instance, Eugene, here's a good example, right? When Dave Sharp first got started, he would set up email marketing, right? And when he sent out his first emails, remember how he said this in the, in the beginning of this third week of training, he said, people would reply back to my emails and just tell me how horrible they were. It was the worst email they'd ever read. So look, you don't need my feedback. You don't need anybody's feedback. You just need to go do it and listen to the marketplace. What do they say to you? That's it. Uh, writing and finding my voice has been a struggle. I need to do it. I just need to, to do it consistently now and understand more of the process. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think I think the finding the voice thing, if I had to if I had to guess one thing, it just seems like that's a big thing. Welcome in, Cindy. Good to see you. Um, for what I understand, copywriting is the key to exploit. Mark, you're right. You're right. Good feedback. Excited in Detroit. I love it. Makes sense. Testing with ads. I understand. I like that you say go figure it out. I've been applying that in the It's the best learning when we can figure it out for ourselves. Calling in from Germany, feeling empowered and motivated. Kind of sad that only one boot camp. <laughs> One week of the bootcamp is left. Well, welcome in, Gordon. Um, so, I, I think on the finding the voice note, let me just—I'll just quickly say this. Um, a lot of times, so somebody asked this in the group and said something to the effect of, "As I'm reading the last two days and I'm reading these emails, it seems like I need some sort of big, monumental rags to riches story or something like that." You know what I mean? And I remember somebody commenting on on one of our trainings the last couple of weeks or the last couple of days on on that. And uh, I'll, let me say this: so at some point in your journey at some point throughout whatever, if you're selling something that hasn't impacted you or that hasn't changed a philosophy or changed something in you, it's probably not gonna work to sell it. It's hard to sell something that hasn't impacted you or that you don't see the value in. So, and that, I'm just being real. I mean, you can do it, but the odds of you being like a massive top seller is just pretty tough. So you don't need it in some drastic, I was on drugs and a heroin addict and now I'm clean and making million dollars online. You don't need that. You don't, you really don't. 
What you need is a way to find your unique voice, to bring your personality to marketing, whether it's humor, whether it's just having fun, whether it's just being a, a super educational, interesting person. And being able to tell story and use analogy in the way that you do it will help you connect to people, build trust, build relationship, build a long-term asset and sell them products and services for whatever niche that you're creating stuff for, okay? Um, welcome in, Michael. Pumped that you're here. Good morning, Cindy from the OC. Uh, what's, hey, welcome in from the Netherlands. I love it. Good to see you. Happy you're here. Um, all right. Do you guys have any questions about it? I mean, it can be about this week. It can be about the last week. It can be whatever. Um, do you have any marketing questions? Do you have any, cause this coming week, we're going to talk about how to get traffic on YouTube. We're going to talk about how to run Facebook ads. I'm going to show you how to run Facebook ads. We're going to talk about, um, uh, Google ads. So search based Google ads, um, how to rank on Google on YouTube on how to get organic traffic from Instagram. I mean, we're going to go into all of these different methods and ways that you can start then to pack your funnel, right? Pack that funnel full of stuff. So it's overflowing with people coming in. Um, so, so it's important that you don't need a perfect funnel. You don't need an absolutely perfect $20,000 professionally designed thing. You just need a two-step funnel. That's really it for most of you. Just a simple two-step funnel. That's all you need. Let's see. Let me scroll down. Um, yeah, I think, I think the Netherlands is down in, in Jacksonville. I think that's what they call that. Can we get more hot seat sessions? I mean, sure. Um, I, I feel like a lot of people have been a lot of people have been saying that. So, um, Cindy, why don't we? Why don't we? Let's see here. Let me look kind of at what I got lined up, and uh, I think I can pack. I think I can pack Saturday Sunday into. I think I can pack Saturday Sunday into um, one day. So maybe on maybe on Saturday, we do a little hot seat critique, and I'll do a post in our group here. I'll just do a post and just say, hey, who wants who wants a critique? You can submit an email, you can submit a funnel, you can submit an, whatever. And I'll just do a screen share, just just like I did that last time and just a big old critique, live, well, not live, but kind of critique on them. Okay, let's do that. Um, yeah, Donna, I, I do 10, I do 10 straight days. Uh, in fact, um, when I when I set up my funnel, I'll do 30 plus emails, every one per day, every single day for 30 days. Um, and, uh, and then on top of it, if I'm doing a live webinar, I will also email one to two times a day about the live webinars. Some people might get two to three emails on a given day for me. Um, so, hey, welcome in, Steven, good to see you. Um, does that does that plan for the uh, for the hot seat critiques? Is, does that sound okay to you, Cindy? To everybody else who wants more hot seat critiques, I'm happy to do you know funnels, emails, whatever it is. I think those are super helpful, and it sounded like people people are wanting more of those. So, um, do people not find one per day too much? It is a lot, Gil. It is a lot. Um, so uh, let me uh, let me address it. let me talk a little bit about that. So that that goes into the whole like habit thing. Um, I think I think you're definitely right. Um, there, it, it's a lot. I mean, there's, it's just a lot. Here's what I'm trying to do by, here's the goal of creating 30 days straight, one per day, every single day. Well, it's not every day. I mean, we're doing these lives that are Q and A, we're kind of break it up, but one a day, the goal here, what we know, what I know, what I've witnessed is at certain points, there are places where people drop off. Okay. There's just, there's certain monumental moments where people drop off and quit. They start some sort of online business. They start some sort of cute little venture thing that they're doing online. And they spend so much time over the course of years trying to get stuff set up and they sit on trainings and tutorials and they're dinking around and just kind of playing cute and whatever, right? And the reality is like, this is both more complicated, but also more simple than people make it. Some people think they're going to come online and get rich right away. Those people think it's way too easy. There's other people who think I need to have this just amazing, incredible website and logo design and all this. And it's like, no, it's more simple than that. But the reason it's 30 days, boom, 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 is because of the habit creation. So by waking up every single morning and knowing, hey, I'm going to have to get to work, right? If you go to the office with Dave Sharp or with me here or whatever, when it comes to like online business, it's not really so much that he's like more talented and gifted and whatever. It's just like, if you ever watch him go to work, if you ever watch Dave go to work, he's working like some days until like 11.30 p.m. on a Friday night, right? Most people are out in the club, in the bar, they're drunk with their friends, they're doing whatever, and he's like walking out into an empty parking lot because everybody else just went home because he's got the habit. He's got the habit. It's just a, it's a, it's a, it's built into how he can, how he perceives of this whole business. And some people like the 30 day boot camp. that's the goal is just to build that habit of waking up every day and like, I got to grind because other people are working harder than me, longer than me. And I got to, I got to figure this thing out and I got to go. That's kind of the goal. So, um, what do you think about having a hot seat critique after the bootcamp to get critique on everything? Um, yeah, we could potentially do that. We could have that. Yeah, we could potentially do that. Um, so Gordon, the only way that I would do that, I'd make a deal with you. Okay. The only way I would do that is if people are actually running ads or posting, for instance, a video a day on YouTube or something like that. Um, I, I, so I don't really, I, I don't like to do hot seat critiques of theoreticals, right? So think about for, for my, 
use of my time, like if I'm going to sit down and do 20 hot seat critiques of funnels that are never going to see the light of day because people are too scared to run and add to them, like it just, yeah. Um, Mark, um, I think that, that that title of that day was just like, um, that was covered in, it, Dave ended up covering that on November 14th. He ended up covering that in his in his day eight training that was on the value ladder and he showed that whole spreadsheet. That was just in day eight. So um, the secret of turning $1 into five, that was the value ladder training that he covered in day eight. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Good morning, William. That's awesome. Uh, Cindy, sometimes I do. Yeah. So for instance, for, for Legendary, we're doing a webinar promotion this coming week, or actually today. Uh, Dave's doing a live webinar today. And I wrote all seven emails for that. And yeah, I just wrote them in the spam. I, I wrote those seven. See, here's the habit thing. So here's the habit thing. Um, I wrote all seven of those emails in about the span of like three hours, seven emails, all promoting a webinar, uh, all different and unique, wrote them from scratch in about three hours. And they're all decently long. I mean, they're not super short. So it's just this habitual thing where you do it enough and it comes faster and it allows you to do other things on top of just, you know, most people would sit down and write those emails for three days. That's all they would do, right? So there's just a different wavelength. Uh, Gil, the more email, no, no, no. One per week is not better. Every statistic of uh, every single email marketing statistic, the more emails you write and send, the higher the likelihood that you get sales. One per week is definitely not better. People's inbox are packed with just junk, tons and tons of junk. And one per week is going to make them feel like, who is this person? I don't even know who this is. There's no familiarity. Um, Don, I'd recommend three to five minutes. It, there's no right or wrong answer though. There's no right or wrong answer. I've seen up to eight minutes. I've seen as low as two minutes. I've seen one minute, 30 seconds. Um, welcome in James, Richie, Sophia. Good to see you. Working till 11 Friday night. Not great work-life balance. Um, well, I mean, Chip, so what if he takes off Saturday through, you know, all day, Saturday, Sunday? I mean, so work-life balance is, is a, a subjective thing, right? It's different for everybody. Um, so actually on Friday, what Dave does is he sleeps until 10 and, uh, has like a, a slow morning breakfast with his daughter and his wife. And, um, they sleep in and cuddle together in bed, have a slow breakfast. And then he goes and grinds for like 11 hours. And that's, that's what it is. So here's an interesting little fact though. Uh, recent studies have shown that, um, that basically a lot of times people think that that a child right whose parents are distant and working a lot um suffers uh, suffers like developmentally or you know grows up as kind of like a whatever a latchkey kid or whatever uh what they found is that it's actually it's not a, a kid's attachment or a kid's like happiness growing up isn't isn't as much tied to the, the amount of time that they spend with their parents but it's if their parents feel fulfilled in their work so for instance a parent who works 10 hour days seven days a week and, but when their home spends really quality time with their kids Right? A lot of times people would say, well, that's terrible work-life balance. But when, if the quality time is there and the parents feel, specifically, the parents feel fulfilled in their work, the kid is happier. So just interesting. Um, time flies. Good morning. I need a couple of days to get three to four emails done. So I, uh, the, the whole work-life balance thing is interesting to me, the kind of harmony there. It is interesting to me. I've, I've read a lot of studies and, and books on that type of thing. And I would just encourage you, I, I mean, I can maybe leave a couple links to some books, but I'd encourage you to do a little research on work-life balance because a lot of times work-life balance seems more important when you don't enjoy your work. So it's just, it's fascinating. A lot of times people need that more when, they're, when their work is just boring, monotonous, or they hate it. Um, it's, it's just fascinating to me when I watch people step into jobs or roles or um, even even just like new entrepreneurial ventures of something they're actually excited about and pumped up about, that, that need of work-life balance is almost gone because they feel like I don't even want to go to bed right now because I'm just so excited to keep working on this. And they finally feel some purpose and meaning. It's just, it's, it's interesting. I'm not saying that there's a right or a wrong way or that you need to stay up for 12 hours or whatever, but I'm just saying like, if you don't enjoy what you're doing and you feel this this incessant need for like these these crazy hard boundaries or whatever, maybe entrepreneurship isn't for you because entrepreneurship requires a lot of work and hours. It just does, or you're going to get outworked by somebody else who wants it more. That's, that's the land of, that's the real land of entrepreneurship. Like if you go read Elon Musk's book, his, his uh, biography that was written about him recently, he just says, look, the bottom line is I decided early on that if I worked 18 hour days, everybody else was working eight to 10 hour days, man, I would work, you know, I would work eight to 10 more hours per day than everybody else. So I could stack, you know, essentially more years of work into a single year and just beat everybody else just based on the amount of time. So, all right, let's see. Um, yeah, Eugene, you can just use you can just use whatever you have for emails. There's no right or wrong on that. Yeah, it's it's different for everybody. That's right, Davida. Um, it's just a mindset. Yep. Yep. It's that's right, Cindy. Yep. Yeah, different people. Yeah. What's the phrase? Different strokes for different folks. That's kind of how it goes. 
yeah, so here's what I'll do this week, guys, is unless we have more questions. Um, here's here's what I'll do this week is I'm gonna make a post probably today um, in the group with a with a little you can comment below. I'll make an announcement and just say if you want your funnel or your email or whatever critiqued, uh, anything that you're feeling, you know, that you would like my eyeballs on and to address in a video, then um, comment below and then I'll do a little hot seat critique coming up this Saturday and then I'll combine what, what I had planned for Saturday and Sunday together for uh, just a single video to happen on Sunday. Okay. Does that sound good to you? Can you can you guys just type to me that sounds good or or just hit the like or the love or the heart or whatever. Just let me know that that sounds all right to you guys and then we'll rock and roll this thing. I'm excited. This last week is going to be it's going to be a missing piece for a lot of you. It's going to be a big time missing piece for a lot of you so I'm excited. Let's see. I, I work easily 18 hour days. Yeah, William, I, look, you can add on to the sequence. You can create regular posts. I, it's, it's up to you. I mean, if you get up to like 30 days of a sequence, even 15 days in, in your sequence and somebody's not purchasing or not starting a trial or something that's a very easy, low barrier entry, they're probably another five or 20 emails probably isn't going to do the trick, right? Your advertising probably needs fixing. So I would spend less time on the emails and spend more time on fixing the actual like advertising and how I'm framing and positioning the offer. The offer is probably not strong enough. So at that point, I would turn to like, you know, launching webinars or doing webinars to get more um, to get more engagement out of people. Um, <laughs> the four, I love the four hour work week. If you haven't read the four hour work week, definitely read the four hour work week. But the point isn't that you can only work four hours a week. It's, it's a, it's a misnomer. If you think that, um, sounds good. Looking forward to what's coming points noted. Cool. All sounds good. Nobody's got questions. We're going to rock and roll. I'm going to go get my second cup of coffee. That's what I'm going to do. Um, hopefully you guys all have a good rest of your Thursday. And I'm going to post that right now into the group. So if you want to comment right away, I'm going to post it right now to the group. Hit comment on there. Drop your funnel link. Drop whatever you want in there. And uh, let's rock and roll. See you guys. Hey, what's going on, my friend? This is Dave Sharp. Welcome to this exciting day. Uh, I'm shooting this video to, uh, for you here on my brand new iPhone, so I'm super excited about that. I'm walking around here in my office, as you can sort of see a little bit of it in the background here. Yes, this massive space is all mine. I need all this space to be thinking, quiet, so I can think about marketing and come up with ideas and angles and uh, just do my thing. So I'm super excited to be talking to you about uh, a topic that a lot of marketers don't talk about uh, because marketers, particularly advertisers, you know, who are advertising to new marketers, would uh, prefer to talk about shiny things, you know, things that are sexy. And tracking is not always sexy, right? But what I learned is, and I had to learn this the hard way, is that if, if I don't track something, then I'm not going to be able to, uh, I'm not going to be able to be successful with it. And uh, what's tr not tracked is not improved. And so um, today we're going to talk about tracking and we're going to talk about how to track your advertising campaigns, because if you're going to start with advertising, which is what we're going to talk about this week, the first thing that you need to really understand is how can I track my advertising campaigns? And without this essential piece of of without this essential tool and without this essential knowledge, you could go out there and be a advertising master. But at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you something that I hope you'll always remember. And that's that being a great advertiser is not actually the key and the secret to being successful with online marketing. It's not about writing amazing copy or having the perfect funnel. It's really about knowing your numbers because you may have a campaign that's succeeding, but because you're not tracking it, you feel like it's failing and you stop it. And I would say that that more often than not is what happens with online marketers is that they, because they're not tracking their marketing the right way, they stop before the miracle happens, so to say. They stop before a campaign actually uh, has matured enough to start producing visible profits. And oftentimes, you you have to have a certain life cycle uh, or allow your customer to go through a life cycle, which that life cycle may be you know, three days, it may be six days, it may be 90 days. I know in one of our companies, the life cycle, which means, and when I say the life cycle, that means that the customer has actually the average time that the customer stays engaged with your company and is buying products. And, and the best example that I could probably give you is Apple. So say Apple runs an advertising campaign in 1989 and um, a, a man named John in California gets excited about Apple products and buys his first Apple computer. And maybe uh, let's say, for example, that Apple spent $1,000 to acquire John, but John only spent $500. Um, and and uh, Apple might look at that campaign and say, well, that's a failure. I spent $1,000 in marketing to acquire each customer. John spent, you know, I, I lost $500. He only spent $500 in, in products. And then, of course, I had my overhead costs, so I actually only made a couple hundred. But what Apple might not take into consideration is that John bought another Apple computer three years later. He bought an iPhone when it came out. He bought an iPad. He bought a laptop. And he just bought another Mac, Mac, uh, iMac desktop computer here in 2020. So the life cycle of Apple's customer is decades. So even though that initial marketing campaign might have brought John in in 1989, John's still spending money and Apple has not needed to spend any additional advertising dollars to acquire that customer because he already they already acquired him from that first campaign. Does that make sense? So what is the average life cycle for your customer? Now, 
if you're referring people into an affiliate company and that person's continuing to purchase products from that company and you're continuing to earn commissions, then that life cycle could last a long time. If that person's still on your email list and they're still purchasing products from you six months or 12 months or two years or five years later, they're still in that life cycle. So that particular life cycle number is, is your lifetime value of that customer. So you need to understand what your lifetime value of a customer is. And um, obviously you have to be able to track it. So I like to actually track my lifetime value of my customer in, in, in certain increments, whether it be 30 or 90 or six months or one year. A lot of times, because I'm in it for the long game, I'll look at my overall numbers after one year and I'll say, okay, you know, this is what the average lifetime value of a customer is. This is how much we made. This is how many customers we brought in. This is how much we spent in advertising because I've given those customers a full year to mature and to see all of our offers and time to buy. And, and sometimes people will buy something and then not buy something again for six or nine months. But then all of a sudden, six months later, they buy something from me for $5,000. Well, boom, all of a sudden that that money that you spent to acquire that customer nine months ago, six months ago, whatever, you just you just added on an extra $5,000 profit. So you have to take that, that into consideration when you're advertising. But <clears throat> when you start an advertising campaign, it is important to measure your metrics at least in 30 day increments. And so I'm sort of working backwards as I talk about this because I first want you to understand that you should always be advertising. You should always be keeping your pipeline full because if you continue to advertise and if you stay in business, then most likely people are gonna continue to buy from you for months and years to come. Okay, so that's that's a fact. I, I hope that you've been inspired throughout this training to make a decision that, okay, I'm gonna actually commit and be in this for the long term. So hopefully we've inspired you to do that. And now I wanna transition to talking about how to track things in shorter increments to know if you're creating a return on investment immediately. Because at the very most, or at the very least, I should say, we hope that we can run advertising campaigns that at the very least break even within 30 days. Because that means that if we can break even after 30 days and everything after that is profit. And that's a safe way to advertise, right? If I know that I can break even within 30 days, everything after that is profit. And that's, that's the recipe for a super successful business. And so what I'm gonna do here in a second is I'm gonna transition back to a clip that I showed you last week. I think it was last week in the sales funnel training where I kicked off uh, how to actually build effective sales funnels that week. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna zero in on a specific 10 minute part to where I talk about tracking. And you're gonna see how, if we would not have tracked our campaign to actually track the sales that were being made on the phone, which is what we call back end sales, then we would have actually thought that the campaign flopped because we were only tracking what was happening on the internet, you know, what, what they were buying without a phone call. But what we do in many of our companies is we will have a, or in many of our marketing campaigns is we'll initially sell something on the internet, some sort of a low, you know, low cost tripwire or loss leader or break even type product to give somebody a taste of what we offer. And then we'll bring them in and, and sell them something higher priced and more advanced and that has more value either via a webinar or via a phone call. Okay. And so you'll see how I break down this campaign. This was again, a campaign that I was selling training products to network marketers and you'll see how I break this down. Now, what I'm going to do when I come back, okay, what I'm going to do when I come back is I'm going to actually give you the tracking sheet so you can actually use it in your business. So let's transition over to that talk, listen closely, and I'll show you an example of how we actually track things to know where our profits are coming from and if our campaigns are actually profitable. So let me give you a, a, an actual in like, like behind the scenes look of one of our funnels. Okay. Now this is a funnel that we ran in 2016 at the end of 2016. I'm gonna give you some numbers for some current stuff that we're doing as well here in a second. But this was one of the, 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 uh, the funnels, the offers that we ran in 2016. Okay. Uh, it was, it was, uh, uh, this particular, these particular numbers. Um, anybody ever seen my simple sign up system funnel? Okay. So we sold a, um, uh, many of you actually are in this event because you came through that funnel. I think you are Merle, is that right? And you are as well. Tell me your name again, sir. Yeah. Right here, Greg. And then Merle and then Tom, you did too. Okay. So that, and then Corey, you came through that as well. Now this is very interesting. You came through that as well, Mark. Okay. So this is, this is kind of interesting, right? These guys, you know, a few of them, you know, came through, they bought something for a couple of dollars, right? The, 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 the front end offer I think was, um, uh, we, $3 and 95 cents, I think was, was the front end offer. We gave away some, some videos, great content, huh? Powerful content, especially for a guy who is not an internet marketer like you, Corey, right? You, I know, I know I'm talking to you because I know uh, a bit about your story, but being mostly an offline traditional business guy came from the network marketing space, not a whole lot of, not a whole lot of internet marketing knowledge, none. Okay, comes through uh, that simple signup system. I was targeting network marketers, okay, because I, I know that industry. And so I was teaching them how to make money online or how to build their business online. Corey comes through. I want you guys to listen to this very, very carefully because this is how this works, okay? Corey comes through, spends $3.95. You know, uh, did, you, did you take any of the other upsells? Okay, you took two of the upsells. And then he comes through. Um, did you, did you uh, attend the Master of Enrollment workshop or no? Okay, so we didn't take the, the, the $1,000 Master of Enrollment workshop upsell, okay? Then all of a sudden we start Duplicate Dave at the beginning of 2017. He comes in, he enrolls in Duplicate Dave for 5,000, right? Cause we've got a 50% pre-launch special right now. Comes in, no internet marketing knowledge whatsoever. Comes in and you're at what now? So 32,000 in actual take home money. Give him a round of applause. 30, so, and because of that 32,000, he's done a significant amount of sales too. So we, you know, it's just, it, 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 this, this business continues to blow my mind right? It continues to blow my mind. Just a few months ago, I had no idea who he was. He saw a freaking ad on most likely Facebook, clicks it, opts in, okay? Opts in for the free thing, buys the $3, $4 thing, takes a couple of the upsells, doesn't take the, the $1,000 master of enrollment upsell, goes in and enrolls and takes the duplicate day, 5,000. Within 30, 45 days, he then, because there's an affiliate program, earn while you learn, makes 35,000, not 35 or 32. Okay. Makes, let's just go, let's just go conservative. Let's not $32,000. How many people are here because of Corey? Give him a round of applause, guys. 
So it really is a, you know, it's, it's, you know, we're empowering people to go into, you know, but now you're actually making videos every single day. You started a, a little brand, right? Social entrepreneur. So I see your videos, you're, you're uploading videos. And, and so hopefully today, you know, this YouTube training will help you, you know what I'm saying? Maybe take that to the next level. Okay. So that particular funnel that he came through, let's go through some of the statistics, okay? Because I want to break it down for you to, to get you to understand exactly how this all works. So in the first week of, of December, we had uh, 367 opt-ins. And you see over in the, in the far left side, it looks like a little bit of the, the, the lettering's cut off, but I'll, I can tell you what they'll say. Number of opt-ins, 367, 404, um, uh, 324, 435, with a total of 1,530 opt-ins throughout that month into that particular funnel, okay? So uh, uh, 1,530 opt-ins. Now, a lot of this other information is, is just information that we track in-house, like number of applications. So people who filled out applications, coaching applications that came through there. Um, the, 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 the important numbers I have an arrow on. The total revenue for, for that funnel that month was $40,511.15, okay? Now, the, when, I, when I tell you um, that that initial front-end funnel, so that's the lower price products, and in that particular funnel, we were selling simple sign-up system for $3.95. We were selling um, 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 network marketing launch formula for, uh, we had a traction code as an order bump, $19.95. Then we had a network marketing launch formula for 47. The upsell rate on that network marketing formula at 47 was always like about 40%. So that's why we know that really that $47 upsell number really works real well. Um, and then we sold story selling formula for 197 on the back end is that, and that as well. So those were the break even components of that funnel. Those were the, the products that you saw when you immediately first came through the funnel. You would buy the simple signup system and then you would see one upsell, two upsell, three upsell. And that's why I asked if anybody, anybody did not know what a one click upsell was yesterday. And I explained that to you guys. You remember that? Where you buy something, what's, when's the best time to sell somebody something? When they just bought something else. Now, let me relate that to something else. Do you know when you go through a grocery store and you come up and they got all that shit there? And it really is shit. I mean, it's the five-hour energies. It's the candy bars. It's all that kind of stuff. They know because you're in buying mode. The, the Inquirer magazines and all that stuff, they know that you're in buying mode. You're about, and that's the best. And obviously, if something's there, if an ad is still running, you know it's successful. And it, it, have you guys, some of you older folks in the room, has that always been the case with cash registers? They've always been there. So that is an, that is a, an obvious, effective upsell, folks. Okay? So that's why those front-end upsells. So in this one, like $40,000. If you look right below that, you'll see the number $11,916.30. That's how much we spend on advertising, okay? But if you go back up a couple of lines and you look at that $13,037.15 number, that's how much came from the online funnel. The rest of that money that made up that $40,000 came from our back-end telesales. And that was the majority of the money. So the front end, what the front end did was the front end just paid for our advertising costs. Is this making sense to everybody? The, the front-end products were our break-even products. Now, the reason why most people fail at internet marketing is because they don't understand this concept right here. And that's why they can't make their paid advertising work. Is this valuable? Okay. That's why they can't make their paid advertising work is because they're just running a funnel or they get involved in affiliate opportunities. Or for example, why are most people never able to really scale or advertise network marketing companies? Although we're now in this age to where social media is, it's, it's, it's an obvious no brainer, right? But unfortunately, there's a lot of companies in direct sales who don't really understand the power of the internet. So they don't really know what to do with people who are marketing online, right? But the reason oftentimes why you can't scale businesses that don't have a bigger back end is because if I was only driving traffic into these front end sales, I wouldn't have made any money. I would have. Typically, most marketers lose money. Even if I would have lost money on that 13000 that we made back, say I only made back 5000 and so I lost about $6,000 in that advertising. I still would have made it back because I have a back end. Does that make sense? So the problem why most people can't make money with, advertise, with paid advertising is because even if they lose a little bit of money on the front end, they think, oh my God, my advertising's not working. I'm losing money. But you don't have a premium price back end that's kicking in. Does that make sense? Equipping, did you have a breakthrough, brother? Sure. All right, my man. So here's where the, here's where the you know, <laughs> I, like, I like seeing this. Like, it's like, it's like if, what would be cool as hell for me is if there was little light bulbs on top of everybody's heads. And as they had a breakthrough, it was like their light bulb went off. It's like, oh, okay, I see you, bro. I see you. Oh, okay, I see you. Get around the Here, our light bulb just went off. So what's really interesting, if you want to break this down to the, 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 the granular level, which is my final arrow down there, we made $26.48 profit for every person that opted in after advertising. Let's really just make sure that we all understand what I'm talking about here. That means that there's a capture page there, okay? And every single time somebody puts their email into the capture page, it's, 26, it's, it's like depositing $26.48 into my pocket. Yeah. Right? Now, I want you to imagine if you had a, 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 you know, a system that was set up that did that for you. Now, that's after advertising costs. There is, this is the most transparent I can be with you showing our internal numbers. These are the reports that Jeff sends me, okay? And it's right here. Every single time somebody enters their email, not bought, just enters their email, it's like $26.48 profit. All right, my friend, this is Dave Sharp. Welcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed that and it makes sense. Now, what I want to do with you now is I want to actually give you, and that's going to be your bonus for today. I'm going to give you the actual tracking sheet that you can use. It's the same exact tracking sheet that we use that you can use inside of your marketing campaigns to plug in numbers. So you'll plug in your advertising cost. You'll plug in how many leads you generated, how many sales you generated, how much you paid in advertising, and it will give you the, the, uh, the, the, the metrics of your campaign to let you know how much you made per customer, how much you made literally down to the lead. So you can know how much you earned per lead, per people, op per, per person opting into your landing page. So it's important to have all of these metrics. It's important to, I would say that 
a less a much less less talented but more organized marketer can out succeed a extremely talented very disorganized marketer so this is not, and this is where i hope to shift how you think about online marketing away from i got to be this charismatic person i got to be this person who has all these special skill sets over towards i need to be somebody who's who who understands my numbers because at the end of the day you're building a business here and it's about the bottom line profits it's not about all the fancy stuff that you're probably um, fretting over and trying to get perfect. It's not about that. It's about speed of implementation of actually getting your marketing material launched so you actually can begin to start gathering data to determine if your marketing efforts are actually succeeding. And the only, and I'm, I wanna be super passionate about this so this lands right between your eyes, the only way for you to know whether what you're doing is successful or not is not by a gut feeling, it's not by emotions, it's not by what you're feeling because in marketing, same in life, feelings are not facts. The only thing, that will tell you whether you're succeeding or not with any marketing campaign is the data. And when you transition from making emotional-based decisions about your marketing and about whether something's successful or not and transition over to making data-based decisions. I, I work with, with clients and companies all the time. They get a feeling about this and they get a feeling about that. And guess what? I used to be that same type of entrepreneur in marketing. I get a feeling about this and I get a feeling about that. And I just had feelings all over the place about my business and my marketing and what I should and shouldn't be doing. And guess what? None of it mattered. Because at the end of the day, I had no clue what was actually going on in my marketing campaigns because I wasn't tracking anything. And so, again, hopefully this is giving hope to some of you introverts or, or analytical thinkers to let you know that you don't have to be an A-type personality to succeed in, in business and especially succeed in online marketing. Oh, no. You can be more successful than all A-type charismatic personalities if you get really diligent and really obsessive about tracking data and making data-based decisions. And nowadays, you have all the tools. For example, on your advertising platforms, Facebook, Google, all of them, they provide you all the numbers in very readable formats, not as hard as you think it is. Most people fret over placing ads and they never even log into the advertising platform. I mean, trust me, there's grandmas out there that are placing ads for their, you know, their, their, um, what are you, little pot holders that they're knitting and they're placing Facebook ads and selling them. Well, you know, many of us online marketers who are all, you know, got our MacBooks and our iPads and our iPhones and we, we are scared to go place an ad. It's not about that. It's about, not about any of that. It's about preparing your data tracking sheet so you can track your numbers. And that is the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful marketer these days. So I hope that you'll pay close attention now this week and gain the courage and the confidence, mostly the courage, right? Because going in marketing is a courageous thing. You have to push through some fears and put yourself out there and develop some content and just, just throw some spaghetti at the wall and see what'll stick. That's how you get started at first. And then as that data comes back, you'll plug it into this data tracker that we're providing you here as a bonus today on this lesson and you'll plug it in and you'll track your metrics. That's my hope for you is that you'll track your metrics and you make database decisions. And if you do that, my friend, then you'll be successful. And if you don't, it's not that you'll be, that you'll be unsuccessful. You'll just be lost. You won't know what's going on in your business and you'll just be making emotion-based decisions, okay? So let me know down in the comments that you are going to make a commitment. If you would, please, I invite you to do this. Make a commitment to not base decisions off of emotions, but make that transition to making database decisions, okay? And say, I'm committed to making database decisions. A light bulb went off, Dave. I'm committed to tracking my data and my metrics so I know what's going on in my business. And I appreciate you. Let us know if you have any questions down below and we'll see you on the next lesson. Here's what we're going to do. I am going to, first of all, we're going to, look, the goal of these webinars isn't so that I can sit here and talk at you for 60 minutes, right? The goal of these is really just, we want you to be able to um, take action, implement what we teach you, and then come back to us with, hey, I took action. I got something set up. What do you think? Does it look okay? Does it work? What do you think? Okay. So um, let me open. Perfect. Here we go. So this is an opt-in page, right? Um, that Bridget set up. And then here is her bridge page. Now, for some of you, you might be new to the game here, right? Um, is there anybody who's kind of newer to this whole sales funnel process, still feel like it's a little new to you? Um, hit the hand raise button if that's you. Yos, David, who else? Uh, Melanie is still just kind of a little new. I get it. Been there, done that. So here's what I'm going to do. Jen, got it, got it. Is I'm going to open this little sketch pad for us, okay? And can you see this, this little, oh my gosh, we're not plugged in. Hang on, we're not plugged in. We're not plugged in. Okay, there we go. Can you see, um, Oh my gosh. Oh, there we go. There we go. Can you see this drawing? Just give me a quick hand raise, quick hand raise, quick hand raise. Let's see. Duet, David, Christian, David, David, William, Emda, Eugene. Okay, perfect. We're good to go. Now, how the hell do I erase that is the question. <laughs> All right, let's see here. This, by the way, is called um, sketch.io. Sketch.io. Okay. Um, oh my gosh. Is there a, is there a, where is the, they just changed this all on me. Hang on. New. Here we go. Here we go. We're saved. Okay. So look, in, in the terms of the sales funnel, this is going to, you know, for some of you, you're going to think, oh my gosh, this is so basic math. But, so if I'm drawing up a little sales funnel, okay, and and we have different layers of the sales funnel, okay, so layer number one is just kind of um, awareness, okay, awareness, just, just kind of being able to know that you exist, right, and then they start to engage, okay, and then they start to click and buy, all right, and then at the bottom of the funnel, they buy more, so they become a recurring customer, they purchase more and more and more and more and more, right, Okay, so to get people into this, you need traffic, meaning you gotta have things like YouTube videos and Instagram posts and Facebook posts and wherever you can get traffic from, right? 
So, you know, in a, let's make this just, I like to break this down into real business because sometimes people dissociate a uh, real brick and mortar business from this internet business thing, right? So, so at the intersection of any good business, okay, it really good, any sort of business, whether it's online, offline, brick and mortar there, especially for retail, there is perfect traffic meets perfect offer. Okay. Perfect traffic meets perfect offer. And that's the intersection of money where sales are made, right? So if I'm out in the middle of, I grew up in South Dakota, a town of 400 people, right? So the, the town is called Emory, South Dakota. Okay? I grew up in this tiny little town of Emory, South Dakota. Now, if I put up a Prada, okay, or a Gucci or something like that, really high end, right? It's going to go out of business faster than I can snap my fingers, right? Why is that? It's not perfect traffic. It might have the best offer in the world, but it's not perfect traffic, right? So, so traffic is just a function of what, what's your offer? And where's the best place to get that traffic from? You don't know that until you test. I already know some people here are like, well, what's the perfect place to get traffic from? You don't know until you test. Instagram, Facebook, Google, right? Where tons of other places. Like if you're a brick and mortar, you can use Waze, the Waze app. So it's it's that's a driving app on your phone. You can launch ads so that when people drive by your place, they get a notification. Hey, there's a new pizza restaurant. Hey, there's a new Chinese joint right here. Check it out. You know, whatever. So so then people become aware. They see about they they read about you, they see you in a newspaper, they see you on Facebook, they see you on YouTube, whatever. Then they start to engage. Maybe they leave a comment. Maybe that maybe you have a drawing, right, for a free meal or something at your pizza place. Maybe you give that a free lead magnet away. Maybe you give them a free ebook, whatever it is. That's the engagement piece. And then it's all about getting them to purchase afterwards. So that all happens in a sequence. What these ladies have done is created essentially a two-step sales funnel, okay? Two-step sales funnel process, which means step number one is just an opt-in page, okay? It's just an opt-in page. This is where you collect leads. That's the end goal. Collect leads, okay? Are we all clear about step number one and what the goal of that is? Collect leads. Give me a quick hand raise. You with me? You sticking with me? Charlotte, Melanie, David, Jen, Joe, Yo, Sprint. Okay, well, I can't read that fast. Number two is the either sales page if you own your own product or it's a bridge page to an affiliate product right so for the opt-in you can use some sort of lead magnet this is very common maybe you give away a free ebook like bridget's doing or maybe you give away a free consult a no cost free consult whatever it is on the sales and bridge page you give a little bit more value and you ask for a sale right or you point them to more engagement okay so yes you can ask for a sale here or you can ask for more engagement you call you give them a call to action you tell them specifically what you want to do maybe that's just them going into a facebook group right maybe all you want to do is give them something free and then lead them into a facebook group because then you can have a limited engagement with them there right you can have a limited engagement you can post and be in front of their eyeballs any day at all times okay so that's really powerful especially if you give value give value give value give value give value right you can do that in a facebook group okay all right so i just want to be clear on that so that you know before we dive into this whole critique thing i just want you all to be aware hey this is what's going on inside of their business this is what they're trying to do so with Bridget, okay, with Bridget on her page, now let me get rid of this annotate. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little quick critique of this little opt-in page and then of her delivery page. And we'll even do a little critique on her video if that's cool with you all. Is that cool with you guys? Is this interesting to you? Like she's just kind of just like you getting started trying to figure this internet marketing thing out, trying to figure out how to market her products and services, get, get leads for an affordable cost. Can you type to me in the chat? Is this interesting? Is this something you wanna check out? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Go for it. Okay. Good. Thank you guys. Thanks. I just, you know, before we get too far down the road, I just want to make sure this is interesting. All right. So Bridget, um, she has vision marketing and design.com. I don't have any, uh, I don't have any equity stake or any, uh, if you go and buy something from Bridget or her recommendation, I will not get compensated at all for that. So I just want to make that clear. <laughs> okay. All right. So Bridget starts out with all caps here saying, want to start an online business, learn how I was able to quit my full-time job in just seven months. Now, by the way, I just want you all to know, I'm also not trying to pitch you on, you know, she's Look, the only difference between Bridget and most human beings is that she just works harder and, and, and longer than most people do. That's it. That's all it is. That is the secret. She's, she's, she just works longer and harder than most people. That's it. That's her secret. <laughs> um, plus get a free copy of my new book. And she doesn't, and it's not just, she's sitting around designing pages or writing emails. She's like in the trenches. She's like, she's closing sales. She's messaging people. She is helping people. Um, she's selling. That's what she's doing. So choosing a profitable niche is the first step to starting a new business. It's also the first big decision you're going to make. Find your niche is my step-by-step -step guide to finding your niche so you can stand out and create success faster. So what she's doing here is she's positioning this, right? Who is her audience? Right here. You can already tell. Starting a new business. That's who her audience is. They're starting a new business. Or they're thinking about it. Want to start an online business? So she's going to craft all of her ads. She's going to craft her YouTube video. She's going to craft her Instagram ads. She's going to craft everything geared towards people who are looking to or interested in starting an online business. And she's giving them, here's the first step, right? Learn how she's giving them her story. And guess what? If she was able to quit her job in just seven months, well, you know, choosing a profitable niche is the first step to the, any business. Well, she's got a little bit of authority. She's got a little bit of cred because she's done a good job of it already. She's worked harder than most people already. So overall, just from a design standpoint, Bridget, this looks pretty good. Um, it looks pretty good. Let me just give you a little bit of like a, just a little tip. If you do have a little bit of money, I would recommend just getting a slightly cleaner, a little bit better designed cover. Like this red right here on the front is just, it's not, I would say that the fonts used on this book, the background, the you know, the image and everything. I would say that with the tools that you currently have and what you've currently done, you could give this over to a designer who, you know, maybe on like, maybe not on Fiverr, but potentially on Fiverr or Upwork are really good and could produce for you something that's like 
just a layer up from this. For instance, let me give you an example. Um, let me give you an example. Uh, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. I got to figure out how to get this over here. Okay, here we go. So, so Bridget, potentially what you could do is a cover that's more like this. And let me bring this to the screen so you can see it. Okay. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. Can you all see this cover of the book right here over to the left? The Insider's Guide to Affiliate Marketing. This is Dave's new book that he's working on, uh, which is going to go live pretty soon. Um, it's actually a really killer book, but you can just, uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. So Bridget, you can just see how this cover here just has a look and a feel that's a little bit more high end and high scale than what you've got going on here. And that's all branding. That's all positioning. When people see this, it's like, oh, dang, what is this? Is it, do people on the, so for those of you who are live, would you agree with that? Just give me a quick hand raise. Like, yep, definitely agree with that. Just looking at the difference here, definitely a big difference, right? So, so Bridget, that will take this, I guarantee it'll increase your opt-in rates, but it'll take this to like the next level and it will definitely help your branding. So, um, the other piece here is just this, I like this logo a lot, but I would probably just bring it down. Um, I would probably bring this down just above this headline here. Not sure what that is. Oh, okay. Uh, just above this headline and, and just not have this white space up here just for a, a little design pointer. The other thing is, is that I, this, this design on the button needs some help. Okay. Just needs a little bit of help. So. Uh, when people hover, the best guys, the best possible thing when somebody hovers over a button, let me just show you what that looks like. When you're creating, and we're going to get in a little bit into design right now, but when you're creating, let me just compare these things. Oh my gosh. Um, so you'll notice the font here, this is big, and this is about, uh, about one fourth of the size in terms of font here. And it's just, it's put together nice and there's just a simple, clean kind of format to it. But look, when you hover over the button, what happens is the colors flip. So the green, the green button here, when I hover it over it, the button goes white. All right. The button goes white and then the font goes green. So it's white font, then green font, white font, green font. All right. Type to me in the chat if you're here. Does this make sense? Take that approach whenever you're creating buttons. That is, that's the modern smart way to create buttons that look slick and clean. So usually whatever, whatever um, website builder you're using, it always gives you a button. And then what color and what font do you want it when you're hovering over the button? So just set it just like that, okay? Um, um, and then the other element is, is kind of the headline and the subheadline. You've done a good job here uh, with this headline, okay? Um, why, I, I wouldn't put this all in all in caps like this. I would just underline it. Having all caps is just a little bit, it's just a little bit, it, it throws their, the audience off. It just, it looks a little bit out of place, I guess you could say. Um, so I, but everything else about this, I like, I might increase the size of these labels, like two font sizes, like two pixels, but it looks good. So I would have this button match the color of, and let me bring my, let me bring back my annotation real quick. The button color should match this color of this arrow over there. So having, having, um, two different colors of kind of red. This is kind of pink, like salmon colored almost, but I would have these match. And this color red is just not really, it's not really in style anymore. Okay. So what I would do, Bridget, if I were you and I recommend this to everybody who's on this webinar right now, check this out. Watch me go to google.com. Actually, I'm just going to Google search right here. All okay? right. So I'm going to Google search and I'm going to go to um, modern color palette website. Ready for this? 50 gorgeous color schemes for stunning websites. There's also Canva here. There's also 37 beautiful color schemes. There's also 16 great web. Okay, so look, there's a billion of these that you could look up. Canva in particular is awesome. Um, they have just amazing, look at this. They give you the exact color hex numbers to use. All right, they, so look, my, my point in this is whether you want something that's muted and dumbed down a little bit, that's classic. Uh, whether you want something real modern and clean. Look, guys, don't choose colors on your own. The reality is, is that you're an entrepreneur, you're a visionary, you have a big vision for your life, for your goals, for what you want to accomplish. Don't freaking choose colors by yourself just because you think it looks kind of neat. No, you don't need to reinvent the wheel, right? People go to design school just to study these designs that have already been created by people. Just go to these websites. I mean, look at this, muted and minimal. This is on canva.com. Here, I'm just going to start pasting these links in here. You ready for this? Boom, there's one link. And really, you don't even need any of these. I'm not even going to go to these other links. I mean, just go to this one. I mean, look at these. Look at, do you guys get how beautiful these are? I mean, this is just beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's put together just clean. It makes me want to go create a website. That's what it makes me want to do. I want to go create a website just looking at this, okay? So thoughts, give me some thoughts in the comments if you have any. Um, but isn't this powerful? I mean, I just, I want to go create a freaking website right now. I love it so much. All right. <clears throat> so hopefully that was helpful. I mean, just when you're creating sales funnels, for goodness sakes, just use some beautiful modern colors to it. Um, I, I think this blue and even the color here um, in your logo, Bridget, is really good. Um, now here's another cool tool for you guys. If you use Google Chrome, this is up here towards the top right. I want to see a quick hand. If you can see where my mouse is, just quick hand raise up. Okay. So the color pick eyedropper, if you go to the Chrome extension store and download the color pick eyedropper, you ready for this? This is freaking awesome. So I can go over anything on the website. I mean, I can, I can get the color off of her shirt if I wanted to. Okay. Like maybe I really like this color that's on her shirt, kind of this pink color or whatever. And then I can set the button to it just to create some real congruency. Um, here, let me reopen that. But up here in the logo, so this is a certain color of red, and I would try to match that with this button color and this arrow here as well, okay? Um, but, but basically, I would, when, you, when you hover, 
the words should turn red and the button should turn white and just set a subtle border around it and it'll look, it'll look killer. All right, so when you enter your name and email address in to get a copy of her free book, um, she's got the Facebook pixel installed, so great job, Bridget. Um, you're gonna come to this page, all right? And it says, and now look at, the, look at the congruency of her messaging. And this is something I come back to over and over and over again, but want to start an online business? Congratulations on starting your business. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's some really gangster marketing. I mean, I love it. It's super smart, right? Think of the future pacing that just happened. I just started a business. Interesting. It's powerful. It's powerful. Watch this short video to fast track your success. I just, I love that. Fast track your success. And look at this right here. Find your niche is my step-by-step -step guide to finding your niche so you can stand out and create success faster. Create success faster. Fast track your success. So I, I would just say, yeah, you can say fast track your success. I might even just say, no, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. All right, I'm going to turn this up. Turn your speakers up. I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn my speakers up so you can hear this a little bit. And uh, let me make sure in my Zoom here that we are, we are good to go on the audio with this. Just bear with me one sec. Uh, join audio. Okay. Mute temporarily. Mute yourself. Press the button. Mute temporarily. Mute yourself. Okay. And I'm gonna hit play on this for five seconds. I want you. Well, I'll just hit play. And if it's clear in your in your ears, you can hear it just fine. Then uh, just hit the hand raise button, and I'll keep playing it. Keep letting it go. If you can't hear it, type to me. Hey, I can't hear it. Hey all, Bridget Bartlett here. First of all, congratulations on making it to this video. I want to say thank you for checking out my story and actually taking a step towards changing your life. It is so fascinating to me that most people in the world just sort of suffer in silence, working a job they hate, they sort of go on and live life as if there's no other alternative. But then there are those of us who hit a point where enough is enough. And so Bridget, I like this a lot. I know this script very well. I wrote the script. But I'll say this, it feels a little scripted to me and a little monotone. Okay, that's just what I'm getting right off the bat. And hey, for anybody who's watching here, what I'd like you to do is just spit some feedback as you listen to this. And we decided to do something about it. We are a rare breed of individuals that go on to change everything for ourselves and our families. It's people like us that make the amazing success stories. And not long ago, I was right where you are, searching the internet for an opportunity I could find and be my own boss and work from home. I had a decent job as a pharmacy tech, but the thought of doing that for 30 more years literally brought tears to my eyes. I didn't want to just be putting in my time into retirement. So when I turned 38, hey, Bridget, by the way, uh, I really like the use there of this kind of um, stock, stock image that you use, wherever that was. I can't really rewind or go forward on your video very much. But uh, I, I like that. And to be totally honest, um, I would just recommend doing that through the whole thing where you have a script where you could just read the script and just go faster, but you're not actually on camera. Or you could just be on camera for like the first 10 seconds and, and, and bring in energy because this is, hey, my name is Bridget and just bring in energy. Hey, my name is Bridget. Welcome to this video. I'm so excited that you're here. You know, a couple years ago, I was blah, 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 right where you are. And then take it all to motion graphics and words on the screen and words popping up and stuff like that. People like us that make the amazing success stories. And not long ago, I was right where you are, searching the internet for an opportunity. I could... Yeah, like that right there. I mean, you, there's plenty of places you can get like a free trial uh, to, to stock a video like that. Um, so anyway, I'm going to fast forward just a little bit. What many call a midlife crisis. So see that kind of personality. So watch this, watch this, watch this. What many call a midlife crisis. So when I turned 38, I had what many call a midlife crisis. So I started to think about my life. And so that, guys, you, everybody here, I think you can feel there's a little personality, personality there. That's, that feels a little bit more engaged than what we saw for the first minute. Bridget, the problem is everybody's going to be gone by the time you start to open up there a little bit. So um, just a thought, and, and just, I, you're doing an incredible job, but I, I think you're capable of more. So that's why I'm going to push you a little bit. And what the future was going to look like. At that time, I was 325 pounds and absolutely miserable. Okay, so that image right there, I, I want to hear from you guys who are on this webinar right now, but that image right there, if it's me, I'm starting out with that image. If it's me, that is the first thing I'm going to show people. What do you guys think? Who are here watching this live, what do you guys think? I'm just curious what, give me a little feedback. I mean, I mean, what if, what if she started out her video that said, and I can't remember what you just said about how long, but you could say, uh, here, let me, let me just go back a little bit. So I started to think about my life and what the future was going to look like. At that time I was 325 pounds. So you can say X amount of months ago, Hey, you can, you can pop into your video and say, Hey, my name's Bridget. And you know what? Stick with me because or you can say, Hey, my name's Bridget. Welcome to this video. I'm pumped that you made it to this video. You know what? X amount of months ago, I was, I was X amount of whatever you just said, 300 pounds or 200 whatever pounds or whatever. And I was blah, 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 blah. And I'm just going to tell you what right now, I, I, I found something that not only helped me shift my mindset, but it, it set me on a straight course where I quit my job in seven months and I started a business for myself on the internet that changed my entire outlook on life. I want to share that with you right now. And then go into like the, I, Bridget, the, the script that I give is so not even good enough for you. <laughs> like I give a script for, for, for bridge page scripts to people, but it just, it, it, it bombed your video. I mean, your story and what we've got right here is going to be about 35 times better than using my script and absolutely miserable at my dead-end job. I couldn't shake the feeling that there had to be something more. So, guys, listen, I want you to pay really close attention to this. The phrase, I couldn't shake the feeling that there had to be something more. So, Bridget, what I'd rather you do, I'm going to get really, really, really down to the minutia of this. What I want you to do is rather than write, um, rather than say, let me play this back. Feeling that there had to be something more. There had to be something more. That phrase in the mind of somebody is going to be a throwaway phrase. It, will, it, it won't land truly 
in the way that you're hoping that it will land. Instead, what you should do is turn that into a story. You can say, look, I haven't been, I haven't been to work in a really long time, but I remember days where I would get in my car and I would tell them what kind of car you drive. I, I would get in my old beat up Volkswagen, whatever. And I would get in my car, I would get on highway six down to my 35 minute commute. I would get slammed in traffic, whatever. I mean, just tell the real story, but walk them through the moments. And then just say, you know, I would, I'd have, I always, you know, and give them little cues into your life. So say things like, I would always listen to, to 960 AM NPR radio just to take my mind off the fact that I was going to work and I would try to disconnect in my, in my car, drive, car on the way to work, right? While I was eating some sort of McDonald's, you know, because you were away, I was eating a McDonald's freaking whatever. Um, um, what do they call those things? Sausage egg McMuffin or something like that. I'm not trying to poke fun of you, but like really bring them into the moment, into the feelings. And I would, and I would sit in my car and then, and I remember when I would pull open, I would pull up to the, to the, the worst part of it was when I would pull up to the actual parking spot and I parked in the same freaking spot pretty much every day. I would pull up, to the, pull up to the parking spot and I just remember kind of, you know, holding the wheel like this and just kind of looking at it and thinking like, man, is this really it? Because Bridget, when you get into that, see, does everybody here, do you notice how different that is than just saying what she said there, which is like, I just wondered in my head if this was it. Like when you take them into the details of the moments of the real drive, type to me in the chat, you see how different that is? Because then people, that's where people get into story mode. That's where human connection and interaction and the details, all of that stuff, that's where attachment happens. That's why every big prominent leader who's ever, think of every religious, political, uh, every major person leader in the world always tells stories, paints the picture. What do they say? A picture's worth a thousand words, paints a picture. I had no idea what that was. The one thing I did know, I needed to get myself healthy. I already had back problems and I was pre-diabetic. In fact, I was walking directly in the footsteps of my mom. By age 59, I think she had every part of her body replaced and type 2 diabetes. If I was going to change the path I was on, I needed to take massive determined action. Now, I knew this was about more than weight. I need to get healthy in my mind, body, and spirit. So I started keto, going to the gym, and going to church. After I lost the first 50 pounds, I felt pretty much unstoppable. It was such an empowering thing to conquer something I struggled with my whole life. Plus, those endorphins are real, I'm telling you. I just felt strong in every way. So I started thinking, what else can I change about my life? By this time, my sister had started working with a network marketing company promoting weight loss supplements. I tried it for a while. I'm just getting a lot of comments and feedback from people in the comments right now that just says, I love the smile. I love it when you smile. It's so much better when she's smiling. So um, just bridge it for whatever it's worth, right? Um, when you start to lose the script, so this is just a practice thing. Um, the more that you shoot this video, um, the, the, the more that you're going to be more comfortable, you're going to lose the script and you're just going to smile more. You're going to say, I felt so freaking empowered. It was incredible. It was like addicting. It was like, it was like this adrenaline rush that I just wanted to see how, what are the other places in my life that I could, that I could, you know, fix or whatever. Right. And so then your focus isn't on reading the words. Your focus is on looking into a camera and connecting with a human being. It's big. Oh, I lost another 50 pounds and I even won an award for ranking within the company, but I knew that wasn't for me. I wanted a business I could automate for a real passive income. That is when I discovered digital marketing. I was originally just looking for a simple website builder, but what I discovered was an opportunity. I consumed myself with the training and started creating sales funnels. I quickly got a few clients through friends and then branched out with other services. Within three months, I had a registered agency with the state of Indiana. And with, within seven months, I was actually doing well enough to quit my full-time job. It was a dream come true. But the story doesn't end there. The beauty of digital marketing is that once you learn the process, it's interchangeable among so many online businesses. For example, while I enjoy helping my clients grow their businesses, I have learned that my heart is in affiliate marketing. I enjoy it more because I can automate the sales process for a real passive income. So, um, so, so Bridget, what I would do there is I would, I would probably draw a, a deeper, or I would draw a more, uh, uh, tell them why, uh, specifically, you know, what are the, tell them the downfalls, the pitfalls of that other agency work that you were doing so that when you explain why you like affiliate marketing more, why you love it, then it just, it stands out more and contrasts more. This became especially important to me this past September when my mom passed away. Even though she had suffered for years with health problems, it was a sudden shock. Mm -hmm. She just didn't wake up one day and then spent a week in the hospital before we finally let her go. I was able to spend every minute in the hospital with her and then plan her funeral. It was still another week before I could even focus on anything work-related. It was such a blessing to be able to focus on what was important to me while still bringing in an income. When you experience a loss so big, it really makes you put things into perspective. See, mom was only 59. It's still hard to talk about, but my point is she never made it to retirement. That thing we spend 40 hours a week dreaming about, what if your retirement never comes? Would you regret never following your dreams, never taking a chance on yourself? Would you regret all the time spent at that mindless dead-end job instead of with your family? So if you're ready to get started on your online business, you may not know all of the different options that you have available. So here's what I recommend you do. Under this video, you'll see a button. Click it. You'll be taken to a free webinar where my friend Dave Sharp goes over the top 10 online businesses and how you can get started. I met Dave in Florida at a mastermind event, and I had the privilege of interviewing him recently for my YouTube channel. He has made over $250 million in online sales. So this guy knows what he's talking about. It's important to get all the information before choosing the right business for you. I think you'll be surprised at all the options you have never considered. After you enter your email address, within five minutes, I'll be sending you the webinar along with some free bonuses that you will have to see to believe. If you don't get it soon, check your spam folder. In fact, just to give you a little more incentive, I'm going to throw in a free ebook to help you find the perfect niche. That is the first big decision you'll be making for your business. So again, my name is Bridget Bartlett, and I can't wait to walk alongside you and help you reach your goals. Now, what are you waiting for?
click the button. All right, so great calls to action. She explains the whole process well. Bridget, you're like, Bridget, you're like, um, I mean, you're you're very, very close to having this thing like be a full blown, like crush the world changer. Um, there's just a few pieces of like storytelling and ditching the script that, you know, if I were you, if I was, if I was Bridget, here's, I would, I would scratch an entire day just to shoot this video, just one whole day. And I would shoot it for like two hours. I would just shoot it reading the story. And then the rest of the time, okay, the rest of the time, um, I would shoot it without the story and I would just nail it down and I would get it really good. Um, but hey, this is really good, Bridget. I mean, this is great marketing. I'm, this is impressive marketing. And I think you did a really great job. Um, if you can just, if you can, we, we already talked about the beginning of the story, but as you go through and unpack the rest of the video, I mean, you just, you just, you crushed it. Um, so anyway, um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Pause. Hold on one second here. Yeah, really nice job. And everybody's comments are just like, man, this story really hit me. It, it made a difference. Like this, it, you did a really good job. So yeah, I mean, everybody's just saying thanks for sharing. It was great. So that was awesome. Um, Okay. For the next one, we're going to have to, we're going to have to just, cr we're going to have to crank through this. So this is Grace and Charlotte. We're going to have to go through this pretty quickly. Um, and so, I mean, the color scheme, I mean, it is bright. I mean, it is wow. Pop off the screen, but I think you did a good job in terms of design. It looks good. Um, there's a few design pieces here that we need to shift, change, or adjust. Um, and let me do that quickly here for you. So, um, let's see. Okay. So just a few people, just a few pieces that we need to adjust or change or switch up based on the design. Um, I, I would work on cleaning this piece up here a little bit. Let me make my, uh, let me make my thing a little bit, let me make this drawing a little bit larger, annotate. Um, thanks. Okay. Hang on. There we go. So this piece right here, I would make a little bit larger. All right. Um, turn your expensive hobby into a profitable online business. So one of their requests was that, um, one of the requests from Grace and Charlotte was that they weren't able to get this, um, uh, they weren't able to get this approved on Facebook ads. Okay. So, um, profitable online business might be an issue that might be part of it. Grace and Charlotte. Okay. So, so what you want to do instead is you want to probably say something like how we turned our expensive hobby into a profitable online business and then tell your story, tell your story that will function much better on Facebook ads. Okay. Um, I would put this sign into sign up to this free masterclass. I would actually put that outside of, I would put it outside of these dotted lines because it feels like it's a little bit out of place. So inside of the dotted lines, I would put the dotted lines ending here. And then I would put sign up to this free masterclass below the dotted lines on its kind of own thing. Right. Um, or what would be better is removing sign up to this free masterclass and just putting free masterclass right here with a colon and then say, turn your expensive hobby into a profitable online business. Cause the spacing here, hopefully you guys can see this clearly, but the spacing right here between, you know, profitable online business and free masterclass is different than the line spacing here. And it looks weird. Plus this gap of space here just looks bizarre. It looks off. Um, the other thing is that, um, you know, the, the, the dots over here, you need to, you need to separate that border, these dotted lines border here from the, from the hard border of this out space. Right. So, um, anyway, um, I would say in terms of the, okay. So I would say in terms of this over here, this uh, layer over here, we're getting a lot into design today, but, um, I would, I would decrease the space between these bullet points. Okay. Decrease the space. And then you'll notice that the space between figure it out and deserving is larger. This space right here is larger than these spaces here. So these should all be very equally spaced. This is really, 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 really important. Okay. So those should be equally spaced out. Um, and then for some reason, the word any results is, is like spaced bizarre. I mean, there's extra space here. So some of the design that's going on here is just a little bit weird. Um, and then grab your seat and get exclusive access to our signature course, the online biz blueprint to simple on, to a simple online biz accelerator. So I, I think that you need to rename this course because this course title is way too long, but it also says the online biz blueprint to a simple online biz accelerator. That to me is like just a confusing course name. That doesn't make sense. So I would just say, um, you know, I don't know what to rename that, but to me, at least just offhand, right offhand, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm just unclear about what that means. Would you guys agree? Those of you who are live, would you guys agree so far with just everything? Type to me in the chat real quick. Would you agree with kind of what I just said there? That the last paragraph needs at least needs space, last two words. Um, agree, 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 agency and agree with your suggestions. Agree, agree. Okay. Yes, I see it. Okay. So um, um, agree, agree. Okay. Clear drawings. Okay. Um, all right. So that's kind of our opt-in page. When you fill in your first name and email then, and just as a last little tiny thing, I would, I would adjust this to make this say email address. Okay. Email address, address, whatever. Um, just, it'll look better. That's just a, that's just a very subtle branding thing. Um, okay. And then, uh, they said the size of the photo. No, I think that that's good. I think that that's good. Um, the button doesn't really stand out. Yeah. I, I might agree with that. I, I think it's okay though. I think it's okay. Um, okay. So here, uh, this is the second page. It says, uh, nearly there, just one more step to go. And we promise you it won't take too long. Um, I might put just like a comma after that. Okay. Near, and I would say you're nearly there. Just one more step to go. All right. All right. And that's fine. Um, important. Please check your, so uh, I don't like this as black text. 
on this ba- on this pink background. I, it's just, it's hard. Like it's, it's making my eyes bug out a little bit. Okay. <laughs> it's making my eyes bug out. And I'm just kind of like, Oh my gosh, like, Oh, this is tough to see. Okay. So please check your emails from one of us at hello at grace Um, please check your emails for one of us from us. Okay. So you need to correct this. It should just say, it shouldn't say for one from us. It should say, please check your email from, uh, please check your email from, um, from us at hello. Yeah, that's fine. Please check your email from us at hello at graceandcharlotte.com. Don't forget to check your spam and junk mail folders too in order to complete the subscription process and to receive access to the masterclass. Okay. Remember to whitelist our email address too, so that you can receive more tips and information on how to make money online, grow a business, make money and grow a business online. All right. Exclusive masterclass, how to get more clients without leaving your nine to five starting soon. Let's see what happens here. Scroll down. Uh, join our free Facebook community. Okay. So let's see if, hang on. Okay. Um, join our free Facebook community. I mean, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, and then you can go and you have a group here with 365 members. So that's pretty damn cool. Nice job. I mean, this is great. Good work. And look, once you, I mean, once you just break out of that first initial kind of scary moment where you don't have anybody in your group, you just start launching this thing out to people saying, Hey, I got a free Facebook group. I post really amazing content in there, you know, come in and grab it. Um, you start to build an audience and then people are like, well, there's 365 people in here. There's four new posts today. seems like there's some cool stuff going on. I guess, I guess I'll join the group. Right. So, um, anyway, I really like this model just so everybody's clear on this. I really freaking like this model where people just, you, you run ads basically to get on a, a masterclass, but then you also, you know, I would have this more obvious and bigger and larger as a main call to action because there's nothing about it up here, but I would have it, you know, as a, as a main call to action. One, one really th- cool thing that I like to do on these bridge pages, by the way, is to put numbers. Okay. So, so there's too much, there's too much text and a lack of clarity here. So what I would do, if I was going to redesign this whole thing, here's, here's what I would say. I would say, um, well, you know what, let me, let me pause this and I'm going to create a Google doc so you guys can just see what I would do. Okay. So, um, let me make this a little bit bigger and then I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And then I'm just going to share my whole screen here. Bear with me. Bear with me. Can you see my entire screen? gang? can you see the whole screen? We have a document on the left. Okay. Perfect. 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 Okay. So <clears throat> let me, let me show you a quick little wireframe of this whole thing. Here's exactly what I would, what I would put on this page. Okay. I would say you're nearly there. Uh, You're nearly there. Here's what to do next. Something like this, okay? And then you would have your little important message. So just bear with me here. I'm making this up as I go, okay? All right, then I would have important next steps. Or actually, you know what I would do is I would say, congrats and well done. Uh, congrats and well done here. Well done. Here's what to do next. Something like this, something like this. Here's what to do next. Okay. Um, here's what to do next. Something like that. Okay. Four next steps. All right. So we have, um, let's do this, right? Just fine. 14. Okay. So this is, this is what, this is exactly what I would do. I would say step number one, right? Step number one, check your email. Okay. And then just continue your message right there. And then step number two, um, join our free Facebook community. Okay. So in the check email, see, you don't need this whole exclusive masterclass, how to get more clients starting soon. Like you you really don't need even this whole box. I would just say step one, check your email. You must, um, confirm your subscription in order to access the masterclass, how to get more clients without leaving your nine to five. Um, and then join our free Facebook community, um, filled with, hundreds of online entrepreneurs. Uh, actually, I would say this, click the button below to join our free Facebook community. That's it. That's all I would do. And I type to me in the chat. Did I, is that clear? Does that make sense? Then that way you have step one, step two, and people are not in any sort of confusion on what they need to do next. No confusion, no up in the air ness, nothing, no confusion at all. All right. Clear as a bell, as Bill says. Exactly. Okay. Outside of that, I wouldn't say that there's a lot to change here. I wouldn't say that there's a lot to change here. Some, some, you know, so you can technically, you could charge $37 and then the deliverable of your product is to join a Facebook group. So I would say free. Um, hey, here's the other thing, y'all, that you can do that's, that's kind of powerful is you could even just, rather than having them opt in here, if you didn't want to, I mean, you can, but if you didn't want to have them opt in here, the other thing you could do is just have a, I mean, literally just like a one page. There's a lot of copy here that I don't know if you necessarily need. I think it's fine. But um, the other thing that you can do here is just say, you know, free masterclass turn your expensive hobby into a profitable online business, join our free Facebook group to get instant access. And then when they come here to join your group, it should pull open a bunch of questions. You should make them answer three or four questions. One of them is an email. And then you can take those emails. When people give them, give your emails, you can take them and put them in an email list. That's easy enough. All right. So anyway, 
really well done though. I mean, this is beautiful. You're just a couple steps away from making this just a really baller, awesome offer. Also the last piece, Grace and Charlotte, is I would put a lead event pixel on this page. It means that they gave you, um, they gave you the, the name and email. I would put a lead pixel on here just so that every lead is always registered. So, um, Hey, hopefully that was helpful. Did you guys get some value? What, what, uh, what stuck out to you today? What stuck out? What was valuable today? I want to get a little bit of feedback from you guys in the chat. What was valuable? What was helpful? Was anything helpful? <laughs> hopefully something was helpful. Um, what, tell me, just, just give me a quick one sentence, two sentence deal, and then we'll wrap up for Thursday and uh, we'll rock and roll and get out of here. Anything, the detail and the design, how to improve my bridge page. Uh, what is a lead pixel? So, uh, Yos, go to, go to YouTube and type in, what is a Facebook lead pixel? And then you, you'll, you'll learn that. I won't get into all the details on that right now. Um, the color palette tip was very helpful. The colors look guys, sometimes you have all the messaging, right? You have, you watch the stuff on the copy, you copy other people, but then like you go out and you choose colors that look like your website was designed in the 1990s and it just looks, wow, that looks terrible. Right? So sometimes it's just, it's just a lot better to just go look at the color schemes that are already there by brands that have spent tens of thousands of dollars to get those color schemes in place and just to use those. So hopefully that was helpful. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys got good value. The bridge page video. Okay. Yep. Um, awesome. Thanks for popping on. Hey, we'll be back. Same time. Actually, you know what? Next week is Thanksgiving. Uh, we will not be back live next week. I'm sorry, but uh, it is a large holiday and I believe I have plans to be, um, well, not at my desk and, and not working next Thursday. Okay. So probably getting, probably putting on some pounds with some Thanksgiving dinner and watching a little bit of football or something. That's probably what I'll be doing. So uh, you guys have plans. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Awesome. All right. Hey, we'll see you in two weeks on a Thursday. Be there or be square. See you guys. Have a great one. All right, so I hope you enjoyed those two critiques and I, I went in depth and actually that was all on a live webinar, believe it or not. Um, so we were doing a live tra training webinar and I had some requests to, to do some reviews and people said they wanted to see hot seat critiques. So I just pulled a couple open and there we go. Now what I'm gonna do, and, and look, I'm just gonna apologize to everybody here, okay? <laughs> I'm just gonna give you an apology up front and just say, hey, look, I just, you know, as a business owner and as a consultant, I, I just don't have time to watch every single minute of everyone's videos and every single page, but I am going to give you some initial critiques and hopefully give you enough to, to then create your next video or create your next, um, uh, landing page or the next iteration of it. All right. So I have a ton of these pulled open on my screen right now, and I'm going to blast through them as fast as possible and give you a bunch of feedback as quickly as I can. I have no idea how long this is going to take, um, but I'm going to make the time for you guys. And I want to make sure that you get really good value out of this bootcamp and that every single piece of, of whatever you're creating gets to be critiqued and sort of worked through. Okay. So without further ado, let me just pop in right here. We're going to start with Kevin. And then I have a bunch of these things pulled open here that we're going to bop through. Okay. All right. So let's start with Mr. Kevin. Here is your bridge page video. Let's rock and roll. And, uh, and let's just see what happens. That I've become a digital. Looking back, I should have just retired and taken up lawn bowls, but I decided early in the year that I've become a digital marker, marketer in particular, an affiliate marker. Um, after doing lots of reading. Hey, so Kevin, one thing that you can do is I highly recommend that you spend just a little bit of money and grab yourself a either a lapel mic or a blue Yeti microphone, and it will make all the difference in terms of your audio quality. So um, let me just pause this video for a second, and I'll pull open what I would recommend you pick up. So if you search lapel microphone on Amazon, you can literally for $12, this is, this is one that I've used for years and years and years, and it just works great. Um, you can use it on cameras, you can use it on your iPhone, you can use it on your computer. Um, just make sure you do a little bit of reading and make sure that it's compatible with like your computer. Cause some of them are, de are designed specifically for DSLR cameras that are nicer cameras. But look, the bottom line is don't go spend a billion dollars on a microphone where you're at right now is your audio is really low quality. Okay. And so, um, you can, you can easily just make it really, really great quality or at least good quality, good enough quality, right? Just by grabbing one of these for $10 or $12 or something. If you want to go a little bit, um, more, if you want to gear it up a little bit more, uh, the microphone I happen to use is this blue Yeti microphone right here. It's $108. It's on a great sale and look, it just works great. Okay. It really, really works and it produces high quality, at least high enough quality for you. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the video. That's my first thing is, is the echo and the noise of this, the microphone's really low quality. So it's hard to watch and people aren't going to watch this. Research. I did discover there's an awful lot to learn, a lot more than I expected. Um, even though I've done about three decades more of learning lots of different business software, all this practical type of software was quite new to me. Um, and I was a bit daunted about having to learn all the new interfaces and come up and a lot of the tools are drag and drop and we'll integrate with each other. Hey, this is Kevin. This is really good. And I, I don't even need to keep going in this video to know that what you're doing and how you're delivering it is just very authentic. It's very, I can feel through the, the camera. I can feel that I have a sense of trust with you and that you're just being real and honest and, and you seem like a good guy and you kind of have a smile on your face and you just say, hey, you know, all these tools drag and drop and it's how it works. And this is, you know, and so I think you sharing your experience of, of learning all this software and then getting into the industry and realizing, holy crap, there's a lot to, there's a lot of stuff I need to figure out here. I think that that's going to be really helpful for people in video. So Kevin, what I would recommend for you is just grab a, a cheap little microphone, a little lapel mic. It'll hook right to your collar of your shirt there. You know, don't have it showing if, if you can and possibly not have it showing, that'd be great. Um, but it doesn't really matter if it shows up, just put it through the buttons of your shirt so it's behind your shirt um, and it'll be just fine. And and then, you know, when you shoot those these videos, it'll just amp up the quality so much more. It'll build it'll build more respect and more credibility for you. So that's my recommendation. Um, but in general, just keep shooting this video. So keep shooting more videos, more videos, more videos, more videos, and begin to incorporate more of what you learned in the bootcamp here to, to craft an angle and work in your offer. Um, and I, I think you're onto something here. I mean, you have that kind of natural flow on video, which is which is awesome.
Okay, so now we're gonna go to Donna's here down below. As I'm making it to this video, my name is Donna Bonaparte, and I just want to say thanks for checking out my site and my story and for actually taking a step forward to make a change in your life. You know what's sad and kind of crazy? Most people in the world just sort of suffer in silence. They want a job. Hey, so Donna, the first thing that I... Number one, I think you, you have really good lighting. I think that it's bright. Um, I like that you got trophies behind you in a bookcase. I think it just looks kind of cool, and I think you got a good thing going there. Um, I think one thing that you could work on is because you have really bright lighting in front of you, one thing that you could try to do is is move that lighting around so that when you're when you're on video, it's not super bright on your glasses. Um, that's one thing that's kind of tough to do, but if you could do that, I think it would really help kind of the visuals of it. The other thing is, is that I can already tell that this is very scripted, right? So I know that because you're using the script that I gave or that, we, that we've given in the bootcamp, but I think the other thing is that um, you're talking really quick and you're reading it sort of nervously, and that's okay. Like, I'm not... But but eventually, you're going to have to get away from the script and, and go unscripted. And use the money to try to hold on to the other two of them. After a constant flow of non-paying... The reason, the reason I say that, Donna, is because if you were if you were just speaking to a real person, you would say... You, you would look into the camera or you would look into their eyes and you would say, can I just tell you a little story? You know, when I first started, you know, and, and you would give little things like that, but when you're reading from a script, you generally don't do that. So you have one of two options. You can keep reading from the script and redo the video, or... Well, if you do that, if you do that, what you need to do is you need to write the script like you would say it. Write it like you would actually say it. So when I'm writing a script for a video, let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna put it up on, on like a teleprompter for an iPad or whatever. Um, if I'm writing a script for it and the whole thing's gonna be scripted, I am going to be typing the script as I'm saying it aloud as if I was saying it to my cousin or to a friend. So I'll be sitting there typing, but I'll say it out loud. And then what you'll realize is there's a bunch of stuff in your script that you really would never say, or it's not exactly in your voice because your writing voice is different than your speaking voice and how you speak. So when you take that script again, I, I like to write in words like, you know, or you know what I mean? So in my script, what I'll say is I'll say certain things like, you know what? It, it seems a little bit weird. I don't know. Maybe you've had this experience. I certainly have had this experience, but it, it seems interesting to me that a lot of people in the world, you know, they'll walk through life and sort of just they'll, they'll they'll walk through life as if there's no better alternative to their to their crappy nine to five job and their and their never ending Netflix binge watching on the couch. You know what I mean? So you see in, in how I just said that there's a lot of you know what I mean, or it's kind of like this. You know, does that make sense? And that's exactly how I would talk with a real human being. So that's important. Tennis, cost of repair. Now look, here's, I don't know where you're at in your life. Maybe you're near retirement and don't have a financial plan. Or if the other thing is financial needs to retire. I can hear background noise. That's a big no-no. I don't know if there's other people talking or if there's a TV on or something, but there's other background noise. That's got to go as well. And 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 then just the last piece is, um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I would also recommend using a different software to record. I'm not sure if this is on your phone or something, but there's kind of a glitchy delay to it. So I would just, I would recommend, maybe that's... Uh, maybe you're already in retirement already. I, I don't think that's on my end. I think that's on the video's end because... Yeah, because Kevin's is very smooth. So um, the, the recording's a little choppy, so maybe try a new app to record the video. Okay. So, okay, moving on. We got to keep this moving fast. One of you submitted it, and I think it was Gregory. I'm sorry, Gregory, but when I click on your video, it uh, it's just not there because you've set it to private. You need to set it to unlisted or public in order for me to view your video. Um, okay, all right, we have... I can't remember your name, but uh, we're going to hit play. Hello, Brett. Thank you very much. Okay. I want to share with you something what I experienced yesterday while trying to do a builder of bootcamp homework, creating a funnel. It was quite easy to build it, but when it came to publishing it, I tried and I tried, but I couldn't see the result. I couldn't publish it. I couldn't see it. It was always some kind of error appearing. And as <laughs> time was passing, I felt stronger and stronger wave of resistance mixed with anger rushing my whole body. Have you ever watched a sea storm coming and waves becoming bigger and bigger? Yeah, indeed. In one moment, like the biggest wave hit the rocky shore, I said aloud, I'm done with this. Whatever I try, nothing works for me. So this is, you're actually capturing this really good. Um, I think this is Tina, and I'm not, I'm sorry if I got your name wrong, but, or, uh, let's see. Yes, I think this is Tina's video. Yes, okay, perfect. So, um, Tina, so in your video, number one, I think you're doing a really good job here. You gotta lose the script. The, the theme of this video is you gotta lose the script, okay? The theme of this whole critique on the video is eventually you gotta lose the script because the script will not sell. Um, and it won't really build trust, right? You wouldn't trust somebody who needs a script to relate to you. I don't, you shouldn't need a script for somebody to build trust with you in a video, right? So when you sit down to do this, right, what you're, what you're trying to do when you're harnessing that script is you're trying to get every detail. But when you lose the script, you realize that not every single detail and feeling matters, but instead you're just kind of telling the story. So I feel like you're kind of holding back because you're, you're, you want to, um, you're, you're, I feel I feel like you're holding back your 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 actual anger. Like if I were you sitting in that sh in in that situation, I, and if I were not reading that script, I would probably like hold up my laptop and shake it in fury and and start yelling like I just wanted to throw my stupid laptop out the window and be done with this crap forever. You ever felt like that before? Yeah, it's just it's the most frustrating. It's so intensely frustrating. I hate it. I hate it. Right. So you get into like that mode. Like I feel like I feel like what the way that you're saying it right now in this video is very different than how you experienced it. The definition of that is a lack of candor. So what I want from you is I want more raw candor. It's too complicated. This technical stuff is too complicated for me and it's simply not for me. I, am, I detected the frustration I, uh, and self-defeated programs because it was late in my homeland 
and I use my experience to do a video homework that runs your life, rolls in into a guide how to play. See, this is really good though, because I caught what you did here and you turned something that was super frustrating, overwhelming, and angering into something that was a positive in you doing the homework video. So look, I want to commend you on that because I think that that's a really cool thing that you've done and it's a skill not many people do. Most people actually do throw their laptop straight out the window, <laughs> okay? They just open the window, see you later, light this thing on fire, it's over, I'm done, right? But what I want you to do in these videos, so so is is after you have that experience, you fire open the laptop, you open the screen, and I want you to just look right in the camera and just say like, you know what, here's exactly what I'm feeling right now. This is what I just went through. It was so annoying. I just, and then I want you to just unleash a little bit, you know, unleash, I mean, just let people see and feel and hear the experience. That is what people, when they're polarizing, that's what gets people's uh, eyes opened and their ears awakened. So, uh, but hey, great work on the homework. Okay, really well done. Um, and just keep going. Just keep going. Just create your next one, create your next one, create your next one, create your next one. What I tell people is you create a video a day on YouTube for a year and you will make money. You will. What do we got here? Hey, this is Josh, the work from home. I'm about ready to head out on a run here. It's about five in the morning. I wanted to talk to you guys really quick about working the rat race. You know, I know what it's like. I've worked 50, 60, 70 hours a week. In the hey, good job, Josh here. Uh, so one thing is, is you got to find something that will record better quality videos. I, I, you don't need something that's in, incredible, right? Or amazing. But what you do need, Josh, is um, what you do need, Josh, is, is maybe like an iPhone or something that records a little bit better. I'm going to guess that this was recorded on a laptop and you can see how grainy it is. Look, dude, I can just, I can tell in the first 20 seconds that you can create good videos. I can tell. Um, so, so you need to just kind of let go, um, put, let, let it be your iPhone, a little more candid. I love that you're creating a video at 5 a.m. in the morning. Look guys, powerful, powerful moments for, for your listeners, for your watchers are created in these candid moments where you're, it's 5 a.m. and you're about to go for a run. Well, what does that say about somebody if they're popping open their video at 5 a.m. in the morning and they're about to go on a run, they got their freaking beanie on, they're geared up, they're going on a run, right? And even though now, Josh, I'm just going to be real raw with you. Uh, it looks like Josh might, and maybe you've lost some weight or something, but it, look, it doesn't look like Josh is, you know, super lightweight guy, right? Maybe he's got a little pounds on and I'm Josh again, I'm just, I'm saying this in raw candor and I'm trying to be as nice as possible. But to me, Josh, the moment I heard you say, uh, it's 5 a.m., uh, you know, got a long day ahead of me, but I'm starting it out with a run this morning. I want to throw on my video. I internally just went, well, damn. Immediately, I respected the guy. Immediately, I said, well, hey, I don't care what race you are. I don't care what gender you are. I don't care where you came from. If it's 5 a.m. and you got a beanie on and you, you're geared up and you're opening your camera and you're saying, hey, I'm about to go on a run, just wanted to shoot you a quick message. I don't care who you are, what you look like, body shape, anything. I have respect for you. And most people in the world will. They'll say, geez, I, you know, this guy's got some, he's got something lit under his butt that I don't. And how can I be a part of his world? That's the question I'm asking. So, hey, look, for any of you watching this, this is powerful. Over time at the factory, at the office, I've done a lot of different jobs and I never got ahead. The bills kept piling up, the stress kept piling up, the anxiety, the, am I going to be able to take care of my family? Are we going to be able to make enough to pay the bills this week? You know, it's tough. And all of that changed about five years ago when I figured out how to work from home. But recently, I've found a tool that is greatly, greatly... So Josh, there, there's, there's, and this is just going to come with time. Don't feel bad about this. And nobody, if I'm giving you critiques on this, you better not feel bad about it. Don't feel bad about it, okay? Don't feel bad about it. But Josh, you need to unpack more. Unpack more. Give us more, Josh. I, I found I found a way that I could actually work from home and that I could build out a career for myself from home. Now, five years ago when I got started, I ran into all of these issues. And I want you to get into the headaches that you've been through. I ran into all of these freaking issues. I couldn't figure out how to set a website up. I tried coding. I was scared to create videos. I was blah, 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 blah. Go down the line. And, and then, you know, if you're selling something like Builderall and you're wanting to, to push people towards a site builder called Builderall, well, then I would say one of them, I would say my main struggle was that I couldn't figure out how to put a website together, how to integrate email marketing. And I just, I wanted to pull my hair out. Now maybe Josh, I don't know what that looks like. You might not have a lot of hair or else it's just the beanie, but you can just, you can make a joke about that, right? And just say, I wanted to pull my freaking hair out. It drove me nuts. And then I found the solution I was looking for, right? So you build and build and build and build and build and build and build. You build all of that, all of the stress, anxiety, all the frustration, throwing the laptop out the window, all of that stuff. And then you say, and then, you know what? A couple months ago, I found something that changed everything for me. You're never going to believe it. It's, a, it's an all-in-one digital marketing solution. It's an incredible page builder, autoresponder. You can edit photos. You can edit graphics. It's all built into one thing, and it's the most affordable thing I've ever found online. You want to grab a trial? See what I mean there? That's, that is powerful, okay? That's powerful. All right, Josh, that's all I got now. Just a better a better video because this video is too blurry. The other thing, Josh, is you need to have the video, whatever you're recording on, needs to be this about eye height. So it needs to be higher. Okay, about same height as your eyeballs, and that will just give a better perspective as well, uh, just of, of your face. And then, you know, outside of that, uh, maybe just a little bit better lighting would help. So, um, but look, dude, well done. You're doing a great job. If I was to do anything else different, I might try to find a spot where at 5 a.m. on my run, if there's a little bit like a light post or something that could give you enough light, I might even shoot that video while you're like out of breath a little bit. You've been running, you say, hey, 
Hey, what's up, everybody? My name's Josh. It's, I mean, it's 5 a.m. Forgive my lack of breath, but I'm out on my run, and I just every time I go on a run, my mind is it just has a flurry of thoughts, and I wanted to share this one with you. You know, about five years ago, I I was struggling in my job. I was wondering if I was ever going to have enough money to pay the bills, and and I eventually found out that there's there's careers to be made from home as a freelance digital marketer. And one of the biggest frustrations for for the last few years, as I was trying to build this out part time, I was working my job and all of this stuff. One of the biggest frustrations is I was trying to figure out how to build websites easily and quickly and integrate them to email marketing and integrate them to different services, right? Chatbots and all this, all this stuff to generate more leads. And it was so frustrating. I tried every single software, paid hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And eventually I found exactly what I had dreamt up in my mind, but I wondered, you know, did it really exist? I found it. And lo and behold, um, I'd like to share it with you today. If you want to get a free trial, it's called Builderall, and you can click the link below to get an exclusive free seven-day trial. I'd love for you to check it out, sign up, and, and start using it today. You're going to love it. Right? Something like that. Okay. That's enough. we got too many of these to keep going on this. All right. Hello, everybody out in uh, video land. Just uh, Jerry Watson here, doing my first video. Probably can't see the beautiful Pacific Ocean over my shoulder here. Uh, there's probably Vancouver just right there, some of it. We're just uh, heading back to Vancouver from the island. Spent the last week, coming my son. I love it. Hey, the only thing that maybe would help here is just a little bit better high quality video, but uh, even the audio doesn't sound bad and I like being outdoors, right? So a little bit better lighting would probably help the video quality, but looks good, man. Looks good. Hey, you got your first subscriber as well. So nice work. I love it. Good morning, my friend. My name is Ivan Gomez and I'm saying good morning because it's 5 o'clock in the morning and I'm just about to leave for work. But real quick, I want to share this video with you because it's important. And you are wondering how I reduce my work time from 40 hours to 32 hours and my paycheck to job. And it's very simple. Just like you, I was searching the internet for better, uh, for better opportunities because my job didn't provide it for me. And in my case, I worked last year. It's very hard to get up. Hey, this looks really good, man. I mean, really well done. I would, you know, as you're getting up, going to your job, going to your thing, I would maybe, um, hold on a second. Now, if you click the button below, yeah, perfect. So you have a good call to action. Click the button below. I would maybe even go into what you do for a job, right? Tell, disclose a little bit more about you and you know what I do for work and here's where I'm going, here's what I'm doing today. But I wanted to share this with you. Just it'll help build a little bit more trust. But I love the lighting. I like you know whatever you're doing. I would even explain where you're at because I'm like, is this guy in a warehouse? What the hell is he doing? Like I would even go into some of that stuff and just and bring people into your world a little bit more. But good lighting, good audio, uh, good video quality. Looks really great, man. Nice work. Hi, my name is Derek. I'm so excited to see you here, and I really love people check out my video. And here, what's coming to the next page? You're going to see a video from my hey, good job. So number one, though, um, you're definitely reading directly from the screen, right? So I recommend, just like I've said for everyone else, um, just make sure that you lose the script eventually. I would also, you know, maybe try to get a get a thing that's not such a headset type thing, maybe more just like a lapel mic that's a little smaller and lower profile. Um, um, and then just with 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 this page, I don't know what this header thing is up here. That's up here towards the top. It just it's a different color. Make it all the same color. Um, this is too far down on the screen. And then this. Um, you say the word below twice, I would just say watch the short video and click the button below to get started. Something like that, right? Show me more. So then if I click show me more, it probably goes to the, yeah, to the funnel. So um, so I would make this video a little bit bigger, maybe like an inch or two larger. Um, and then I would not read from a script at all. That's not going to sell people on this. The scripted stuff is only for, for just kind of your initial reference, but should not be used in most videos, okay? Hey, Derek, nice job. Well done on getting that video done, man. Williams in the house. Here we go. So William, what I would do if I were you is be more clear on exactly what this tool is. There's a lack of clarity, right? The way you described it, you said enhance their skills online. Right. But that's not something people are that's that is something that people need to do, but it's not a tangible thing that people can attach to. What I what I would say, what I would rather have you say is there's 36 tools. For instance, one of the world's fastest, easiest to use website builder called Cheetah. We also have a built in email marketing autoresponder. Those are just two things. But even just those two things alone make it worth the entire cost. But here's the thing today. Let's not worry about the cost. Let's just get you a free trial so you can try it out and put me to the test. Something like that. Okay. Are you ready to try building a website or, or have you been trying only to find it's pretty? Hey, I really like this. I like the intro there and everything. Try to find a video or something where you can get a little bit higher quality. So I don't like having the light coming in from the side as much. Um, only because, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, only because it's kind of, it's, it's, uh, it's drowning out the lighting in the actual video. And then this video is just, it's really grainy. So I, I have this uh, over here set to 720p. Frustrating. But even in 720, it's still grainy. So um, I would just, if I were you, just whether it's an iPhone, an Android phone, those all work really well, or uh, just get like a Canon T6i or something, and I'm telling you, your video quality will go off the charts. But I, you, have, you clearly have a personality that works well on video. I can tell that right away. So um, so yeah, I would keep going, but make the, the higher, I'm telling you, the higher quality video is going to make all the difference. It'll make all the difference on your results. All right, let's see. Uh, Jeff, attention subject matter experts and online subject matter experts. Okay, how to save hundreds of dollars a month on expensive marketing tools with just one insanely affordable system. See, that's a great headline. Finally, a way to replace all those overpriced, complicated software tools with just one easy and low-cost solution. All right, perfect. Let's see. Hey there, Jeff here coming to you from my home office in Las Vegas, Nevada, and today I'm going to show you how to stop wasting tons of money 
Hey, good quality here, good audio especially. See, he's just doing it on a little lapel mic. Now, Jeff, you have some background music going in the back um, over this video. I would actually turn that up a little bit more. I, most people would say turn that down. I would turn it up because the way that it is right now is it's just like it kind of sounds distracting. So I think there's a happy medium there. Um, and then for the buttons, I would just kind of like look around a little bit online on some on some websites. Um, for instance, on this website, see how see the padding and the ratio of font size. Um, the design on your button just needs a little bit of help. So the ratio of the font, the padding, the spacing, the alignment of all of that button versus the one that you've got on your page, which is like humongous. You know what I mean? And the, the, the borders and padding and stuff around it isn't very good so that it just, it doesn't look super clean. Um, but everything else, man, I mean, great job. This looks really good. And you ha clearly have a knack for video. I would say, you know, get the camera up. The camera shouldn't be down and you looking down and then having the ceiling. The camera should be at eye level with you at all times. And it'll look so much better because it looks like you got a pretty cool background there and stuff to show off. So I would rather see that than the ceiling. That's all. But I mean, really, dude, well done. This looks really great. I like your logo. I like your branding. It, you know, it looks great. Hey Mike, so I would just get rid of the green screen thing to me that it's it's not working super well because you can notice how the stuff around your head, I, I would just get rid of that, man. Um, but outside of that, I mean, I kind of like your, your theme here. I like your military theme. I like, it, this just looks cool. Um, but I would just, I would recommend getting rid of this green screen. Go outside somewhere, um, just get some lighting inside if you need to, whatever it is. But it, it just looks a little bit cheesy. It looks a little bit corny. I know what you're going for, but yeah. Hey, really well done though on this page. It, look, any suggestions that I give any of you, any people here in the bootcamp, the goal is that you take it and implement and improvise and make it better, improve on it, right? For instance, right here, you can see the border of your video that you set up, this little box border isn't exactly on the video. Those those tiny little attention to detail things are gonna be things that cause people to click away rather than actually going through and purchasing. So um, I, would, I would just work on the quality of the video a little bit more. Um, and then I think you've got something that's that's gonna be really good. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Eugene Cruz and I wanna congratulate you for making this video and thank you for watching, you know? It's quite difficult for me to show this video because my English is not my first language. That's, that's great just popping in right away, man, and saying, hey, look, my English isn't the best and this isn't my first language. So it's, it's kind of tough for me to make the video. And then you want to just say something immediately, Eugene, like, but look, I've never been somebody to back down to a challenge, so this isn't going to be super easy, but I, I just don't back away from challenges. So here we go. And then just go into it. I don't speak fluently enough, but I want to make this video anyway because I want to share very good information with you that is helping me right now to change my life. And I'm sure it's going to help yours, you as well. So <clears throat> what I want to do right now, I just want to tell you that this program is for so you might want to take a throat lozenge <laughs> and i'm not i'm not like trying to be mean but like literally if you got a really sore throat like tea with honey or hot water with honey in it will really soothe your throat and be able to give you a cleaner delivery and i know you'll, you'll get better on it over time the other piece is is ha have a smile throughout right see i haven't seen you smile as i go through this whole video i haven't seen you smile really one time start to finish okay so i want you to work on just going to help you up. i want you to work on smiling more throughout and using less of your script and making it just more of a more of a friendly hey nice to meet you as opposed to just you know, slam, 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 slam on all the information that you want to get out to them. Congratulations on making it to this video. My name hey, that's a, that's a cool, this is a cool intro. I would recommend you guys host stuff on, um, host stuff on Vimeo as opposed to YouTube. Um, that's just my thought. And I can get into that later, but that's my recommendation for you. And I, just want to say thanks for I love the intro where you're close to the camera. I, I've seen videos that do really well where people are like adjusting their camera as they start the video and they say, oh, whoa, I, oh, I think it's working. Is this working? Okay, awesome. And then it's like, it's kind of this catchy intro and I like what you did there. Hey, this is, dude, you, you have a, you kind of have a comfortability with video that I can, I can sense it. So look, I know the script that's already coming. So, um, well done. I mean, good job. Way to get the video up there. Um, the, the big piece that I would say to work on is just losing the script. Just lose the script, man. You don't need it. It doesn't need to be a crutch. Lose the script. And, uh, and I think you're going to be far better off with the results on this page because people aren't going to buy from a script. That's just the bottom line. But hey, look, you got the video up. I like that you have your little subscribe now. You've got 77 subscribers. Keep creating a lot of video content because you're, you're doing really well and eventually it's going to pay off. Um, okay, this was more of a, just an opt-in. So the cookies and privacy, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make this like a, a pop-up like this as much as I would just a banner up at the top or a banner down at the bottom. Okay. Um, but overall, this looks fine. This looks good. Good job. I'm not sure who this was, but good job. Um, free video reveals how I increased my monthly cash flow as I'm going to quitting my second job. Um, very cool. I don't know who this is either, but, um, yeah, I mean, it looks fine. Uh, whatever's down here, the footer area, I would make this white and not this weird purple color. That's maybe my only thing. I would probably make the headline bigger. So headlines should be like 40 to 60 font size. This looks like about 24 or 28 or something pretty small. Um, and then that's really probably all I would change. Um, oh, it was Donna's. Okay. So we've already seen here. So I would just, yeah, increase this. And then you'll notice how you have a headline here that's over the top of the video. So, um, just have to fix that line spacing a little bit, but yeah, nice job. This looks great. Uh, this is the last one. All right, cool. I like this. So this is more for like a social media or digital agency. It looks like, um, looks cool. I would actually recommend having a voiceover, uh, speak over this for, um, that amount of time. And then the last piece is, so I'm just going to be real, real candid with you. This logo design, I think you might need to either get it redone or have it like you don't want to have this as a square on the video because the whole video it you'll notice how it's like it's it's a widescreen video and then for it to end 
like this with a square, it just looks like it just doesn't fit. So what I'd recommend, and that's, and that's huge because you're a social media marketing agency and you should be able to get that right, right? So that's a big piece of this where, and then I wouldn't put LLC in your logo. I would just put Ingenious Solutions, social media marketing agency. So I maybe would just have a logo redone and then get yourself the raw files for it. So that at the end of the video, you can just put in, um, you can just put that in. Look, this is really good. I mean, this is a really cool video. I feel like it brands you pretty well. Um, if you want to take social media off your plate, right? I just, I think it's good. I think it looks great. I think you did a good job and, and uh, well done. I mean, this is a lot of work that goes into this. I don't know if you made it or somebody else did, but um, great job. And to everybody who created stuff for these challenges and for the videos and the opt-ins and all this stuff, well done. I'm going to do one more here. I forgot that Cindy's is right here. I'm going to do Cindy's as well. Congratulations. I know your seventh day free trial of the tool that is literally going to change your life. Now, before you actually go ahead and get this tool, I want to share a short story about me and my experience about coming upon this tool. So I came online and I was really wanting to sell affiliate products. And so in order to sell affiliate products, I needed to come up with lead pages. So I needed to get a lead page uh, software. And then I needed to have a place where I could collect all my emails or my, my phone numbers or my, my SMS or whatever that was. So I needed an autoresponder. Then I needed a website, okay, of course, to share the products and services and create content. So I needed that. Um, I also needed a, a way to, you know, like a database to create my customer data database. I had all these separate tools. They were costing a lot of money. And yet it was- That's really good. I mean, you really, really captured it. Um, I would maybe just adjust like your background, right? So. Here's the reality is just try to stage something with like bookshelves and books or something and try to frame it really well. So just look, what you've done there is great. All you need to do is just kind of um, clean it up a little bit and give it a little bit more production, Cindy. But I can tell you're a natural on camera. You look like like you just, you got the hang of it. You can figure it out. So just try to frame and position whether you do it outside, whether you do it, you know, uh, inside. You have good lighting. You have a good camera. You're doing a good job. And you explain the pain points really well. And I think that people can relate to that. So just keep doing it, right? The answer for most of you is just keep doing it. Keep, um, keep, keep uh, uh, diving in. Keep um, what's the right word? Keep iterating. That's the word I'm looking for. Keep iterating. Keep, uh, so, so what I tell most people is look for a bridge page video or for a website video before I ever really consider it close to being ready. I probably shoot it 50 times, 50, not one 50. And the reality is, is if you want to, do you want to be amazing at video or do you want to be mediocre at video? If you want to be amazing and there, and, and if you answer mediocre, well then just never shoot a video again. Just turn it off forever and never come back to it. Go blog, go play on Instagram, whatever. But if you want to be good on video and you want to build a long-term brand for yourself, I hope that your answer was, I want to be amazing. I want to be freaky good on, on video with video marketing. And if you want to do that, you should be shooting not just a video a day. I mean, you should be on as much video webinar as humanly possible. And then just give a little bit of thought towards production value, a little better microphone, a little better camera, a little better lighting, a little better background behind me. And then things pop off. Then your brand goes to a different level. And by that time, you've shot so many videos that your production value is just way higher. It's just way better. All right. So, hey, to everybody who got these videos done, I mean, this is a long video, but hopefully it was a value to you. Watch it once. Watch it again later on uh, over the next month if you need more value. And uh, let's rock and roll. Greetings. Welcome back. It's day 24. Can you believe it? Congratulations on making it for this far. And today what we're going to talk about is, uh, well, we're going to talk about two things today, two main things we're going to hit today. Uh, number one is first hacking the algorithm of ads uh, platforms. Now I'm not talking about actually going in and hacking anything, okay? So, um, but we're going to talk about the secret to getting more leads for less cost, okay? And how different social media companies, search agencies, things like that, gear their algorithms to uh, certain biases, okay? So I'm going to go through that a little bit today. And this is really, really important to understand as soon as you start creating content. The other thing that we're going to talk about is compliance. So we've kind of jammed two big topics into one day uh, and that's okay. Um, but I'm going to give you tons and tons of resources for you to go and to really become a master of compliance. And uh, I'll explain a little bit later on why that's so important. So we're going to keep this a really short video to the point and I'm going to get my point across and we're going to get out of here. Okay. So we're going to keep, yeah, yesterday's was a little long and then today's is going to be real quick uh, uh, and, and right to the point with a little bit of homework for you. Okay. So let's dive in and get it going. Look, first and foremost, there's nothing that advertisers like more than giving their users a positive experience. If there's one thing you need to know about advertisers, their, their main objective and their main goal, think, in, get in the mind of Google or Facebook. All they want to do is give their users the most positive experience possible for Google. That means that when somebody searches, how do, how do I make a chocolate cake? The very best search results pop up and the individual finds exactly what they're looking for on Facebook. That means that positivity and engagement are being stimulated on the platform in a way that holds more users attention and keeps them engaged on the platform. Okay. So for instance, with Google, let me, let me dive into the Google thing a little bit. So with Google, when somebody searches, okay, somebody types in a search on Google, let's say it's how to make a, how to make a chocolate cake. The goal of Google is that they give people a page that they click and they don't have to search again. So the goal of Google is that people find what they're looking for in one single search and that they do not have to come back to Google and click the second option and the third option and the fourth option. And they will start to gear. So if I'm running an ad, for instance, of how to make a chocolate cake and I have a, a Let's say I have an awesome little 995 e-course on the best chocolate cake ever, right? Or I don't know, maybe I'm running it to a blog post about it, right? I'm just trying to drive traffic to a blog post um, and then sell a cookbook, you know, whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to gear that whole blog post to get as much, to get as many people who search how to make a chocolate cake to, to read my blog post and say, oh, I don't need to go read anything else on this topic. 
then Google is going to say, hey, this, this right here, this blog post, that answers this question perfectly. So let's say you write a review blog post. Let's say you write a builder all bootcamp review blog post, right? If, if people come to your site and they click, they, they click on, let's say you rank on the first page of Google, they click on your site and then they show up and, um, and then it, within 10 seconds, most people are clicking away, going back to the search and clicking a different one. Well, what you're, what, what's going to happen to your ranking to your site is it's going to fall in the rankings and you're not going to get as much traffic sent to you anymore because Google's saying, Hey, look, this person, they're not actually answering the question. It's clickbait, right? So in the case of Facebook, they've literally built a positivity bias into their algorithm to show positive content more than negative content. For instance, now check this out. The following words are negative and thus get less priority, less reach and higher lead costs, meaning higher lead costs is a bad thing. It means that for each lead that I'm getting from Facebook ads, if I'm running a lead campaign, uh, I might pay two or $3 more if I have a bunch of these words as opposed to uh, the words below. So murder, death, cancer, kill, died. Okay, you can read them all. I'm not gonna read them all. By contrast, the words beneath that are positive words that typically result in more engagement, more reach, and lower costs per lead, okay? So what this means, and you can see it's kiss, haha, funny, glad, miracle, rainbow, you know, all sorts of just kind of happy-go-lucky words. The the gist of it is you don't, it's not that you can't ever use negative words, okay? But it's just so that you understand the principle of how Facebook's algorithm works and why they do what they do. That's the important piece of this, okay? All right, so when you sit down to write a Facebook ad or, or a Facebook post or whatever it is that you're gonna write, just keep this in mind, right? So when you, when you start out with your, pro now let's talk quickly about the, the seven steps of the story, right? There's a problem, right? There's a person who has a problem, um, they find a guide who has a blueprint. They call them to action that leads to success or avoids failure. So when you get into the whole problem and unpack that, just keep in mind that what you want to have happen in your ads is you actually want the success part of it, happy, enjoyment, peace, paradise. You want to have that stuff. You want to have that positive stuff outweigh the bad stuff in terms of your ads. And here's one way to measure that, which I found a really helpful tool is, um, the, the, it's a, it's a text processing .com, text dash processing com, but it's a sentiment analysis tool, meaning uh, it'll actually detect the positivity or negativity of a certain piece of text. So I put my Facebook ad in there that we, earlier in week one, I gave you an example ad to use for an offer and I put that in there and it came back as neutral. So you can put your stuff in there and if, and if your stuff is coming up negative, that's probably a good sign that you're gonna need to make some changes. But when you craft a Facebook ad, you can paste the entire text into that sentiment, sentiment analysis tool and hit analyze. And then what it's gonna do, it'll give you a positive, neutral or negative score. So again, if you're in the negative range, the ad, ad copy probably won't work well for a Facebook or Instagram ad because of how heavily they weight their algorithm towards positivity. So, so this is, this is the main piece that you need to understand in really all of social media. There's, there's not a lot of ways to advertise businesses outside of social media. Google is one, but even Google has their own sort of compliance regulations and, um, subtle, not like Facebook and Instagram, but subtle positivity bias where they're trying to give their, their audience or users a very positive experience on their platform. Okay. So if you want to come out with fear mongering advertising, the chances are really good. You're not going to be able to advertise on places like Google, YouTube, Facebook, all this kind of thing. So, um, what I want you to do is I want you to utilize the sentiment analysis tool. Now for email marketing, that doesn't, that doesn't matter nearly as much. There's not an algorithm scanning it for positivity bias. They do scan your emails through for uh, affiliate links or spammy links, but not really for, for positivity or negative bias. Okay. Um, so, so just when you, when you write any posts, when you create videos and you think, oh my gosh, this would be so good for, for Facebook or Instagram, you just want to train your brain to remember, okay, here, I, I remember that Facebook and Instagram are looking for positivity. How can I work a real positivity bias into a majority of my content? So it'll get more reach. It'll get more uh, engagement, all that stuff. And, and guys, here's the, here is one incredible uh, point to note on this is that there, this positivity bias isn't just on words. It also goes to images. So they have a facial scanner, an image scanner that will scan for, for things like green grass, like that will increase engagement if it's bright colors. Um, the other thing that will increase engagement is smiles. They can actually detect smiles in your ad images. So for instance, Catherine and I, uh, I, I have an image that I used in, Facebook ads and have used forever. It always performs the best. I have no idea why. Um, it's just us sitting at a brewery and we're both smiling right into the camera. It's kind of a selfie style photo. And both of our smiles are really big. The camera's only about two feet from our face. So it's really up close and it always performs best. And, you know, I, I actually started using that before I did a bunch of research and reading on all of this positivity bias. And that's when I realized that it was that image um, that performed best because it played right into the positivity bias. That image would always get us the lowest cost leads on anything we were running ads for. The other main thing that must be considered when advertising on any platform is compliance. So most people who are new to marketing online don't give much thought to making their ads compliant, both from a regulation standpoint, but also from the advertiser standpoint. For instance, the make money online industry is littered with countless advertisers who make income claims and in videos or texts and have no disclosures on their pages or in their videos. So people, regulating bodies like the FTC, for instance, have literally have shut companies down because of these kind of violations. So if you're going to be advertising anything online, here's what I recommend. I recommend you take a few minutes and search the FTC Act and read the entire PDF online. If you go to um, Google and type in FTC Act, the top result is going to be a government website for the FTC, which is the Federal Trade Commission. And on that page, there's going to be a link to, currently it's 49 pages. I'm, I'm assuming that could change, but a 49 page PDF document where they're going to walk you through the whole FTC Act. That FTC Act has been uh, enforced on many various companies throughout the years, some of which have, have been um, fined for misleading advertising. Some companies, especially in this industry, have been completely shut down uh, via a temporary restraining order, um, and it, it took down their whole company. So um, 
So here's what I would recommend is, look, you don't have to necessarily go through every single sentence of that document, but the way that I want to frame this to you, I'm going to try to pitch you on reading this document because I know you've got better things to do and kids and jobs and just all kinds of stuff. But look, if you take one hour out of your life, out of your whole business life, if you take one hour to read that and become an informed advertiser, become a responsible business owner, I'm telling you it's worth it. Okay. It's one hour out of your time to sit down and read through what the FTC is looking for, what they require, how you can be penalized for misleading advertising. There, there's just a multitude of ways that you can be penalized, not just, you know, a Facebook slap or a Google slap or a YouTube slap, but actually have your business removed and um, pay hefty, hefty fine. I mean, it's just, it's look, just get yourself educated. All right. Around the FTC. Okay. And, and how to use disclosures and disclaimers. Okay. But in addition to regulatory bodies, each individual platform also has their own policies that advertisers must comply with or risk getting their ability to advertise removed. Okay. So for instance, Many people try to dive in with Facebook ads without really knowing what Facebook policy says about advertising online. Hint, this is a really bad idea, okay? Um, the, the following resources that I'll give you below are geared towards Google, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. They're the main core four, okay? Instagram is owned by Facebook, and so wherever you see Facebook links or anything that has to do with Facebook, just know that that applies to Instagram as well. Um, same thing with YouTube. YouTube is owned by Google, so anything you read about Google, it also applies to YouTube, but I did give some resources uh, for YouTube as well. So here's here's how I set this up. Um, I have, you know, this first page here, all of this stuff is directly from the horse's mouth, directly from these advertising platforms, from Google, from YouTube, from Facebook. They are specifically... Um, policies and uh, what the companies have written about their policies and how to remain compliant as an advertiser. This is going to be the best hour or two that you'll ever take as an advertiser um, to learn exactly what they're looking for and exactly what they want from you as an advertiser. Okay. So I would highly recommend that you pull open each and every one of these links, you read through it and you actually digest what they're trying to get at. On this page down below, um, I've also included other resources from bloggers and ad agency people. So these are just kind of trusted names that I've known for quite a while. Uh, for instance, Ad Espresso there, it, I mean, they're just a, a massive company. Um, their reach and knowledge around Facebook, it's incredible, okay? Um, so, and they're trusted by Facebook. So it's just a good, um, it's a good place to start. And if if you have ever or uh, find yourself having your Facebook ad account disabled, here's uh, a bunch of helpful resources as well to just go and read and um, try to troubleshoot what's going on. Uh, there's just tons of really good tips in here um, about what to do if an ad account gets disabled. And what I'm not saying is that all of those people, Jerry and, and uh, I think Julie is the lady who wrote the entrepreneur article. I'm not saying that all these people have it laid out perfectly, but the more you read, the more you begin to see the larger picture of what Facebook wants from their advertisers. So um, if you're if you're brand new to Facebook, I just want you know kind of one last note. If you're brand new to Facebook, you just created your profile, starting to add some friends. These are the people who tend to get their ad account shut down the most often. So just be really careful as you get started in advertising. Um, it, compliance is becoming more and more and more of an issue, and it will continue to probably forever. And so what you need to understand is um, advertising has become more of a watered down thing. So ads need to be a little bit less. Um, um, it, a little bit less polarizing. You used to be, I mean, I have the history of, of being in this industry for the last 10 years and the ads you could place on Google 10 years ago are vastly different than what's going to be acceptable today. And the same will be true for the next 10 years and the next 20 years. So what I, the important piece that you need to understand in your big takeaway here is that the advertising compliance issues change on a monthly, maybe even more frequently than that quarterly basis, um, where look, people are constantly updating their policies based on what people are doing. It's a moving, flu uh, a fluctuating industry. And you've got, this is part of your job now. This is part of being an advertiser. It's similar to any sort of, I mean, if I was a hairdresser, there's certain regulations that I have to follow for health code. If I ran a coffee shop or a pizza pizza place, whatever, I would have to follow health code and those things are subject to change and I just have to know those, okay? So this is super important that you view it like a business because it is a business, but you have to view it like that, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to comment below this video after you watch it, I want you to comment below this video and I want you to commit to being a compliant, responsible advertiser in this land, in this world filled with irresponsible um People who irresponsible people who treat their business like a joke, like a side hobby, um, and don't really care about compliance. Don't read up on it. They they aren't really sure what even compliance means. <laughs> I want you to be the opposite. So uh, take notes as you go through these different blog posts, as you go through these different articles. I want you to take notes, and I want you to comment below. I'm committed to be to being a compliant advertiser, a compliant advertiser who takes his advert his or her or their advertising seriously. Okay. All right, that's a wrap on day 24. We'll be back for day 25, and the rest of this bootcamp is going to be specifically geared to how to get more people, more eyeballs on that sales funnel of yours, so you can start making sales. Hello and welcome back. It's week four and day, wait for it, 25 of the bootcamp. Day 25 and today we're gonna talk about launching high converting Facebook ads. Now here's the thing. Uh, this is going to be a full-blown six-part training, okay? So <laughs> I thought about putting these all together in one video. I'm gonna launch and release them in multiple different videos. So then that way, uh, you know, you have little mini videos to look back on um, you know, over the next couple of days. And because we'll leave this, uh, we'll leave this group open uh, for 30 days after the bootcamp, you'll have plenty of time to come back and look at this, reference it and take notes. Okay. So day 25, launching high converting Facebook ads. We're going to walk through all of this. And then I'm going to give you a couple caveats and a few notes to guide you along as you go through the videos. All right. So first of all, we're going to go through a Facebook fan page creation. Some of you are already going to have a Facebook fan page. That's okay. Not a big deal. I'm going to walk you through the steps to creating this. Now, 
Here's the thing with Facebook, and I'm going to say this and I say it loud and clear. Facebook is always testing. Facebook, they are marketers, all right? So they're always testing, iterating, changing, adjusting how the screen looks. So I'll create a video today, right? And in three days, Facebook will change a little bit how it looks. So rather than, and, and you need to train yourself starting today not to look at someone's screen in a tutorial or something and, and learn just where to point and click. Because that's what you learned in the education system that you grew up in. And so what it's done is it's trained you to, to be a robot, to train you what to do instead of how to think about it, right? The concept behind of, behind what you're doing. So here's where we run into issues. And I'm just going to be candid. I'll be candid as all candid as I can be with you. Where we run into issues with creating click-by-click -click trainings is just simply that uh, Facebook or different software companies, Builderall even, for instance, right? That stuff changes all the time. It's hard to create tutorials and keep them constantly updated. The thing of it is, is we can create these things and if one button changes or if a drop down menu changes or if something changes a little bit, you have to learn how to iterate on the fly, change things up or go figure it out on YouTube or something for yourself. Okay. That's just the reality of the marketplace and how it works. The other aspect is even if with Facebook, it's even diff more different because Facebook will release updates for certain parts of the world before other parts. So I know people in Europe, in Asia who have a totally different looking Facebook interface, not totally different, but an updated looking interface as opposed to mine, which is still the older. And there's no rhyme or reason to why Facebook does this. It's just you know, I can sit down and, and share screen with somebody and our Facebooks can look totally different. So that's, that's just something you have to understand with creating these kind of click by click trainings is you, you might come back and send me a million messages and say, well, it doesn't look exactly like that. Look, you're going to have to push through and you're going to have to figure it out. That's the only way you're going to grow. And the only way you're really going to learn this stuff, there's going to be headaches along the way. It's going to be a difficult road ahead to, to create and get your ads up on Facebook and running and, and generating leads. It just is, but nothing, in, nothing in life for sure, but definitely nothing in business comes easy and it shouldn't, it shouldn't come easy. In order to deserve success, in order to deserve to generate leads through any advertising platform, um, it should be hard. That's the definition of business. It should be hard. Okay. All right. So enough of that. I just want you to know that when you go and follow my instructions to create your Facebook fan page, a few parts of it might just look a little bit different. Just push through. Okay. Just push through, get it done and move forward. All right. You can fix your problems later. The second is I'm going to go walk you through the process of, of creating business manager accounts. I'll explain why that's important in that video. Number three, we're going to run a likes campaign. I'll show you how to run a likes campaign, whether you do it or whether you don't, you know, is, is ultimately in your hands. You're the business owner here, not me, but I'm going to show you how to do it and why it's important. Then we're going to go through the pixel installation. Again, I'll share with you what that is and why it's important. And I'm going to take you back through a, a similar, the ad, the, the offer that I shared with you in week one, I'm going to walk you through again, that ad copy. We're going to talk a little bit about why I use the story ad formatting in Facebook, for instance, and give you a couple ideas of, of why this type of ad is so powerful and the results that I've got from it. And then uh, we're going to actually walk you through click by click how to launch a conversion campaign in Facebook. Okay. Now I, I may add bonus videos later on in the day. Um, I'm just debating on if we're going to really need them, but I may add as well additional uh, videos um, that cover how to track and what metrics to look at. If you do get your Facebook ads placed, then, okay, now I've started generating leads. Well, how do I measure and what do I track? Okay. So I'll also put those in there as well. So this, this is fundamentally a six part and there may be bonuses uh, attached to it along with it. All right. So um, have a ball with this. And the goal of this whole entire um well, the goal of this whole whole uh, day, I mean, this this is a full blown Facebook training <laughs> that people would pay a lot of money for. All right, the goal of this whole thing is to sh is to give you the hard skill of how do I actually get the ads up and running. Right, people can talk about copy all day, people can talk about all this stuff. There has to be interspersed and intermingled in your skill set the ability to actually click in and go place a freaking ad and watch it and spend a little money and watch that thing generate leads for you. That's a powerful feeling, right? Because there's going to be a day in your future where you wake up and placing a Facebook ad for you isn't a big deal. Where you can get up and head to your computer and place a new Facebook ad in 30 minutes or less. There's that day will exist for you. Whether it's Google, Facebook, YouTube, Bing, I don't know, Twitter, Snapchat, wherever you want to go place ads, there's going to be a day where you get up and you do that just simply, easily, and quickly, right? And it starts with days like this where you're going to run into these roadblocks along the way, and eventually you've hit all the roadblocks you could ever hit. See, it's not so much about sidestepping all the roadblocks. It's just about hitting them head on and, and barreling your way through them, being resilient and persisting through those things. And eventually you've just hit all of them that you kind of know what they, and you'll still hit those roadblocks along the way and they'll look different five years from now, 10 years from now. But you've hit so many of them, you're just conditioned to hit them differently. You're just conditioned to kind of know what to look for. You know what it's going to feel like. You know what to adjust or change for, right? It's not that you're ever really just missing every single roadblock. It's really that you're learning how to how to roll with the punches. That's advertising. That's marketing. It's constant testing, constant, constant, constant. Okay. All right. So without further ado, we're gonna do, we're gonna dive right into video one. And what I want you to do as you go through this day is you know you can mark each of these uh, each of these little posts complete or done. So you can mark each of them done. And then once you finish out the whole thing, all right, and you get the entire video trainings done, and you either launch a likes campaign or a conversions campaign or both, then you can mark this unit complete. Now now we're gonna see where people are really at, because this isn't just watching trainings, right? Now it's time to grab your weaponry and let's hop into the trenches because it's go time. All right, so we're gonna talk real briefly in this video about how to set up a Facebook fan page. So first of all, and number one, what we wanna do is if we're logged into Facebook in the top right of this window, you're gonna click this little down arrow. It's kind of hidden, but this is where you're gonna click and you're gonna go down and create page. So when you're in create page, one thing that you, the initial part is, are you a business or brand? Are you a community or public figure? This ultimately doesn't really matter, but what you're typically going to do, if it's going to be a page that's named to you, you're just going to do this side community or public figure. So the page name, typically here's what I do. I just set it up as first name, last name. I mean, not literally. If your name is Joe Anderson, then put Joe Anderson. If it's Lisa, um, 
Crockett, then put Lisa Crockett, whatever it is, right? So you're going to put in the page name, which is just your first and last name, and then the category. Type a word or two to best describe your page, then choose a suggested category. So let's just try entrepreneur, and perfect. We'll do entrepreneur. So this page might change over time, but in general, how Facebook's uh, account has it is that um, they set it up where you put in a page name and then a category. And they've changed this over the years and they adjust this a lot. So just know that, but page name, just make it your first and last name, category entrepreneur. That's if you're approaching this from more of a, a, a perspective where you want to market this as kind of a lifestyle type thing, right? So if you're going to market more of a lifestyle type deal, then what you want to do is you want to have your name and make it feel and seem as little like an ad as humanly possible because what people are looking for on Facebook isn't to click on an ad. What they're looking for is to engage with a human being. So it's kind of knowing your medium. If you want to do something else, like um, if you want to make it more of a businessy type thing, well, then you can name it, you know, something different and, and change the category or whatever. So, all right, let's click continue. Typically, I just recommend doing first and last name here, but let's click continue. And then we'll, uh, what you're going to do is add a profile picture. So just, I typically tell people just make it look similar to your Facebook profile. I mean, just keep it pretty simple and straightforward like that. Uh, so you'll click upload a profile picture and upload it. I'm going to skip that for now. And then same with the cover photo. So if you really, if you need something, you can go to canva.com and with canva.com, you can, um, let's see product. You can get their photo editor, which will allow you to pull in and resize things to be like the size of, of the, um, Sorry, of the cover photo. So if you need something that's cover photo size, you can put it in there and then yeah, uh, get a good size cover photo for that. So I'm going to click skip on this as well. Again, I don't overthink this. I just make it a standard photo. So, okay. So you have your page, you have this. Now uh, you want to add, what you want to do is go over here to the left and go to about and just put in a little bit about your story and start date and kind of edit some of this stuff. So just go through here. You don't have to edit all of this stuff. If you don't have all this stuff, just don't put it in. That's fine. No problem at all. Um, but the more that you have there, the better. Now, as far as your Facebook fan page goes, make it your goal to post to this one time per day. And a really easy way to do this, if you aren't sure what to post or all this stuff, um, just go to pinterest.com and go to inspirational quotes. And if you just want kind of businessy type stuff, one day, one day or one or day one, it's your decision. So what you can do is, you know, if you want something you never had, you have to do something you've never done. All right. So let's say I want to grab that. Cool. This looks awesome. So I'm going to click that. And it's going to take me to a page with a bunch of these, actually. So let's just, I'll just um, save an image as to my desktop. And then, so if I'm, if you're unsure of what to put, then just start putting stuff like this. So photo video, I'm going to upload and I'm going to grab this quote. And then I'm just going to say, let's make it a great day. And then uh, put a little smiley face in there. Let's put an emoji in there. Let's put a little smiling guy with some sunglasses. Okay, and then I will release this now. You can use different pieces of software. You can use Hootsuite or different pieces of software if you want to automate these, or you can just do a, um, you can click here, down here, and it'll let you schedule it, or you can even backdate it if you want, but you can schedule it, click publish, and that will put a new post onto this page. So I would recommend posting to your page once per day. If you write a blog, awesome, you can write notes, but some sort of something where it's going to your wall and you're, and what this does is it tells Facebook you're a real human being. It just, it, it lets Facebook know you're a real human, you're posting for engagement purposes, and it gets, starts to give a little bit of trust and credibility to your page. As far as add a button, one thing I would not recommend is ever putting an affiliate link here. So I usually just have a contact you and a send message button there. So you can set that up just like I did there and you'll click message. Uh, so you can have, uh, let's see, your button, send a message. Okay, so send message next. And where would you like this button to send people to messenger and configured send message finish. And that's really it. So now you have a send message button that people can click and contact you from. Create a page username. You're also going to want to do this. So if I can, let's just see if I can get my first and last name. If that's not available, I usually put biz afterwards. And there you go. And it's available. So now I have a little username, which is great. All right. So that's the Facebook fan page creation and setup just to get you a little bit going. Uh, start posting to your Facebook fan page regularly. And uh, there'll be more videos to kind of describe what else to do on your Facebook fan page. Okay, so what we're going to do now is create what's called a Facebook business manager, and we're going to create a few ad accounts as well inside of there. So one big thing as we're doing this, the purpose of us creating multiple business managers and ad accounts from day one is that if one of your ad accounts is to get disabled, or if they are to block or ban or put one of your ad accounts under review, you're not able to then go and create these. So what you want to do is you want to create them first up front so that you can move from one to the next if that happens, right? So if they, if they shut down one ad account, that doesn't mean that all of your ad accounts are shut down. It just means that that one is shut down and you can then move and start running ads on a different ad account that you've already created. So first things first, in order to do that, you go up here to the top right and click this little down arrow again. And what you're going to do, or I'm sorry, actually, you're going to go up into your browser and you're going to type in business.facebook.com slash create. Business.facebook.com slash create. And you're going to have a little blue button up here that says create account. All right. So it says your business name. So I'm going to type in Lisa, just using this as an example. If it was me, I would type in whatever your business name is or your first and last name there and click continue. And under my name, I'm going to say Lisa Johnson. <laughs> I'm just making this up. Um, and there we go. Okay, and then I'm going to click Finish. So this creates what's called a business manager. So this is 
just a back office where you can see all things your business, your ad account, your page, people, all that stuff. But some people, what they'll do is they will add their page to this. I typically tell people just don't add your page to the business manager because then if one of your business managers gets uh, flagged or whatever, then your page is tied to that. Then you have to go create a new page and yada yada. So I just usually don't even do that because you don't need to. The first thing you want to do is create an ad account. So you're going to click add ad account and then you're going to click create ad account over here. And then I usually just name it one. I just put the number one or whatever you're going to be advertising, but I just make it number one. It keeps it simple in my mind. So, uh, and then I'll click create ad account. And what it's going to do is it's going to say, do I want to add extra people? When this pops up, just click skip. You do not need to add extra people. And then you'll click on close. So that's that. Now you have your first ad account in your business manager. So that's one that you've created. Now, Facebook will allow you to have a bunch of these in here, but when you're first getting started, you can only have one ad account in the business manager. Now we're going to go create our second business manager. So Facebook allows you two different business managers in your personal profile. So you're going to type in business.facebook.com and this time you're going to go to slash overview business.facebook.com slash overview. All right. So here we are. You're going to click create account and your business name. I'm going to say Lisa two and Lisa Johnson. And then for your business email, just use a different email. Maybe that's your business email this time. Okay. So a different email there. And again, you just put in your name and then I'll click finish and we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to click add ad account. We're going to click create ad account. I'm going to name this two. So I'm going to have two ad accounts, number one and number two. And I actually do have a third ad account. I'm going to click skip on this. I do have a third ad account, which is my personal ad account as well. So now that I've created two business managers with two different ad accounts, if I click up here in this bar, it's going to say my personal ad account, Lisa and Lisa number two. So typically when I tell people, it doesn't really matter exactly where you're running these ads from, but just run them from the same one each time. So I'm going to select the first business manager and then I'm going to click on ad account one. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up what's called ads manager. And this is where you need to get to in order to actually run ads on Facebook. And we'll kind of go through the different types of campaigns that you can create in Facebook now. All right. So now that we're in our ads manager, what we're going to do is first, we're going to create an ad. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with, if you've never really run ads on Facebook or your Facebook fan page is a little new, what you always want to start with is something called a likes campaign. So you're going to click on create ad. And what you're going to do is you're going to click engagement. So when you click engagement, then you're going to come down here and click on page likes. Make sure you click on page likes and not post engagement. You do not want post engagement. You want page likes. And we're going to name the campaign page likes. Okay. You don't need to do any of this stuff. Just leave it as is. Click set up ad account. And this is actually going to formally create the ad account. I'm going to click on continue. And here we go. So over on the left-hand side, you can see campaign. We just set up the campaign. That's what we were selecting when we selected page likes. We got the ad account created. And now we're at the ad set. So your main three components to a Facebook ad is your campaign, your ad set, and your ad. Campaign is kind of the big, imagine the campaign as being a, a uh, filing cabinet. The ad set are the folders within that. And then the ad is the actual sheets of paper inside of the folders. Okay. So, all right, the ad set. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of what the ad set is. The ad set is where you choose things like audience. So the age, the gender, where in the world are they? Um, the different types of interest, those types of things, uh, the page that you're promoting. And then you can select edit placements where you can choose different placements that you want and things like that as well. So. We're going to scroll down. You can also select your budget and schedule for this as well. So let's start at the very top, the ad set name. So typically what I do for this, and here's what I would recommend, is you come to advanced options. And I usually don't do the campaign name. I usually just do ad set interests, age, and country. So I will click on rename. And now we're going to scroll down. This is the page that I want. So make sure to select the page that you want to promote. And let's keep going down. Okay, so for countries, you can select really whatever countries you want for the likes campaign. Here are two different strategies for the likes campaign. Number one is doing something like this, where you would target worldwide. It's all one word and it's a region called worldwide. This will target everyone on planet earth, <laughs> ages 18 to 65 plus. And basically what you're doing here is because your reach is 1.9 billion people, okay? Because your reach is so big, it will give you a really low cost for each of your likes. However, they're gonna come from like very third world type countries and stuff like that. So you have to understand that. They're gonna come from like the boonies of like Bangladesh and just like, they're probably not gonna be your ideal leads, but you can get likes on your page for about one penny per like. So like one US penny per like, so you, you know, you can get 10,000 likes on your page for about a hundred dollars, hundred US dollars. Okay. So it's a very cheap way to get a ton of likes. So maybe what you might want to do right away is just start out with $30 to, to the worldwide, something like that. If you're trying to be budget friendly, to start out with $30 that way. And if you're getting them at one penny per like, well then, you know, you're going to, what is that calculation? Um, so if you run $30, you're going to basically get 3000 likes on your page. And that just looks good. And people are looking around, oh, wow, they have 3000 likes. Okay. That seems, you know, like they have a little bit of traction or whatever. It just looks a little bit better. You don't have to do that. The other option that you can do is you can actually select countries that are, you know, countries you would want people from the United States, the United Kingdom, um, you know, wherever else, Ireland. Um, let's see. I mean, Netherlands, just, you know, you can select countries that you would actually want to uh, let's see Belgium actually want to target or whatever. So let's say Canada as well. Canada. Yes. There we go. All right. So once you have your country selected of countries that you would actually want, see, this is still 280 million for our potential reach. So we have our country selected now. And for the age, I usually don't go really below 25. 
And, you know, if you're 40 years old, I would probably do 30 to 50. If you're 55 years old, I would typically do like 45 to 65 plus or something. So, you know, have kind of a 10 years before, 10 years after kind of deal or whatever it is. It doesn't really matter. But, um, you know, if you're 72 years old and you write a really long ad, a story ad about your life history, you probably don't want to target people under 30. It just, it doesn't really work that way. It's the same way that, you know, as I'm doing that, um, as I'm advertising, you know, if I'm 28 years old, I'm not going to advertise to 65 plus usually. So, okay. All right, so we have 25, let's do 25 to 65 plus. I'm gonna do all for my gender. And typically I wanna have somebody who speaks English all. So I'm gonna select that as well. All right, then detailed targeting. So whatever you're looking to target in, in just in terms of your ideal audience or your ideal uh, avatar. Uh, for a likes campaign, if you're just looking to get a bunch of likes, you can leave this blank. If you wanna get likes that are a little more quality and targeted to you, well then, you know, I don't know who you're targeting, but you know, you could do small business owners, small business owners, you know, you have 40 million people in the world who list themselves as a small business owner on Facebook. So let's do that. We'll select small business owners. So that gives us 9.6 million people. All right. And then for a likes campaign, I might throw in a couple more. So I click on suggestions and let's look through generally over here. If it's under a hundred thousand, I'm not even going to look at it. Uh, self-employed. Sure. Uh, entrepreneurship. Sure. Self-employed again. Sure. All right. So now we're at 29 million people for a likes campaign. There's really no right or wrong answer here, uh, but I try to be a little more inclusive. Uh, you always want to have exclude people who like your page that should already be turned on, but you want to keep that just as is so that you're not launching your ads to people who already have liked your page. That doesn't make sense. All right, and then I leave this. So I just leave this automatic placements because the only place that a likes campaign can run is in the Facebook feeds. So you can just leave this one at automatic placements and then just set your budget to whatever you want. So if you want to do $5 a day, if you want to do $500 a day, it doesn't really matter. Let's just say five bucks a day. And I am going to run my ad continuously. Uh, typically, if I'm just getting started and I'm doing a likes campaign for the purpose of getting a little traction and trust with Facebook, which is really what this is for, um, I'm going to set a start and end date. And I'm going to set the start date, let's say for August 1st. And I'm usually just going to run it for about 10 days. So I'll just run it from August 1st to August 10th, and it'll run for, I guess, nine days, but it's only going to spend $45, very cheap, very affordable. I'm going to click on continue. All right. So now it's going to ask, do I want a video? Do I want a slideshow? Do I want a single image? The easiest and fastest way to do this is just an image. Now, the recommended pixels for an image size for this is 1200 by 444. So if you need to use an online resizing tool, that's fine. But you can just, you can just put in, let's say, upload image. So you can just put in, um, let's see, add photos, add pictures. You can just put in one of your own pictures, even if it's bigger or smaller than what they recommend. That's fine. Just put those in, and then what it'll let you do is it'll let you crop the image a little bit. So this has got our heads cut off a little bit, but there we go. All right, I help entrepreneurs build and scale their small business. Come hang out. Come hang out with us. Something like that. Um, you know, put whatever is, is true about your business. Put something fun, interesting. Um, if you wanted to, you can put emojis in. Uh, you can go to Emojipedia. Emojipedia, I think. Yeah, Emojipedia. And you could do a uh, smile face. And then, okay, so let's do a smiling face with sunglasses, and I'll copy this, and then I can put that there as well. Just helps it to stand out a little bit, gives it a nice kind of look to it, and there we go. So we have all of that good to go, and then I'm going to click on confirm. So for the likes campaign, I usually keep my ad shorter, keep it nice and short. You know, it says Lisa Crockett Entrepreneur, thumbs up, confirm. And once you put your billing info in here, it's going to go into review. I'm not going to do that right now, but it's going to go into review, and it will say in review, and then once it is approved, it will start running right away. So that's your likes campaign. That's your click-by-click -click how to set up a likes campaign. Again, if you're brand new to Facebook, or even if you've had a Facebook fan page up for you know a few months and you haven't really done much with it yet, I highly recommend running a likes campaign. Just spend yourself 50 bucks, get some likes on your page, and that will help. Uh, ultimately, that will help your sort of status with Facebook ads and um, just gain a little trust. It shows them that you're wanting to build an audience and um, gain some traction and use their platform how they want you to, which is building community. So hopefully that helps. All right, welcome back. What we're going to talk about now is what's called the Facebook pixel because we're going to try to create a conversion ad in Facebook. And if this is all gibberish to you right now, that's okay. Just stick with me. We'll take notes and, and try to, you know, if you have to watch this over again, uh, watch it over one more time. So, okay. So here we go. Um, we're going to create something called the Facebook pixel. And if you're in your ads manager or if you're in your business manager, what you want to do is up here at the top left, you're going to click up here on ads manager. And if you don't know how to get to this page, what you do is you type in business.facebook.com slash ads manager. So business.facebook.com slash ads manager. This will bring you to something like this page, or it'll probably look a little more like this. And then from there, you click up here in the top left, and then you're going to click on pixels. So a Facebook pixel is a little strip of code that goes into your sales funnel and will actually track the people as they go through your sales funnel so you can segment them out. So here's what that would look like. So first things first is you click this green create a pixel, little button down there, and you can actually just leave the pixel name. That's totally fine. You can just leave that as one's pixel for right now. If you need to go rename it later, that's okay. For the sake of simplicity, we're just going to create this one pixel right now. Okay, so once this pops up, you're going to select a setup method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on manually install the code yourself, and we're going to scroll down to number two, where it says copy the entire pixel and paste it in the website header. You're going to click this, and as soon as you click into that little box, it copies all of this code. I recommend if you use Google Chrome that you use the Facebook extension pixel, the Facebook pixel extension. So Facebook pixel extension, <clears throat> and this is for Chrome. So 
If you Google search Facebook Pixel extension, and this is what you're looking for, the Facebook Pixel helper. So what it does is it puts a little, a little uh, thing here up at the top of your um, Chrome browser, and it lets you know that your Facebook Pixel is working correctly. So you can read through how that works and everything. If you need help with that, just ask your coach. Um, but it'll put a little thing on your Chrome browser, and then when you go to your actual website, it will light up green on that, showing that the Pixel has been installed properly. All right, now once I have my Pixel copied, I'm going to come into uh, my Cheetah Builder or really whatever website builder you're using, okay? So if you're using um, Pixel Perfect or if you're using a different software company, look, that's fine. Uh, you're going to come into, uh, I'm just going to give the example here in Cheetah to kind of show you, but this exists in any company and any site builder, okay? So if you're having issues with this or you're not able to figure it out, just remember, go straight to their support, whatever company you're working with, just go straight to their support. You don't need to post in this group saying you can't figure it out or you're dying, okay? Your business owner, you'll figure it out. Go to their support, say, hey, look, I'm trying to paste in the Facebook Pixel code. I can't I can't find it. Can you help me? Or better yet, type into YouTube, you know, uh, Pixel Perfect Facebook Pixel installation, and, and there's going to be a video that'll pop up probably, or Cheetah, or whatever. But um, <clears throat> so here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight into um, one of my funnels, and uh, let's see, let's do this one here. And the first thing you're going to do is go to site settings. This is actually really easy. So you're just going to scroll down right here, go to script settings, and oh, look, Facebook Pixel script. And just paste in your script, scroll down, and click save. Now we're going to test this. So after I've done that, then what I want to do is I actually want to just look at my site. Okay. So I'm going to click over here, go to website. And then if I click on the Facebook Pixel script up here and it pops down, you can see that the Pixel script is installed and it's working. All right, now we're going to do one other thing on the thank you page as well. Okay, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to settings. And you can see there is a page head scripts. All right, now we're going to do one other thing in Facebook. We're going to put in a lead pixel. All right, so... Uh, the, the purpose of the lead pixel is uh, it, it creates an event. So when somebody comes to um, this page here, this is our capture page, right? Now, if they give us their first name and their email, that to us is a lead. They gave us their information. They want us to follow up. So then by the time that they get over here to the thank you page, all right, if they, if they land on this page, this is a lead. They entered their name and email to get here, right? So we're going to put a lead tracking pixel on this page so that it'll shoot back to Facebook and say, hey, this person is a lead. And what that'll do for you is when you run Facebook ads, it'll be able to track every single person who goes through your funnel and it will give you an accurate cost per lead. All right. So under the page head scripts, we're going to grab our Facebook, or we're going to grab our lead tracking pixel. So after you've grabbed the base code, you'll click continue. And then right here, you'll see it says use Facebook's event setup tool. Do not do that. Okay. Don't do, you can do it, but don't do that right now. Uh, you're going to hit manually add event code. And then it's going to pop up with this whole thing. And you're not actually going to see lead here for the first time. So just, just click on these categories. And look, this page changes from time to time. Facebook is always iterating and changing. So if something looks a little different, just make sure you're finding the lead event somewhere. Okay. So real estate, okay. Real estate. And there it is. So what it's doing here is it's just, it's putting these in categories of what it what would be likely, likely. So if you were in education, these are more likely outcomes. So you have a lead tracking pixel here under education or under real estate, either of those will work fine. And all you're going to do is come down here and you're going to find this script and click copy to clipboard. And you're going to come back over here to the page head scripts. This is on your thank you page. This is really important. This only goes on your thank you page. And you're going to hit paste. That's all you're going to do. You're going to click on save. All right. Now, when I come to the thank you page and I hit this, and then I hit uh, go to website page. And then if I click up here on the Facebook pixel, boom, it works. So now every single time that we set up uh, a Facebook ad with the conversion event of lead, and if you don't know what that means yet, that's okay, we'll get there, then this is going to trigger back that this person is a lead, and it'll help Facebook optimize your ads to get lower lead costs. Okay, so that's really the whole point and the whole goal of this thing. All right, greetings and welcome to this video. This is one of my favorite topics. It's on ad copy. And we're going to talk about how to write an incredible converting ad for Facebook. And really, you can apply this to just about anything. You could you could literally put this exact ad into an email for solo ad or something like that. But here's, here's the gist of what I want to get into. I'm going to show you and share with you uh, one of my exact ads. And I'm going to share with you exactly why it works so well. I have put this out on Facebook and run thousands of dollars to it. I have converted people to various affiliate offers with it. And it absolutely, it, 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 typically when I'm running it, it gets me anywhere from about 85 cents to $1.25 per lead. So extraordinarily cheap leads, but I'm not sacrificing in the quality of the lead because my ad is so good. And typically this ad will convert with about a 10 for a relevancy score as well. If you're not familiar with relevancy score, that's okay. But it just means all that that means is, uh, is simply that it's getting the highest level of engagement possible on Facebook when I run this ad. So it's an incredible ad and it took me a little, it took me some time to write and perfect. And I'm going to walk you through every single line of that ad and why I put certain things in there. And I, this, this could be one of the best videos you ever watch online. I know that that's a little bit of a bold claim, but I want you to just go through this training and pause as long as we go. And I want you to take as many notes as you can. And here's the thing. If you go and put up this exact ad, if you're the type of person who comes through and, and tries to just replicate an ad and, and go do it for yourself, the exact same ad that I put out here for you, it's not going to work. I promise you that because behind this ad, I also have uh, a video and other things that help tie everything together, which is why it works so well. So this is only one piece, right? But the one piece gets me ton a ton of attention and a ton of engagement. So get out a notepad or pull open the notes app on your, on your computer or your laptop, or whatever you're using, make sure that you are taking notes and maybe watch this thing two or three times. Because I, if there's anything that I've studied over the last few years, I have, I have studied I don't even know. I probably spent 
tens of dollars, I don't know how many dollars, I, I guess I can't really document it, but if there's one thing that I have spent hours and hours and hours and hours and tons of my own cash on, it is learning ad copy, period. And it's the one skill set that can apply to virtually everything that you do in your marketing. It, it applies to video scripts, it applies to sales letters, it applies to email, it applies to ad creation, everything. So this is one skill that can really pay for you. So make sure that you watch this. So let's dive into the ad right now. All right, and here is the beginning of the ad. Now, a couple things to note about the ad, it's pretty long. It's over a thousand words, which is a pretty long read, but here's the, here's the gist of it. The gist of this ad is that it catches people's attention right from the get-go and the engagement and the read, the engagement level. I know that people are reading this because the, the engagement or the relevancy score is at a 10. And that means what Facebook's gonna do is it's going to literally, it's gonna give this ad to a bunch more people at a cheaper cost because it's performing so well. Okay, so it is. It gets just an incredible amount of attention that way. So let's let's just do a, a quick read through of this ad, and I'll stop at certain points and and just kind of give you insights on why I say certain things the way I do, why I do certain things in the ad. So we start out by saying the clock said 3:52 a.m. I woke up with sweaty palms and shooting pain in my chest. I could tell right away something was seriously wrong. All right, so as you're scrolling through, imagine you're on your phone, and you're scrolling through, and you see a sentence that says the clock said 3:52 a.m. All right, so what happens at 3:52 a.m. When somebody's waking up with a shooting pain in their chest, and by the way, this whole story is real. I'm not fabricating anything about this story whatsoever. So I woke up, I still remember the night, I remember the feeling, I remember I, I had had those pains a few days before and didn't think much of it, and that night it was like, okay, this is, this is, um, this is more serious than I, than I thought. And so I nudged, my wife, I nudged Catherine, my wife, awake, hey, I'm not sure what's going on, but my chest is killing me and I think I need to go to the hospital. Wherever you can use dialogue in your ads, if you can ever use dialogue, do it. Even if it's just you silently thinking to yourself, right? So if I wanted to put, if, let's just say it was just me laying in bed by myself, I would say, I wondered, I wondered to myself, Hey Matt, this doesn't seem normal. Or hey Matt, this seems worse than it did yesterday. Or hey Matt, I think this is very serious. We gotta get to the hospital. You know, something like that. You can put you can put that in quotes. And dialogue is one of the biggest players when it comes to getting inside of somebody's brain and allowing. It, what it does is it removes the psychological barrier um, of selling. Essentially, when someone reads dialogue, they don't feel like they're being sold. Right? Rather, they they literally their brain is processing this as if they're looking through the shades, looking through the blinds, curtains and looking in on my life, right? And that's the best possible way to sell something to somebody. I'm usually the type of person who just keeps my mouth shut and suffers through it, but the pain kept getting worse, so I had to say something. Anyway, 20 minutes later, and I'm in the hospital. I'm in the emergency room at Littleton Adventist Hospital. We just moved to Denver a couple months back. What am I doing here? I'm saying, so I use this word anyway. It, it kind of fast forwards, right? This is just my way of saying it. You could say, you literally say the word fast forward. But 20 minutes later, I'm in the emergency room. I don't say, notice how I don't, in this paragraph, I don't just say, I ended up going to the hospital. Notice the level of detail. This is the hospital I was at. I just moved to Denver a couple months back, right? The detail, people are wrapped in the story. That's why this is called a story ad. The reality of the situation didn't really sink in until the EKG test, until they started the EKG test and put the little sticky things all over my chest. And again, notice how I'm just talking as if, as if I'm talking to a friend or a buddy of mine or something, or a cousin, right? That's how this should feel. This should not feel formal. Put the little sticky things all over my chest. I didn't go Google search. I still don't know what they're called. I didn't go Google search what they're called. I just said, this is what people are going to know from TV or movies. They put the little sticky things all over my chest, right? This is... This is almost hypnotic. People are really locked into the story at this point. I looked over at Catherine as she gripped my hand and the tears welling up in her eyes made me feel the gravity of it all. The next few minutes seemed like hours. I remember the doc's words clearly here, a more dialogue, right? You've got so much stress and anxiety with your move and having to find new jobs, not to mention you're newly married. You've got a lot to worry about and your body is literally shutting down. Our new jobs paid well, but were extremely stressful and involved really long hours. Typically I was putting in 50, 60 hour work weeks and one week I put in a company record 84 hours, okay? 84 hours. Now here's, here's one little tidbit and make sure that you follow this. I am targeting, because I worked a little bit in management, and that's a little bit more my style of avatar. I'm targeting people who work long hours. So in Facebook, I go in and I target people who are founders, CEOs. I target people who are managers, upper management, and I target those people. Because those people work long hours. They have a regular heartbeats because they're so stressed out. They, this speaks directly to my avatar, right? And if you're broke and barely have any money and you don't, this isn't your story, well, then put in your story and target those people on Facebook, right? Okay, the jobs are demanding. And, and let's say you work, just one more note on that. Let's say you work you know, 12 hour days in a warehouse, well, go find warehouse employees, right? What are big, you know, manufacturing warehouses? You can go actually target employees of and find big manufacturing companies. So the jobs were demanding. We kept finding ourselves living paycheck to paycheck. And I was endlessly frustrated by having so much of my life dictated by my work. It got to me. It was in that hospital bed. I realized if I didn't do something, if I wasn't the agent of change in my life, I would live my entire life with this lingering sense that I wasn't doing what I was put on earth to do. I would go on living with a soft yet certain voice in my head, reminding me day after day that I'm not truly happy in life. I just couldn't stomach that. Now, Remember back from part two, when we went through the story brand framework from building a story brand. In that, we talked about, you have to always unpack what it would be like if failure happened, right? If the worst happened, what would it look like? And so I unpack what exactly that would feel like exactly in this ad, right? I couldn't stomach that. So after that horrific trip to the hospital, I went on a fever search online for some sort of, for some way to start my own company or work from home. I had no idea what I was looking for or who to trust. This is one of the most powerful lines in all of ad copy. And one night I was randomly scrolling through Facebook in bed and found a short, weird video. And actually, I'm just going to change this parentheses. There we go. 
and it talked about how I could create my own business online from my laptop in virtually no time at all. I was pretty skeptical, duh. Now notice how I, I'm a little bit playful in my ads. This is kind of how I am, right? And again, I'm speaking to, to smart people, management types, CEOs. Okay, you can create a business online from your laptop in no time at all. Okay, whatever. So I, I speak right to their objection. I was pretty skeptical, duh, who wouldn't be? But after just a few minutes, I realized my life was about to take a huge turn and it did, okay? Fast forward to today. I'm typing this right now at 10.45 a.m. on a lazy Thursday morning. Not long ago, like most people in the world, I was stuck at work playing slave to the nine to five without any real freedom to live life on my own terms, but not anymore. Now that my income is no longer tied to my location, in the last 12 months, I've traveled to Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Japan, Guatemala, and Thailand, and hit my first cruise with some friends too. And Kat and I are heading to Italy in five days. Guess we can't get enough. Why does any of this matter? Well, for instance, take our most recent trip to Thailand. We spent two weeks there and our vacation was filled with nights in a romantic treehouse bungalow Nights in a romantic treehouse bungalow on the beach, feeding elephants at an elephant sanctuary, mind-blowing authentic Thai food, her favorite cuisine in the world, snorkeling in crystal clear turquoise water, and lounging on white sand beaches beside some of the most awe-inspiring limestone cliffs on earth. Notice how I don't just say, we just went to Thailand and it was awesome. Like, dig into how much detail there is here, right? We didn't just go snorkeling. We snorkeled in crystal clear turquoise waters, right? We lounged on white sand beaches beside some of the most awe-inspiring limestone cliffs on earth. They're, I, they're insane, right? Feeding elephants at an ethical elephant sanctuary, right? Romantic treehouse bungalow. So the level of detail here is what captures people. It brings them in and it keeps them in the story. Wow, this is incredible, right? And here's the thing. If this is not your lifestyle, if it, here's, here's the objection I get a lot. Well, I haven't, I haven't done this. I haven't gone to Thailand. I haven't gone to Italy. Here's what you do instead, okay? And after this part, right, when you say my, my life took a huge turn, and it did, you can say fast forward today. Right now, as, I'm as I started to type this, I was just planning my first trip to Italy. And I'm looking up plane tickets right now to go. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen, you know, 12 months from now if everything goes as planned. Right? And I also, in the next five years, I'm going to head to Thailand. I'm going to travel to Guatemala to a coffee farm. I'm going to travel to, you know, Hawaii. I've always wanted to go to Hawaii and I've just never been able to make it happen. But ever since watching this video, my dreams have opened up and I've realized it's time to do the things that I've always wanted to do. You see what I mean? You don't have to have the plane tickets booked. You don't have to have any of that stuff, right? This whole story can just be about how your mind got completely flipped by learning that, be, that online marketing or, or even just that online business is a thing for normal human beings, right? See how powerful that is? The entire time we were there, my online business was working for me around the clock, 24 seven. And you can just say, because here's the thing. I know that while I'm in Italy, I'm not going to have to worry about, I'm not going to have to worry about paid time off. I'm not going to have to worry about any of that stuff because my online business, it's going to be working for me every single day, every single hour of every single day. I didn't do an ounce of work while I was in Thailand, but my business was working for me every second of every day. The really cool part, we were so broke when we got married. This is true. We couldn't even afford a honeymoon. We just stayed one night in a hotel and then it was back to the normal nine to five grind. If I'm brutally honest, for me, not being able to give the love of my life or dream honeymoon felt pretty emasculating. Okay. How many times in an ad do you read the word emasculating, right? You read a lot of, a lot of flashy ad copy. You read a bunch of, um, you know, uh, ad copy that's cute and funny, but how often do you, this is my brand by the way. So if this isn't your brand. It's fine. But my brand is just like, Hey, let's drop the act. Let's quit playing around and let's just be freaking real with each other for a second here. This was a real moment in my ad copy. And a lot of people message me after reading the ad and they're like, Phew. That was real. Like I read a lot of stuff online and that was just real. Okay. However, that all feels like a former life now. Now we can literally pack up on a moment's notice without having to worry about a boss giving us some time off or having PTO saved up to travel. Anyway, more important than any of that stuff, I feel like a new person. Between buying our first home together and finally putting an end to the 60-hour work weeks, I've never been more happy, optimistic, and carefree than I am in this very moment. I'll be frank. I don't own a Lamborghini or Ferrari. I don't have a $3 million mansion, none of that stuff. I believe the end goal is happiness and the full enjoyment of life, and that's what I'm going after. Not to mention, my marriage and friendships are flourishing in a way that I've never experienced in my life before. Most couples begin to lose the passion and romance as their marriage progresses, but six years in, Catherine and I are at an all-time high of our relationship. This lifestyle is only possible because of that one short video I happened to watch still kind of boggles my mind. So at this point in my journey, I'm hoping to give back to others by showing exactly how I did it. And here's the cool part. I'd like to share the exact same video with you right now if you're willing to give it a full watch. Deal? All you have to do is click or tap the learn more button next to my photo and I'll share it with you right away. See you soon, Matt. Okay. So, and then usually for my headline, I would do something like, I still can't believe it. Watch the short video here. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to capture as much engagement as humanly possible. And this is, I've heard this called by a few people um, online. It's, it's called what's known as like a Trojan horse ad, which means that I'm, I'm coming across as just a very like human, like I'm coming across as a human being, not as like a, a business that's trying to push an ad on somebody. And so that's why my relevancy scores are so high is because my page name is just Matt Heltzel. It's just my name. And then for all my photos, my best performing photos are just photos of my wife and I. <laughs> it's literally, a, it's a selfie style photo. It's not a, a portrait photo. It's not like somebody stood there and took a photo of me. So if you're, if you're going to use a photo of yourself, just literally hold your iPhone or Android camera out as far as you can hold it, point it at you and snap a photo. That's what you should be doing because those photos are what people are looking for on Facebook. When they see those photos, it always performs better. I'm not joking you. I, I coached a guy named Todd recently and Todd was getting about six dollar six between six and sixteen dollar leads on facebook and i told him one thing change the photo the photos were him in front of some random castle and it was kind of hard to see him and then it was one stock photo um and then all i told him was hey do you have like a selfie style photo of you and your kids or you and your daughter or something or you and your wife and he he, snapped, he had he's like yeah i have one selfie photo that she took actually of us at like a dinner party and they're just kind of sitting at a table we put that up and, and he started getting leads for less than a dollar per lead and eventually it went up to about two dollars per lead but still 
see the difference there, right? So play around with photos in your ad, but with the ad copy, you'll notice how it's just a very crystal clear call to action. And and my story, my avatar, my brand is just, it's let's get out of this whole like playing with the, the, the Lambo and the Ferrari and the mansion and all that crap. And let's get to happiness, right? Let's enjoy life, whatever that looks like for you, right? And that's that's my whole brand. That's my whole video after this. That's everything. Not to mention my marriage and friendships are flourishing, right? So many managers, CEOs, business owners, they don't have this. And really they, they start to get to a place in their business and in their business life where they realize that this is so important, right? So I go into the, the friendships, the relationships, the marriage, everything. And it's it's all because of this short video. If you remember back to the framework, you always need a guide. Well, here's what I'm saying to them. I'm the guide and here's the roadmap. Here's the blueprint. It's in this short video. This short video is exactly what you need to see. So at this point in my journey, I'm hoping to give back to others by showing exactly how I did it. And here's the cool part. Right now, I'd like to share the exact same thing with you if you're willing to give it a full watch. Deal? All you have to do is click or tap the learn more button next to my photo and I'll share it right away. See you soon. So my story, my brand, how I go about this is I am, I'm coming in as if I'm just a real human and lo and behold, at the end of all of this, they find out that it's actually an ad and it works really well. I get incredibly low cost per click. I get incredibly, incredibly low cost per lead because these are all, most of my $1.15 leads are United States only, which typically are, are some of the highest cost leads. These are all US leads. I'm not rigging the system by, you know, um, targeting you know, third world countries or something, or, you know, targeting worldwide or anything like that. This is US based leads. So these are good lead costs. And I will say this as well. Um, if you do write this kind of a story, ad, just one note on targeting. If you do this kind of story, ad, what you want to make sure is that your targeting is dialed in to an audience that will actually respond to this. Okay. So if your, if your audience targeting is super broad, this kind of ad is also a little bit broad. So you might end up getting the attention of a lot of people who are curious, but then don't really want to follow through and actually click and purchase. So just be just be careful of that, right? You want to make sure that you're targeting, if you're targeting for something like legendary or something like that, um, just make sure that your targeting is locked and loaded and dialed in 100%. Because if, if you are fully dialed in and locked in, then this type of broad thing will work really well for you. If you're targeting maybe something super broad, like entrepreneurship, and has like, you know, 300,000 people or 300 million people or whatever, um, Sometimes what will happen is that the audience who reads this is not really predisp predisposed to respond to this type of ad or this type of business. And so um, you have lower conversion rates in terms of you get a bunch of leads, but you don't get conversions. That's where the targeting piece of that comes in. So just so just be wary of that. And uh, we have other, you know, in the Marketers Club, we have a bunch of, of videos that you can watch on Facebook ads. So make sure to go through that as well um, and, and look around our other trainings. I mean, this isn't supposed to be a full blown training on uh, all things Facebook ads, even though this, this could be, I guess. Um, make sure to go through the other trainings as well, because it, it's not as if there's just 100% right or wrong. This is one way of doing it that I've proven works, you know, from the very get go of getting, you know, really cheap and expensive leads all the way through to, um, purchasers, you know, of, a, a basically a $50 plus price point. So, um, it, it works. So, um, if you have any questions, you can always uh, message or uh, send it, send us an email. Um, and if you need help writing this type of thing, or if you're not sure, you know, how to go about it, or you did it, uh, we do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you would like a marketing coach to go through this with you, uh, we do offer a few different uh, packages of one-on-one -on -one coaching. And, you know, if you're new or you're getting going or whatever, I highly recommend that. I've done thousands of one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching like that in the marketing space. And I can't tell you, it, the people who go through that are usually light years ahead of everybody else. And it's a great way to get ahead. So that being said, I will see you on the next video. All right, so at this point, you should have your Facebook fan page created. You should have your pixel installed on your funnel. And now what we want to do is start running what's called a conversion campaign. And a conversion campaign is really the way that we send um, new potential leads through your sales funnel. You start collecting leads. Uh, you begin building kind of your uh, email list and stuff like that. So uh, this is where we put people through and try to acquire new customers, which is ultimately where you need to get to. So uh, let me make this slightly bigger. <clears throat> okay, so just to start, let's go into your ads manager, okay? So if you need to get there, you can go to business.facebook.com slash ads manager, business.facebook.com slash ads manager, and just make sure you're in the same ad account that we set up the pixel, because if you're in a different ad account, that will not work properly. So first thing you wanna do is click create ad, okay? And I already had something um, that I was working on, and so I'm gonna click on start over. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna do is to create a new campaign, and we're gonna do a conversions campaign. So under conversions, what we're gonna name this, let's just say that we're going to do an ebook offer. So let's just, campaign name will be ebook offer. That's gonna be our front end offer. So your ad account should already be set up. This whole page you likely will not even see because you did this on your likes campaign. Under ad set name, typically, just like the likes campaign, I do interest, age, and country. So I will just leave that as is. And then under the conversion event, you're gonna click here and it's gonna give you lead. So it'll say lead, number one's pixel. That is what you're going to click. And that, would, that should be there because in the previous video where we talked about the pixel, we installed that and got that going properly. Okay, so down here, just depending on who you're gonna target, you know, the type of person you're gonna target, everything like that, um, you're going to select, typically I won't go beneath 25 years old, but let's just say, you know, as a general rule, if you're 50 years old, I would go somewhere between 35 and 65 plus or something like that. Give yourself kind of a 15 year window. Um, obviously if you're a little younger, 25, I mean, maybe do 21 to 40 or something like that. Um, but ultimately, here's, here's my strategy in the very beginning. When you're just getting going on a conversions campaign, I do 25 to 65 plus and I just launch it out to everybody, and then you can come back and actually track your numbers and track exactly how everything's performing. So if we go here, gender all, um, 
And then usually what I'll do is English, I'll do, or language, I'll do English all. If you're marketing this to a different language, obviously put the language in there. Um, for the countries or locations that you want to target, if you're doing uh, location-based targeting, let's say you're doing an event, you can type in specific addresses if you, if you want to get that specific. Um, let's say like 1000 South Broadway and uh, let's see, like Boise, Idaho. I'm just making something up. But you can type in exact addresses and then set the radius to let's say five miles if you want to get really, really targeted. But outside of that, what you can do is you can just do countries, United States, you can do United Kingdom. So just select countries that are, you know, number one, if you have offers of $100, $1,000, $5,000, if you have stuff like that, then number one, the really important piece to this is um, making sure you're targeting countries that are going to have plenty of people who can pay that price. So just keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to detailed targeting, first things first, uncheck expand interest. Um, in every test that I've ever done over the years, that has always increased my cost per lead. So um, I always have that turned off. And uh, I've also talked with many industry experts, uh, for instance, from Digital Marketer. They have also found the same thing. So uh, just food for thought there. Uh, now we go to uh, demographics, interest, behavior. So let's say we're targeting, um, let's say we're targeting a clothing line towards moms, and it's kind of like cheesy mom T-shirts or something like that. What I would do is I would type in moms, and maybe I would do stay-at-home moms, or maybe I would do, let's see. Um, moms of high school kids or something like that. Um, Facebook is adjusting some of their demographic targeting, so let's see. Um, so we could do like dance moms or something like that. Um, so you're gonna basically target based on that kind of thing. So for instance, let's say I'm giving away an ebook offer towards uh, entrepreneurs. I'm gonna type in, let's try small business owners. Okay, so let's say small business owner, this is people who list themselves as small business owners on Facebook. There's 39 million people. Sure, let's try it out. So here's here's a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, typically after I type in one of these, I usually want to have a potential reach of over 500,000 people. That helps keep my cost per lead a little bit lower. Um, now, the other thing here is in the beginning when we're going to split test all of these, you only want to have one interest in here unless they're really, really similar. For instance, if I'm going to do small business owners, maybe I'll combine small business owners and this also this demographic of small business owners because it says that they're going to be... Um, uh, individuals who are likely to be a small business owner. So um, Facebook is going to uh, remove these coming soon, so um, just keep that in mind. Um, so if they're very, 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 very similar, you can potentially do more, but I like to keep them separated just because it, it really, from from this perspective, it really helps when we split test so we can tell which ones are working and which ones aren't for your individual offers. So, Okay, so I'm going to hide this message. All right, now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do edit placements. Oh, and by the way, one other thing on this detailed targeting. If you want some more um, suggestions, the cool thing is you can click suggestions here, um, and then that way, you know, job titles, self-employed, right? So if you want to get some more suggestions, you can also do that as well. Um, okay, so when we come down here to edit placements, I recommend in the beginning just keeping all devices, and then I usually just launch my ads. If you're just doing Facebook, I usually just uncheck everything except Facebook feeds, and this is what it'll look like right here. So I uncheck everything else except Facebook feeds, and then as I go down, I am still at a 7.3 million reach, so that's plenty of people. My ad cost should be pretty low. And then I usually do, in the very beginning, about a $5 daily budget for my ad set. And I'll show you why, because we're going to test multiple different ad sets. So we will spend more than $5. It's just, um, yeah. So I leave all of this the same. I click Continue. And then the ad name up here, I click Advanced Options, and I leave it an ad set name just like that. And then there we go. Okay. So... Now that I have my Facebook page here selected, I have the ad set name. I'm just typically, I do single image, but if you have videos or anything like that, you can use videos as well. And then I'm just gonna grab a photo here. The big thing to remember with photos is just making sure that the resolution on it is big enough and it looks good. Okay, so scrolling down, I can hide this and text, I'm going to use my story ad. So let me grab that. All right, so I grabbed my story ad here and then I'm gonna put in for my headline. I've just used this headline quite a few times, so I usually put something like this. And then for I'll go to Show Advanced Options here and paste in my little newsfeed link description. And then for my website URL, I'm going to go over to my uh, Cheetah site builder, and I'm just going to grab whatever your opt-in page link is. That's the link that you want to grab. Okay, so what you can do is just over here hit Go to Website. And whatever the URL is at the very top of your um, page, you're just going to click that and you're going to paste it in. Okay, so you'll just go to the top and into the URL bar, copy that, and then paste it into your Facebook ad. It's pretty simple. All right, so I got my whole story out here. It's pretty long, um, and I usually like to put like an emoji in here before, you know. So I'm using uh, complicated and confusing. So I might put like a, a confused or mad emoji before starting an online business. Complicated, but um, this is generally how the ad will look. And so this is good enough for now, and that's definitely good enough to get us going. So I'm going to click confirm and. Give me one second, I'm gonna enter this info. All right, so I am publishing it, and now my campaign is published. So let me refresh this. All right, so now it's in review, and because I don't actually want this to run, I'm just gonna turn it off. Um, but you'll just leave yours on, and so now we have our campaign. If I click on campaign, it takes me to my ad set. The ad set, again, is where all of our targeting and everything like that is. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click edit on the ad set, and I'll go to advanced options here, and just do a quick rename. That will kind of refresh 
the name, or should. Let's see, let's make sure my interests are here. Yeah, small business owners. It doesn't seem like it's grabbing that, so let me see here. Rename. Um, close. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be grabbing the interest name, but that's okay for, for right now. Um, let me click on that, and then here is our ad. Okay, so with a conversion campaign, here's what I typically recommend for people. I recommend that you split test about five to ten different audiences, and so that would mean having five to ten different ad sets here, and then inside of each ad set, I recommend having about three photos. So you're split testing three different photos inside of ten different ad sets. So that would be 30 total ads. Three ads times ten ad sets. So here's kind of how that process would look, at, and you, this is how you should set up a conversions campaign. You need to have this kind of split testing in place. So I'm going to duplicate the ad. So notice that I'm in ads here. Notice that I'm in ads, and I'm going to first duplicate the ad, and I'm going to create a new ad, keep everything the same. I'm just going to put in a new image. So now I'm going to put in this image here and click publish. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not even going to, not going to change anything else. Then I'm going to click close. All right, so that's a new photo. I'm going to do it one more time, and what I'm going to do is just duplicate this one more time and put in one additional photo. So let's clear the images and let's, I don't recommend doing stock photos, but let's just throw one in. And uh, let's see here, sure. I never recommend doing stock photos, but just for the sake of example, I'm making this quick, I will just throw it in there and click publish. So I usually recommend these are more selfie style photos, like the first two that I had that are actually you. Uh, those just tend to perform a lot better. So, all right, now that we have our three different photos in here, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to add sets and I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to create nine copies, okay? So it's in the original campaign, and I'm going to make nine copies of this ad set. So and then I'm just going to click Publish and Close, so all of them get published out. All right, so these are now all published. And this first one here, for some reason, the name's not quite working perfectly, so um, I'm going to manually update this one, the name. All right, and then click Close, so that's updated now. Um, now with these other ones, what you're going to do, and notice we're in Add Sets, you're going to come in, and you're going to click Edit, and Advanced Options, and see this has all this stuff. So I'm gonna now scroll down, and all we're gonna change in the ad sets is just the interests, okay? So just the interests are the only thing that we're gonna change. So I'm gonna remove small business owners, and now let's try entrepreneurship. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see, let's see, 207 million people. All right, great, so that gives me 15 million people, and I'm gonna try entrepreneurship. So once I select that, I will go to the very top, click Advanced Options, and click on Rename, and then Publish. So, and then I'll click Close, and now you can see I have an ad set that's targeting entrepreneurship. All right, so you're gonna go through all 10 of these and edit them, go down, remove small business owners, or if you want, just click Suggestions, and let's see, scroll down, scroll down, let's see, um, I'm gonna try home business, sure. And then I'll remove small business owners. All right, so home business, that's 320,000. That's big enough, it's not huge, but it's big enough. So these are people who are interested in, and have like pages related to that. So then what I'll do is I will, again, scroll up, click advanced options, and rename. And that will bring in, and, and the reason we're doing that is just because what we wanna have happen is we wanna be able to tell when our stats start coming in what interests are performing best. So this column right here where it says cost per result is gonna show us what our cost is for each of these different interests per new lead that we're getting. So it helps you track your results and actually keep a really good track of how to measure your results. Now, when we go into, like, if I click on, on uh, entrepreneurship here, you'll see that the ads in here, their names have not updated. So one thing I recommend, after you have done all of these ad sets and all the names are here and all the interests are updated, then what I recommend doing is click this select all and go click ads for 10 ad sets up here. And this is gonna pull up every single ad, okay? And this is how you evaluate which ads are working and which aren't. Now initially, because you're spending $5 a day on all of these, you're gonna spend $50 a day, but you're really only gonna do that for four or five days. And that's how long it's gonna take you to get a pretty good split test in. So I recommend doing that for about five days. Then what you do, you're in ads for 10 ad sets, just check this checkbox here and you'll click on edit. And then you're gonna to go to advanced options and you want this to say ad set name and then you're gonna click on rename. So it's gonna rename all of these ads, okay? going to rename all of your ads so that that way you can see which ads are inside of which ad sets. And that'll help us determine. So then we'll, typically when we're when we're tracking the results, what we'll do is we'll click cost per result here and it'll show us $1, $3, $5, $8, $12, that kind of thing. And that way we can actually track the, the results as they're coming in. And so we can turn off all of the ones that are more expensive and then you only run the top 5% of ads that are performing at a really great cost. Okay. And then from there you can determine there's certain interests that are, you know, perform really well. Um, if you have a full blown sales page set up, then, then one thing that you're going to want to add uh, as an event is purchases. So rather than just lead results, you would want to add a custom conversion that's purchases and how much is that worth? And then you can track every single piece of your whole funnel. All right. So everybody, what we're, what we're first going to do is we're going to go in to her ads manager. So if you're not familiar with ads manager, it's essentially where in Facebook ads, uh, you can promote stuff, right? So if I have a Shopify store and I sell t-shirts or if I have a, um, uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter what I have to sell, anything, I can, I can manage my ads. So this is, um, I believe, this would be, yes, this is her Facebook business page, fan page, right? Correct. So um, this, is, this is what she has set up to start. Um, well, look at this last post. She was, she was at the, uh, the, the mastermind 
And you can just see here a small little group of people just sitting, hanging out and masterminding about ads and strategies and how to run Facebook and how to get your, get more views on YouTube, right? She's got 600 likes on this page, right? And she's, she's putting out, slowly dripping out content to these people. Now to turn up the, turn up the heat a little bit, you can go into what we're going to do is click up here in the top, right? We're going to go to manage ads and we're going to get right into it. Okay. So no fluffy stuff here today. We're just going to get right into it. This, is this the one that you're running ads from? Well, I, I did my likes campaign from that, but um, I think it really should be from, from the market to millions account. But yeah, that one, the first one, not the sec, not market two. So if you've already run ads on the other one, let's stick with that one. Oh, okay. Cause it's got a little seasoning to the, to the ads account. So okay. we'll stick with that. And there's really not a big difference. Um, a lot of people have different theories on that. There's not really any real difference. They function the exact same. So it's not a big deal. Um, Okay, cool. So if, if we're here in the ads manager, then um, this month for the month of May. All right. So what we're going to do in order to create an ad now, let's, let's just back up for a quick second. And, um, and let me also just explain your sales funnel. So that would probably, I think it's actually this, I would guess. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Guys, so, so essentially in a nutshell, is this where we're going to send them? Uh, oh, the ads? Uh, yeah. yeah, I think so. Cool. So yeah. in a nutshell, everybody, there's, there's going to be a, a few pieces to the sales funnel process, right? So stick with me here. The first piece is what we call uh, an ad, right? Or, or content, content or an ad. So you might have YouTube content or you might have blog content or you might go on Facebook and place an ad. Okay. Second piece is you have a landing page, a capture page, a lead capture page. Look at this right now. That's what this is on the screen. This is a lead capture page. I'm capturing their information. Now the cool part is, is when I enter my information on the screen, it's connected to her autoresponder. She has like 30 plus emails that are going to go out one after the other. Right. And so the people who come through here, who read her story to, uh, who read her story, who enter their name and email are going to get emails from her for over a month and one per day, every single day to follow up. Right. Most sales happen between the fifth and 12th contact online. So there's, there's this very real thing that happens in email marketing where when you get a lead, you need to follow up with those leads and this is how you do it. Right. So then if I get instant access here, what it's going to do, it's going to take us to a bridge page. Now this is what's called a bridge page funnel. All right. So what she did is she actually has a video. So this is connecting the dots, right. Between her ad and her landing page with whatever she's going to offer which is your bridge page. Okay. So she's, she's out on her ranch. She's got her horses and this is just playing a little slow because we're doing screen share and we have a lot of bandwidth issue right now. But, um, so you guys can see this video that she's got. And then if she wants to get them to start their journey, she gets, she's got a little bit of uh, a little bio kind of thing down below. And then you can click, yes, show me the video. And they're going to jump right over to the 15 day challenge with Dave Sharp. All right. So this is where she's then collecting sales on the back end of things. All right. Um, now Jane, just one thing is probably go in on that bridge page and I would change that to marketers club just because that free challenge aspect is oh, right. eventually. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So the first stage of getting traffic, this is, this is the process of getting traffic, getting people targeted people to a page, right? To a sales funnel where you can then capitalize and make an ROI. This is the first step. So we're going to create a little ad. All right. So I'm going to show you how to do this right now. We're actually going to place her ad and get it live on this webinar. Okay. So there's a bunch of different campaigns in Facebook ads and I have training in the back office on this, but there's a bunch of different types of campaigns, for instance, and, and follow this because there's awareness, there's consideration and there's conversion. These are the different categories, right? So um, awareness, consideration, and conversion. This means cold, warm, and hot, right? Awareness is I have no clue who you are. Consideration is, oh, I heard of you, or I may have heard of you, and I might be more interested in what you've got to tell me now. And then conversion ad is a hot, right? It's like you're asking for the sale kind of thing, right? Now, the way that we structure this and make this function, it makes the most sense to do a conversion ad here, even though we're really focusing more on uh, reach and lead generation, the conversion ad is going to make the most sense for driving leads to a lead capture page. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a conversion campaign, all right. And we're just going to name this, um, I'm going to call it MC52019. That way we know what day we launched it. We know we're going to Marketers Club. Okay. So create AB split test. Nope. Just going to leave it. We can do that on our own. Optimize budget across ad sets. Just going to leave that alone too. Okay. There's no right or wrong here. It's just, I've tested quite a bit of this and I haven't really seen much good come from doing those. So for me, at least it, I'm just not going to do it here. Do, if you want to, in your own marketing, I'm speaking to Jane, I'm speaking to everybody in your own marketing. If you want to test that, you can, it's not a big deal. Generally with a lot of marketing, there's not a right or a wrong or a yes or a no. It's a test and try and see. Okay. All right. Now in the ad set, now we, now we've moved on from the campaign to the second category, which is the ad set. Okay. So imagine that the campaign itself is a filing cabinet, right? It's, it's a filing cabinet. That's going to store all your audiences, all your ads, everything. So inside of this campaign, we're going to have ad sets, which are like the file folders, right? That when you pull out a filing cabinet and there's all those folders inside of it. Okay. Those are ad sets. And then the paper, the actual individual pieces of paper that go into the folders, that's our ad. That's our identity, the format, the, the pictures you'll actually see. It's the creative. All right. So now on this, um, I'm going to install one thing for you real quick, which is the Facebook. And if you're taking notes here, this is a really important extension to put into Chrome. Facebook pixel extension for Chrome. Now what this is, is it'll allow you to, it's a Facebook pixel helper is what it's called. But essentially what it'll do is it will allow you to see if your um, Facebook pixel is installed or not. So we're going to add this as an extension. 
We'll let it load. No, we don't need that. Okay. All right, so I'll close this out now. Now you can see up here, right here, Facebook Pixel Helper, right? So we don't have a Facebook Pixel on that one. But if I go back, let's see if we've got it on here. Oh, baby, we have the Pixel, right? However, notice this and take note, the lead Pixel is installed on this page. This isn't the page we want that installed on. We want that installed on the next page. So now we're going to run over to ClickFunnels and fix this real quick. This is why we do this. So you guys can see the little, the little techie hiccups and things that come up along the way to make sure you get all these pieces right. Now, why did I not want – somebody on your – give me a hand raise if you've, if you've placed Facebook ads before. Has anybody on here placed Facebook ads? Are you all pretty new to this process? Anybody? Literally nobody has placed a Facebook ad. Okay, somebody has. <laughs> okay, we got a couple. Brittany has. Why would I – for those of you who have, why would I not want the lead pixel on this page? Why, wouldn't I, why would I not place a lead pixel on this page? And what a lead pixel is, is when somebody hits the page, it sends back to Facebook and says, hey, you got a new lead. The reason I wouldn't do that on this page is because this is the first page they get to. They're not a lead yet, right? They're not a lead quite yet because they, it's the squeeze page. Exactly. Brad got it. Gail got it. Yeah. They haven't opted in yet. Exactly right. So what, literally what we're going to do here is we're going to hop into ClickFunnels where this, this is where her sales funnel was made. And we're going to go right into um, the, the bridge funnel here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make this little correction. So I'm going to go to edit page and see if it's, if it's, um, let me see if it's on the lead page. Okay. So the lead pixels on both of them. So let's see if it's in here, if it's in this tracking code here. Okay. It's not. So I know where it is then. So if it's not there, we'll go back here into settings and it's going to be right here. All right. So we have our head tracking code. Now this is all done correctly. This is done right. All right, but I'm assuming in somewhere in here we have something that is a lead indicator or something to that effect. I don't actually see that, so I have no idea where this is now. Okay, so this is good. We are going to, we're going to figure it out, but I don't know where it is because generally it would be right here. So you're watching live as I'm like, you know, this is, this is your guys' life is this like techie nightmare stuff, right, sometimes. So, so here's, let me just show you what I'm looking at. I'm looking right here where it says track page view. So that's the event that it's tracking for Facebook, right? It's just page view. However, when I go here, somehow, some way, somewhere, it's shooting a lead pixel and page view, right? Now, generally, if it's, if it's shooting that lead pixel, it would be somewhere in here. So it would be somewhere in this coding in this, it would say lead somewhere in this pixel, right? So you've done that part right so far, but somewhere this is getting us mixed up. So let's go to the thank you page. Let's edit the thank you page and see. Jane, I'm curious, do you, do you have an inkling of where that is or how that got? Don't, don't have a clue. I mean, I just followed your instructions, you know, months ago and haven't thought about it since. Cool. All right, I just so, it, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's the lead pixel, right? This is, this is what I was looking for on the other one, was this lead pixel. So this is all done correctly, but somehow it's showing up on the opt-in page as well. Let me make sure that, um, let, me, let me go to it from my computer. Interesting. So on my computer, it's not showing up, so I think what we might have an issue of is, um, on your computer, I think the page might be cached. It's called caching. Yeah. So let me, let me preview this page, and I bet, it, I bet it won't show up here. Let me see. There we go, see that? Mm -hmm. So it's always good to double check, and it's always good to look, but we're actually good to go. For some reason, on your browser here, it's... That's, and that's why I don't use Chrome too much, because it was doing all kinds of messed up things to me. So right. I just use Internet Explorer. Okay. okay. So it's, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but sometimes that will, that will mess up. Um, there, there's things that Internet Explorer messes up. There can also be things that... <laughs> now, uh, with Facebook Pixel, here's the thing. I think what, what happened here, I'm just going to clarify. I think what happened is you, you took the Pixel. Remember when you said, I think we should do it from that other account? Mm -hmm. I think you took the pixel from that account, that other ad account, and put it on this page. So we're going to have to change that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Barely. So, <laughs> I'll show you. Because each ad account, you have three of them. Each one has a different pixel. Okay. So did I spell this right? Yes. Okay. So we're going to create a new pixel for this one. Uh, I just had a question come through that says, do I need a page view pixel to show in both landing page and bridge page? Yes, you do. But it will be the same pixel. So um, after you create the pixel, you'll click set up pixel now. And you'll click manually install the pixel code yourself. And then you're going to scroll down here to number two and copy this pixel. So all you're going to do, CK, the, the, so Chao Fong is the person who asked this question. You go to settings for your funnel. And you just we're just going to replace this code here. We're going to select all. And we're going to paste in the new code. All right? So now the, the pixel that's on this uh, funnel is the exact pixel for the ad account that we're actually going to be using. And that's all we really have to change. Okay? So I'm going to click on continue. Um, I have a question here. Um, I'm just getting a little echo, Jane, so I'm going to mute you, and I think you can unmute yourself whenever you want to speak. All right, so we've got it. It's set up. It's good to go. And now, remember, we're using a lead 
event. So I'm going to type in lead here and I'm going to click on it. Got it? So there we go. So now it's going to track leads because we've never, we haven't actually done it. We haven't actually done anything. You're going to see a red dot. So if you want that red dot to go away, click on verify pixel. All right. So I'm going to click on manually install the pixel code yourself. And if I would have scrolled down even further, I can send test traffic. All right, so we'll make sure that this shows up up here. It says that there's a two and it's green. So then I'll close this window. Click continue. And then I'll close this and it doesn't look like it did anything. So, <laughs> okay, so let's do this again. Let's, let's make sure that this works. Maybe we're just getting a little bit of a glitch. It could just be Google Chrome being weird or whatever. Because we do have it installed. It's good to go. Everything's fine. Let's scroll down, scroll down. Oh, okay, here. So it still says no activity. Look at what Facebook says. If the status is still no activity after 20 minutes. So this might take 20 minutes to flip green. Got it? That's a new little feature. Um, so Brad, uh, yeah, so what it's going to do, Brad, is it's going to show us how many leads we're generating in Facebook ads. If I don't track this, right, if I don't track this lead pixel here, then what's going to happen is Facebook's algorithm, as we place ads, tracks over a seven-day click. So, so what they're doing is over the span of a week, their algorithm is essentially optimizing for conversions, for leads. But if Facebook's pixel can't look and see which people are becoming leads, then they can't optimize and find more people like them. So your costs will go up over time or stay around the same, as opposed to if you have this conversion pixel like this, your costs slowly go down because they're finding the same people. They're finding more similar people. It's their advanced, or it's their, it's their artificial intelligence. It's AI, right? Not necessarily a lookalike, right? It'll do it before you even get into lookalikes. Like, yeah, lookalike is one thing, but it'll, it'll start to do essentially that on its own. It optimizes itself. Okay, so we have our conversion. We have our lead, lead pixel, okay? So we're going to go down now to, and I'm going to just skip all this stuff. You don't need this stuff right now, okay? But I'm going to come down here to audience. Now, this is define who you want to see your ads. This is super important, all right? Um, it, it, side note, if you have a Shopify store, um, you, you're, you're going to want to go into Shopify, and they actually have a plugin for Facebook Pixel, and it'll pixel your entire site. It'll track uh, the, the amount of time that people spend on certain items. So if you have a Shopify store and you're selling clothing, you install the Facebook, uh, there's, there's plugins. It'll, it'll do all of this pixely stuff for you. And you can track everybody who's been on a certain product for five seconds or 30 seconds or 60 seconds. So you can track if people have been looking at your products for longer than a minute, and then you can retarget those people with ads to buy, right? Super powerful. Okay. So we have audience here. All right. So audience wise, look, you know, I'm not saying you're really old, but I am saying 18 year olds probably aren't going to resonate with your story, right? Here, let me unmute you, right? Correct. Yeah. Don't mind 18 year olds. And I'm not marketing to 67 year olds. Uh, it's just, look, when it comes down to audience, you're going to want to find people in your age range. Maybe people have been through similar things or uh, are interested in similar things that you are, right? Okay. So, so Nathan's 18 years old. Nathan, you're not, you probably aren't going to do a lot of marketing to, if you're marketing yourself, like you and your brand, probably not to like 72 year olds. I mean, sure they might buy, right. But you're going to want to market to people who are going to really resonate with your story. And you growing up on Snapchat and Instagram is not really the background that, you know, a 72 year old has, right. So maybe they can buy, but you'll lower your cost for each buyer if you can nail down exactly who it is that you're targeting. So the custom audience is we're going to, we can leave this blank for right now because we don't have enough traffic to really dial that piece in. All right. So, so one big thing here, location wise, I always like to change the location to people who live in this location rather than just everyone in this location. If there's people traveling from like other countries or whatever, what I'm looking for is my target demographic is a person who would actually live in one of these locations, live in one of these places, right? Okay, so what can I do in terms of targeting people around the world, right? So when I'm doing targeting on Facebook, you can literally type in the world, the word worldwide, okay? You don't wanna do this, but you can, and you can target 2.1 billion people. So that's a thing you can do if you wanted to target, if you want your ads to show up to the entire world, Okay. Um, if we're going to target 2.1 billion people, and I know that that's absurd, but just stick with me for a second. Um, it's probably going to take us 210,000 days to do that because on average, we're going to get between 2.7 and 17,000 people, right? So 210,000 divided by 365, it would take you 575 years to, to hit the whole world, right? So okay, probably, not great. probably not a great option, probably not going to happen, right? It's pretty unrealistic, but also it's just too broad, everybody, right? So think about how big and broad the world is, right? There's, there's people who are on Android phones in the middle of the desert in Africa um, who just, I mean, literally, like, they don't have a dime to their name. They're walking six miles to get fresh water. So if I want to sell them, a, 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 like, a $1,000 course on Facebook or a 500 or even a $30 marketer's club, do you really think that that's money well spent on advertising? Probably not, right? So who are we going to target? In this case, we'll be, we need to find people with a little bit of money at least, right? I mean, at least some measure of like maybe credit or money in, in, in hand or whatever, right? So, I mean, you can go to, you know, United States, Canada. I mean, look, you can target, you know, we just had a guy at our mastermind who's from Tanzania, right? Paid a lot of money to be at Florida flying there. He's like, you know, traveling all over the world. We had uh, a couple ladies from the Netherlands, right? So I'm not saying you just need to target, you know, US, Canada, Australia, whatever. 
I mean, you can get a little bit more broad, but just look, when you're getting started, this is kind of a good, like US Canada makes up a lot of people who respond to our ads. It just is. It's more familiar, it's more known, okay? So for right now, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Is that cool? And we can always change it, okay? All right, so now let's move on to the age. So with the age, like let's, I would say probably 45 is like where I would set this at the minimum. Um, in general, in general, um, that's actually the best in terms of cost. A lot of times the best cost anyway, even outside of your age. Like even if you were 38, I would still probably say that would be a good, like good range. Makes sense. And then, um, I would probably say like 60 as their max thoughts. Well, I not 65. We can go to 65. Sure. Okay. Cool. So it's just not that old. I, I run into a lot of people who are that age who are like just getting into internet stuff and really it's like rocking their world. So I know they're out there. Mm -hmm. Totally. I mean, they're everywhere. Okay. So now. If we're going to target um, um, Canada and the U.S., generally, like people are going to be English-speaking people, so you can literally leave the language part blank. If you're out there and you're going to advertise to, I mean, Italy and Belgium and uh, Indonesia, and I mean, if you're if you're marketing to countries, yes, Brittany, that's the reason. Um, if you're marketing to countries that like don't speak English as a normal everyday language, you're going to want to go right here and go and select English, and you can select English all, right? So right now, so far, we have 94 million people to market to. Not bad, right? Now, here's the other thing. Do we want to narrow this down by gender? Do we want to just launch this to women? Do we want it to be women and men? I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe what if we did women and men, and then as I progress, then we can start narrowing things down. Yep. Even more. So, so as we run ads, in your back office in Facebook, it's going to tell you your cost for each lead for a male and the cost for each lead for a female. So it might be 82 cents per lead for a female. It might be a dollar and 47 cents for a male, or it might be $6 for a male. And then you'd be like, oh my gosh, why would I advertise? Yeah. That? Yeah. And why is that? What, what, what determines that cost? Uh, your story, ad photos, right? I mean, if you get like, if you get a, a lady who's like advertising herself in a bikini on a beach, right? Her, her ad costs and, and whatever for males goes way down, right? All the guys are just like, well, what's going on here? You know? And so they're right. all, they flood to this cause it's, you know, clickbait. So it's, it's not actually all that congruent, right? It's not actually really great. Yeah. It's kind of misleading a little. So, okay. So we're going to leave the English blank. We're just going to delete that, leave that blank. Um, now we're going to go down to here, which is detailed targeting. This is some of the most important stuff in Facebook ads is right here. So when we're talking targeting, I want everybody to pay super close attention. Some of the best traffic online comes from Google search search, meaning somebody types in, um, how do I uh, start an online business? How do I start a Shopify store? How do I start drop shipping? How do I start making money on the internet? Something like that, right? They're looking to figure out, I want to create a real business. I want to set up an LLC. I want to set up a real business. And I want to make uh, an income from this thing called the internet, right? So Facebook does not allow that, right? Facebook is interruption marketing. However, if you can get the targeting right, then you can essentially do just that. You can turn Facebook into a search platform for the most part and still get your cost really, really low, okay? All right, so if we're going into detailed targeting, everybody. So if I go to browse here, okay, and I go to demographics, or I go to interests, or I go to behaviors, there's a whole massive selection of things that I can target here, right? So this is, this is very much based around entrepreneurship. So let me show you one. If I was to just target entrepreneurship, the size of that audience is 313 million people, right? So it's a pretty big, broad audience, right, of entrepreneurs or people who like something to do with entrepreneurship. Now, here would be, here would be something a little bit more powerful and targeted than that would be somebody like Amy Porterfield. Are you familiar with her? I'm not actually. Okay, so Amy Porterfield is wildly famous in affiliate marketing, network marketing, digital marketing space, has a, has a podcast everybody loves, and it is just has, a, has like a cult-like following. But she specifically, if somebody clicks like on Amy Porterfield, there's almost a certainty that they are in affiliate marketing, which is kind of like the realm you're going for, right? Mm -hmm. See the difference there? Entrepreneurship yeah. versus a singular person. So let's do, let's just try out Amy Porterfield and let's just, let's just, smash that audience and see what happens, right? Okay, now, just for everybody who's watching, there's this little checkbox, okay? Now, there's no right or wrong to this. Again, not everything that I'm showing you is right or wrong. It's just you test it and try it and get a result. That's how marketing works. Um, so there's this little checkbox. I'll tell you from my perspective, every time I use this stupid checkbox, my costs are higher. I don't know why that is. And the whole goal of that little checkbox is to increase conversions and lower costs, right? It makes zero sense that every time I've tested it, it, it's like, it's just a, I don't know, my costs go up. It makes no sense. So I always uncheck that. Because, look, if I'm targeting Amy Porterfield, I don't want them diving into other audiences that they conceive of or kind of like that. Maybe they start digging in audiences around, like, drop shipping and just weird stuff that, I, you know, like, people might not really be, I don't know, might not be my target, right? Um, good question, CK. So, um, the Amy Porterfield thing, um, yes, it's specific to the average Jane a little bit, but it's, it's also just generic entrepreneurs, right? Um, she's going to pull in a lot of females who are trying to start their own business, and I think, personally, I think those people are going to be the perfect audience for this, or, or close. I could be wrong. Look, I could be wrong. It might not. It might not work. I don't know. But I've done this enough times to know it, it probably will. Okay? So... 
Now, look, I can add more of these. I can say, I can say, uh, Amy Porterfield and, and, um, and let's say digital marketing. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere, right? So they have to like Amy Porterfield and like digital marketing or have an interest in digital marketing or affiliate marketing. Now, one quick thing for everybody who's watching, notice these little gray things over here to the right. This is super important. This is somebody, job titles, who has typed into Facebook, my job title is an affiliate marketer. This is somebody who said their employer is affiliate marketer, right? That's actually somebody who's probably taking this decent, ser decently seriously. Interest just means that they liked something remotely that has to do with affiliate marketing. So that's a little more broad, right? But I'm okay using that because we're, we're now getting really detailed. We're saying affiliate, Amy Porterfield is our first umbrella. Underneath her umbrella, I don't want all two, point, you know, two million of those people. I want people who have indicated they liked her and also indicated they like affiliate marketing or digital marketing or something like that, right? It's an even more targeted thing. So now we're down to about 460,000 people. This is now we're starting to dial it in. We're starting to really dial this in and get the people, only the people that we really want. So we got Amy Porterfield. We have affiliate marketing. Now what we can do is click suggestions. Okay. Maybe we want people who are interested in, in um, let's say passive income. Probably, right? Okay. Good luck. Um, you know, online advertising and social media marketing, that can be people who, who mostly are like social media content creators or influencers. I don't know. That might not be exactly what we're looking for. I don't know. So where we're at right now, I think we have, <clears throat> I think we have enough. We have 490,000 people. The first category is people who like Amy Porterfield or have shown interest and these other things, which, which is plays more into like a marketing and kind of lifestyle design feel to it. Right. So I'm crafting, I'm honing in my audience. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to leave that. We're going to scroll down. Uh, Charles, there's no right or wrong on the audience size to target. Um, there just, there really isn't just get it. Cause different target markets are going to, are going to be bigger or smaller. So, you know, if I'm in the coffee industry and I'm in specialty coffee industry, it's going to be a smaller. And so I'm looking more in like 25 to 50,000 also depends on uh, how many countries you're advertising us to, right? So if it's worldwide. So here, I mean, half a million people, it's still a little broad, but we've really narrowed it down that they have to be sort of a, a fan of hers, which, which indicates to me that they're interested in finding a way to create a digital business. And they're interested. They've also taken action on some, liking something else too. There's no right or wrong on that. I mean, I wouldn't go under, let's say, like 50,000 people just because then you're getting really small and, and you might want to niche that far down, but that's only going to last you like a month in ads or two months in ads because the audience is so small. All right, so we're going to scroll down and we're going to do, you can leave this as automatic placements, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit edit placements and at least in this initial go. All right, now let's go there again. No right or wrong answer to this, guys, right? So we have all of these different placements. These, the, do you, uh, Jane, do you have an Instagram account connected to this or no? Yes. Okay, so we can also place it on Instagram, which is awesome. So, um, so right now we can leave all of these. I mean, one thing is I'm not going to leave it in the marketplace because that's where people buy and sell stuff. I'm not going to put it in suggested videos because we're going to do an image ad, uh, but we can leave it everywhere else. We'll, we'll take off in-stream videos. Um, okay. And we're going to take off stories as well. We're just going to put this in the feed for people because the stories aspect based on our image is going to look a little different and you'd want to size it a little different too. Okay. So just take a, take a mental note of the ones that we selected here. Again, if you want to put them on those things, go for it. Not a big deal, right? Okay, and then we'll just leave it on everything else. A majority of these are going to come from Facebook feeds, like almost all of them, all our leads, basically, okay? All right, so I scroll down, scroll down. All right, so now we're going to set our daily budget. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this on 10. You can come back and change this later if you want. I, I recommend not changing the budget frequently. Like, don't be changing this every day. Maybe every three days is okay. Um, Okay. So, and if I scroll down conversion, we're just going to leave all of this. We can just leave it all. We don't have to touch it. Anything. Okay. We're just going to set it to $10 a day, call it a day. All right. All right. So now I'm going to click continue. All right. So add name MC 0519 2019. That did not work. Okay. There we go. All right. And I'm going to scroll down and we're going to select, make sure you select the right page. Oops. So this one, right? Correct. And then we'll scroll down oops, to the Instagram page, Instagram account. Okay, we don't have an Instagram account attached it. You're out of it. Oh, we did. That's okay. <laughs> we'll just leave it. Okay. That's weird. So if you don't have that, essentially this is a new option. I didn't know they did this, but um, it's going to show up on Instagram with the same name as your Facebook page and a little image. So it'll just it'll be fine. You don't even need Instagram. But it'll show up on Instagram. So that's cool. All right, so we'll just do a single image ad. Okay, so we're going to go down. Do you have the image readily available? Uh, um, you could go on my, click on there, I guess, and go, we can extrapolate one from somewhere. Yeah. Um, shoot, that's, you want to scroll down a little bit? Hold on one second. Okay. Let's see if you have can one. You take it straight, can you take it right from Facebook? Yeah. By any chance? Yeah. Okay. Because there's probably enough images on Facebook. I don't have a lot um, uploaded to this computer yet because it's brand new. Okay. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, this is a bunch of other junk. Okay. I mean, there's one down here. Could use that one. Oops. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, that one right there. Not that one. Hang on. One sec. Hold on. Okay. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Okay. Not that one. Right. Okay. Let's see how this looks. Uh, Chuck Wong, so you, on the platform aspect, you don't need an Instagram account in order to place an ad on Instagram from Facebook. So that's all I was trying to say there. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, this, so it's kind of dark. Can we just pick something off of Facebook? Yeah, I think that was off Facebook. No, that was that was my that was off my computer stuff. No, this is that was <laughs> from your account. And that's the only options I give so all the pictures I've put on Facebook? I think, I, I don't know. Like, this that's is all. Crazy. And then you also have ones that are from your page. So yeah, yeah. That wouldn't be, those wouldn't have any good pictures. Oh, oh, maybe there's still some loading. Okay, so wait, wait, hang on. Hang on, everybody, hang on. <laughs> Okay, well, just for the sake of creation, let's just leave okay. it. Because literally, once we place this ad, we can pause it and then switch it. Okay. So that'll be totally fine. So if we scroll down then, I'm going to turn off ad blocker for this site because that's why the, the thing on the right is not showing up, the preview. Okay. So our website URL, remember, is this. Okay, that's our landing page. And I have your ad. I love how it's 1,400 words and you say condensed. <laughs> because the old one was like 2,200 words. I know, I'm just messing. Yeah, All right, so here's, here's our ad. Now she wrote a story ad based on my training in the back office. And um, okay, so let me scroll up. Okay, so now we're at the top of this ad. Uh, too far. So now I'm gonna do, I, so I'm gonna scan through just the spacing of this stuff. Great. Generally, guys, when you're typing in an ad on Facebook, you want two sentences, one to two sentences, and then a full line space. Oops. Like right in the beginning, we just want like these line spaces. The more, the, it gives the brain almost a little bit of a mental, um, it's, it's been proven to increase readership. It gives the brain uh, gaps and it allows the, the reader to move through the content quicker. When it's all smushed together like that, um, when it's all smushed together, the brain has a harder time keeping track of where it was at. It gets lost on and on. Hey, Matt. Yeah. I have a question about that, too, because I noticed in yours, every once in a while, you just have a full sentence bold. And is there an art to bolding sentences as you go? Yeah, you, on Facebook, you really can't even, you can't bold. Okay. Um, there are some softwares that have kind of hacked that a little bit, but generally, no. I mean, there's, you, you can't bold. Um, right. and, but what, what's the logic for that, though, when you're doing it elsewhere? Oh, just, just because the more you can kind of break up, right, if, if there's just a slot of text that just looks all the same, generally... Um, people's eyes are going to look at it and just be like, oh, that's long. But if you can have uh, in bold the things that are most uh, intriguing or the things that are most like, whoa, um, or ca grab somebody's attention, you might get someone's attention who otherwise uh, right. look at it and disappear. I honestly think this, this image might just crush. I really do. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a great ad photo. Usually the ones that you think aren't the best ad photos are the best ad photos. Ain't no accounting for taste. <laughs> Can you say what? Can you go back up to those uh, bullets number one and number two that are numbered there on number two. Got it. Uh, after that first sentence, then make a break right at, well on number two at the end of the first sentence, which says, I do not have the time or money to be sick. Got it. And then that next sentence really, I don't know, I thought it could be broken apart from that number two. Oh, I see. Yeah. I get what you're saying. There we go. That. Cool. Okay, we're almost there. Just told everybody to bring a snack and a drink. <laughs> so, um, this, just so you know, this will be the longest ad I've ever seen placed on Facebook. Okay. Hey, so you're setting records for something. Yeah, spending a lot of money. <laughs> I think this will, um, 
I think this will, I think this will do really well because long form, longer ad copy like this, that's written well, which yours is usually does better than short. I mean, not all, not always, but um, you know, this is, this is good long form stuff that generally will really wrap people in. So maybe not everybody reads this whole thing, but the people who do, right? Mine was like 1100 words first. The people who do read it um, are really invested. So it's really powerful because the quality of lead um, is just higher. Okay. Well, we'll find out, won't we? I mean, we'll definitely find out. I mean, it take a little, little bit of time, but the other thing, here's the other reason that a lot of this works really well is because the longer Facebook prices your ads, like how much you pay based on the level of engagement that happens with them. So for instance, the longer that people sit on your ads, and, and have them open on their screen, the longer that the, it's, it has screen time that is your ad, the higher the, the, higher the engagement is, right? And so what most people don't realize is that um, when, when you have longer ads and you have more engagement like this, your cost for each lead usually goes down as well because your relevancy score will be higher. It's more um, engagement, more time spent on your ad, more time spent on Facebook with the app open, and that's what, they're, that's what they love. Even though you're sending them off to another page, that's not a big deal to them. They want engagement. They want people who are going to keep people around and engaged on Facebook for a long time. Okay. Oh, look, the end. <laughs> Yay. Oh, we didn't want that dig deep stuff, right? Yeah, I can't remember how we ended up. Uh, your stuff should be in there. Oh, we didn't save it. <sighs> we didn't save it? Oh, my gosh. Okay. You put in two, you know, two calls to actions of clicking the button is what you did. Yep. And you, brought, you put another sentence in between. We'll just, we'll just put one here at the bottom and that'll be fine. Skip a Jane, make it more personal. Great. Sound good? Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, the learn more button is just right here, CK, where it says call to action. It's right here. It, it'll just be there automatically. Um, What do you think? You know way more than I do, Matt. <laughs> what do you think? I'm happy with it. Yeah. You just placed your first ad. All right. Just like that. <laughs> so right here, here's the ad. It's in review. As soon as that gets going, it's going to go. You're going to start producing ad leads for you. So just for everybody here, including you, uh, the first thing I do when I hit submit on an ad is you better believe I'm going right here. I'm clicking on it. And that will take me to the ad sets. I'm gonna click on the ad set, and then I'm gonna to go to this part, which is the actual ad, right? You can see that up here. I'm gonna click on edit. This is really, really important. I'm gonna to go to ad preview, and I'm gonna do Facebook post with comments. And this is gonna pull open my actual ad as it will show to the public. All right, so this is what it's gonna look like. I mean, we scroll down, scroll down. Then it'll have the image, and then it'll have a learn more button. My, that, my stuff won't show up in there, right? In the, the JP and the, my email address? Right, correct. That's, okay. That's just because of my computer, right? Okay. It'll show up like this. Okay. Then what you're going to want to do is enter your info, right? So let's make sure this actually works, huh? Yeah. All right. So always test your funnel, everybody. Always test it. All right. Now I'm submitting. Uh-oh. Confirm your subscription. What does that mean? This is what happens when I use Chrome, though. Everything's okay. broken on Chrome. This isn't a Chrome problem. Okay. Unless it's all of the caching and stuff, but we're going to go into your Aweber, and this is a setting in Aweber for your list. Is it this one? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So we're going to go to list options and list settings. We're going to scroll down. Just kidding. We're going to go to confirmation message. <laughs> right here. See it? Um, so that, again, this is why you test, right? Yeah. Save settings. Now, when people go through that, they are not going to get this error. Right. Got me? They're not going to get that error. Now, that, that could have just been because of caching, because that didn't happen to me before. So that, that legitimately could be a thing. All right. But um, 
Yeah. So then, then what we're going to do want to do is just make certain. Let's see here. I'm just looking at my email. Bear with me, everybody. Um, Oops. Did I just do something? Sure. Yeah. Can you open Chrome again? Yep. There. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Cool. So we saved it all. So now when people go through that, they should start getting those emails. So if I go to yours and let me, I'm actually doing it on my other computer here. Okay, so I just did it. I did not get that confirmation message or anything like that. It looks great, looks perfect, right? So all good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you then under subscribers. There we go, see that right here? Mm -hmm. So that's all good to go. It's working. And Thank you. Let's see if I, I got your first email. Look at that. And the links in the email even work. Okay, so everything is working. Your, your whole funnel is working just fine. Cool? Yeah, super cool. So and you're good to go. You just click super sad. And it just runs indefinitely unless I change it and say otherwise, right? Yep, you'll log into Ads Manager, and all you got to do is, if you ever want to pause it or change anything, right? So you can go to Campaigns here mm -hmm. and just click this little blue button, and this will turn it off. It'll just pause it. Don't delete them, just pause it, right? And if you want to change your budget, you come here to Ad Sets, and then you click this little pencil and change this. And then it'll and change the daily budget. And what um, budgets do you think are more effective? Especially right. You could do $5, you could do $150. Like there's just, there's no right or wrong. The only right or wrong here is based, like 10 bucks is an okay place to start. Mm -hmm. And all you want to find out is what your cost per result is going to be. If it is $2 per lead, then generally you don't want that budget to be less than $4 per lead. Whatever your cost per result is, take that times two, and you don't want to be spending any less than that per day. Make sense? So if, if your average lead cost is $5 per lead, every lead costs you $5, mm -hmm. then take five times two, which is 10, and your daily budget right here, this number, should yeah. be at least 10. Okay, if not more. Is that if not saying? more, it can be infinitely more. But your kind of ideal, ideal is about five times. So let's say you're getting leads for a dollar per lead. Ideal budget is, is at least five times, but your bare minimum is two times. Got it? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you're going to get leads here for anywhere from 50 cents per lead to it could be up to $3 per lead, probably somewhere in that range. So you'd be, yeah. fine, you'd be fine spending like literally, if that was the case, $2 a day to $5 a day or more. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. And then do you, you start monitoring this like all, every day? Yeah. Coming in and looking at this stuff and seeing what's going on? Don't right. change anything more than once every three days. Right. I won't change anything, but you just look and see what's happening, right? You know, like, wow, what are, the, what are these leads costing? Let's check it out. Yep. Okay. Yep. And up here in the, up here, you can set the dates that you're selecting so you can see what it cost you yesterday versus today versus last week versus this week. So you can see trends, right? Start to monitor. Okay, the last three, and you're gonna have outliers. Some days you get 10 leads, some days you'll get two. If you have a day where you get 10 leads and then you get two leads, the next day don't freak out and shut everything down and lose your mind over it. You're gonna have like consistent days where it's going well, then you're gonna have days where it's just an outlier day and you get no leads. Just how it goes. Okay. Cool. And then at what point do you go, okay, we tested this, you know, long enough, let's tweak something like the length of the ad or, you know, the title or when you were going to say, let's throw in there, I'm um, writing this from a 22,000 square foot mansion. Right. You, know, you, can, you can do that right now. So you can go in here into where it says ads. Mm -hmm. You can click duplicate and then let's actually do it. So since everybody's here, we want to split test something. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to leave everything here the same. I'm just going to click duplicate. And again, for anybody who wants to rewatch this, this will be in the back office later tonight. We're going to upload it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, new title writing from 22,000 square foot mansion. So that way in our back office, we know which one this is, right? So if I go down text, I mean, I keep everything the same. See, like this is just marketing and testing. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean I would probably put two of them like that. Yeah. And now do they, um, for the split test, are, is it still the same amount of money that's running and they're just splitting it and half of them they're doing like 50% this, 50% that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Budget stays the same. Okay. If you duplicate ads, where you would start to spend more is if you start spending uh, duplicating audiences. Because if you, when you duplicate the audiences, that's where you're duplicating an ad set where your budget is set. Right. Got it. So this one is published. Now let me show you what this looks like. Yes, everybody who's watching this will be available to you in your back office uh, under Marketers Club and then you go to replace. All right. So now in our ad sets, if I click on the one ads that we have, it's going to pull open our ads. And now we got two ads. See that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can handle that. <laughs> I'm always saying like, more than that. It would just be too overwhelming to have like all these ads running at the same time. Two I can handle. Yeah, just so you get the feel of it, right? I mean, 
So let's see, it said I was getting an error. Oh, there we go, all right. So on cost per lead, on cost per lead, okay? If my cost per lead, um, columns, performance. So it's gonna give me results and cost per result. So if my cost per result, which in this case is lead, is $2, you wanna be spending at least $4 per day advertising this. If it's $1, you wanna be spending at least $2 per day. If it's uh, $5, you wanna be spending at least $10 a day on ads. This is probably gonna cost you in the range of $1 to $3 per lead. Like that's pretty standard, I've seen a lot of these, right? Um, no, she doesn't really have a 22,000 square foot home. She, her story <laughs> talks about how she was at our mastermind in Florida this past week, like we both just got back from it, and um, she's talking about that's where she was writing the ad from. So, so now we're gonna watch, and all you're gonna see is cost per result column. You're gonna see one number for the top one and one number for the bottom one. And maybe they're close, maybe that's not a big enough discrepancy in the ad to really get us much distinguishing stuff, but we'll see, who knows? You never know until you test. Got it? Got it. That was yeah. awesome. We've been, we've been, we're over time, but I think this is just a hand raised from everybody here. Was this helpful and valuable? Was this, was this good? Was this bad? Was this, did you like this? I don't know. Yeah. Can you, you guys, it is awesome. I just want to say, Matt, this is phenomenal teaching. And yes, it is in the training in uh, the back of Legendary in some package, right? And stuff, but you go through it super fast on that one, even though we can slow it down and go click by click. Today was really great, you guys, because you got real time hand-holding <laughs> personal stuff, and I just can't thank you enough, Matt, really, that's awesome. You just don't get this anywhere else, people. Yeah, yeah, you really don't. Here's the other thing, just for everybody watching, for, for anybody who's gonna see the recording and anybody watching, just so you know, here's a little tip on when you start doing this kind of stuff. The reason it's so important and we wanna bring people on like this is because I know this is just one little step for Jane to get into this comfortability mode of being in front of a crowd of people online, showing ads, showing people how to do this, and if I do something called modeling, which is what we're doing right now, then it's like, oh my gosh, that isn't that hard. If I screw something up or the technology is broken, right? People like to see when you screw up the technology. That's actually what people want to see. Oh, you mean, you know, when my Facebook pixel wasn't working, I thought I was the only one. Okay, now how do you go about fixing that stuff? That is the goal. That's the stuff people want, right? And so now next time that you're like thinking about, ooh, maybe I'll hop on a, on a call or help somebody with their funnel, it's okay if I don't have all the answers. Like, it's fine. You know what I mean? So, okay, uh, Charlotte says, I'm learning Facebook at a personal page with less than 30 friends and 90% of those people are close family. Question, um, should I start a brand new Facebook business page? Yes, you need a business page to advertise on Facebook. Uh, if you want to start one, sure, it doesn't matter. Um, if you have one that's just your name, Charlotte, just keep it. That's fine. You can have as many pages as you want, though. Um, okay, so today, now, just to set the stage for everybody who's not familiar with these calls and what we do, uh, my name's Matt. I'm kind of a lead trainer here. Um, and basically, what I do is I hop on these every Monday. And because you're part of the Marketers Club, we usually cover something to do with marketing, right? So today, and, and in typical Matt style, what we're going to do today is we're going to run through uh, kind of a, a almost flowchart type deal of how to, when you're setting up some sort of paid advertising, let's say Facebook is going to be the one that we're going to use today. Um, how do you optimize it, right? How do you test certain things? How do you know what are your benchmarks in terms of click-through rate and uh, even um, uh, cost per lead and things like that, right? So uh, a lot of times here's what happens. When you start running ads online and somebody has a training, like I have a training in our back office of how to set up ads on Facebook and Instagram, right? A lot of times what happens then is people get into those trainings, place their ads, and they come to me and say, what do I do now? Well, what do I do now? I, I got 10 leads and they cost me, you know, $40 to get 10 leads. Is that good? I don't know. Should I be getting them for less? I don't know. None of them bought anything. What do I do now? So what I want to do today is I want to walk you through a little bit of a, it's kind of a flowchart style deal, um, but just kind of walk you through, you know, exactly um, how I would do it if I was starting and I've run, man, I, I don't even know. I've run a lot of money on Facebook ads. I should go calculate. And, and in addition to that, I've helped uh, right around 500 people who are brand new to the internet and internet marketing to get ads launched on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, let's start with one presupposition though. Uh, why Facebook and Instagram? The reason I would start with Facebook and, and Instagram is because number one, Instagram is owned by Facebook. So when you log into the back office for Facebook ads, you're gonna see the option to do uh, uh, Instagram ads as well. So for me at least, that's kind of where I would start. Um, it's, it's super easy, it's efficient, um, and if you can believe it or not, still there are pockets and holes that are, that are kind of untapped that you can tap into and advertise to, and the conversions can be really, really good from Facebook and Instagram, okay? So that's why I kind of, I would start there. There's other higher level reasons that I could get into, but just for the sake of this call, I'm not going to get into that level of detail right now. Okay. So in the last couple minutes, we've had a couple people pop on. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to literally share my screen right now. What we're going to do today is we're going to walk through sort of a, a flow of how I would and how I have for tens, maybe, I don't know how, I'll just say, just so I don't stretch the truth or anything, tens of thousands of dollars worth of Facebook ads. And this is kind of the formula that I've taken to um, measure my ads and track my ads and make sure that they're performing well. Now, maybe you're watching this video, you're brand new and, and you're like, hey, I, I'm just getting started here, man. Like I'm just, I'm kind of just getting going. Whenever that happens, whenever you're in that place, what I usually recommend to people is I, I tell them one thing. I say, hey, you're going to be at this point very soon. And what you need to do is soak in as much information as possible. Take diligent notes so that if there's something that doesn't make sense, number one, you can ask me a question about it because we do Q&A at the end. Or number two, it'll make sense to you in about a month after you go through some training to teach yourself how do I run Facebook ads? How do I measure Facebook ads? Okay, you guys got that? Now, before I get into this and I get a billion questions um, from people on are these replays 
available in the back office? Yes, they are. If you log into the back office, you go to products and then you go to marketers club, you'll see that there's marketers club replays, all of them back dating back to January. Okay. And we are working on getting descriptions written for each of those videos so that you can reference and, and know what videos contain what information. Okay. So we're working on that. We don't have it quite yet. Bear with us. We're getting there. Um, but today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, if you're running Facebook ads and you're getting ready to measure and track um, measure, I can't write and track your results. Okay. Now I'm not a great drawer, but generally how I like to lay things out is to draw kind of the process. Okay. So, um, look, there's, there's a few different phases. I, I'm going to break them down into three phases. Okay. I'm gonna break them down into three phases of how I would personally uh, go through and measure. So, um, if you're keeping track, just say that there's three phases. Okay. Now the first phase and I'll go through the first phase and then I'll erase it and I'll go to the second phase. So if you want to draw this out with me, that's fine. Um, but the first phase, let's say you go out and you place a Facebook ad. Okay. You place an ad on Facebook. And uh, so you have, you know, a headline, you have a, a description, you have text, you have an image or a video, right? You have all of these things and you place the ad. Now let's say that you spend your first $100 or maybe it's not your first, I don't know, but let's just say $100 for example. You spend $100 and you get 10 leads, okay? I'm gonna use even, even easy numbers so that we can all understand what's going on here, right? And that would be a cost of $10 for each lead. We call that $10 per lead and the terminology for that would be CPL, cost per lead, okay? Hit the hand raise button in Zoom if you're all familiar with or you kind of get that terminology uh, did that make sense to where we are right now? There's a little button you can click on the zoom panel and it says raise hand or it looks like a little hand, like a palm hit that. If, if you're kind of with me so far, okay. If you're not with me at this point early on, it probably isn't going to make a lot of sense to you if we keep going. Okay. All right, cool. That was most people here. All right. Okay. So if, if we go out and place that ad, there's going to be a couple questions that we're going to be asking. Okay. And there's going to be a couple metrics initially that we're going to be looking for. Okay. So our first metric that we're going to be looking for is something called our click through rate. Okay. Write that down. Click through rate. This is our CTR, okay? Now you're building a little bit of a knowledge base for these kind of uh, analytics, these metrics, CTR. Well, now if you're interviewing somebody to run your ads and they say, well, what's your CTR? You can tell, okay? So what we're looking for is an over or under 1%, okay? 1%. What's our click-through rate? Is it over or is it under 1%, all right? If it is over, then what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at, is it over or under 3%, okay? If it is under 1%, we're going to kill, all right? <laughs> we're just gonna kill it. If you go out and place an ad and you're looking at the ad and you're looking at the statistics and you're under 1% click-through rate, meaning for every 100 people who see your ad, less than one of those people is gonna click on it, it's a really bad ad, okay? We're hoping for click-through rates 3% and well above, all right? So is it 3%? Well, if it's over this 1% mark, but it's not yet at 3%, um, then we can do a couple things, okay? So if it's under, we're gonna kill. If it is over, 3%. Awesome. Then we're going to move on. Okay. And that will be moving on to uh, another set of analytics that we'll talk about here in just a second. Okay. So if I sit down and look at my Facebook ad, I spend hundred dollars, my click through rate, which is in your Facebook ads back office. That's one of the main metrics they'll show you. It's just a column in their chart and it says click through rate thing, and it'll give you a percentage. Okay. Now if it's over 3%, you'll move on. Okay. We're going to move on to looking at different metrics. If it is under, under, Oh my God, I, I can't, I just, I can't write guys. Hang on. If it is under, 3%, okay? Then what we're gonna look at doing is uh, rewriting some ads, okay? Okay, rewriting ad copy, okay? Um, and we're gonna look into testing new audiences, okay? Testing new audiences. So if I go out and place an ad, let's say for the sake of example, I, I go out and I place an ad on Facebook and I place an ad and I'm targeting entrepreneurs, okay? My targeting, that's in the Facebook settings, you can choose who you want to target. I'm gonna target entrepreneurs, okay? So I, let me move this around on my screen just a little bit here, make more space. Okay, so if I'm targeting entrepreneurs and um, I'm getting a, let's say I'm getting a 2%, 2% click-through rate, okay? Now, it's not quite 3%, so I wanna get that click-through rate over 3%. So then what I might do is I might target small business owners, SBO, I target small business owners, I might target affiliate marketers, I might target, you name it, Tony Robbins, or something, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Raise your hand. Does that make sense? Click the hand raise button if that makes sense to you. If I am over 1%, but I'm still under 3%, I'm going to essentially duplicate my ad and just try a different audience because maybe I'm fishing in the wrong pond. Okay, you guys got that? Okay, most people got that. Okay, so, so I'm going to test out different audiences. Um, and then if that doesn't work, then what that tells me is that my ad targeting isn't the problem. Okay, what's the problem? Well, it's probably then my ad. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my ad or at the very least, here's a little tip. You know, when you log into Facebook here, let me show you, I'm going to show this on my, on my camera right here. <clears throat> so when I log into, when I log into, here's an ad that actually just came up. So when I log into Facebook, now look at my, look at my camera real quick. Okay. Here's the ad. And then here's the ad copy, right? Can you all see that? Type to me. Yes. In the comments, if you can see that type yes in the comments or the chat, if you can see that. Okay. 
So you'll notice that there's only three sentences there. And then what does it say? Continue reading, right? There's three sentences and then it says continue reading. Well, guess what? If you're getting, if you're getting less than 1% click, so there's essentially, okay, here's what it says. Here's what it says. It says, are you, are you sure you want to carry on trading time for memories? Before now, it was easy to live life thinking it was all there ever was going to be. But now you know there's a better, and then it says continue reading. So maybe rather than rewriting the whole ad, maybe you just change the first three sentences of your ad and test that. Raise your hand if that makes sense. Hit the hand raise if that makes sense. You don't have to rewrite the whole ad. You can just go in and rewrite the first three sentences. So you wouldn't actually edit the ad. What you would do is you would clone or duplicate the ad so that um, you're, not, you're not messing with the already existing statistics, okay? So, so look at my screen here real quick. If I have ad number one here and I'm getting 2%, I'm not going to edit this, okay? I will not edit this ever. What I'm going to do is I will duplicate it, okay? And I'll create ad number two, right? So that I have fresh ad statistics. You should almost never, unless you don't have very many, uh, unless you spent like, let's say $2, you should never be editing these ads. You never want to edit them because there's statistics already there built from your previous results. So how are you going to tell if you're getting better? Okay. Uh, plus Facebook's algorithm will function much better for you if you duplicate it and start fresh with new statistics. Okay. So I'll rewrite the ad copy. All right. And I'll redo that if my click through and I'll do that until I get over 3% period. End of story. I will do that until I get over 3%. If I can't get over 3%, what I'm going to do is I'm going to admit to myself that I suck at copywriting and targeting. I'm going to go type in upwork.com and I'm going to find a Facebook ad copywriter for me and I'm going to have somebody else do it for me. Okay. <laughs> Got it. At that point, you just give up. You say, Hey, you know what? This copywriting thing, I need to go find a copywriting course at some point, but until then I'm going to have somebody write me an ad to get me a 3%. Okay. Now, if all of that doesn't work, there is a final thing where you test a new photo. Okay. You can also test photos with the ads. Those are really kind of your main things that you can change and switch and adjust until you get over 3% of a click through rate. Are you guys with me so far? Type in the chat. If you're with me so far, type to me. Yes, I'm with you so far. I get it. That's my first metric is my click through rate. That's a big metric. It tells you how, uh, um, how much curiosity you're invoking so far. Benjamin's with me. Joy, happy. Hey, happy. Good to see you. Uh, Malik is with me. Mary's with me. Bruce, Deborah, John, Gyro. Uh, I don't know how to say your name. Rajagoda. Okay. Charlotte, Paul, Adrian, Laxman, Lorena, Justin. Got it. Okay. Good. Good, 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 good. Awesome. Okay. So here's the thing. That's our first metric. All right. Now I'm going to clear this out. Okay. And now what I want to do is after we get to 3%, then what? Okay. So now we hit a 3% click through rate. Now, what do we do? Okay. Now what we're going to look at is another metric called cost per click. Can anybody tell me in the chat, type to me, what, what is cost per click? What does that mean? Okay. This is also called uh, CPC. So uh, there's another lingo term for you. A lot of people will say CPC advertising, cost per click advertising. What does that mean though? Tell me what that means. Uh, it's how much for cost per click, duh. How much you're paying per click, okay? How much I pay when someone clicks my link. Now, on Facebook, they actually break it down from CPC to LCPC. So these are for links. These are just clicks in general. So let's say somebody clicks your photo. Let's say somebody clicks your uh, continue reading, right? Continue reading. Links down here is only for clicking learn more or a link in your ad copy that will actually take them to your website. So this is really the one that you want to pay attention to, okay? This is the one that we're paying attention to is links cost per click. And here's what we're looking for. We are looking for and hoping to get beneath a dollar per link click. Now, if you can get below a dollar per link click, you're doing a really dang good job. You are getting traffic at a really good clip, okay? If you can't get that, for instance, here's, here's a caveat. If you're in, let's say the fitness world, okay, fitness, and there's some other niches, but you might have to pay three to $5, okay, per link click on Facebook and Instagram. It's just because there's more, there's more competition. There's higher competition for that. Okay. So you might pay a little bit more in certain industries, but what you're looking for, ultimately what you want to optimize down to is a dollar per link click. Okay. If you can't, if the answer to $1 per link click is no, you do not. So let's say you're at a dollar 50, let's say you're at $2, whatever it is, right? If the answer is no, here's what I typically recommend for people is changing the image. Okay. If you don't get there, what I recommend is changing the image. You can also change other things like the headline. Okay. You could try an emoji in the headline part. Okay. Something like that to draw more attention to the learn more button. All right. But a lot of times for the link, click, if you change the image, it's going to capture their attention better. It's going to get them to click more. Okay. So you can also look, this is another place where you can test uh, the actual copy of the ad. You can also test um, audiences. Okay. Again, so similar things that you would have test on the cost per um, on the, on the click through rate. You can also test those on your cost per click. Okay. So those are things, but again, uh, start with the image for the, for this piece and then see if, you know, maybe you need to change the copy a little or change the audiences. And look, if you do a bunch of tests, let's say you test 10 more audiences and three more batches of ad copy. And what you keep coming back to is a dollar 80 per link click. That's okay. Got it. That's okay. There isn't a right or wrong here. 
I'm just trying to provide you with some benchmarks to start with. Am I making sense? Type to me, type to me in the chat if I'm making sense to you. Just type to me yes or you can raise your hand, that's cool too. Is this making sense so far, okay? What we're talking about with link clicks is if you have a website and you wanna get somebody to your website, then you're gonna get them to click a link in Facebook, a learn more button or something like that and get them to your website, got it? Okay, so now this is, this is um, every metric that you're gonna really be testing initially on Facebook except for one more metric, okay? One more metric. So if our, if our cost per click, our cost, cost per link click is under or less than $1, I'm just using US dollars, so if this is different for you, you can do your conversion, is under a dollar, then we're gonna be looking for our cost per lead, okay? C-P-L. Now, what I mean by this is, generally a lot of you here are looking to generate leads, okay? So this is on an opt-in page, so here's, here's how the funnel works, okay? Right here, we have an ad. This ad, when they click the button, learn more button, it's going to automatically take them to what we call an opt-in page or a landing page, okay? This is where you'll collect their name and their email. Is everybody here kind of familiar with something like this? Raise your hand, hit the, put, press the hand raise button if you're familiar with this basic format. You click learn more on Facebook ad, you jump over to a name and email page. Does this make sense to you guys? I wanna make sure, I want more engagement. It's, it, I gotta make sure that that piece makes sense because it's kind of foundational. Okay, good, got a lot of hands. Good, 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 good. Okay, so our cost per lead is whatever it costs us to get one of these uh, opt-ins for somebody to type their name and email into our box and hit submit because that's a lead. That means we got their name and we got their email and they said, I wanna learn more information about whatever it is that you're selling, tell me more. That's our cost per lead. So in our example, we said we spent $100 and we got 10 leads. So that made our cost per lead $10 CPL, okay? $10 of CPL. Now, with a cost per lead, generally guys, this can vary per industry, but generally what we're looking for in terms of a cost per lead is we're looking for right in the range of $3 or less. Three or less. If you're really good and you have a huge, just a really good offer for somebody on the front end, you could get under a dollar, okay? You could get under a dollar, but that's pretty rare, okay? It's pretty rare, but you could get under a dollar if you do a really good job and you have incredible incentives for people, all right? But your cost per lead, we're looking for $3 or less for that cost per lead. Now, again, fitness instructor, instructors, they could pay up to $20 per lead, $30 per lead, okay? Depends on the level. For instance, track with me here. If I'm asking for, let's say I send out my, my opt-in form is name, email, phone, full address, and I ask them five more questions. My cost per lead is gonna go up because I'm asking them for more detail. However, the quality of that lead is now way higher because they're more committed to the process. I want to type yes if that makes sense to you. There's different qualities of lead. There's different quality of leads. Does that make sense to everybody here? Type yes or raise your hand if that makes sense to you. Because I want that to, I, the reason I want that to be really clear is sometimes people get so sucked into getting the lowest cost leads possible, but not in every case does that actually work out. Not in every single case does that end up meaning people are going to buy. You want high quality opt-ins and leads as well. So there's kind of a balance point, right? There's kind of a balancing act, balancing game that you're doing is you want to you wanna qualify them a little bit by having them enter their name and email, but at the same time, you want to make sure that the traffic that's coming through there is actually good quality traffic and that they're not just kind of, I don't want to say loserville, but loserville, just not really good quality people or good quality human beings, okay? All right, I'll, I'll get off my high horse on that deal. But okay, so if not, if our cost per lead, if, if we've got our cost per link click, under $1 per link click, but our cost per lead is over $3 per lead, then um, tell me, tell me. I want you guys to tell me, type to me in the chat, what's going on there? If I'm just using a name and email and my expectation is, you know what, I should be able to get a $3 lead, what's, what's happening there, what's going on? Um, what, what's, what's not working, what is working, what's not working, what's going on there, tell me in the chat. What's not performing, what's not doing well? You guys tell me. Okay. Ad copy, image, there's not enough value, um, not enough people clicking, uh, congruency, interesting, okay, the headline potentially, headline, headline, okay, now let's pause for a second, because our cost per link click is under a dollar, so everything in terms of getting somebody to click, getting somebody to click is good, right, everything up until then is good, meaning the headline, the ad copy, the image, all of that stuff is good. Now somebody said something, and Happy just said it as well. There's a problem with our opt-in page, okay? There's a problem with our congruency, right? So, a couple things. We're gonna go look at our opt-in page, okay? And here's what I'll do, just, just so you're all aware. Here's exactly what I do. I pull open on the same screen my Facebook ad, and then I'll pull open my opt-in page, and I'll have them sitting open on the same screen on my computer. This is really cool. 
because then I can, I can put my eyeballs on the opt-in page and the Facebook ad at the exact same time, and I can look at them, and I can ask the question, here's the magic word, are they congruent? Write the word congruent down if you're taking notes. Because if, if what I'm saying here in my Facebook ad is not the exact same thing as what's over here on my opt-in page, does that make very much sense? Nope. People are clicking though. So just to be clear, the audience is not the problem. The audience isn't the problem. I've captivated my audience, right? But I got my audience right because my cost per link click is under a dollar. Everyone in the audience is very interested in what my ad says. But then for some reason they get on the opt-in page and it's not congruent. I'm not giving the same messaging. My messaging is wrong. Got it? Am I making sense? Type to me in the chat box if I'm making sense or not. Is this making sense? Umer, Happy, Benjamin, a lot of sense. Lorena, John, Jermel, Charlotte, all caps, yes. I love it. Adrian, Deborah. okay. So here's the thing is this piece here, if I'm over $3 per lead, I know that I got the audience. I know I captivated them. I know everything, my ad, my image, they're all kick ass. But if I'm over $3 per lead, then guess what? Something's not converting. Something's not congruent between my ad and my opt-in page. So I got to figure out what that is. The first thing that I'm going to look at, okay? So if I am over over $3 per lead, then what I want to do is I'm going to look at my headline on my opt-in page. Okay. I'm going to look at the headline on my opt-in page, right? So on an opt-in page, if I'm trying to collect name and email, generally here's, here's the things I'm going to have on that page. I'm going to have a headline, all right? I'm going to have um, a form with name and email. And sometimes that's all we have, but sometimes beneath that, I'll also have a little bit of uh, sub headline copy just beneath it to give more information. But the big elements, the big piece is this headline, okay? So here's what I would recommend to you, and, and please, this is super important, is on your Facebook ad or whatever you're advertising. This could be the same thing for Google, any advertising platform. You're going to look at your ad copy. You're going to look at your headline. And you're going to figure out a way to make this headline match almost exactly what is in your Facebook ad, all right? Does that make sense to you? That will get your cost per lead under $3 if all the other metrics are there and together, okay? Does that make sense? Type to me yes if that's making sense to you. You're going to look at that Facebook ad, you're going to see the messaging that you're giving, and you're going to match that freaking exactly in this headline. There is no need to get super creative on an opt-in page. You do not need crazy creative on an opt-in page. You don't need it. All the opt-in page is, is it's just a stepping stone. It's just a stepping stone. That's all it is. An opt-in page is just a page where somebody clicks your ad and they look at that headline, they read it, and their brain says to them, this is exactly what I came for. This is exactly why I'm here. Okay. This is exactly the reason I clicked this ad. You see what I mean? Everybody wants to get cute. Everybody wants to put these cute headlines and make a bunch of background images and videos. And then the page doesn't perform. And it's just a mess. Keep it simple. Stupid. My, my high school football coach used to always say, um, he functioned the way he would coach the team was kiss K I S S keep it simple, stupid. Okay. That's what he would always say to us. Same thing goes for advertising. You should write your ads. Like you're writing to a 10 year old. You should make everything very, very congruent. That is the most important marketing tip I can ever give you. Okay. Okay. So once that's fixed, um, does, I just have a question here. Does a $10 Facebook ad generate good leads? I don't know what that means. What do you mean by $10 Facebook ad? Is it $10 a day? Um, you can generate good leads on Facebook with any budget, any budget. You can generate leads on Facebook with $3 a day if you want. Seriously, you can spend $3 a day. Three times 30 is 90. You can generate for 90 to hundred bucks a month. You can generate consistent lead flow every single day online. No problem. Okay. No problem at all. All right. So after cost per lead, once you get that beneath a certain amount, then there's going to be more kind of, um, there's going to be, there's going to be more uh, pieces to it. Okay. There's going to be um, your, your CPA, which means cost per acquisition. Okay. Cost per acquisition, which is a really important metric in turn. And if you, I just had a couple people say they just came in late, started late. You're going to want to watch the replay. The re replay will be uploaded here in a few hours. Just log in the back office, watch the replay. You're going to want to watch this whole thing. Maybe twice cost per acquisition is what's it cost you for a new customer. Okay. What's it, what's it cost you for a new customer? I can't, I can't write, but cost for each new customer that you're acquiring. Okay. Now that is something that you can track in Facebook ads with a special pixel. We're not going to get into all that detail right now. What I wanted to get you to was this point here, cost per lead. Okay. Once you fixed and made everything congruent, you start with, now let's kind of recap the, the process of what this has looked like to get here. We started with, who can tell me in the chat, who can tell me what metric we started with as our very first metric. I want to recap this with you and I want to make sure you retain some of what we talked about. What was the first metric that we looked at? The very first one. You're correct. C T R click through rate. Got it. Bingo. Okay. And what did we want our click through rate to be a above? What did, what are we, what are we looking for that to be greater than or higher than Bruce got it. Umer got it. Mary. Good job. Saad, uh, Fadla, Deborah. Nope. Adrian, not, not one. 
Alexis, Lorena got it, Joanna got it, Happy got it. We want it to be above 3%. You got it. Okay, if it's under 1%, type to me in the chat. If it's under 1%, what's our, what are we doing? If our click-through rate is less than 1%, what do we do? What do we do? What's the word? Kill it. Yeah, sorry to use such gruesome language. <laughs> but we kill it, right? Done. Over. We're, we're done with it. We got to start over. It's a terrible ad, okay? If it's above 3%, then what are we moving on to? What's our next, next metric we're going to look for? We place our ad. We look at our stats a week later. The click-through rate, what, is, what are we looking at next? You guys got it. Who's got it? Bruce, Fadlip, John, Yana. It is CPC specifics to links, right? Specifically to links. Okay, so our CPC, which is our cost per click, cost per click, okay? So uh, what are we looking for our CPC to be above? What are we looking for in dollars, US dollars? What are we looking for? Cost per click. What are we hoping our cost per click will be? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We want this to be under what? What's our, we want it to be under a dollar. You got it, yes, one dollar, okay? We want our cost per click to be less than a dollar, okay? If, if we can't do that or we're playing in an industry, right? Um, so let's, let's industry specific, but we might be playing in an industry where that's not doable. That's, that is a potential, okay? So these are just starting benchmarks, okay? Starting benchmarks. Now, recap with me a little bit. If it is, um, if, if the cost per link click is, let's say over $1, let's say it's over a dollar, what are we gonna do? You tell me, what are we gonna do? What's gonna happen? What are we gonna try? <laughs> okay, we'll test the images. Yep, what else? Bruce, image, John, image, American currency. Not congruency yet, because we're just talking clicks right here. So not congruency yet. Headline we can change, yep. We can put in an emoji. Copy, yep. And audience, you got it. Copy and then the audience, you got it, okay. So those are different metrics that you can test, you can change, you can whatever. Who remembers, are we supposed to change the ads? Do we wanna change the existing ad or what do we wanna do to the ad? How are we going to test that? How are we gonna try something? We're never gonna change the ad, what are we gonna do? We're gonna duplicate it first. You guys got it, awesome, you guys are paying attention. We're going to duplicate the ad and try it again, okay? So for instance, if we're trying new audiences, the audiences are stored in the ad set, okay? So in Facebook ads, if you're new to this game, look in the top left of what I'm drawing up here, there are campaigns, there are ad sets, and there are ads, okay? Ads. Now if you think of Facebook like a, like a filing cabinet, your Facebook ads in general is like a filing cabinet, right? And if I pull out, um, let's say I pull out a drawer, one drawer of the filing cabinet is our campaign, okay? That's the drawer. The ad sets is like a folder, okay? A folder inside of the drawer. And then the ads are the individual sheets inside of there. So the ads are gonna have all the images, they're gonna have the headline, the ad copy, the ad sets is gonna contain your budget, it's gonna contain the audience. So if I wanna test a new audience, I'm gonna have to clone or duplicate the ad set. If I wanna just test a new headline, but I want the same audience, I'm gonna test, I'm gonna duplicate the ad itself. Okay, if you're new to Facebook ads, you haven't run Facebook ads, that's okay. Once you get into Facebook ads and you start running them, you'll figure that piece out. You'll say, oh, I remember Matt talked about the ad sets. That's where the audience goes, so this makes sense, okay? So if you're not there yet, don't get overwhelmed, don't freak out, you'll get there, okay? All right, so we can test all those other variables. What are we, um, after cost per click, what's that main next uh, metric that we're gonna be testing? What is it? Type to me in the chat, what is it? Uh, we have Lorena got it, Happy got it, Bruce got it, Alexis got it, Tyler got it, uh, not that Umar, um, Deborah got it. Mary got it, John got it, Jamel got it, it's CPL. CPL, cost per, per lead. And what are we looking for in terms of cost per lead? What are we looking for? What's our metric, what's the goal? Bruce got it, Happy got it, Saad got it. Yes, it is under $3, that's what we're looking for as our goal. Now I'd like to see under one, I'd like to see cost per leads coming in around a dollar per lead and if you do a really, really good job of telling your story and really maintaining your message. Now, if we get click through rate or cost per click down it, into the metrics that we talked about here, but our cost per lead is over $3, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna test? What are we gonna try? What's, what's the game plan for over $3 on our cost per lead? What's wrong? Type to me. Big word right there, right? We're gonna test our congruency. Yes, good job. We have pro marketers in here right now. Test the headline, we're gonna look, okay, is what I'm writing my ad about, is that actually what's showing up on my opt-in page? And if not, well, what the heck's going on, right? Now, the final piece here, when I said cost per purchase or cost per acquisition, what you're gonna be looking at there is the percentage of people who opt in and become a lead to the percentage of people who purchase. So in the same way that you would want congruency from your Facebook ad, look up here in the top right of what I'm drawing, same way that you would want congruency here to the opt-in page, you also wanna have congruency for the rest of your funnel to the point where they purchase. Doesn't matter how many steps you have, but you, you, it has to be congruent from the very first Facebook ad all the way to the end of the messaging. Does that make sense to you? Type yes if that makes sense because this is literally the most important, this is everything in marketing. I type to me yes if this makes sense. This is market, if you don't get anything else from everything that I say, this is marketing. Okay? It's not about being super cute. It's not about um, uh, these super creative. You don't have to be that kind of a marketer. You can be straightforward. Your messaging can be very to the point and you can just be congruent the whole way. So if you're an affiliate, you got to go look at the sales material for what you're selling. Or if you work for a company that's selling light bulbs or I don't know, iPad cases or covers, or if you're selling microphones, you got to know what you're selling. 
And then you have to reverse engineer and start your ads with that in mind, okay? That's what I tell people over and over and over and over again. Those are the people who win in the paid advertising platform, okay? So ultimately, if your cost per purchase is too high, now that depends on what you're selling, that depends on your metrics, but if your cost per purchase is too high, then you know that your messaging and your ads and your opt-ins, even though they're getting good rates up until that point, it's not congruent with what's going on in the back-end sales process, okay? All right, we're gonna wrap this thing up. Is that helpful for you guys? Some of you who are actually running ads, is this helpful? Type to me, like, what's one big thing you learned? Um, Fadla's got a good question. If you have questions, let me know. Uh, Mary says, great lesson, said that was good, so helpful, okay? Fadla says, how long do you wait to analyze an ad and watch the click-through rate? Good question. Usually it's about four or five days, okay? And it depends, Fadla. So let's say your budget is $5 a day, I'm gonna give it about a week. If your budget is, let's say, $15 a day, I know in about four to five days how that thing's gonna perform, okay? So I'm gonna give it a full four-day go, if I'm doing about 10 bucks a day, that's usually like, if I'm just getting started, that's where I'll start. 10 bucks a day, let's throw it out, let's see what happens. If you have a bigger one, maybe you go 100 day, maybe it's 500, maybe it's $1,000 a day. Um, but usually, you know pretty quick, if your cost per lead is, let's say it's $4 per lead, you're going to need to spend about five times that in order to know, okay? So generally, what I tell people is spend at least $15 to $20 if you're going for a cost per lead of $3, so you have a good idea of what's working and what's not, okay? Uh, Josh, you don't want to copy other people's ads. Don't copy people's ads. Don't use other people. Just you're going to learn throughout the process, if you haven't already, how to write really great ads with us. Okay. If you're a little newer to the process, that's okay. But um, learn how to write your own ads. You don't want to copy other people's ads. It's just, it doesn't work. Period. I mean, a lot of people will say, hey, you can use carbon copy all my stuff, blah, blah, blah. You can't. You need to learn that as a skill. So don't go. Basically, Josh, here's what I tell you is if you're on Facebook or Instagram and you're looking around, you get captured by an ad and it's like, whoa, that was a really great ad. Well, then store it, write it down, copy and paste it and study why was that a good ad? Right. And then go write your own ads for yourself. That's, that's what I tell people. Okay. Okay. Hopefully that was helpful information. Um, less than $10. Will it get results? It depends on if you, if you want $10 per day, um, then yes, if you're just spending $10 in grand total, 10 us dollars, then no, I mean, you might get a couple leads, but you're not going to get a bunch of purchases from 10 us dollars. Uh, Fadla says if after two days you see that your cost per lead is too high, do you have to stop it? No. So two days is nothing, right? So if everything's going pretty well, but your cost per lead is too high, let that run for an additional five to seven days because generally Facebook's algorithm is a learning algorithm. It will learn and get your costs lower based on kind of figuring out who's your ideal person, who's, who should we be sending this out to, who shouldn't we be sending this out to. It'll do some learning and get those costs down. Um, do solo ads still have a click-through rate? Uh, yeah, yeah, solo ads have a click-through rate. Generally, um, the email provider should provide you with that. I, I'm just gonna be real frank with everybody here on this call. I would, if I were you and I was ever in the game of, of doing paid advertising, if I was gonna put any money to, to advertising, there is literally not a single day out of give me a thousand days and i have to choose um facebook and instagram versus or, or google versus solo ads there's not one day in a thousand that i would ever choose to run solo ads period that's me um can you get leads quick can it go fast yep um but generally speaking there's not a single day that i would ever run a solo ad never ever 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 the only time i would run a solo ad is if i knew the person who i was buying it from and i knew it was a buyer's list meaning i got to advertise specifically to their email list full of people who have purchased a product from him before solo ads don't convert uh, most of the time, I should say there's a little caveat, but they usually won't convert. It's usually trash traffic. Even if people say it's tier one, high quality traffic, blah, blah, blah. Generally, um, no, it just doesn't convert. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on solo ads. It just doesn't work, period. And go ask, you know, you're going to see testimonials on people's page. How do you know that those are even real and authentic, right? That industry is one of the most just sketchy. Um, the data practices there are sketchy. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch solo ads with a 10 foot pole, but that's just me. That's why you come on these things and I'm constantly hammering, 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 hammering on Facebook and Instagram ads, because for the same amount of money, guess what? You get to control the branding over and over and over again. And I've coached thousands and thousands of people getting into this industry. I have, uh, I've worked closely with nine figure, eight figure, seven figure earners on the internet. Never one time, I've not a single time have I seen somebody build wealth from solo ads. Never, never build a business from solo ads. Not one single time. So if you want me to shoot straight with you, I'm shooting straight with you. I've been in this industry for 10 years. I have, I, and I'm looking at the comments right now. And all I see is, yep, they never worked for me. I literally have comments sitting right here. Yep, never worked for me. Couldn't get them to work. I've never once said that on a webinar and had somebody come back to me and say, hey, no, I made, you know, $85,000 last month with solo ads. Doesn't happen. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. And a lot of people aren't willing to say it. A lot of people aren't. I don't know why. Just doesn't work, period. It's easy. It's fast. It's quick. You can get a bunch of leads really fast. Is that really your goal? The reason that they don't make money, by the way, is this. Alexis just asked a great question. Now, look at me. I need you to be looking at me because I'm going to use my hands to talk here. If you have provider number one here, provider number two here, provider number three here, provider number four here, provider number five here, okay? You have five different solo ad vendors. They have email lists that you can essentially rent out, pay them $1,000 to run a, run a campaign to their email list, right? Generally, a lot of times what's happening is that these lists have been sold to each other. So they've run solo ads to another guy's list of solo ads, and this guy's rented his list to this guy, and this guy has sold his list over to this guy. So maybe you buy one from this guy, and the next month he sells it to this guy, and you end up running the emails because you bought from this guy the next time, you end up buying solo ads from this guy the next time. And then it's the same list that you already bought from. Like 
This happens all the time. I just last month with one of the most reputable solo ad providers, I just started doing a little digging into his support process and the way that he acquires people onto his email lists, but which by the way, he's a solo ad vendor. And I was shocked at the, at the ways that he gets people's emails onto his list. I was like, this is the, this is the spammiest thing I've ever seen. So look, and think through this final thing. Think through this. Josh, I'm not going to throw anybody by name under the bus. I will say this to you, Josh. If I were you, I would not buy solo ads from that vendor. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but here's what I would say. Um, it's recycled material. But here's the other thing. Think through this. If you want to control your brand, you want to build a brand, okay, that's long-term, long-term, okay? If you want to build a brand long-term, then you want to control the messaging and the branding from day one. Fundamentally with a solo ad, you cannot do it because you're playing on someone else's email list with who God knows what they did to get on that list. We know it's probably not a buyer's list, okay? If you start with Facebook and Instagram, if you start with Google from the first click, the first sentence, the first image, the first headline, it is all you and your branding, period. So you know exactly the quality of this lead. You know what they've heard, read, watched, everything. Then your market, you can control the buyer's experience start to finish. Get that? This is so huge. Okay, we're a little bit over time for today. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, hopefully none of you go around to buy solo ads after this. <laughs> um, but uh, let's say hey, we'll be back next Monday if you missed it or you want to rewatch. This will get put up in your back office, uh, usually in a few hours. You go to Products, Marketers Club, and you go to the replays. Okay, it's all in your back office. Um, have a great rest of your week, guys. Happy Monday. Let's rock and roll. Take it easy. See ya. Greetings and welcome back to the bootcamp. I'm pumped that you're here. And today we have uh, really a combination of, of two different uh, webinars that I did recently that are going to be crazy powerful for you. And I kind of want to introduce you to them. So what you're going to see throughout these recordings, and I have them open here on my screen, is you're going to see me walk through the congruency of Google ads and how to be congruent through advertising on Google. But um, you're going to see a live case study. And actually, my wife, is a she owns her own private practice therapy here in Phoenix. And what you're going to see is me walk you through her exact ads okay, that we placed on Google. And when we started her uh, private practice, um, this has been probably about six months ago, um, um, we we grew it we grew it um, through one of the one of the slowest points of, of the year to grow therapy practice. So um, usually people are are posting in their Facebook groups about how they can't find any clients and blah blah you know whatever complain and moan because um, they're just struggling to find clients and they don't know how to advertise. And and what we've been able to do is grow her practice right and um, and do that through Google advertising. So you're gonna watch you're gonna see my exact ads that I wrote. And you're going to be able to look inside of the actual Google ads account. Um, and this is when they were only, you know, a few weeks old. Okay. So this is when they were only really a few weeks old. Then I'll show you how we pixel her page with a Facebook pixel. All right. And run retargeting ads or how you could. And then what I'm going to do is I had a follow-up webinar that was done about four months later. This is very recent to the time of, of the bootcamp um, where I walk you through how the lifetime value works with, with placing Google ads. And then the cool part is, is I show you sort of the follow-up um, of, of the actual uh, campaign. So I walk you through projected incomes, year to date incomes, and I contrast that with the amount of money spent through our Google ads. And then I walk you through the actual customer, uh, the, the cost per acquisition to get a new client and the lifetime value so far of each client. So, so the power here in this training, it, here's what you're not going to get. What you're not going to get is a click by click. Here's how to place a Google ad. Guess what? You can go to YouTube, you can go to Google and you can figure that out. You can hop on the phone with Google and figure that out, right? You're not going to get that in these videos. What you're going to get in these videos, um, is, is a walkthrough of customer acquisition, right? And you're even going to get congruency. You're going to see my exact ads. You're going to, you're going to discover little mini secrets that you never would have thought of when it comes to placing Google ads. And it's why I do so well when I place Google ads for clients. So what you're going to don't underestimate what you're going to see in these videos, because you're going to see some really powerful tactics. I've been running Google ads since about 2009. Um, I mean, not every single day, right? But I, I've been in this game placing Google ads and making sales and growing businesses in Google ads for a really long time. I know the secrets. I know the strategy behind it. And I, I prove it to you in this exact thing by putting, I mean, it's my wife and I's money, but by putting my own money on the line, starting a new therapy private practice in one of the most difficult seasons to start one. And, and we did it successfully. She's quit her job and now is hiring on her, her first um, independent contractor and signing a lease for a, a, an office space that has four offices. Um, so to say it's been success is, is a little bit of an understatement. It's been going really well. And you're going to see me unpack things like lifetime value, congruency. I talk about, you know, bill placing it out on a billboard with a half naked woman and how conversions are going to suck because of that. Um, I mean, you're going to see it all. So if, if you want a click by click Google ads thing, my recommendation is just type in on YouTube, you know, how to place a Google ad and they'll walk you through click by click. That's not something that you need me to do. What you need me to do is walk you through the strategy of it, right? The why I say certain things, the why I type certain things. That's the power that you're going to get in these videos. Okay. So uh, enjoy. And what I'd love for you to do is type, type in the comments, your assignment for today is one or two main things that you, that you took away from this video. One or two main things that you've learned that were powerful, that impacted you. And, um, and we'll see you back here tomorrow as well. Hey, so here we go. So. Um, I am going to explain something. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about my, what my wife is doing. Um, uh, and then I'll explain a little bit about Google and how to run ads on Google. And, um, and, and then, uh, Carlos, I can see your name. That's fine. Um, I'll just explain a little bit about what I mean by running Google ads and, and what that looks like and why it's so important. All right. Um, now are, are Google ads, is there a right or a wrong platform 
for you to run ads on if you want to advertise a product or a service or let's say you're a plumber. Not really. You can run them on Facebook, Google, Instagram, YouTube. There's really no right or wrong, right? You want to choose an ad medium based on number one, your competencies, right? So if I'm just electric on video, I'm super good on video, I might go place YouTube ads, right? But also the other thing is opportunity. So your competencies and then opportunity, meaning what opportunities are there in the marketplace that you can capitalize on that have low ad costs? So here's what I mean. In about 2009, when Google AdWords was really, well, this is maybe even a little bit before that, when Google ads, meaning you can place ads on Google when people search certain things. <clears throat> when those first got started, the cost per click, now let me explain this. Let me share my screen here real quick and grab my little drawy, my little drawing tool here. Um, now watch my screen very closely, okay? Because I'm gonna explain what I mean here and I want you to catch this. So if you're out there, you're looking at cat videos on, on Facebook right now, get off the cat videos and, uh, and focus your attention. I believe strongly in, in in something called The Power of Full Engagement. And if you can see me right now, this is one of the most powerful books you'll ever read. The Power of Full Engagement. The Power of Full Engagement, all right? So this is written by, I think, Tony, uh, Jim Moore and Tony Schwartz, but it's called The Power of Full Engagement. And the whole thought process behind it is that it, when you're able to give full engagement to whatever it is that you're actually focused on, your output, your results will become exponentially higher. So for those of you who are on here who are half-assed and paying attention, whatever, that's okay, but just sign off. Just exit the webinar and quit lying to yourself and just really engage this at a full level. That's where you start to become an expert. I always tell people, don't, don't screw around with mediocrity. Mediocrity is just death in business, okay? So don't, don't play around with half-assed and coming in here and you know I'm, I'm clicking around on YouTube and I'm clicking around on Facebook and I've got my Instagram feed open on my phone down here and whatever else. Just freaking pay attention because this is gonna be really good stuff, all right? So <clears throat> when it comes to... to um, Placing ads, let's say on Google or on uh, Facebook or on Instagram. A lot of you people, a lot of people that are newer or, or kind of learning the ad game on the internet, they overcomplicate things, right? They stop using their critical thinking skills once they get online and they just think like, oh my gosh, this is so scary. I don't even know how to do this, right? Let's, let's break this down really quick and then I'll get into what Google ads are and how powerful they can be. So <clears throat> number one, okay, number one. Um, Google ads. Can somebody tell me in the chat, what is a Google ad? Cause Charlotte wants to know <laughs> what, what's a Google ad and tell me what would be the benefits of a Google ad. All right. So let's first define what, it, what actually a Google ad is, right? So if I was to open up another screen on my, on my screen that I'm sharing right here and I go to google.com and I type in a search. Okay. I type in a search, then I'm going to get some results that pop up. Right. <clears throat> okay. So if I type in, here's, I'm going to hint at, you know, my wife's practice here, right? If I type in therapist near me, right? Let's just say I went through something really traumatic. My dog just died and I want to find a therapist so I can talk to somebody about it. All right. Now what's going to happen? Type to me in the chat box. What's going to happen when I, when I go and hit, you know, essentially on Google, I hit go. What's going to happen? What, what does Google do? Tell me, type to me in the chat. Even if you don't know about Google ads, that's okay. I'm breaking down the, the Google ads platform for everybody here. Right? So Alexa says, um, <clears throat> Everybody, everybody's link related to my subject will be listed. Alexa said, um, um, a Google ad is beneficial because people search things that you're interested in. Yes, exactly. Uh, Robert says, I'll get a list. Maria says, they'll find my location first. Um, Cameron says, first few results are ads. Carol says, they'll give you search results. Um, there's gonna be ads, there's gonna be results, ads. Okay, so, so here's generally what happens, right? Number one, number two, these are ads, right? ads at the very top you'll see it it'll actually say the word ads or sponsored something like that right and then there's going to be three four five six and these are all going to be different people's websites right and what do you do when you search on google you go to google and what do you do you, you type in a little search if i type in therapist near me right it's also going to over here on the side it's going to give me a map and it's going to say here's a therapist near you right google is really freaking smart right but if i pull open this if i type in something here right generally here's what's happening on these ads and then there'll be a couple ads at the bottom too is these these people are competing on google's platform in an auction you guys know what, raise your hand. Do you know what an auction is? Does everybody here know what an auction is? What's an auction? Okay, I wanna see, click the hand raise button if you understand what an auction is, meaning people bid on certain items, all right? That's about half the crowd responded there. So people bid on certain items and the highest bidder wins, right? So what's happening on Google with these ad spaces, it, exactly, it's kind of like eBay, right? eBay, where you bid, <clears throat> people are bidding on these spaces. So it's a combination of a few things, but generally speaking, the person who has shown up number one just bid the most amount of money. It's not that they're actually the best result necessarily, but they bid the most amount of money. So let's say I put in a max bid of $5. I will tell Google, here's my website. Here's my ad headline. Here's my description. Here's my everything. Okay. And I'll put in a bid of $5. Okay. Five bucks. All right. So I put in this bid of $5. Now, if somebody else comes in and tells Google, I'm going to bid $7, right? What's it going to do? It's going to, when somebody searches therapist near me, if somebody's in the same bidding range as me, meaning if they're within, let's say I put my radius of 10 miles around Phoenix, right? Right. Um, I'm going to put, it's going to automatically place a bid for $5 for the top spot for me. And then it's going to, then this guy's going to come in and actually get the top spot because he put in a max of seven. And this is per click. So I do not pay any money unless somebody actually clicks. Okay, got it? Now as where, that is called PPC, pay per click. Write that down if you're not familiar with it. That is pay per click advertising. You can also do this on Bing, Yahoo, other websites like that. Search engine. This is called search marketing, right? Search marketing. So the power here, here's the big number one benefit. 
The power here is that you get to come in and here's the word, intercept the traffic of other people. You get to intercept people's train of thought, exactly what they are looking for. You get to drop yourself right in front of their eyeballs so they can see your ad. Now, you ready for this? My wife and I just started running some ads and I'm, I'm actually running ads for her, for her private practice that she's starting, which is just a therapy private practice, okay? So <clears throat> this is gonna be really powerful and I'm gonna, share, I'm gonna share with you my screen while I do a Google search for this, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen. Now, quick hand raise, can everybody see my screen? This is gonna be one of the most valuable videos you watch in your entire life in marketing. <laughs> I'm not shitting you. Um, I've been running ads for about a decade, and if you want a little, if you want a little insight into, well, what would he do? Well, here you freaking go, okay? Now, I'm still developing these and getting results, and I'm optimizing, so this is also a good example that there's no right or wrong in marketing. There's no black and white right or wrong. There's just theory in marketing, right? Okay, so I got a lot of hand raises, so here we go. So here's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna type in this Google search right here. Um, uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> Well, at first, let me go to her website. <clears throat> so um, her, her practice is Gender Identity Center. So she's catering, you can see it right here, is a private practice that provides individual therapy to adolescents age 12 to 18, okay? So that's her ideal client. You see that? You see how this is very clearly spelled out? Individual therapy to adolescents 12 to 18 who are wrestling with gender identity, okay? Now, could this ad copy be better? Yep, are we gonna improve it? Yep. But for right now, this will work, right? We got, we got a minimum viable product up, and this is what I always teach people. Good enough is good enough, okay? So um, therapy for teens, my wife just changed this. I just wrote her a text message and said, this is the worst headline in the history of headlines on the website, <laughs> okay? So um, this is literally just horrendous. So just ignore that. Um, but we've been playing around with headlines right here. This should be a more benefit headline. But again, this is a little bit different than driving somebody through a sales funnel. You get what I mean here? Okay, so it's a little different of a game. But here's the thing. This is our website. This is who we're focusing towards. Now, who we're focusing this towards are young people who are just, they feel like, uh, now I'm, I, we're not gonna get into the politics of this. I get there's people on all sides of the fence. So if you're getting all hyped up and you're freaking out internally because whatever, uh, just you can just sign off the webinar and we're all good. But here's what I'd like for you to do instead is just be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to drop kind of my emotional response to anything that's going on here. And I'm going to focus in on the market because that's, that's the big piece that you need to know here. So if we're going to private practice from literally nothing, no clients, nothing, zero, zilch, right? How would I do it? All right. So <clears throat> could we, now let's think through the advertising angles here, right? This is a very particular business because 12 to 18 is an ad, is an age group you cannot advertise to on Facebook and Instagram. So done, done, done. Uh, what are we going to do about that? So I can't go placing ads all over Facebook for kids who, you know, have this issue. For, for kids who are essentially, they, they, they get to, you know, age 10, 12, 18, and they're wondering why they feel like they were born in a, you know, I'm a boy, but I feel like I, I feel like a woman. Like, I feel like I like playing with dolls and all this kind of stuff, right? And, and so in that, I mean, I, that was a huge overgeneralization, but um, I'm just trying to get through to the point here, right? So could I, so Bashan, just Bashan, hopefully I said that right, just said, you, know, you can run ads to the parents. Yes, but in Facebook ads, I don't have really, I, I don't have like a gauge of like, well, how would I, do I just send out ads to every parent in the region, right? I don't have a gauge because I can, in Facebook ads, I can target. Um, I could advertise to parents of teenagers. Like that's a category that I can do that. Um, but I don't know beyond that, I'm just targeting every single parent in the Phoenix Valley, right? So I don't have like interest targeting, right? So that, that makes it a little bit more difficult. I could advertise and say something like, Does, is your teen struggling to figure out their gender, right? And I could do that on Facebook and advertise to parents. But what's better is advertising this on Google for people who are typing in stuff around figuring out their gender. So a couple main keywords, key points that people type in, gender dysphoria, transgender counseling, things like that. That's, that those are things people are actually typing in, right? So, I mean, but again, Bashan, even, even if I target uh, books or famous people around these kind of topics, the, the amount of people or books that people have liked, like that's a very small amount. And then in a 10 mile radius, it narrows it down even further. And I would probably hit everybody in this region like right away. All right, so <clears throat> essentially what we've done is we went out and advertised on Google, um, which has got us a few phone calls so far and a few good leads. So, so here's an example of a search. Now look at my, look at my screen here in just a second. Okay. So I typed in gender therapist. Okay. Gender therapist. Now, if you go Googling this stuff, please don't click these ads because it will actually cost us money. Okay. <laughs> so if you go Google this and you see ad right here, now I'm going to annotate this and zoom in a little bit so you can see this. So bear with me. Let me zoom in. Okay. Now, can you guys type to me? Can you see this? Okay. Can you type to me? Yes. For everybody type to me in the chat. Yes. If you can see this. Okay. If like you can read this fine. Yes, 10 four, yes, 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 yes. Okay, yes. Hey, by the way, yes, I can advertise to the parents, all right? I can advertise to the parents on Facebook and Instagram. I can do that. It's less targeted though, right? So I'm gonna spend excess money probably. Okay, so now let's take a look. Now this isn't showing all of the ad that I want, but I'm gonna use my little pen here, all right? So this is our ad, right? This is our ad, okay? So, <clears throat> right, um, when somebody types in gender therapist, our ad's gonna show up. Well, we're second right now to this online counseling, all right? And this is very, very focused towards this crowd and community. So they're doing a pretty good job and they're pouring a lot of money in. Um, again here, and again here, right? So all of these, you can see the keyword. You see the keyword? You see it? Bingo. All right, so now this, this right here, BetterHelp is doing something, they're doing something called a responsive ad. Basically, whenever somebody searches a certain keyword, 
So any, anything around gender that somebody would type in, gender counseling, gender therapist, their ad right here will actually change based on what people search. It's a responsive one. Now, the problem with that, maybe you'll get more clicks, right? Because it matches exactly. But hey, remember this, congruency. Many of you have been on a lot of my calls or seen a lot of these. What do I always talk about? Congruency, right? So there's a reason that we place this phrase, right? And I include accepting new clients in Phoenix because what? Everybody who calls into a counseling firm or whatever has a hard time getting on the schedule. They're booked two months out or they're completely full. They can't get in. The first thing we want them to know, accepting new clients, right? We want them to know that right away. Now, the journey through gender dysphoria can be complicated and confusing. These are two extraordinarily powerful words, complicated and confusing, right? We offer counseling for teens ages 12 to 18. Why would I put teens ages 12 to 18 in this? Can somebody put into the Q&A or the chat? Type to me, why would I put that? That's a very specific sentence. I put that in there for a reason. Why would I put that in there? What's the benefit for me? Why would I put ages 12 to 18 there? Chao Kong says target audience, targeted, more targeted. Kathy says target market. Bashan says it's more targeted. Age range, laser targeting, single out your audience. Don't waste clicks. William Vincent, you win it today. You win it. He said the exact damn thing I was thinking. I don't want to waste clicks. If I'm paying per click, I don't want to waste my clicks, right? So unless somebody knows it's ages 12 to 18, I don't want them to click. I don't want to, right? What am I doing? I'm intentionally disqualifying people, all right? Disqualifying people. I'm intentionally saying, get the F out of here, <laughs> right? Call today or book an appointment online. Free phone consultations, all individuals welcome. Gender therapy for teens, okay? Got it? Gender therapy for teens. Location, resources, schedule, FAQ, all right? <clears throat> so, um, Generally, Robert, yeah, she'll accept somebody who's 19 or 20. But what we're doing is we're really focusing in that age group. That is the age group she most enjoys working with. It's the age group that she's best with. So that's who we're focusing our targeting on, all right? So now if I went and, and typed in, let's say, um, let's say gender counseling, all right? Again, here we are down here, and this is a different ad, and it's showing up a little bit different. This is actually a call-only ad. That's why the phone number is right here. It's a calling ad, right? Or um, gender identity, well, let's just do gender identity center. There we go. So when we type in this one, now this one, because I got the first ranking on it, and no one else is really placing ads for that, Look at, look at how big this ad is. You guys get this? And we went to, you know, this, this, there's this tool out there called Google My Business, right? So now since we verified uh, her information and everything on Google, now you can see directions, phone number, everything, right? It, it shows up. Here's exactly where we're freaking located, right? Um, here's this resources, FAQ, right? What is gender? Who do I work with? Are there services for parents? Location, schedule. Scheduling online is easy, right? Um, so you can see how much detail, how much stuff there is here. And when somebody, think about the branding of this, right? Think about the branding of this. That's, that's important to know. And I'm going to take you into our actual back office for the ads to show you this kind of stuff. But let me do one other search here. Let me just see if I type in um, teen therapy near me. Um, I don't know if we're on that one. Might be just like teen therapist or something. Or let's say, um, let's do adolescent counseling, Phoenix. Um, let's see. Gender dysphoria counseling. Okay. <laughs> you can see there, we're again the top bid. So um, look, here's the thing. Here, here, here's my philosophy, okay? This is not everybody's philosophy, but here's my philosophy, okay? So I'm gonna give you my exact ad philosophy in, this, in terms of this type of business. This is located in a, in a radius of about, let's say 10 miles. Really, it's, it's start to finish where we're placing the ads is about 10 mile bubble, okay? So think about this. There's not a ton of searches in that radius around this kind of thing. There's people looking, but there's not a ton, right? So, but people are gonna start Googling a lot of different stuff around this, all right? And the reason that I'm coming in with such a high bid on this kind of stuff is because I believe that there is something psychological that happens for people when they see this as the top option. You got me? Type to me in the Q&A or the chat if you disagree or agree on that. I believe that when people see it as the top option, it's the top thing that's there, they look at it and they're like, well, yeah, I mean, that's, if somebody's up there at the very top, they're probably not like lame. They're probably the best option. Like Google puts the best stuff at the top. What do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree? I have a lot of agree. Ashraf, Kathy, Deborah, Hassan, Bruce, Mary, Paul, William, John, Angela, Angela, Angela. Jerry, Christiane, Edwin, Norman, Rita, Karan, Alexa agrees now. <laughs> uh, okay, good. So here's my thing is, is in general, um, when this is plastered up at the top, initially maybe not everybody clicks, but here's the thing, remember this. It usually takes a couple times, maybe five to 10 times where somebody sees a brand, a brand name, somebody's name before they're like, oh, all right, yeah, sure. Let's check it. I keep seeing these guys. I keep seeing that name, right? So we're branding the Gender Identity Center, right? And I'm giving it a brand right here, Gender Dysphoria Counseling, accepting new clients in Phoenix. The journey can be complicated and confusing, right? Okay, <clears throat> now I wanna see you guys, now that's not true in every case, but I have a pretty high bid set on this campaign because I believe that. Now, if it's just an e-commerce thing and you're just trying to sell some e-commerce product, it might be a little different, right? So th this isn't a right or wrong thing in every single case. But just show of hands here real quick, show of hands real quick. Do you guys wanna see my ads back office? Do you guys wanna see my actual ads back office? Oh my gosh. I want, to I want to show you guys the ads. I have to have at least, at least half of you with hands raised. So keep them up. I want to see at least half. We're almost there. We're almost there. I want to see at least half. 
All right, we're half. We're half. Okay. All right. I love it. All right. There's a lot of people on here, so I have to show up with somebody, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, look, here's the deal. I mean, here's the deal. If if you guys want to get real value from this, right? Um, I think we should show you real cool stuff like this. Okay. So um, all right. So here we are. We're in the back office of an overview for this campaign that we started uh literally. I mean, this this literally started like eight days ago or something, seven, eight days ago. All right, can you guys see this okay? Is this coming through? 32 clicks. Um, 848 impressions, $3.20, 26 cents per click and $104 in ad spend. All right, got it? You guys can see that okay? All right, cool. So <clears throat> a couple things that I'm gonna walk you through in terms of um, uh, ad groups and uh, the actual campaign and the keywords and everything. So in terms of the actual ads themselves, if I go into ad, impressions is just how many times it showed up, right? Impressions means somebody typed it in and looked, okay? Typed it in and looked and then maybe they didn't click or whatever, right? So what that means is if I have 32 clicks on 848 impressions, that means about 4% of everybody who Google searches something with my keywords and, and my ad shows up, about 4% of them will actually click the ad, got it? So about 4% click through rate. That's not great, it's not bad. It just is what it is. Um, I'm accepting a little bit of a lower click through rate because um, I have to put it out to more keywords that might not be, might not be my ideal keywords because uh, there's, I'm in a geographical bubble, okay? I'm in a geographical bubble, so I have to use more keywords to get more impressions to maybe get more clicks, okay? So it might not be true in every case, but what I'm gonna take you into right now is the ad group, okay? The ad group for this. The ad group is where we store the keywords that we're targeting, okay? So these are the keywords, there's about 208 of them that I have personally hand-selected that if somebody searches, we're gonna pop up for, all right? So there is a lot of them, all right? There's 206, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort them by uh, clicks, <clears throat> okay? So now you can see which ones are getting the most clicks, all right? So seven clicks for this search right here. Now six clicks for this search right here. Three, two, two, and then a bunch of ones, all right? So a bunch of ones, you can see transgender kids, trans counseling, gender questioning, uh, all this kind of stuff, right? So um, if I go up here and go to average cost per click, then this is my most expensive one. This is a $5 bid, this is a $4.99 click, right? So there's some of these that are really expensive, right? But what I'm gonna show you over here, now just follow with me through these. You don't need to write these all down and everything, but just, just follow with me, okay? Um, if I go over to average position, my average position on these, my average position is 1.3, okay? 1.3. So some of these don't have really any clicks, but on the stuff that does have clicks, my average position for this keyword right here is a one. My average position here is 2.2, 2.6, 1.5, 1.1, 1.1. 1 .1. See all these ones for my average position right here? Can you guys see that? Type to me yes if you can see that. So what this is telling me, average position is mean, what, what rank am I in the search? So that means when people Google search this keyword, transgender kids, my average position is one every single time. Why is that? It's because my average bid, the, the max cost per click that I have set to this campaign is $5. That's a pretty, that's like a pretty high cost per click. All right. So I set it to $5. Does it mean I'm always going to pay $5? No, not really. For this one, gender questioning here, I got 93 cents for this click. That's a great cost, right? For this one, it was five, 428, right? So some of these are higher than they need to be. And in, in an ideal world, just so everyone's aware, in an ideal world, what I'll do after I get a first round of results is then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put in an individual bid for each keyword. So rather than bidding at a huge campaign level, $5 for everything else, what I'll do is I'll bid for each one. So for instance, on transgender youth right here, it's $1.88 per click. I'm going to come in and I'm going to set my max bid for $2 per click instead of $5 per click because it'll probably drive my cost down a little. For something like, you know, gender dysphoria where I'm paying $4 per click and it's getting me the most clicks and every single time I'm number one, I'm probably going to drop this to like $3 to $4. Got it? So I can lower my cost eventually. But here's the thing. O overall, um, I'm, getting, I I'm getting great results from these so far. Some of these, now pay attention. Some of these, for instance, gender fluid, right? I got to click on the word gender fluid. That's not somebody asking for therapy. Do you get the distinction? So that's why it's important in my ads, in my actual ads, let me show you them right here. That's why it's important in these ads that I've created to say counseling, 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 counseling. Do you guys understand? Does that make sense? Please type yes if this makes sense. Because there's going to be some searches that are happening where people aren't saying, I want counseling. I want therapy. But what I'm doing in my ad is I'm saying, don't click on this unless you're interested in counseling. If you're interested in counseling, let's do it. Here, click here. So my ads are gonna show up in some cases to people who aren't really all that interested. You got it? It's gonna show up to people who are just looking to get a little education and then they're just not gonna click. That's okay, I don't want them to click. But if somebody searches gender, uh, gender questioning and they don't know yet in their mind that counseling exists, there's 13 year olds out there who don't really know they could go to therapy and talk to somebody about this because their parents lose their shit every time it comes up. So, so, if they go, oh my gosh, you mean there's somebody for me to talk to? A safe, a safe space for me to, to talk? Okay, maybe I'll look into that, right? Maybe I should look into that. Maybe I should ask my parents if I can do this. So we do want it to show up, right? We want it to show up. Now, after people have clicked, here's the cool part. On that website, <clears throat> we have our Facebook pixel installed. 
So guess what we're going to do? We're going to run retargeting ads on Facebook. We're going to run retargeting ads on Facebook to everybody who's visited our site for more than 30 seconds for people who clicked around because I'm going to measure Facebook pixel can measure how long people are on a certain site. So we're going to measure based on if people are on here for longer than 30 seconds, we're going to run Facebook ads to those people, to that custom audience. Got it. Now they're seeing us everywhere now. Oh my gosh. I forgot about, I forgot about that. Right. <clears throat> I would retarget to them on Facebook and Instagram. Yep. I can retarget to them on Google too, but that's already happening with this. Uh, if I was retargeting in Facebook, I have the Facebook pixel installed. So all I do is I create a custom audience in Facebook, in my, in the back office in Facebook, I create a custom audience with my pixel. Here, let me pause this. I'll show you real quick. Now bear in mind, we have about 20 minutes left. So this was on Google ads, but let me just connect the dots for you. I'm not gonna go through every single detail here, but let me, let me just quickly connect the dots. Let me pause my screen here for a second while I log in. <clears throat> yes, you can link the Facebook pixel to any, yeah, it is the Mark Harbert technique. You can listen, you, you can list your, or um, put your pixel on any freaking website, any website, any website. Did I say that again? Any website. <laughs> All right, let me see. Uh, I gotta make sure this Facebook pixel is actually working. Okay, yeah, here we go. All right, see this? So I opened up my Facebook um, back office. I went up here to the ads back office, and then I went to pixels. Clicked on pixels, and there have been 226 events received. All right, so now when I'm in the pixel here, you can go to events right here, or you can go to URLs. Follow me on this. This is so freaking, oh my gosh. I can track, guys. I can track how many people got to the scheduling page. 22, it got hit 22 times. Therapist, 26 times. FAQ, 20 times. Stories, 16 times. Location, resources, forms, okay? So I can track everything. I can track only the people who hit the scheduling page, and I can run, so here's what I would do. Create audience, custom audience, all right? Now watch this. People who visited a specific web page, and here's what I'm gonna type in. Uh, let, me, let me go back, let me cancel this. I'm gonna copy this link. So let's say I'm gonna do the one for scheduling. People who clicked on the link to schedule, but didn't actually, they didn't schedule. So I'm gonna create a custom audience. I'm gonna go to people who visited specific web pages, and I'm gonna paste this in. There we go. So anybody who got to that page, I am going to run a Facebook ad to these people. And I can do it in the last 30 days, all the way to 180 days, that's six months. But I'm just gonna do 90 days. There's no right or wrong answer. Don't ask what you should do. There's no right or wrong answer. Think through it critically. Think through it critically. I'm going to do 90 days because I think generally this kind of gender dysphoria thing issue is a huge issue for people. It doesn't usually go away in 30 days. If you're doing e-commerce and you're and somebody's searching like uh, um, like a cell phone case, people are going to find a solution to that in seven days. Got it? So it's based on product. It's based on solutions. All right. So I'm going to say scheduling page last 90 days. Got it? Create audience. All right. I'm going to hit done. There we go. Done. So now where this is going to go is if I go up here to events manager and I go to audiences. <clears throat> Now stick with me. All right, audiences. It is populating, and this usually takes a little bit, but it's gonna be below 1,000, but it's ready. I can start retargeting to these people immediately. So in my ads, if I'm gonna go create an ad, here's the final connection piece, everybody. The final connection piece. If I go and create an ad, and I want to run a, let's say, um, let's say I wanna run a conversion campaign, all right, set up ad account. <coughs> Excuse me, all right. Um, the conversion event, I'm just going to do, uh, right now I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this as I typically would because it's going to take too long to set up. I'm just going to do view content. All right. So what I would do, here's how you only target these people. That's all I'm trying to show you right now is you would go to custom audiences right here and see this. Here it is. Here's the audience right here. Got it. Everyone raise your hand. If you understand that what I'm doing here, even if you don't know how to do it, that's okay. Do you understand what I just did there? I took with my Facebook pixel that I installed on my website, anyone who's been on the scheduling page for that, I created a custom audience and now I can run ads just to those people. That's how when you go click on somebody's ad and you go through halfway through their funnel, then you start seeing ads all over your Facebook and Instagram and all over the place for that person. This is exactly what they're doing. This is, and here's what'll happen is your cost per conversion on a retargeting campaign is much lower. You'll spend much less money rather than constantly blasting the, you know, new people, new people every single day. Okay. That is retargeting. Does that make sense to everybody? Just type to me. Is that helpful? Valuable? Are you getting value? Are you getting, is this good stuff? Is this valuable stuff for you? Type to me and give me some feedback in the, in the, in the chat. Is this helpful stuff for you? We're going to start to wrap up. But do you guys have questions? Is it helpful? Uh, I mean, this is this. I mean, this is freaking marketing. I mean, this is starting a business one-on-one, guys, right? This is literally starting a business one-on-one. So, I mean, yeah, if you want more training, I mean, we have a traffic Rolodex bundle that teaches Google ads. You can go to freaking YouTube and say, and Google, and literally YouTube search, how do I place a, a Google ad for my business? And you can see click-by-click -click videos that'll walk you through it. I mean, it's, I mean, literally, you can, you can do this exact thing in Africa, Europe. It doesn't matter where you live. Um, <clears throat> All of this, by the way, is recorded in the back office. Go to the back office, go to products, and go to Marketers Club. It's all, every single one of these gets recorded. All right, so just write down, you know, freaking June 6th, June 3rd was incredible. <laughs> just go write that down. Um, look, 
mean, you can do this in any business. Think about it, guys. Think, think through this. Now, as you begin to build skills online, here's what I just showed you how to do that you didn't know I showed you how to do. Okay? Let me share this whiteboard. Here's what I just, if you start to think critically about this, here's what I just showed you how to do that almost no one really understood. Okay? There you go. So, <clears throat> in your town or in your city or wherever it is that you live, right, there are plumbers. There are electricians. All right? There are uh, lawn care people. Ooh, you know another good one? There's HVAC people, HVAC, right? Do you think these people know how to create a website or a sales funnel? Hell no. Do you think they know how to run ads? Hell no, right? But do you think people in your town or the city or wherever you live are typing in lawn care Phoenix? Do you think people are typing that in? Yep. Do you think that just on what I just showed you, that you could probably figure out how to run an ad about lawn care in Phoenix? Yep. Do you think you could spend a hundred bucks of your own money? I'm not saying you need to do this or whatever, but here's the thing. You think you could go out and spend a hundred bucks of your own money and generate seven phone calls or seven leads of some sort and then go to lawn care people and say, hey, look, I just spent X amount of dollars, right? I, or, or say, would it be worth it? Let's, here, here's a good example. I spent a hundred dollars, okay? Now this is how lead gen agencies work. I spent a hundred dollars of my own money and I drive them to a very simple opt-in page, right? Give me your name, phone, and email and we'll give you a call. All right. And I generate, let's say at a low amount, at a low amount, let's just say that I generate seven leads, okay? Seven leads. $100 spent, seven leads, it's $14 per lead, okay? Now, <clears throat> you ready for this? You ready for some really freaking ninja stuff? What if, what if you went to a lawn care company and you said, hey, look, if you pay me a thousand bucks a month, thousand bucks a month, all right? So now with a thousand bucks, you can generate, you know, you can probably generate 70 leads, right? Because you'll just do the same thing and probably your costs will go down, so maybe more. But you'll say, if you send me a thousand, or actually structure it like this, structure it, there's a better way to structure this. So what you would say is, if I can bring you leads at $30 per lead, right? Somebody who has looked at an ad, clicked on an ad, entered their name, phone, and email that they're in our geographical location and are ready and willing to pay money for lawn care service, would you pay me $30 per lead? You know what they're gonna say? Yep. Because each of these leads is probably worth $100 to $200 for them because they're going to sign them up for a three-month deal or a six-month deal, right? They're not going to sell every one of them. They can probably sell most of them. And you deliver them to them in real time, meaning you hook up a little software on the back end. I mean, don't get into freak out detail of like, oh, how would I ever do that? You'll figure it out. But you would hook it up so that they get a text message every single lead. Hey, new lead. They just requested it. Bing, call. That's a hot lead, right? There's some, there's some businesses that would pay $50 to $200 for one of these leads, right? You see what I mean there? If you understand the industry just a little bit, you understand what's going on, you can tap into this. And then guess what? guess what? You say, look, here's the deal is you've got to, you have to pay me up front a thousand bucks. And, uh, well, basically I, I'll guarantee you a certain amount of leads, but you gotta be pretty confident you can do it. But if you spend hundred bucks of your money and you do it, bing, bingo, then everything, if you can get those costs lowered and lowered and lowered, that's all profit in your pocket. Got it. Okay. So that wraps up video number one. All right. That wraps up video number one, uh, or replay number one. And now we're going to fast forward about four months to look at total ad spend, look at ROI and walk through the lifetime value of a customer and just how important that is to track. Okay. Um, and this is a very basic way to track that. So I want to keep it really simple for you and not get into super complex metrics. Um, but I'm just going to show you very simply how to do it. Okay. So we're, we're moving on to recording number two. Enjoy. So in the last, um, let's see, when did this start? So June, July, August, September. So basically for about the last four months, um, and this is actually for my wife. So in the last four months, uh, we have been running Google ads, okay? Google ads. And I'm gonna, I, and I, what I wanna explain is a, a little bit of a business principle called lifetime value, but also customer acquisition. Because I think a lot of people in, in this industry, especially in affiliate marketing, don't understand client acquisition and how you do that at a profitable rate, okay? So the combination of lifetime value with, um, with your cost per acquisition, those are two really important things. So before we get going too deep into these numbers, can you guys just type to me in the chat, um, do you guys type to me in the chat? First of all, do you know what LTV means? I mean, I already said lifetime value, but do you actually know what that as a principle functionally means? Just type to me, Bill. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Stephanie. No. Nadir. No. Rahul Evergreen in April and no Melanie. Yes. Okay. So it's about 50, 50. So really fast. I'm going to do a new share on a little whiteboard and watch this. I'm going to draw this on the screen for you real quick. So, um, whoops. Oh my gosh. Let's see. Is this going to work. Oh my gosh. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I just, uh, I just plugged in my little whiteboard here and it was asking, it was trying to use it. And then I hit deny in my preferences. And um, so I, I'm not really sure if it's going to work here. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Oh, baby. Hang on, hang on. I will get it. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. You know what? I might not get it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You guys think 
yeah, I always make this joke, but you guys think you're, you're the only ones who struggle with, uh, <laughs> struggle with the whole um, techie stuff. Wrong. All right. I'm not sure I'm going to get this guy. So if that doesn't work, then, yeah, I know. I keep it real. Um, <laughs> I don't even know where that setting was. I just clicked the setting real quick when it popped up, and now I just I have no clue. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Block them. Tag it. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Wow, I guess uh, we just might not be drawing today, guys. We just might not be drawing. Okay, improvise, improvise, okay. So what I'm gonna do, let's see if I can clear this out. And let me see if I can type some text in here. Okay, lifetime, I did try to unplug it. Yeah, it didn't work. Lifetime value of customer, LTV. All right, so um, this is essentially, so let's say that I I'm running a funnel. And in the funnel, there's a $7 offer, then there's a $49 offer upsell, and then there's a $1,000 offer, right? And then there's a $20,000 offer, okay? So in the cycle of somebody um, coming in as a customer, right? Here's what I mean. So if I run a Google ad, all right, and I pay $30 and it gets me one, one customer, what most people do when they see this is they look at it and they say, I spent $30 and I only got this one $7 sale, all right? I only got one $7 sale. And that shows me that this ad didn't work, okay? And that didn't work. I mean, I'm not going to trade $30 for $7 every time. That doesn't make any sense, right? You guys get that? Just hit the hand raise button if you understand that, like why I would be like, hey, this makes no sense whatsoever. You guys get that? Okay, I know this is a little basic, but again, stick with me. So, so then what if this Google ad continues, right? So, so this, is, this, is, um, this is person number one, okay? Newbie, okay? They're a newbie. They're new to the game. They're new to this advertising thing. They don't understand, okay? Now, uh, person number two ends up spending, um, let's see, 30 times 10. Let's just do, for the sake of ease here, let's just do $300. All right, so $300. Um, and this gets them 10 customers, okay, on the front end, $7 customers, okay? And this is our pro, all right? So they only get one customer, $30. They, they make a $7 sale, so not great, right? They literally just lost $23. But what this person knows is that from $7 to $49, that converts at a rate, the upsell converts at a rate of 50%, okay? 50%, so half of them. So this person just didn't get enough to get two customers. You got that? They just didn't get enough to get two customers. And then from the $49 offer to the $1,000 offer, let's just say this is a, let's just say this is a 10% rate. Let's see what happens on these numbers. I don't know if this is going to be a big enough sample, but, um, and then from the thousand to 20,000, let's just say it's a 5% because those are usually going to go down because it's such a, it's such a big ask, but 10% is not even close to crazy on that. Okay. All right. So, um, so on this one, they get 10 customers here at $7 each, right? Uh, so this person is down $23. <laughs> um, and then over here, down here, uh, so we had 10 customers at 70 and then, um, that means we're going to have uh, 10 customers here at $49, right? So, or we're gonna have five of them. So let's just count out these buyers at $7. We have 10 at $49. We have five because that's a 50% conversion rate. And then at a thousand, we're going to have, uh, if this is at, let's put this at 20% just for the sake of doing it. Okay. So we're gonna put this at 20%, which means, and we're gonna put this at 10, just to, I think at a thousand dollars from a $49 offer. That's not crazy. Um, so, so that means one out of every five or 20% are going to convert there. So that's one. And then at the $20,000 level, zero, because we're not going to, we don't have enough, right? If 10%, we would have to get 10 purchasing at the thousand dollar level in order to get, you know, somebody to buy whatever, a mastermind or a big event or something for $20,000, a huge experience package. So if you add it all up, um, 10 times seven is 70, 49 times five is 245. So 245 plus 70 is 315, $1,315. Okay. So $300 in ad spend. Uh, oops, in revenue, which is uh, $1,015 $1, in ROI, okay? So the moral of the story here is that this individual here, person number one, the newbie who doesn't really understand how this works, how paid advertising works and how customer acquisition and lifetime value works, they're gonna spend that initial 30 bucks and say, to hell with this, this doesn't make any sense. This person says, okay, look, it's a numbers game, right? There's certain percentages. As long as those percentages work out in general um, over the span of the next year or two, I'm gonna win, right? And so they end up spending 10 times the amount of money and they also actually break a profit at some point on that ad spend. Okay, hit the hand raise button if that makes sense to you. Rahul, Melanie, Bill, Kathy, Nadir, Robert, DeWitt, Tiara, Stephanie. Does that make sense? Wendy, Wendy, that's a new name. Nice to see you, Wendy. Thanks for popping on. Maria, good to see you. Um, so in the grand scheme of things here, this is how you calculate lifetime value and it's probably the most important figure in an, an entire business. All right, it's probably the most important figure you could ever know in your business as well. Because right? even if you're an affiliate, Okay, so think about this. Even if you're an affiliate and let's say that you make 50% on these, okay? So you don't even make 100%. You make 50% on all of these sales, right? 
So you're, you're going to make $3.50 on this because if you are an affiliate marketer, you, you need to calculate this. I mean, this is just as important. Um, here, you're going to make um, $24.50 and here, 500 bucks. So um, $24.50 times five is one twenty-two fifty. One twenty-two fifty plus thirty-five plus five hundred is six fifty seven fifty. So if you followed me there, um, if you got fifty percent on all these sales, so if this isn't your product, if you're not selling your own product, six fifty seven. So still, it's a dollar in, it's two dollars out, right? Three hundred dollars in, six hundred dollars out, six fifty seven. So this kind of formulate calculation. Now this is going to be different for everybody, right? So the natural question again from a newbie is, well, what are these conversions? What does this look like? I mean, what does this stuff convert at? Well, so here's the thing: is if you go out and you um, you place ads on a billboard um, with half naked woman, okay? And then you say, um, you know, um, check it out, you know, um, Bill's affiliate link here.com, right? Whatever your domain name is, check it out. You, you won't believe your eyes, right? If you put my, the thing is, is if you put out a bunch of clickbait like this, then your conversions, your conversions will suck. You got me? T just type to me in the chat. Why would your conversion suck by doing something like this, All right? What, why would your, why would the percentage, and what I mean by conversions is the percentage of people who are going to purchase a product once they go to this link, why would that conversion rate in this case just suck? Why would it not be good? Type to me in the chat. I'm curious if you're following with me. Anybody? Um, wrong topic. It's tricking people into something they don't want. There's no value. Uh, the targets, yeah. So, it's, it has mostly to do with the fact that you're catching eyeballs and gaining curiosity based on something that has nothing to do with your offer. Okay. People won't seeing, yeah, people won't be seeing on this, you know, link, whatever you're selling, they're not going to be seeing what is actually on the billboard, right? So you're going to get a ton of clicks, but your conversions will suck. Now it may be not that egregious, but if somebody is targeting, let's say somebody on uh, Facebook, who's interested in, um, who's interested in, you know, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, in planting, uh, in, in like potting plants or in horticulture or something like that and you're targeting them for like an online offer, your conversion rates might be less than if you target somebody who's already interested in affiliate marketing or somebody like Eric Worre or Network Marketing Pro or something like that, where people are already interested in what you have to offer. They're predisposed or on Google, something like that, where people are already typing in and searching. Your conversions might be better. You might pay higher per click. It might cost you more on the front end for all those clicks, but they'll convert better. It'll be a better uh, lead. It'll be a better purchaser, okay? So if you take that, um, that scenario there and contrast it with um, doing something like that, like po posting it out on Google that says, um, you know, let's just say you're selling a course on, on how to run Facebook ads. You have your own course or something. Um, and you, you put an ad on Facebook and you target small business owners and it says, hey, I'm going to teach you exactly how to run ads on Facebook. I have a, three, I have a simple uh, three-step formula to placing ads on Google uh, or on Facebook for small businesses. Download the PDF right now, right? Those conversion rates will be a lot higher because you're giving them exactly what it is that they're looking for. Okay, just quick answers if that all makes sense to you. The difference, the disparity in terms of why those conversions would be better and how the conversion rates of lifetime value can be drastically different. You guys got it? How those conversion rates from one affiliate to the next can be drastically different even if they're selling the exact same freaking product. Same product, same funnel, same offer. One might convert at 20, one might convert at two or less. Okay. All right. Now, if I go over here and I'm going to switch over my screen here real quick, I'm going to pull open these, these Google ads that we've been running for my wife. Basically what we've been doing is we've been, been running Google ads for my wife's private practice. Okay. She does private practice around gender for uh, adolescents, for kids. And um, so, so I wanted to just show a disparity and I'm not going to pull up anything private or anything, but I'm just going to show kind of cost and, um, and average cost per click and things like that and how I'm measuring those metrics uh, in the Google Ads back office. So this is the Google Ads back office. You can check out campaigns here. You can check out ad groups. Um, and this would have our full list of keywords that I've developed that, uh, that are being targeted. Um, you can see in the last four months, they have about $1,500 worth of ad spent, getting close. All right. And um, you can see kind of, kind of everything, demographics, day and hour. Uh, you can even see the exact ad, how it shows up on, uh, on Google. Um, likely, if you guys go and try to search that, you won't see the ad because we're only targeting it uh, here in Phoenix, here in Arizona. Right. So this isn't something that can be done globally. We don't do chat therapy or anything like that, or she doesn't, I shouldn't say we, but she doesn't do chat therapy or anything like that. So, um, so in this back office, there's a couple things that are important here that you look at and see. Number one, $4.58 as an average cost per click is really high, all right? And the reason is, is in most industries where you have things that are high lifetime value, okay? She charges $110 per hour, no insurance. Doesn't take insurance, doesn't deal with insurance, $110 an hour, right? So your cost per click on things that have a higher lifetime value are going to be higher. Okay, that's just something to understand. So sometimes people ask me, well, what's a great, what's a good cost per click? What should I be aiming for? Well, it just depends on what you're offering. It depends on um, a lot of different things, honestly. So, um, so here's what I wanted to show you. So these ads started in about May, towards the end of May. All right. Um, and um, what I want to show you then, I'm going to switch the share over to this little preview screenshot here. Okay. So what this will show, can, can you guys see this? The project, the insights, just hit the hand raise button real quick. If you can see this. 
Okay, you guys can see this. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, so this is the uh, projected income this month. That will be a lot higher because right now um, she just doesn't have people scheduled all the way through the month. It's October 3rd. So people haven't set appointments. They will you know, come in this weekend and do a session and then book for the next session. This is only calculating what is currently scheduled right now. Um, so right at this very second, um, you can see year to date, there's been 11 clients. Um, for last month, there was a total of 10 clients that had booked 25 appointments. Okay, and there was 2860 uh, for the total income that last month. So here's, here's one easy way to calculate your lifetime value, right? You have a number over here that says 5,060, 5,060. You have 39 appointments and you have 11 total clients. So because this is about a three to four month sample, that's actually a great sample size, okay? Um, so all I'm gonna do to calculate lifetime value is I'm gonna look at 5,060 divided by 11, total revenue divided by total customers. Total revenue divided by total customers. 50, 60 divided by 11 is 460. Okay, I'm going to type that in. So right here is $460 per client right now. Now, think about this. We also have projected income this month where most of these people, we have 11 total, but there's nine already scheduled this, this month, which means you know most of these clients are sticking multiple month after month after month after month. So that $460 per client is likely to go up, right? That $460 a client is likely to go up, and there will be kind of a place where that caps off. Maybe most people average 12 sessions. Well, that's $1,300 per client as a lifetime value. So at four, but right now today, we can only calculate what we have today. It's $460 per client. That's the average lifetime value of a client. So if I want to then calculate out um, how much I can spend to acquire a new customer cost per acquisition, my CPA must be less than my lifetime value. So this 460 per client is my lifetime value. Okay, that's 460 per client. The CPA cost per acquisition, let's go, let's pop back over here over to Google. Okay, we're back over here in Google. If we've acquired 11 customers and we have spent $1,480, it means I take 1,480 divided by 11. Total cost over all the months is $1,480 divided by 11. That's $134. $134 is our cost to gain a new client. Okay, so that's the important number. That 1480 was spent over the last four months. So on average, about 400, three to uh, about four to five hundred dollars a month. Um, so let me come back here and share this again. Okay. And let me pull open, um, let me pull open um, my text again. Okay. So to wrap this up, cost per acquisition, it's $134 per client. Lifetime value right now is, what did we say? That was 50, 60, dollars $460 per. Okay. That means that for every $134 that I spend, that she spends on ads, she's going to make $460. So here's the thing. Why is her lifetime value so high? Well, number one, it's therapy, right? But think through this because I want to apply this some, because a lot of you are affiliate marketers, a lot of you are internet marketers and you're saying, okay, well, this is just, you know, it's her own business. I mean, it's her own thing. You know, she has to get certified. She has to do all this stuff. And, you know, she puts out these ads. I mean, she literally just put up a website, named her business, got a logo done pretty cheap for less than $1,000 and started launching ads, okay? Um, not even 30 years old, okay? So um, there's neither are better. Google ads, Facebook ads, neither of them are actually better. It doesn't matter. Um, it depends on what you're most comfortable with and what, you know, if you're more of like a funny, entertaining marketer, um, you enjoy having fun, you enjoy kind of entertaining and bringing, you know, kind of a lively, uh, attentive audience, Facebook and Instagram is a place to go. Um, if you're more of like in a service, like let's say air conditioning or um, something that somebody would type in and actually just say, how do I, you know, whatever, uh, top rated uh, HVAC Phoenix, right? Something like that. So that fits more in the Google side of things. So if the cost per acquisition is $134 per client, the lifetime value is 460. Why is that lifetime value so high? Well, number one, it's therapy. So there's, there is just an intense relationship there where a lot of value is given. A lot of value is received in that. And I think for a lot of times for internet marketers, here's, here's my moral of the story of looking at these numbers and telling you this is number one, you got to know this. Okay. So number one, if you spend $500 on ads, you got to look at your numbers. And ultimately if it's like, well, this just isn't working out, then it's not necessarily that the funnel's broke. It's not necessarily that your ads are broke. One thing that you really should look into doing is how do I give more value? How do I provide and offer more value? And how do I sort of um, make a bond with these prospective leads, clients, customers? How do, I, how do I create more loyalty and give them more value to sort of tip the scales to where they want to pay me for something, where they want to buy for something, right? Um, and I mean, this is also the huge benefit of a recurring model, right? So some of you are actually, I think a lot of you are, um, um, you advertise or, or you promote um, the Marketers Club for Legendary, right? So don't undervalue what that $18 monthly thing can be for you, that paycheck can be. Um, it, it's only $30, but I mean, think about the take rate on that from our $7 offer to the, um, from the $7 offer to the marketers club offer right now, the take rate is something like it's somewhere in the range of 30 to 40%. Um, and don't quote me on that. Cause I, I didn't give an exact number, but it's in that range. Like it's pretty high. 
So from somebody who purchases $7 and then says, I want the, I want the marketers club upsell for $30 a month. That's a pretty high take rate, right? And you're going to make a commission on that every month. So when you start getting these people who are purchasing these things, if you can build sort of a relationship, make sure they get on the webinars, those kinds of things, you turn a one month kind of referral client into a six month, an eight month, a 12 month, a two year long thing. And suddenly that, you know, that measly little $18 a month thing that you're getting for somebody joining the marketers club, if they do it for a year, that's $216. So what if it, what if it takes you $216 to get a new client? Well, that's great. Just to get a $7 purchase. That's great. Because over the lifetime value, as long as you're able to do your job and we're able to do ours, you're going to not just break even, you're going to start to make some, some business blueprint bundle sales as well. So it's just a thought. It's just a thought. Again, I, I don't even really love to talk about legendaries affiliate offers and stuff like that on these webinars, mostly because I think what's more valuable than learning how to sell something really quick is you building a skill set that, that will make you money over the long term. That's the one thing I did differently. If you don't know my story, I've been around this industry for about 10 years. And when I first got started, I could barely get up the courage to do a webinar. I could barely get up the courage to even get on video. Um, but I, I'm not really more gifted. I'm not really more, I don't really have the talent. It's more that I just outlasted everybody else. I just stuck around long enough. I learned the skills. I learned Google. I learned Facebook. I stuck my nose in there when I didn't really know what was going on and just learned as much as humanly possible over and over and over again until I finally figured it out. So um, yeah, just a thought, just a thought. And um, as you guys are, are building this out, the CPA and LTV is something that should be on your desk. It should be around you. It should be all over your mind at all times. It's not everything, okay? So in some cases, like startups, they will... Um, in some rare cases, startups will have um, a cost per acquisition that is less than their lifetime value, and they do this for years. So, for instance, um, and then I'll wrap this up. Uber right now loses millions and millions of dollars. Uber is a massive company, and they've still not made in profit a dime. Still not profitable because there's a turning point at which their lifetime value switches, they think and, and theorize that their lifetime value will grow over their cost to acquire a new client and they won't have to keep acquiring new clients and then they, they can ride on that lifetime value, okay? So that's not proven. We don't really know. Uber doesn't even know, but that's the theory of, of why people are still giving them billions of dollars to fund that business. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, is that helpful? Is that helpful to you guys? That's one thing that like, it, I, this took me six, seven years to learn in this industry. No one knew it, I think. No one really taught it. Most people in this industry don't really teach actual marketing and customer acquisition um, and they don't really know how to do it. Greetings and welcome back. It's week four and I'm pumped today to talk to you a little bit about YouTube. Yeah. So over the last couple of days, what we've done is we've gone through how do, how do you spade advertising through Facebook ads, through Google ads. And look, that's all great and fine, but some of us don't have unlimited budgets, right? <laughs> and so what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into YouTube, how YouTube works. And we're going to dive into how to get free traffic with your YouTube video. Some of you are scared to use YouTube video. Some of you are scared to show up on video. Hey, guess what? Throughout this whole video, you're never going to see my face once, right? Because I'm using a screen recording tool called ScreenFlow. Uh, and and what it does is it allows me to record my screen and upload videos without ever having to show up on video. How cool is that? And lots of people have become famous on YouTube, have huge thousands of, uh, hundreds of thousands of, of subscribers on YouTube without ever showing their face, okay? It exists. It's a real thing. They make a lot of money, okay? So uh, number one, if you're uncomfortable with it, it don't, don't be scared away from it. But first, before we get too far into it, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about why YouTube is so powerful, all right? So let me, I'm going to pull open my little drawing tool here. And, and the reason I want to get into this is because some people don't understand how YouTube crafts their algorithm. And while I'm not going to get super deep into all of the inner workings of YouTube's algorithm, what I do want you to understand is they, they have specifically designed it in order to get new people exposure, okay? Exposure. They have designed their entire algorithm and business to get people exposure. For instance, if you're ever watching a video on YouTube, right? And the video ends or you pause during the video and these three little bubbles pop open and it says related videos, right? Related videos or videos you might like. The reason they do this is they're constantly testing new people and new videos in these related videos or over here on the sidebar on YouTube. There's more videos, more videos, more videos. They're always testing new people, right? And so it's an, it's an, it truly is probably one of the greatest um, opportunities to get free exposure on the internet today. I mean, the amount of exposure that you can get from YouTube is crazy. So the reason, and today I'm going to talk specifically about the four elements you've got to nail in order to really pull that off well. All right. So we're going to get into all of that now, but I just wanted to explain, look, the way that the fundamental way that YouTube has set up their whole business is to get people exposure and fast. Okay. Now building a YouTube channel does take a little bit of time, but guess what? It doesn't take any money, right? So time or money, which are you going to trade? The beautiful part about YouTube too, is you can use paid ads for your videos. In addition, they work congruently, right? So that's why there's such an incredible power of virality in building your YouTube channel and growing your subscriber base and monetizing your channel okay so today what we're gonna hit on are the four key elements of YouTube all right and I'm gonna blast through these this is gonna be a quick video to the point I'm gonna give you some helpful pointers tips screenshots and tools to use all right so first of all title title is number one number two is description number three is tags and number four is thumbnail I'm gonna tell you this right now loud and clear if you get these four elements right and you become a master of your craft with these four elements on YouTube you can make a lot of money you can build a huge subscriber base you can build a massive business through YouTube okay 
So a couple must use tools, and I want you to just write these down and keep them kind of in your back pocket to use them. TubeBuddy is number one, and VidIQ is number two. As of recording this video, you can get a free version of both of these. They're limited in their usage, but VidIQ, VidIQ's monthly subscription rate for their Pro is actually pretty cheap, okay? So it's you can just jump on and grab. I, I think they have an option that's less than $10 a month, and it's totally worth it. Um, but, but what these tools do is, is they install on your Google Chrome browser as extensions, and they'll give you statistics. They'll give you statistics on not only your videos, but the videos of others as well. So for instance, I, I took this screenshot uh, from my VidIQ plugin, and it's of a guy who is, he, he does lawyer, he does videos around law, lawyer videos, okay? So you can see it, it scores him on a score of, of one to, or zero to 100 on his vid IQ score, meaning that's essentially an SEO score, okay? And it's essentially an SEO score of how well he's he's designed his description and his end screens and his word count and all that stuff. It even gives you a checklist of things, okay? Um, it gives you, you know, all of the stats of the channel. He's got a million total views. He's got 3,000 average views, right? Um, he gets about 113 subscribers on a daily basis and he's got 36,000 total. So he's doing really well for himself, right? So, and then here's the powerful thing. You can see all of the tags and really what the tags are. Remember we talked in Google about search keywords? Well, it, this is essentially the same thing, right? So he's number one for single member LLC. When somebody searches that, this is the first video that pops up. You think that's powerful? I think so, because guess what? He has a vid this video title is literally the four biggest mistakes that single, single member LLC companies make. So, I mean, it's just, you can see he's dialed in the amount of tags and which ones, and he ranks for so many of them that he's just getting organic traffic. People are just finding his videos and he never has to pay a dime to do that, right? So the, the big benefit there of vidIQ is that they show you all of that for every single video on YouTube. Any video you want to see, every single video on YouTube, you can see it. And then when you post your own videos, it also pops up in your back office and it tells you, hey, here's what you're missing. Here's what you need to add in order to get a higher ranking for certain keywords that you want to use. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the strategy for keywords here in a second as well uh, when we get there. Okay, so... First of all, with the title, let me give you a couple pointers on the title. All right, first, you start with whatever your ideal avatar is typing into the search. So the best way to do this is go to YouTube and, and type in something like, how do I, how do I uh, run conversion campaign on Facebook, right? And, and you start to get into the mind of your ideal avatar. What are they going to type in? What is it that they're trying to learn specifically? And then you title your YouTube video exactly what somebody types into YouTube. <laughs> okay, so uh, for instance, how to make money online in 2019. That is one of the most searched things of all time. And you should name your video exactly that, right? So it has to contain whatever keyword that you're targeting. If you have a main keyword that you want to target or tag, keyword and tag are the same thing in this, in this conversation. Your title has to contain that exactly, okay? So for instance, how to create thumbnails for YouTube videos, how to find products for dropshipping, how to create a sales funnel fast, and how to place Facebook ads to get leads. These are all examples of things that people would literally just type into YouTube and hope to find right away. All right, so now with the description, do not try to reinvent the wheel with the description, all right? The description is something that people just kind of willy-nilly go and type in a bunch of random stuff and hope and pray that it works. Don't do this. Use what has already been proven to work. Okay, so here's the strategy. Go find five or so people who have 100,000 plus subscribers and follow their lead. Follow their lead on what their description is. So when you go to YouTube, okay, you, log, you, you type something into YouTube, click on a video. Beneath the video, there's going to be a read more or see more, and it's going to have this whole description of the video. Follow their lead. I mean, you can literally copy and paste exactly what they've got and then just change everything for to, to match yours because the description element of a YouTube video is it's not proprietary as long as you customize it and make it yours. So you make it yours, but you don't make it from scratch. You make it yours, but you don't make it from scratch. Hopefully that makes sense. So you just go and see what other people are doing, right? If they have a good score on their vidIQ and it's a great score up above 70, 80, 90, maybe 100, okay, that person really knows what they're doing. I'm just going to grab their description, literally copy it and paste it in the description of my YouTube video. And I'm going to just change all of the sentences and all of the links to match my stuff instead of their stuff. This is how some of the best YouTubers out there, you've heard of funnel hacking before when people go to somebody's funnel and they basically just make the same funnel. There's nothing proprietary about a funnel, right? There's, there's proprietary things about, for instance, courses, or, you know, if you came through this bootcamp and you, um, you took all the content and just started selling it yourself verbatim word for word, well, that would be an issue, right? But the description element of a YouTube video is not proprietary, all right? The tags. So like the title, these should be exactly what people are typing into YouTube. Exactly. All right. In the early days, if, or if your channel is new, if you're new to YouTube or if your channel is new, focus on long tail keywords, long tail keywords. If you don't know what that is, Google it. But essentially it's like this, how to place conversion ads to get leads on Facebook, not place Facebook ads. All right. So don't do place Facebook ads. This is not good. This is just a short keyword. This is a long tail keyword because it contains place Facebook ads, place Facebook ads. It's in there, but you're talking now specifically for conversion ads to get leads, which increase it. So there's going to be less people who search that potentially less people will search it. But here's the thing, because there's less people searching it, there's less competition and less, it increases the likelihood in the early days for you of getting free exposure. All right. So use vidIQ and TubeBuddy to monitor the effectiveness of your tags. And also, again, don't reinvent the wheel. If there's some search term that you, so, um, easy, let's say, let's say easiest tool to make sales funnels, right? Easiest tools to make sales funnels. You go on YouTube, search that right now, find the number one video and go look at all the tags they're doing. What's their description? How are they doing it? Right? What's the link they're sending people to? simple guys simple right and just use those it's not that complicated the only thing is um with people who are ranking a lot higher on uh, so so with people who have hundreds of thousands of subscribers the thing is is that they might be using more of the shorter uh tags because they have more influence and they're more likely to get a lot more views and get viewed for those bigger keywords stick to long tail keywords at least in the beginning all right now with the thumbnail the thumbnail is often overlooked but this is extremely important in terms of getting clicks and views all right it has to catch somebody's eye and drive curiosity if it doesn't you're not going to get as much exposure this is a big thing that a lot of people don't get right so for instance these are examples of ones that are not all that great you can see it's just his face and this is actually a, a guy that i consulted with his name is colton 
they're just not that great. It's just his face, right? And he hasn't put a lot of work into that. Uh, however, these ones down below are way, way better. They're bright. They have, you know, some of them have color borders around them and you can see the amount of views hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of views versus Colton's basically no views. It's not all due to the thumbnail. I'm not trying to pull one on you, but what I'm saying is that's way more likely to get clicked. And I'll show you an example because we actually did a fix up on a live webinar uh, for Colton on how to make that thumbnail. And I'll share that with you uh, here in just a second as well. Okay. So you got the thumbnail. Here's a couple helpful tools to create awesome thumbnails. All right. Number one is Canva, canva.com. Very simple, easy to use. Uh, you can use Photoshop or you can use Keynote and PowerPoint, which pretty much everybody has on their computer and it's pretty easy to design and use. And I'm going to share a video with you on how exactly to use that as well. Okay. So you can see, look at the redesign now. You can see how we took his current thumbnail, which is just terrible. I, no offense to you, Colton, at all. No offense. It's not anything about your appearance or anything, right? But you can see how we spiced it up, put a little words and text over it. And now, rather than it's three weird tips to create social media content fast and not how to create social media content, right? Three weird tips fast works for newbies, right? Oh, interesting. This looks amazing. Let's see what, let's see what happens. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, what I'm going to do to wrap this whole thing, if you need to go through this, cause I went through this quick, but if you need to go through this again, go through it again. Right. But you can just, I mean, literally if you're using a Mac, I'm using ScreenFlow for Mac. It's a couple hundred bucks. You can also use open broadcasting software or uh, open broadcaster studio OBS. And that's a free software for Mac or PC that you can record your screen. Or if you're using a PC, you can use Camtasia, C A M T A S I A Camtasia. Either any of those three softwares will work to record your screen if you're nervous about showing up on video, all right? But we've already went through a bunch of video tips earlier on in the bootcamp, right? And we did that in week two, go back through that and do it again. But look, here's the deal. What I'm gonna share with you after after I finish this up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you over to a video that I recorded with Colton that I showed him exactly how to do these thumbnails. I do them in Keynote on a Mac, but you can do them on a PC in PowerPoint the exact same way. And it's super powerful. It's been proven to get way more clicks and uh, exposure. So uh, I think you're gonna love it. And here's, here's your assignment for today. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to create a video. If you don't have a YouTube channel, create a YouTube channel today. Go to youtube.com, create a YouTube channel. It's very simple. All right. I want you to post your first video on YouTube. All right. I want you to post your first video on YouTube within the next day or two. And I want you to dial in the title. I want you to dial in the description. I want you to dial in the tags and I want you to dial in the thumbnail. All right. And I want you to submit that YouTube video in the comments of today's, uh, of day 27. I want you to submit it in the comments. I want to see it. And I want to be able to give you feedback on what you can make better, what you could adjust and what you, what you could change. I don't care if this video is two minutes long or 20 minutes long. I won't go through a whole 20 minute video, but look, it doesn't matter. It can be two minutes long. It can be you sitting there with your iPhone. I mean, if you're sitting there right now, you're watching this and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this. Pull out your freaking iPhone, turn on the camera and say, Hey, my name's Matt. Welcome to this video. Uh, I'm going through a, a, a bootcamp right now. Uh, it's, a, it's a marketing challenge and I want to create this video. I want to share the top three things that I've learned throughout this bootcamp. Number one, uh, I just found out about YouTube ta title tags, descriptions, and thumbnails. And this is going to be a little experiment with that. Number two, I learned all about writing killer ad copy and the importance of ad copy and emails and follow up and building no like and trust factor. Number three is I learned how to create congruency and sales funnels. And I had no clue about it before, but uh, it's a little known thing where if you don't create congruency from the very start of your funnel all the way to the end, you're just, you're never going to make it because people are going to drop off and your conversions are going to be too low. You're not going to be able to, to make a profit on your ads. All right. So anyway, thanks for sticking with me through this video. I'm going to create more content as we go. Uh, but again, my name is blah, blah, blah. Subscribe to my channel. If you want more videos like this that are short, punchy to the point, and we'll see you next time. So something like that, I mean, look, that took one minute, but it was just point right to the point. I wasn't, you know, um, uh, um, eh, uh, it was just right to the point. Here's three things. I hadn't even thought of those before I started shooting this video. So, so what'll happen is over time, you'll get better at it, but I want you to shoot the video. I want you to get it up there and I want you to commit to dialing in your title, your tags, your description and your thumbnail. And look, I, I can't promise a lot, but your channel will grow. If you dial in these things, your channel will grow. If you dial in these things, I promise you that. All right. I'm going to send you over to a short little clip where I walk through how to create, um, how to create really awesome thumbnails in Keynote or PowerPoint. I've just found that to be one of the easiest places for me. You can use Canva, you can use Photoshop, you can use whatever you want, but these seem to be uh, the easiest for me. Cool. So here's, here's what I would do. Here's what I would do if I were you is number one, um, just work on the on the background, right? So are you shooting this one like from a laptop and it's pointed up at you or? Bro, I travel across the country, so I, I'm just doing it wherever I am. Cool. So, just, so I'm the on, only, um, I'm on the little tripod thing that I have it set on right there. Okay, cool. So the only thing I would recommend that, that can really help is having the camera uh, the same height as you. So it doesn't really matter what camera you're doing or where you're at or anything. Just if you can set it on a stack of books or on a shelf or on a whatever, just ha so you, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, so that's your, eye, your eye level. So they're not looking up at you, yeah. Yeah. All right, so, so what I'm going to do first of all with the video is is uh, I'm just going to grab like this because it's a little bit eye-catching. Um, and I'm going to go grab it and I'll just, I'll, I'll do a quick little screen capture. All right. Um, so this is one way that you can do it. This is one way that you can do it. Um, Go to Keynote. Um, hang on one second, I need to exit out of this. There we go. Okay, so if I'm in Keynote, I'm gonna go, and one thing you gotta make sure if you're creating these is that you need to do wide slide size and not the uh, standard. So it needs to be 16 by nine, okay? And then if I go and delete this stuff out and then paste in that screen share that I just got, I can just put it right in there and then make it that big, good to go. So now I've got a little bit of a thumbnail I can start to work with. Um, but actually, to be totally honest, I usually don't even do something like this. For, for most YouTubes um, that are gonna really grab people's attention, I like to look at something like this guy here. And I, I think he's, I don't know. 
let's see. Um, here we go. So he focuses on a, and I, even some of his stuff, I'm, it's not my style, but what I'll do is I'll go to videos and I will go to, um, uh, let's see, sort by most popular. So, um, so notice how like his face isn't even on these. You can put your face on them, but his face isn't even on it at all. But so, so what I'll do is, and remember what your, the title of your video is, is how to create content on social media. So I'm going to leave your face on here for a second and I'll show you one version that you can do that would have your face on it. So just for everybody who's here, um, a good font to use on these, um, cause a lot of times this is where people get hung up is like, well, what font do I use? And how do I make it? I usually use something called impact. All right. And then, um, and then let's just do like a bright green. I'm not sure why I have a background on this. Hang on, bear with me. How to create content for social. Now, one really important thing that I'd recommend that you do, um, Colton, just from a copywriting standpoint is, which by the way, Colton, do you have time to, are you good or do you have to take off or anything? No, dude, bro, I'm, I'm driving for an hour and a half right now. Awesome. So what I would do is I would always add little things at the end or in your, um, in your, uh, uh, thumbnail that says something like hint works for newbies, right? Or something like that, that kind of draws the curiosity. Does that make sense? For beginners, like for beginners, okay. like I would create social media content, hashtag for beginners or just slash for beginners. Like yep. that, right? Like a little tag at the end. All right. Yep. 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 Totally. Um, okay. So I'm going to do like a hundred point font. So if you wanted to do something like this, you could do something like this. Um, you could put it over your face. You could even darken. You could go like this and do the opacity a little bit like that. So you have it as a background. There's a lot of things you can do here. Um, but, um, Okay, so in terms of, now let me go back to my examples. All right, so the word's kind of a little crooked. All right, so let's do this. This should be impact as well. This should be impact as well. There we go. All right, so I would do, you know, something, I would make this a little bit off kilter like this. All right, and then, you know, this this might not be the best like font color. I don't know. Um, so my, 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 my next question is, how, how do you become time efficient with these? Because doing this daily with what I have now might be a little rough. So do you suggest maybe so, like, like today, like the four hours I got today, I need to sit down and create like four videos. And so Colton, so Colton you, what, especially with thumbnails. All right. So let's just, let's actually just mirror exactly what we are looking at here on the screen with thumbnails. Um, the big thing with thumbnails is you create one and get a good one. And then from there, every other one that you create is easy to make. Okay. Right. Just okay. use that same exact, use that same exact template. So I'm just going to create a little square and I'm going to try to make this as fast as possible. So let's do a border line border that looks like this. Um, look, you can get as fancy as you want, but I'm just going to, we're going to crank this thing out here. Okay. So boom, there, now we got a border. All right. Let's see. Let's bring this in a little bit. Boom. There we go. Got a border. All right. So now let's go with, um, oops. Uh, so for the text. All right. So we're going to go with red text. Um, and then you can add little things like, like one, one thing that really makes, um, thumbnails pop and makes the text pop is, uh, is a shadow. So, um, you can do, Let's see here, style, impact, I think it's right here. Yeah, a shadow, like a little text shadow will really pop. So I usually do like a down into the right text shadow. Um, I will blur it a little bit. Make it okay, so I am jumping in here. Our live webinar was actually, um, <laughs> we had some technical difficulties and it closed down. Um, so uh, I just went ahead and finished what I had been uh, kind of explaining just a second ago. And uh, so here's just a couple things that I did on uh, this little uh, thumbnail. So you can see that the screenshot I took it's this big, right? So the screenshot that I took is is bigger than what's actually going to show. What's going to show is inside of this blue area for the thumbnail, okay? So the thumbnail will look something like this when it's at full, well, that's a little too big, but something like this when it's at full size. Let's do this. There we go. It'll look something like this when it's at full size, right? So you'll notice a couple things that I have going here. I have this border, which I already kind of walked through. Then I also have a little, you can't really see it, but, I, but basically what I did is I created a, a, a square that's it's black. You can see the color fill is black. And then what I did is I just made the opacity like 27, right? So you can make this darker or light as light as you want. Um, so I just kind of thought about 25% is pretty good, but you can lighten or darken that to make sure that these words are totally readable. That's the main piece that you want here is you want to make sure those are totally readable. So you can do that on any of these different elements. Okay. So <clears throat> this is just, so, so the main reason that I prefer to do this on a keynote or PowerPoint, it's just me. There's no right or wrong is just because you can take, um, you know, now that I have this, I, ha I don't have to recreate all this text and the formatting and everything. I just have it ready to go and I can kind of throw in screenshots or background photos or other images really quickly and easily. So, um, where it says, you know, three rare tips to create social media content fast. Um, you can, you can dra obviously drag this around or move it around on the screen or whatever. Now, uh, during the live webinar, a lot of people commented, you know, hey, why don't you use Canva? Canva is also great. Look, if you want to go play around with Canva, go for it. Um, but you can just, once I, I, what I learned is once I got really good at, um, at, at figuring this process out, it became so fast and so easy for me to, to uh, create these types of uh, thumbnails in, in Keynote. So that was just, that was just only my preference. And, you know, you got to just find what works well for you. Um, but this thumbnail here is going to just well, well, well outperform what he's currently using, and it will guarantee get more clicks, more traffic, et cetera. So, uh, Colton, hopefully this works for you. I will send you a, uh, <clears throat> a little screenshot. That if you want to replace your current thumbnail, you can. 
Um, but otherwise, just for everybody who's watching, um, just take note, take heed that, um, you know, if you can start creating thumbnails like this with big, big colorful words and borders and stuff, you're going to get more clicks, you're going to get more traffic, you're going to get more views, and you're ultimately your channel is going to grow faster. So hopefully that's helpful. Okay, greetings and welcome back. It's day 28 in the bootcamp. I'm pumped that you're here, pumped that you made it. And today I have some really great stuff for you. So uh, what you're going to see after I wrap up this little introduction is the, the main five things that you can be doing right now to increase conversions for yourself. Okay, I get the complaint a lot that says, or, or where people say, I just can't get conversions. I can't get my funnel to convert. Well, I'm going to share with you a few ways of how to feed your funnel, get traffic to your funnel. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you five tips on how you can actually start converting some of those people faster. I'm even going to take you into my personal Instagram profile. I'm going to open up the app and share the app screen with you. I'm going to share a little bit about YouTube and thumbnails. Um, I'm going to go into how to create one piece of content daily. All right. And I'm just going to, I'm going to walk you in through the email. I'm going to walk you in through the social media. I'm going to walk you through the webinar piece as well. So you can start to get conversions faster and easier in your business because it's one thing to get eyeballs on whatever product or service that you're selling. It's a whole nother thing to actually get people to buy. Right. And this is huge. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to launch you into about a 45 minute webinar training, maybe a little bit longer than that. And it is going to be very powerful. So be sure to take notes and get ready. I decided to title today's webinar, the number one frustration facing most online entrepreneurs. And Look, I hate headlines like this for the most part, but I really, really feel like there is just, there's one common issue that I feel keeps coming from people, which is usually something like, I can't get conversions. I can't get conversions or I'm struggling with conversions. Just type to me real quick. If you're in the online space, you've been digital marketing and you're struggling with conversions. Is that a struggle for anybody here? You can raise your hand. Robert, I see that. Brian, Christina, Bonnie. Okay. Casey, Matt, Kevin, Justina, Maria, DeWitt. Okay. okay. So a lot of times, for those of you who are new, here's, here's kind of the journey. Can I just, I'm going to draw my screen real quick. Okay, I'm going to move this around and we're just going to rock this while we're here. So a lot of times, okay, here's, here's the journey. And for, for anybody here who's new, watch this and, and pay close attention. And for any of you who are, who have been a little more seasoned and you're in the game and you understand this a little bit better, what I want you to take away from this is I want you to be able to teach this to other people. But this is what I call a vaccination or a vaccine, okay, a vaccine. So when it comes to vaccinations, they, they literally take a needle and they stick something in your body that's unhealthy. It's not great for you. It's usually so, you know a flu shot or a, a vaccine, I guess, would be like for mumps or something like that, right? They give you a little minor dose of it so that what? What's, why, would they, why would they inject or put something bad in your body? That doesn't make much sense. Type to me. Type in the chat. Why would, what's the purpose of a vaccine? What's the point? Like if they don't want you to get mumps, why would they inject you with a little bit of mumps? Seems like kind of a backwards. Why, why do they do that? Type to me. Give me some feedback. Type in the chat. What's the purpose? What's the point? Protection. How does that protect you? How does injecting a disease into somebody, you know, like how does that work? What's the purpose? So your body can fight it off. So your body fights it off to expose you with the disease. So you develop antibodies to fight the disease, right? So your immune system builds an immunity to it. Okay. So in the same way that that happens with a vaccine, maybe when you're a baby or whatever, we're not going to get into the whole vaccination <laughs> discussion or, or uh, argument, but when, when you're young and you get vaccinated, right? Think of this the same way. So a lot of times here's, here's kind of the journey of most entrepreneurs in general. Okay. And I'm not even talking online. I'm talking, I went to the gym. Let me tell you about this guy. I went to the gym. And uh, I'm, I'm going to blank on his name, but anyway, him and his wife decided to start this little, uh, so I live in Phoenix. So there's a lot of like Mexican kind of taco places, dessert places. So they start a Mexican dessert, a Mexican, uh, dessert, dessert, uh, restaurant. Right. And they're pumped because, you know, we're going out on our own. We're starting our own thing. And we're going to take control of our lives. And we're going to make things and just the whole thing, right. We're going to be free. We're going to have this business. It's going to be super fun, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So they're going to do this and they got cheap rent and they're all excited and whatever else. Right. So there's just this excite. There's this journey. There's this journey, right. That goes from sort of like this happy face to, it's not a sad face. It's not an angry face, but it's sort of this face. If you've ever seen this emoji where it's like, um, I'm confused. This isn't what I expected. Anybody been there? Just quick hand raise. Anybody been from this? Like, here we go. I'm so excited. And now I'm like, well, <laughs> right. Ah, this isn't exactly what I thought this was going to be like. We got a couple. Okay. So if you're not there yet, I'm just giving you the little vaccination. It's coming. Now, if you are there or have been there, you know that the next stage that comes is, is probably a little bit of frustration, right. Or a little bit of, uh, or a little bit of anger even, right. My great drawings here. Okay. Like I'm a little bit angry. I'm a little bit pissed off. I'm a little bit worried. Right. I'm a little bit frustrated. I'm a little bit scared. Right. Because what I thought was going to happen, how I thought this might all go down is not quite how I thought it was going to go down. Right. So people, people only see usually like, like they, their, their eyes here in this stage are usually dollar signs. Okay. And then by the time they get here, it's like, they're like, they want to scream. And this is kind of the journey where it gets to, I can't get conversions is usually here where it's like, Oh, I set up my funnel and I set up my emails and I set up my ads and I got it all running. And then nobody's buying anything. I mean, this is, this is on repeat all day long for most digital entrepreneurs. They can't figure out how to get that first dollar. They can't figure out how to make it work. Right. And, and so they, they set everything up and actually what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to reshare this here real quick. So bear with me. I'm going to reshare this. And so they set up, for instance, here's kind of the journey or here's kind of what this looks like in practice, in, just in real world. Like, here's what it looks like. You have a, a squeeze page. I'm going to go through this little funnel flow for you. You have a sales page, order page, thank you page, whatever. Right. So for most, and this is just a really basic funnel flow. So a squeeze page is where you have your name and email. This is where you have your video that sells somebody something. And then they have a checkout page and then a thank you page. Okay. So a lot of people come in as affiliates. So they really only focus on the squeeze page and sales page or, or bridge page. But with this funnel flow, 
Okay. Usually, usually people conquer this and then they get their, they get their squeeze page integrated with a, some sort of email autoresponder, right? So when you enter your name, email and hit submit, they start getting emails. So what I, what I see most frequently, or at least very frequently with online entrepreneurs is I see this level of excitement and I'm, I'm super pumped because I got all this stuff set up and now all I got to do is what? Get traffic, right? I just got to figure out how to get traffic to this whole damn thing. So, so once they start that process, let me clear this out here. Bear with me. Clear. They, they realize that they need to start feeding the, the funnel. They realize that they need to start getting people to this page. This is what we call internet traffic. Okay. So for those of you who are here live, can you give me some examples of where we might get traffic from? Where would, how do we feed this funnel? How do we get people onto this page so we can get leads, start to get prospects and start to get sales and people to purchase blog ads, Facebook. What else? Keep typing to me, type in the chat, type in the chat, LinkedIn content creation. Okay. Good, 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 good. Social media. That's good. Paid ads, blogs, Facebook, Google. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So different places like this, right? So Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, WordPress, Medium, blog platform, right? So those are just a few examples. I could add Google here, but these are a few examples. And really the goal, really the goal of let's say an affiliate marketer or a digital marketer is to figure out how to get people from these and, and other platforms too. These are just a couple examples from these platforms over to their website to start collecting leads. And that's where the whole journey starts. All right. Now, the problem with this, the problem for most people that most people have is then how do I get these people to convert? So what most people throughout their journey, what most, not most, but what happens for a lot of people is they figure out Instagram or they figure out YouTube or they figure out Facebook or they figure out blogging. They start to get comfortable with blogging on medium.com, which by the way, if you're not on medium.com, it's a great place to, to, to post blogs because the domain is so built up on, on Google search engine that you can probably get better SEO with a medium blog. It doesn't offer all the functionality, but you know, so, so where they'll get comfortable with Facebook ads and they'll place a bunch of Facebook ads and they'll start to get a bunch of traffic to their Facebook ads. And what happens is once they start to get people here, they just don't really like they'll get leads, but then they won't purchase. Like there's no money flowing out of it. They can't figure out this kind of final piece. Does that make sense? Am I, am I explaining this frustration clearly for those of you who have done this? Like, oh, Charlotte, hit the hand raise button. Am I explaining this really clearly? Avika, Casey, Brian, Rollins, Robert, Thomas, Robert, Maria, Peter, Evadne, Christina, Justina, Cliff, got it, Daniel. So this is the ultimate kind of frustration. Now, if you're not there yet and you're like, well, geez, I haven't even figured out this first thing. Here's what you do. You take out a pen and paper and you write down, because I'm going to go through five different ways, five different things you can be doing on a daily basis to re-engage your audience on these different platforms, to drive them back, to drive them to the sales page and to start generating sales. Okay. So I'm going to give you five tips today. If you're taking notes, which I don't know if you like to take notes or not, but if you're taking notes, write these freaking things down, burn them into your memory and start doing them, start doing them. Okay. And if you're not there yet, take notes. Okay. Make a strategized game plan where you say to yourself, okay, I remember uh, I watched that first webinar and I wasn't quite at the place of not getting conversions, but now I got my ads running. I'm going to go reference that training back again. Okay. I'm going to go reference my notes back again. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to give you five tips. And, um, and I'm going to give you some hints and tips in terms of how to go about these different strategies. All right. So tip number one is to email your list daily. A lot of people have confusion around, well, how often should I email my list is two to three times a day, uh, too much. Here's my strategy. Always email daily. Okay. The more emails you send out, the more likely it is that you produce sales. Okay. Email daily, especially in the early days, every single day, they should always be getting an email at least one. If you're doing a sort of special webinar or a special launch, or you have a product that you're, you're really excited about. And let's say, okay, so let's say that on a calendar, um, I'm going to just draw a quick little calendar for you. Okay. Let's say that there's a product that's, that's launching, uh, on Saturday. Okay. Saturday. And that's the, that's the only day to purchase it is on Saturday on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and Friday leading up to that day. I'm going to be emailing two or three times a day. Hey, the cart opens on Saturday. Saturday is the one day you can purchase. It only, it's only open on Saturday. You can't purchase any other day of the week. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to harp on this and I'm going to email two to three times a day. Normally I'm not going to do that. Normally it's going to be once per day. Okay. Just type to me in the chat. Did, am I explaining that clearly? Do you have any questions about that? Email your email list daily. And what I mean by your list is I mean people who have subscribed to your email list and want to learn more. So maybe they went to a Facebook ad. Okay. They hit the opt-in page. Remember the opt-in page and they subscribe. They gave your name and email. So in that case, you need to be emailing out to these people every single day. Now let's take a look actually, because I think this would be helpful at one of Dave's email. And, and let's talk through a few things that you can be doing to put in there to make it more clear. So this is uh, an email. I believe that Dave sent this out this morning, actually. And I just snapped a screenshot. I want you guys to point out a couple of the key things before I jump in and give you all the key things. I want you to type to me in the chat. What are some key elements that you think are in this email that we can point out and that you guys can write down to always include in your emails? Can you guys type to me in the chat? Just give me a little, what are, what are some important pieces from this email that are important that we can point out and notate about how Dave uh, structures his emails? Nothing. <laughs> it's easy to read. Okay. But what are some elements here? What are some, what are things that are actually in the email? Okay, great. He's got a picture. Okay. This is awesome. And if you guys look, if you don't know how to do this, just walk outside and snap a little picture. And if you want to put words on it like this, you can use something. It's a free tool called Canva. Okay. Write that down canva.com. Then you can put words on it just like this. Okay. Um, it's broken into bite-sized pieces. Yeah. So it's small little pieces. That's really good. Look at the PS. Okay. If you guys have emails and you don't have a PS with a call to action, always recommend that. All right. There's a call to action right here that says, 
watch here. So he's got two different calls to action, right? He has bold words in his emails, right? The words stop, stop creating FOMO, gain loyal customers. He's not just bolding random stuff, right? He's bolding the main big things that he wants people to see. What about down here? Links to his social media. So some of you might have a bunch of emails loaded up, okay? In your email autoresponder account. Maybe you could just go and add something just like this, right? So rather than, and here's the thing, Dave's been around a while, right? And, and people know him. So he says, stay legendary. That's his branding. You know what I would do? If I were you, I would make it even more clear. I would make it more clear. I would say something like, find me on social media. And then it would have Instagram, it would have Facebook, you can have Snapchat, you can have whatever you want, right? Then there's also a disclosure. If you guys don't have a disclosure, but you're marketing email, whatever marketing products, there should be a disclosure. So if yours don't have that, just take this exact one right here and just go at it, okay? Just go at it, it's very simple, okay? Bold, important words, highlights, okay, call to action. Um, so these are the different pieces and elements, okay? So I would recommend two different calls to action. If you have one, that's okay. Look, there's not a, there's not a like, you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong kind of thing, okay? But in the online space, one of the best ways to learn is just to watch and observe somebody you'd like to emulate, whose results you'd like to emulate, okay? So it's not that he's doing it right and somebody else is doing it wrong or you're doing it right and he's doing it wrong. It's just a matter of learning and implementing different pieces. So calls to action, put an image in, that's you with a little bit of words on it, right? And this is actually, this is a YouTube thumbnail. So he's pulling a YouTube thumbnail, he's using it for YouTube and he puts it right into his emails. So he use it, utilizes it both. Um, um, you know, a call to action here. Let me know your questions, video topic requests, reply to this email and let me know. This is actually a third call to action because he's got one here, he's got one watch here and he has, hey, reply back. And if you guys are new, okay, and you're new to the game, you don't have a brand like Dave, I want to hear from you is in a very powerful phrase because sometimes people aren't comfortable taking action, purchasing something from you. But a lot of times people are comfortable saying, hey, can you tell me more about this? Hey, could I jump on a call with you and you can tell me more about this digital thing you're selling, whatever, okay? So even if you're an air conditioning guy or if you're a freaking uh, dentist or whatever, right? Hey, I want to hear, so if I was a dentist, and I was writing these emails and say, hey, look, I want to hear from you, okay? What's, what's, the, what's the one thing holding you back from booking an appointment with me or with us? Let's say they haven't booked in, in a year for a checkup. Hey, I want to hear from you. Let me know. What, is there anything we can do better to make you more comfortable? Can we get you on the schedule as soon as possible? Hit the hand raise button. Does that make sense how powerful that is? Because then it's not, hey, go book an appointment for me, the dentist guy, right? It's just, hey, let's talk about it. Can you tell me a little bit, you know, what do you got going on internally? Is there anything I can do to help? Is there anything we can talk about? And just leave it open-ended, okay? It's really powerful. In fact, Here's, here's something of real value to you. One of the best converting emails of all time that I've ever written, the subject line looked like this. It said, just check in, in, dot, dot, dot. And this was an apostrophe. So it wasn't just checking in, it was just checking in, right? Just checking in. That's all it said. Now, this doesn't sound very businessy, right? There's nothing capitalized. The punctuation's not great. And the open rates on this was, I don't, honestly, I don't remember what the open rates were, but they were way higher than most of my other businessy type emails. The open rates were much, much higher. And then in the email, I just said, hey, and then I would put in their first name in the email. Okay, I would just say, hey, Robert, hey, Connie, hey, Matt, hey, Robert, whatever, hey, Christina. Um, um, hey, I just haven't heard from you in a while and just thought I would check in and just see how you're doing. Is there any questions that you have? Um, you know, have you started with whatever? If I was selling a course on Facebook ads, I'd say, hey, are you still running Facebook ads? You know, do you need help with it? Whatever. Okay, so that kind of subject line, just because back when email was created, we forget this, but back when email was created, it was created to, to use between friends. Like that was the point. And so the original has now been so inundated with business and that's okay. But when you, when you kind of dive in a unique way and it sounds and feels more personal, it's a game changer for your brand and how people perceive you, okay? So there's usually a PS here and then links to social, all right? So if you don't already have these, put your links to social in there, okay? And then a little disclosure at the bottom. Is that helpful? Just hit the hand raise if that's helpful for you. Good to see you, by the way, Deanne. Good to see you. Hey, hit the hand raise button if this is just helpful to kind of break this kind of stuff down for you. Okay, good. Lots of hands. Awesome. We got a full house today here, by the way. Thanks for popping in, everybody. Um, for us, um, yeah, Justina, so if you're an affiliate, then uh, you're an affiliate marketer, just put that little thing at the bottom of your emails. Otherwise, no, you don't need to do that. If your emails are going out though, and they have links to affiliate products, it's important that you have a, some sort of a disclosure here at the bottom, okay? Um, okay, so that's number one. Number one was email your list daily, okay? Number two is post to social media three plus times per day, okay? Now some people get really overwhelmed and oh my gosh, how am I gonna do this? This is so overwhelming, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Look, if there's, if there's any doubt in your mind what I should be doing in terms of social media posting, focus on two platforms, okay? And just get started. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm actually gonna share my screen on my iPhone here in a second. But Instagram and Facebook are your two main platforms to get on and start posting to immediately, okay? Yes, you can use a VA to post, totally. Use Upwork.com or uh, freelance.com, I think it is. Um, yes, you can definitely do that. Now, here's the thing. On Instagram, okay? And I'm gonna share with you a couple really easy ways to get started just posting around stuff that you're already interested in, okay? Just stuff you're already freaking interested in. So let me, um, let me, let me, let me share, new share. And let me see if I can share... Um, I'm going to just, I'm actually going to share with you my, my screen here. So bear with me um, from my phone. Yes. So share. And I want you to, when you can see my iPhone screen on yours, just hit the, hit the like, this is how zoom, by the way, is an extremely powerful webinar platform, but uh, hit the, hit the, 
the hand raise button, if you can see my screen, okay? This is my actual screen. You can see up here at the top, I got David Sharp right there. Um, so posting stuff like this, right? So you don't need to get all fancy like this, but it's not that complicated. Like this right here, it's not that complicated. All right, and I'm gonna show you kind of how to do it, all right? But basically, if you just go and create an Instagram account, okay? So if you go on Instagram and you just create an Instagram account, look, the first thing that you can start doing is just to start making a couple posts, all right? So if I go down here at the bottom, bottom middle, you see that plus symbol, okay? Okay, you can hit that and um, let's see, you can hit add and uh, let's see here, just give me one sec, you can hit add and um, photo. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so you can see my screen now, right? Can you guys see my screen on the screen share? Okay, I have my slide open here. Now you can see my note for this slide. <laughs> all right, so let me turn it around and, uh, and I'll just say something like this. Okay, so now you're in my office, all right? We're in my office. Hey, it's Matt, welcome in, right? I can do a video, all right? So here we go. I'm going to do a bit. Can I, should I do a video for you guys right now? Actually, I'll do a video for you guys in just a second. Um, so that's one way to do it. The other way is up here at the top left. You see this little um, camera icon at the top left of the screen. Okay. All right. So now this is called posting to like a story. Okay. So there's a bunch of different options. You can add music to it. Okay. You can, um, you can create. So this is the easiest and fastest way for you guys to do this, which is to create something. Okay. So what I did at the very bottom of the screen is I, as I'm scrolling down there at the bottom. So where it says create, I hit this and I say, uh, you know, welcome or welcome to, my new Instagram account. Okay. So, so what's, what's one easy way to start adding content to your thing. Okay. Number one is you can screenshot or take photos, right? So look at this. You want to see a really easy post. Watch this. All right. I just got this new book. Okay. I just got this new book called rhinoceros success. Now watch this. If I have a great, if I have a great quote from this, I'm gonna open my book right now. All right. Um, um, uh, all right. So there's, there's this kind of theme throughout this book called, uh, declare, declare yourself a rhino. Okay. So I just type that in there. Now the background of that doesn't look super clear. So there's a cool little tool that you can do that does this and sets like kind of a background to it. Okay. So I'm going to try to kind of make it match the color of the book. So, I mean, look, you don't have to be a freaking graphic designer. You can also just do, you know, blue, whatever. All right. Now I can click and I can drag this around. All right. But boom, in just a matter of one second, boom, I just have a little bit of content, right? And, I'm, and, and if, I, if I don't like myself, I can just drag and find a good filter, right? <laughs> okay, so now I'm looking steadily. I can also add, um, let's say I want to add a hashtag, okay? So rhinoceros, rhinoceros. And I bet if I go to success, there's probably a hashtag. See it? Rhinoceros success, there it is. And if I tap it, it'll appear differently, okay? So let's do this one. And I'll just bring it down right here. You guys see that? You guys see how easy that is? Just hit the hand raise if you guys see how clearly and quickly and fast I can just create stuff. I can also hit this little thing up here and do like, I could do a poll or I could do a quiz, right? Or I could do, if I wanted to call to action somebody to chat with me, I can hit the chat, right? And we'll name the chat Rhino, okay? So they can, if I wanted to say, um, have you read this? Let's chat about it, right? Something like that. And then I could put this right here. Something like that. You guys got it? You guys get this? Okay. And now I can, I can post that to my story down there at the bottom. And it'll also give me the option as well. Okay. Uh, in the settings, usually on your first time that you do that, it'll also give me story settings where I can post it to Facebook down here at the bottom as well. Share your story to Facebook. All right. So then I have literally taken care of that completely. I've literally taken care of that completely. Right. Does that make sense to everybody here? I have now posted to Instagram and Facebook and I just posted in like 30 seconds. Okay. Now another cool little trick and tip that you can do is you can just come on here and go live. Okay. So I can go live on Instagram right now and just start spitballing about whatever it is. So let's say I was reading Rhinoceros Success. Okay. So here I got my Rhinos, Rhinoceros Success book and I'll just tell you what guys, um, man, I just read this little paragraph called never lose your sense of humor. All right. It was a game changer, but I just read never lose your sense of humor. And lately I've been so stressed out about life. I've been so stressed out about my business and so stressed out about trying to figure out how to post social media content. You know, this freaking guy just said, Hey, just don't lose your, don't lose your freaking sense of humor. Just have a little lightheartedness about things. Okay. Just chill out. Just relax a little, right? It was really refreshing. So hopefully today, during your day, whatever it is today, you know, I'd recommend this book has been great for me. Right now, for success, it's been an awesome book. But also just, hey, take a deep breath. Realize it's all going to be okay. You'll be fine. All right, peace out. Take it easy. Okay. Now, look, guys, I have developed the ability to go on video and just boom, 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 right? This just comes with practice and time. I used to be really nervous. I used to sweat a lot. I always, I always do this with people, right? I, I literally, this is completely dry. <laughs> My armpits, not sweating at all, okay? There's a, there's a ton of people on this webinar. We have a bunch of people every week who attend these. Just, I just am not nervous at all. It doesn't make me nervous anymore because I got used to doing it. Okay. You got to get used to doing it, right? You got to get used to doing this kind of stuff. If you don't want to be the face of everything, then just go on your Instagram and just type like I just showed you and connect it to your Facebook and then boom, they'll interact with each other. Okay. So if you're scared to show yourself, if you're scared to whatever, just you're at some level, you're going to have to come to the realization that life is short. 
And if people see you and make fun of you, or you're scared of how you look, like, guess what? In five, 10 years, none of that's going to matter. It's kind of like when we're little in middle school and we have, you know, like a, a hole in our jeans or a hole in our pants or something, or like a seam rips on our, in our underwear showing me it's like the end of the world. And then you get a year or two later and it's literally like no one in the world has a clue that that even happened. That's the same thing that will happen with you going on video. If 10 people think, wow, what, what a loser fest, <laughs> right? What a loser fest. All that says is, well, number one, it says a lot more about them than it does you. But look, even if it's true in a year from now and six months from now, no one's going to care or remember. And if somebody does, they really just have no life. Okay. But it's the practice that eventually a year down the road, somebody new is exploring your, your Instagram because they found you randomly or somebody told, told them about you. And then by that time you're so seasoned, they come onto your video and they're like, oh my gosh, this person is electric. They know what's going on. Okay. What if I can't create content though, Matt? This is the question all the time. Well, but what, I, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? Like, well, I don't know what to think about. What, I don't have anything to share. Write this down. Learn it, do it, teach it. Learn it, do it, teach it. Okay. So even if it's a mindset hack, like Rockstar Success is all about the secret to change it, to charging full speed towards every opportunity. Well, if you implement some of the stuff that's in that book, okay. And if you're soaking training and information in some of you around a 15 day challenge, every single day, there's going to be one big takeaway, if not multiple. Well, you should be sharing that with the world, right? You should be sharing the power of that and how your mind is changing and how your actions are changing with the world. To share it along the way, document your process, right? You wake up one morning and you're freaking out because you're out of money. Go on, go on Instagram and say, man, I, I'm, this is day 21 of me trying to build my business and try to figure this online thing out. But man, I'm struggling. This is like a very real struggle. I'm, I'm having a hard time. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Send, these kind of posts, Deanne, can go straight to your, to your mailing list too. Totally. Okay. So um, number three, create one or more pieces of content daily. I look, if you're, if you're new to the game, if you're new to this online space, right, there's a million things you can do a million. My suggestion to you all is just to start with a single piece of content a day. Okay. Just one, a good example of this is a guy named Sean Lowry. He's been a part of our masterminds for years now. He's actually telling us a story of the mastermind about how, when he was first getting started online in 2017, he went to a mastermind event and uh, he had to walk in the middle of summer. He had really no money in his bank account. He spent everything he could to get to this event in Vegas. And in the middle of summer, him and his buddy walked two miles from their thing to a Western union to get money that had been wired there by another friend to help them pay uh, for their way back to North Carolina. And now he has a prolific fishing brand. Okay. And he's been helped by our masterminds to build an audience. And really all he does is create a video a day. That's really all he does. One video a day. Okay. And um, check this out. I'll actually show you his, I'll show you his uh, Facebook. Okay. Bear with me here. And I'll show you his YouTube because he creates all of his videos. Uh, Sean Lowry. Uh, Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. He creates all of his stuff um, on Facebook and Instagram. And he just does a daily video all from his phone. Okay. Which is wild. But here, let me, okay. Raise your hand. If you can see Sean right now, can you see him? I'm going to give him a shout out because this guy takes insane action. And if you do the same, I will give you the same shout out as well. I mean, just insane. I mean, this guy's crazy with creating content, but here you go. Now this guy's just wild. Okay. Now this is a four minute video. He goes fishing every day. This is his exercise. Okay. Now listen to this video. Listen, just watch how he is so himself. If, they, if you think this came natural to Sean, you're dead wrong. But just listen to this. You're back here in the trees. <laughs> First thing, hey, got it. Oh, nice. Nice this morning. What do I take home with that leaf you got that there? Oh, no, excuse me. I'm check out this. Check out this tree here. That tree's exactly straight. Remember, there's a woodpecker at the top of it. And an owl sitting on one limb and a woodpecker right in the center. And he's pecking away, Bob. Yeah, yes. Check it out, son. Now, Sean, when he goes out fishing, has a GoPro around a rope, around a little piece of string rope that sits on his chest. So when he's got both hands going, Right? He's got both hands reeling in fish. The GoPro's catching everything. Check him out. That's the first one we put in the boat back there. Don't get a big one, but he's a bass, huh? So we'll get back in. Look. Yeah, up in the tree. Find that tree, boy. He's got an awful scene. Awful scene. So, so anyway, guys, there's that. And then here's his here's his YouTube channel which he's got about 424 subscribers. This is growing. The subscriber base for him is growing about like anywhere from 10 to 20 a day, just depending on when his videos kind of get a big hit, but hundred anywhere from about hundred to 215 views. And look, I mean, if you go to his videos here, let me just make this a little bigger. If you go to his videos, I don't know how many videos he's got, but just look at all this. It's just him fishing. That's all. That's all it is. Just him fishing. Six times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So he's probably at about 65 videos right now on his fishing channel. Okay. And let's go fishing is kind of his brand. That's his, that's his thing. That's what he does. And he's got 424 subscribers guys, right? So he's focused on just, you know, one video and it's not even one a day. I mean, last week he only got one. Okay. This week he's got two. So it's just a couple each day, each week where he's just doing what he loves anyway. Right. If you love personal development and building a personal development, just sit down with a little book and just open it and just say, Hey, I just started reading through this. This stuff is crazy. And here's all my takeaways. Right. But he's been super consistent with creating his content. And that's the big thing. Okay. All right. So we'll jump back over here and, um, yeah, look, Ivika. So if, if you're sitting there saying his, his, uh, titles aren't even SEO friendly, you're right. They're not. And he's got over 400 subscribers already. And he's got people asking him and, and trying to get into people who are interested in, in helping him make money with, you know, whatever, um, um, 
what, what's the right word, like endorsements, right? So he's going to get there, but right now he doesn't even have a laptop. He doesn't even have a laptop right now. He's just doing it all on his phone. So it's hard to do all that SEO stuff. Okay. All right. Um, so just one piece a day, right? If that's just super overwhelming, try to do a video a week. But here's, here's the thing. So once you start to really strip down that whole layer of fear and worry about what people are going to think and what they're going to say, rah, 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 you'll start to create video content way faster and even blogs way faster. Okay. All right. Number four. Just message your leads or your interested people. Okay? Just send a message to people who are opening your emails. For instance, if you go to AWeber and you go to reports, if you're using AWeber for your autoresponder, meaning your automated emails or whatever you're using, you can get a report on what people or on which people are opening your emails. So you go in, you log in, you go to your reports and you hit opens by user uh, or it might be uh, opens over time, I think. And you can see all today who's opened your emails if you're sending emails out. Okay. So what I used to do in my beginning days, and here's the difference between legendary and all these other companies who offer you training and blah, blah, blah. All right. All these other companies are going to give you the results of somebody who's made, you know, a hundred million dollars or more, or whatever. And here's their blueprint and blah, blah, blah. And they're going to tell you what they're doing today rather than what they did in the beginning. So before I ever hit a day, which I hit a day where I had $26,000 in affiliate commissions, not for this company. And I'm not giving any sort of guarantees or anything like that. Okay. Most people in this industry don't see a day like that. But before I hit that day, a couple years ago, before I hit that day, I was sitting down copying and pasting people's emails into Gmail. And I was typing to every single person who would open an email for me and just saying, Hey, I just wanted to see, is there something you're interested in? Is there something you'd like to hear more about? Is there anything I can do to, to you know, help you? And I would just ask, what, how can I help you? What are you really looking for? And I would start conversations and I'll tell you on the internet, I don't care what company you're in. You write this down and take it to the bank. You get rich on the internet, one click at a time. You get rich on the internet, one lead at a time. Okay. One message at a time, one sale at a time. It's not like magically you wake up one day and suddenly the floodgates have burst, right? Think of how a dam breaks. When you have a dam holding water, usually there's a tiny little leak. There's a droplet coming through and eventually it's a little spout. And then suddenly the dam breaks. Okay. So do the unscalable things in the beginning. Message your leads, message anybody who's shown interest or who you think might be interested. Message them. Okay. All right. Number five. Log into freaking zoom.us and host a meeting or a webinar. It's as simple as that, guys. It's as simple as that. Okay. If you're not comfortable with webinars, if you're not comfortable with pre presenting, look, this has been one hour long. And guess what? Can I just be really real with you? I have 13 slides. Okay. I have 13 slides. Okay. And I'm just going to show you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 20. Okay. A lot there, but 24, 25, 35, 45, 50. There's probably in total, I probably wrote of my own words, 70 words for these 13 slides. And we have now hit one hour worth of training. Okay. Greetings and welcome back to this video. As an added little bonus, what I wanted to share with you is something we call the Omni Branding Formula or Dave calls the Omni Branding Formula. I'm not gonna get into the entirety of this Omni Branding Formula in this video, but what it's gonna show you is how you can have a presence on social media without having to sit on social media all day because I know you guys all love just sitting on social media all day, <laughs> scrolling cat memes, right? Um, so what you're gonna see is a, a really cool formula that will allow you to be on social media, to have a presence, to have influence without needing to be there all the time. And really the goal behind it is to take an hour or two out of your day to create one piece of content that you can repurpose across Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, podcasting, all these different platforms from one core piece of content. And it's really powerful. I think you're going to love this. I even go into a screen share and show you exactly how I edit the videos and everything. And again, I, I think that's going to be super powerful for you. I think you're going to see how easy it is. And I'll even give you some tools you can use. Uh, this should just be a very techie how to video that will break it down and make it super simple for you rather than complicated and confusing. Okay. So uh, without further ado, we're going to hop right into this webinar and I think you're going to absolutely love it. Over, over the course of the, this last week at the, at the branding workshop and then also at um, the actual mastermind event, um, we went through something called the Omni Branding Formula, which is just kind of how to be omnipresent on all social media platforms, on podcasting platforms, on just everything. And what's an easy way to do that? Because a lot of times, I don't know if you guys are like me, but a lot of times that can get really overwhelming trying to create content for all these different platforms, right? Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. If you're, if you're newer to the game and you're newer to creating content, I would mostly focus on just these main three, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And to break all of this down, okay, so just to break all this down simply, really what's going on in this Omni Branding Formula, I'm not going to unpack everything, but really what's going on is you just usually have one video a week. And if you do more than one video a week, that's cool, but usually like one core YouTube video per week. And then throughout the rest of the week, you're using clips of that in order to post on Facebook, Instagram, and other platforms. And you're pointing people to that core piece of content on YouTube, if that's where you're trying to grow your channel. Okay. So, um, so what I thought would be helpful rather than going through the whole entire thing, what I thought would be helpful is, is to actually do a little bit of content creation in front of your eyes on, on, on a video editor here on my computer called ScreenFlow. Um, so I can actually show you exactly how to produce the content in the right format and the right sizing for each of these different platforms. Does that sound good to you guys? Is that something you're interested in learning? Something you're curious about? Charlotte, hit the hand raise button if, if it's a yes for you. Robert, David, Neil, Eugene, Charlotte, Thomas, Terrence, Trish, Maria, uh, Sebastian, Gary, Kenneth. Okay, I can't read them all. I'm sorry. Okay, so um, so so what we'll do? Let me let me. I'm gonna share a new screen now. Uh, if you're taking notes, if you're taking notes, which I usually recommend, you should take some notes. If you're taking notes, um, the the piece of software that I'm gonna show to you now is called ScreenFlow. If you're on a Mac, I would recommend using ScreenFlow. If you're on a PC, I would recommend using um, uh, uh, it's called Camtasia. 
C-A-M-T-A-S-I-A, or there's Open Broadcaster Studio, which is uh, OBS, and that's free. The other two are going to cost you a couple hundred bucks, but I'm telling you, I've owned ScreenFlow since its inception, and it's worth every penny. It's as good as it gets, okay? All right, so um, I'm going I'm to share my screen over here with ScreenFlow. Let's see, new document and create. Okay, so let me share my screen and hit the hand raise button when you can see my screen, okay? Just lets me know that you can see it. Is it on your screen? Okay, so this is a blank canvas in, in ScreenFlow, right? So what I did at the Brand Builder Workshop this last this last week was um, I shot a, a short clip, about two minutes and 30 seconds of, um, of, of content about uh, coffee. Okay, so I'm really passionate about coffee. If you don't know that, I like coffee a lot. So I just shot this quick two-minute video to give them an example of, of sort of a quick video that they could shoot about something that they really like and enjoy. So um, so can you guys see that? Again, just hit, hit the hand raise button real quick. Can you see that I've now uploaded this video in here? You guys can see this, okay? Okay, awesome. Got it, got it. Awesome, thanks, guys. Okay, so basically here's here's the bigger picture right so i would have this one video and i, I mean i just shot this on on my iphone so you can easily do this but i just shot this on my iphone and, and basically the the big strategy behind this is that you would um create one long video for youtube it's a longer video say anywhere from let's say five to 25 minutes long however long you want it to be and then you cut up little snippets or interesting little portions of that to use on the other social media platforms so you don't have to create a new piece of video a new picture a new whatever every single time Okay, so you can split it up into little pieces, bite-sized nuggets, and put it across multiple different platforms. However, for a lot of people, that's confusing, right? So Open Broadcaster Studio and, and a software like this called ScreenFlow is really helpful in doing that. So here's kind of my process. While I was standing at the workshop, while I was standing at the workshop, and if you can still see me, take a look at me real quick, I just, I just held up my camera like this, and I just shot the video, okay? And all I did is you'll have to figure out a way. Basically, what you're going to have to figure out is what's the easiest way to get that to your computer, okay? Now, if you know a guy named Sean Lowry, Sean Lowry is a fishing guy. He creates fishing videos, and he's done all of his stuff just from a phone, which is kind of insane. I mean, it's actually totally crazy, but um, um, it, it just depends. If you can, afford, hey, Philip Newby's in the house. Welcome in, man. Um, if you can afford to use Camtasia, I would use Camtasia. Um, so, but if not, that's okay. You can use OBS, all right? So, um, okay. So uh, when I go into, let's see, just because you can't, <laughs> Maria says, uh, Sean keeps losing all of his phones in the water. Yes, you are right. We talked about that this last weekend, actually. Um, okay, so, so when you are, so let's say you create a 15 minute video or 20 minute video or whatever. Um, then you bring it into your computer and you put it right here into your video editor, whether it's ScreenFlow, Camtasia, OBS, you've got to figure that out for yourself. Okay. So empower yourself to figure it out. But once you get it in here, here's kind of what we're looking at. Okay. So number one, it'll give you a lot of options. ScreenFlow has a lot of options. For instance, you can um, create text on here. Okay. So um, here is some text, right? So I can have this text come in at different parts in the video. So maybe I don't want it right away, but watch this. I'll, I'll put this on mute and I'll hit play and then watch, see the words come on the screen there. Just hit the hand raise. Did you see that text come on the screen? So, hey, have you ever, here's a really cool, here's a really cool tip, guys. You ever see those videos with Dave where it says like, you know, whatever, Dave's your internet marketer or whatever it says, right? And you always wonder, how, how do you do that? How did he do that, right? So here's how, look, you can do this so easily in here, okay? So um, in ScreenFlow, what you do is you have this little background and what I'll do is I'll, I'll change this round to zero, which basically all that's doing is it's, is it's making this, this text box, this, um, this portion of text here, that backdrop, it's making it round instead of square. So I want it square, okay? So um, I'm going to say, that helps all. coffee expert. <laughs> okay, so this video is around coffee, right? So, so here's here's kind of a cool thing that you can do is um, you can go to and let me let me share my screen with you real quick. Now watch this. This is so you don't have to make this stuff up. I'm gonna share a different screen with you real quick. Okay, we're gonna go over. We're gonna bounce to Google Chrome for a second. So watch the screen closely. So watch when I hit play on this video. See that right there? See, look at how this shows up, right? So now all of that animation that just happened in the beginning, that's a little bit. That's a layer further. But but look at. Just hit the hand raise. Do you know what I'm talking about here? Was this uh, Dave Sharp, CEO, founder, legendary marketer, that little bubble thing? Okay, so now I can just pop right back over. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna just share my whole screen with you for a second. Okay, so we can see what I'm doing on my screen now. You might you might have a, a smaller screen, so maybe you can't do this exactly. But basically, I'll just kind of put I'll put one thing on the side like that, and then this over here like that. Okay, and uh, and now I can look at them both on my screen at the same time. Okay, so now, geez Louise, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of place this over here, and uh, well, it looks like he put his name in all caps at the top. Okay. And then it looks like this text is going to be a little bit smaller. Wouldn't you agree? So now let's make that a little bit smaller. And in fact, we could have two bubbles if we wanted, right? So let's let's um let's copy and paste that so that I have two different bubbles now. Okay. So now I've got two bubbles, and I'm going to delete this bottom piece here, and I'm going to make this say um, coffee guru online. Uh, let's say let's say coffee know it all. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to play on a little bit of humor here, but it, it, so then it's got to be a little bit smaller, right? So now. Um, if I want it to look sort of similar to his, I would just, you know, I'm going to probably make this a little bit smaller, 72 maybe. Okay, there we go. And this needs to be substantially smaller. So let's go down to 20, let's go down to 36. Okay. So there we go. Something like this. And then I can also control the margin, right? So let's make this margin a little bit smaller and let's make this margin, meaning the, the space around it a little bit smaller. Let's just sit somewhere around 15 or so. Um, okay. So, so now I can, now I can do something like that and line those up. 
Okay, and maybe we want this to actually be like, let's do, um, let's do like a, let's make that fully dark. And maybe we want this to be, let's try a couple different colors actually. Let's do like a, we could do like a green or we could do, okay, so we wanna do brown for coffee. Okay, we could do that, like a mocha color or maybe a little darker. Let's try a little darker. Okay, something like that. Okay, that works for me. And I'll just do, a, I'll do like a 86% opacity on it too, okay? Okay, so, um, oops, there we go. So let's do like a, what did we do for this actually? Um, okay, let's see here. I'm gonna click this, I'm gonna click that, boom. All right, now I want the background for this, backdrop color. I click the little color guy, click that, and now we have the same exact color basically, okay? All right, so I don't think though that this one is, uh, I didn't set the opacity, so I'm gonna set the opacity to 86 so that it looks the same. I don't think that worked. Oh, yeah, it did, okay. There we go, and then and then uh, notice over here, um, I would not put black words on brown, that will not look good. So um, I wouldn't do that. And then he has a little white line next to it too. So let's just see what that looks like. Um, so I can add a shape up here. And um, so you guys, doing this once, you'll notice takes a lot of time. Doing it a second or third time takes no time. So I'm just gonna draw a little line and um, let's do the thickness a lot thinner. Okay, something like about like that. And then we'll make it white. Guys, on this kind of design, try to make things as absolutely simple as humanly possible. So um, look, that line just doesn't look all that good. So I would probably, I would, you know, maybe make it, I mean, let's just try. Again, it's still trial and error. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer, but let's just make it that brown color, the exact same color, right? So let's see here. Um, let's see here. Oh, there we go. Okay, we'll delete that. Okay, so, uh, you know, we could maybe make that a little better. Or if I had a secondary color, we could probably do but something like that. Okay, so I'm going to just take this now. I'm going to get rid of that line. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I usually like to do with these. Is I like to put them just right on the left-hand side of this. Okay just like that, okay? Now, um, here's just one really cool thing that you can do. I, I typically don't like the style of font that comes with this, Gil Sans. I usually don't do that. I'll usually do something like, um, just in case you're wondering, Avenir is a really modern looking font. I really like that font a lot. And um, yeah, I'm just a big fan of it, okay? So um, so I would, I would click on that and then I would go to where it says Avenir, whatever, and I would do bold, okay, for that. And I would do bold for this as well, okay? All right, so now I'm, I'm just gonna say that this probably needs to be a little bit, no, not quite that small, okay? So let's see, I'm gonna bring out the font panel. All right, now we can do this and adjust at, at, at customized sizes. Okay, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say maybe 30 on that. Does that look good to everybody? Tell me what you think. Does it need to be bigger? Does it need to be smaller? Does it need to be? I mean, this right here, the margin is too big on this. I think so. Um, you know, I, I just think these probably. Here's what I, here's what I'm gleaning. I'm gleaning that these need to just be combined. I think. I think these just need to be combined. Okay, so here's what I would do. Is just we're gonna make this one block. Coffee. Guru. Okay, and we'll just make this a little bit smaller. Let's do like a. Okay. Boom. Making it simple, the ideal world here is that there's not so much space beneath this, which is something called line spacing. Okay, this is called line spacing, and I believe, uh, if I remember right, in in this um, in this editor, I don't think you can edit line spacing. So it's not the end of the world, but um, let's actually see here: single, double, nope. Um, typography, I, you know, it's there's somewhere in here. Um, characters. Okay, so um, bear with me here. I'm just trying to see if we can. Uh, Yeah, I, I don't think we can edit the or play with the the line height of this, which is fine. It just is what it is. This looks, you guys all agree this this looks just fine. I got some good feedback coming in, so okay. So then, guys, um, if you want, the other thing that you can do if you don't want to do this all set in a in a um, so that's just the easiest way. If I was doing this myself, here's what I would do. Okay, that's the fast and easy way. If you really want to have full control and full editing over this stuff, what I would do is type in the text, and I would have no backdrop. And then what I would do is I would go and create a square. Okay, so I would go over here to uh, where's this shapes. Um, uh, annotation and I would create a square. This is in screen flow. It's called annotation, but I would create a square and then that way I can control all of the size of all of this stuff. Okay. I can give it a shadow, which looks really cool. Okay. It, it looks like it's kind of popping off the screen a little bit. Um, and I can set the opacity a little bit too. Okay. So let's just say, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of that Brown. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with like a, I'm going to go with more of like a, uh, let's do like a bluish color. Maybe let's, I mean, the colors that you use are really important guys. So try not to use super neon colors. All right. I'm just going to use like a, Okay, I'm gonna use this color. I'm gonna do a little bit of background like that and make it a little bigger. And on the timeline, guys, if you want these to be in different order or like you want the text to be on top of that, look at how I drag it down and that way it'll show the text on top of it. So now I can drag this around and then I can, and then I can drag the text exactly as I want it, right? And then um, I can copy and paste that text and do more text, okay? So I can now, I have coffee educator. Okay, so now on this text, this is, so this process here is how I would do it. So I have more control over how exactly the, um, all of this looks, looks and feels. Okay. So let's see, let's make that a little bigger. And, um, I'm going to drag all of this down just a little bit. Okay. 
All right. Boom. 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 I like to have those pretty close. Okay, I like to have those pretty close to each other. And then something like that. Just make sure that the letters are vertically spaced there. And then watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Pay attention to this. I'm going to highlight all three of these. Okay. All right. Let's see here. And oops. Sorry about that. Let me let me reshare here. We don't need to see that stuff on the left anymore. So let's go just to screen flow to make this bigger on your screen. Okay. Okay. So I'm highlighting all the word like I've selected here the box this uh, the, and all the words. And then what you can do is you can set like a a beginning a starting transition. All right. So uh, if I add a starting transition, all that's going to do is it's going to kind of make it up here or come in in a certain way. So um, so on the starting transition, right? It'll look something like this. See how it just appeared in like that? Hit the hand raise button. Did everybody see this? Just put, press the hand raise button if you saw this. So I start out the video like this, and I'm, I'm kind of walking around. I'm saying, hey, it's Matt, whatever. And then this little thing just kind of appears in, right? Matt helps a coffee educator. Now, if I undo that, what you can do simply is you can highlight all of them, and you can do a starting and ending transition. Look at how cool this is. So now I can hit that, um, and here's what it'll look like. And then it'll fade out too. Do you guys see that? I just saw a bunch of hand raises, so I'm pumped that you can see that. Okay, but awesome. Okay, good, 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 good. So guys, um, you can do this in most softwares. This is this is the power though of using something like ScreenFlow because it's so easy to use. Okay, and so so here's you know with the, with the transition too, um, you can also edit what transition happens. So if I zoom in a little bit and um, let's see here, I can I can right click or if you're on a Mac you can um, you can you can uh, hold down the control key and click on it. So what, a lot of times what I like to do are like a like a slide in. Um, which I'm just not seeing. So I won't get super far into this, but you can control the different, like basically what it looks like as it's coming in. So right now it's just a dissolve in and a dissolve out. But if you want it to like slide in and then slide out, you can do this transition inspector and you can kind of see um, what it looks like and you can do a preview of what it looks like too. So, so if I move this out of the way, this transition inspector, I can't move it for some reason, but um, you know, if you want to do this, you can hit preview and just see what it looks like. So anyway, all that to say, it's very, I mean, you can do so much with it. You can do so much with it, but I'm going to undo those changes so that it just, just looks like this. Now I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, hmm, I want this a little bit sooner. I want this to be like two seconds in. So here we go. I'm going to drag it up to the two second mark on the, on the timeline and then boom, there I am. Okay. And then it's going to go away. All right. So now, guys, you can you can brand yourself on your videos just like Dave does, just like anybody else does, and it looks more professional and produced and put together, right? It's all just a simple brand trick. Okay, so um, now that I've got that put in and uh, we're beginning, let me just turn up the volume a little bit, and you can kind of listen to just a, just a little bit of, our, of the content, and let me know if you can hear this okay. All right, so all these people in this room here want to know how do you select the right kind of coffee and make it taste really good. So um, Michael wants to know as well. Um, so when it comes to coffee, there's really three different kinds of roasts. So there's light, light roast, medium roast, dark roast. You guys all with me? Okay, so I'm going into the content and I'm describing there's three different kinds of roasts. Now, here's what I'm looking for when I have a video. I'm looking for big standout moments or highlights that I can put on Instagram or Facebook, short little bits that are 30 seconds long or so, okay? So listen, as I start in and I say there's three different kinds of roasts, that would be a pretty good uh, little video and I'll show you how to cut these up, okay? Um, so when it comes to coffee, there's really three different kinds of roasts. So okay, so, so that's kind of a point where if, I'm, if I have a little notepad, okay, I have a pen and notepad, I'm gonna write down 17 seconds because that's about where that piece starts. That's where it starts three different roasts. 17 seconds, three different roasts, okay? I got my first one. Light, light roast, medium roast, dark roast. You guys all with me? All right. So on a, well, here's what most people think. All right. We're gonna title this video the number one misconception in coffee. Most people think that dark roasted coffee is the strongest coffee. Do you agree? Okay. False. It's wrong. The longer and darker coffee roasts, the more caffeine is kicked out of it. So you've been scammed. You've been scammed, everybody. Okay. So that went from about 17 seconds to 47 seconds, which is actually just right on about uh, about um, 30 seconds long. Um, so <laughs> I'm getting a bunch of I'm getting a bunch of people in the chat who are just shocked. They can't believe that they've been they've been scammed their whole life about coffee. Um, so so that little 30 second jolt is a is a nice little nugget that I can go and plug on Facebook, on Instagram, on whatever it is. Okay. Okay, so that's kind of an example, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But the first step to do would be once I have kind of my intro piece here where it says, you know, my name and a little bit, a little tiny thing about me, what, what you can do then at the end, here's one other little trick at the end. So what you can do at the end is, you know, I said that you can insert um, text. Uh, you can also insert images, like you can insert photos. So here's one like really cool little tip that I've, uh, that I would recommend you do is putting in like, you know, ending your videos the last 10 seconds, like with things like find me on YouTube, find me on Instagram, find me on Facebook. So here's a cool thing. Here's just a really awesome tip and trick that you can do. Um, so can you guys see my screen? It should show up a bunch of YouTube logos right now. Can you see that? Just hit the hand raise real quick. Okay. Lots of hand raises. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. So um, what I did is I searched for YouTube logo PNG. Okay. And I just found a little PNG of the logo. So I right click on it and I hit, um, copy image. Now, let me see if this will allow me to just paste. I don't think it will. Okay. So you need to save the image, save image to your desktop. Okay. I'm going to save this PNG. The reason I do PNG is because it shows a transparent background. Okay. So there's no like white background to it. All right. So that's really powerful. Now what I'm going to do since I saved it to my desktop is I'm going to then go back to screen flow. Okay. So let me go back to screen flow. And all I did was from my desktop, let me delete this and do it again. From my desktop, I just click and drug that image right into here. Okay. Just drug it right into there. 
All right. So now I have a little YouTube logo. Okay. I'm going to do the same damn thing with Instagram. All right. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to jump over back over to the web. I'm just going to save the Instagram photo to my desktop. And I'm just going to do the same thing with Facebook. It's just important um, that you get the, that you get the PNG version of the logo. Okay. So just make sure you get the PNG version of the logo put in. So now I'm going to click and drag the Instagram and Facebook ones in alongside of the YouTube. Okay. So there they are. You guys should be able to see them now. Now they're huge, right? So what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to resize them. All right. And so what we're looking for is we want these to be, you know, just about the same size. Okay. So similar size, it doesn't have to be perfect. It does not have to be perfect. Okay. So um, let's just make these, you know, something like this. Okay. All right. You can put these anywhere on your screen, by the way, it doesn't really matter where they are located on the screen. All right. So um, there we go. So I'm just kind of clicking, dragging these around. All right. Okay. So guys, once you start to get good at this, this becomes a really quick process because you can save a template. You can save a screen flow file that's templated that has all this stuff. So let me zoom in a little further so I can um, just get these properly. Make sure that they are actually properly edited. Okay. okay. All right. So this is this is close enough. Um, not perfect, but you know, if I were you and you're creating this one time, I would get them perfect. <laughs> um, but this is just you know, just for our example purposes, this is gonna be fine. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now let me zoom out real quick, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create again one of these one of these boxes, right? So I'm going to create just a, just create a full white box, just boom, all completely white, and uh, oops, let me create that again. Okay. All right, so now I got this little white box, and um, I want this to be completely white. Okay. There we go. Now what am I going to do? Well, I can't see it, so I got to drag that white box down on our timeline down here and make all of these ones go up higher. Okay. So now we got this white box with the thing. All right. So now let's just let's just um. We've already got some text over here on the bottom right of our timeline. I'm going to copy and paste it. And now we've got some text on this timeline. Okay. And I just need to make this text black. There we go. Okay. So um, now I can put that helpful um, for whatever I want for my YouTube. I can put, um, you know, let's say coffee guy or whatever. I, you know, I don't know what it is, but um, coffee master. Right. So now people can kind of see exactly what my, you know, like what my handles are. And it gives them the opportunity to find me on other platforms. So just, you know, something like this. I, look, I'm kind of throwing this together, guys. But the, the reason I do this live and in front of people rather than, you know, crafting and honing it and make it all perfect for you is I just want you to see what it looks like. Does that make sense? I just hit the hand raise. Is that really clear? You see how powerful that is? Is this powerful? Now, like, it looks like I kind of have my stuff together a little bit, doesn't it? Doesn't it kind of look like I have my stuff together? Yeah, lots of hand raises. Okay. So then, like, look, I can just, I can, I can select all of these things. Remember what we did before, right? We have a starting and ending transition. Okay. So let's add a starting and ending transition. And now as I end the video, here's what you're going to see more acidity, um, the sugars and proteins and acids will all develop really nicely. I'll just taste better. Got it. Now, if that's at the end of the video, I'm just going to remove the ending transition because it's at the end of the video. So I'll just remove the ending transition and it'll stick to the end of the video. Okay. Oh yeah. Bill says I'm learning things today that I didn't know before. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, that's the point. Um, okay. So I'm just going to say this before we lose it, but um, okay, so here's the thing, guys. Now, this is this is the one video that's kind of the whole big raw video. Understood? So what this means is that um, this is the one that we would export and send out to YouTube. So I would go and export this. Look, it doesn't matter what video editing you're using. Doesn't matter. The point is not the tool. The point is that you know how to use whatever tool that you use. Okay. Uh, again, Charlotte, with this, there's there's no right or wrong answer about how long that sits on on the video. I would just say a good like 10 seconds, five to 10 seconds is perfect. Just enough for people to be like, oh, he's on YouTube, coffee guy. All right, let's check it out. So pretty simple. Um, just make sure that you know how to use the software that you're using. That's the only big piece about this. Okay. All right. So um, then, then when we go over to um, um, after I've, okay, so now let's focus here. I have officially, I have exported this and I've uploaded it to YouTube. Okay. I've exported it and I've uploaded it to YouTube. Now I'm saying to myself, well, I have this, I have this really great clip from this that I want to, that I want to put into uh, Facebook. Okay. And Instagram. Now uh, I want you to write this down because I'm going to give you the dimensions that you need to use for those different platforms or what, what I would like, what we would recommend that you use the dimensions excuse me, of the videos. All right. So let me type it into our chat here real quick. Um, so for YouTube, it's 1920 by 1080. Okay. For Facebook, it is uh, 1080 by 1920 for the Facebook story. Okay. For, um, hang on one sec. For Instagram, it is uh, 1080 by 1080. So that's actually a square. Okay. So here's just a cool way for you to, um, you can just take this and start cutting it. Okay. So one thing that I would do, I would save this file and then I would close it out and I would go and duplicate the file. Okay. So let's just pretend that I did that. So we don't have to go through that whole process, but I would copy that file. So I have two of the files. I would name the second one, something different. Okay. Just for editing or whatever. But once I get the file, just, you know, ready to go for YouTube, I'll just hit save. That way I have that file separate in case something happens to the video. All right. Um, yeah, you can't put links in these. You cannot put links into just a video. It's not possible. Um, 
Okay, so now I want to grab that third, that clip. So it was at 17 seconds, right? Different kinds of roast. So there's light, light roast, medium. Okay, so that's the part. So now what I have to do is, first of all, I'm going to remove all of this text here. I might, I'm going to keep one of them just because it's, it is the text, like it's the text that I want to keep. All right, so I'm going to keep one of them, which is the white text, and I'll just place it over here. Everything else here, I'm going to get rid of. All right, so I'll just delete those out. And then I'm going to drag this up just for organization. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna find that spot at 17 seconds down here. You can zoom in further on the, on the clip. So I'm gonna zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and find the part where I start. Different kinds of roast. Okay, so I need to find the part where I say, where I say there's three different kinds of roasts. Um, so when it comes to coffee. So I'm gonna grab it where it says, when it comes to coffee. Coffee there. When it comes to coffee. So when it comes to coffee. So when it comes to so when there we go, right there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it. I'm going to split the clip. On a Mac, you can just hit the, the T, just the key um, T on your keyboard, and it will cut it. Okay. So I'll delete that first part. So now the beginning of the video starts like this. So when it comes to coffee, there's really three different kinds of roasts. Okay. So there we go. Now I have the beginning of my clip. Now we got to go find the end of the clip. It's been scammed, everybody. Light roasted coffee has the most caffeine in the punch. If you drink light roasted coffee, you will be, <laughs> you will be just jittering, right? Light roasted coffee. It also tastes the best. That's an opinion. The first thing was objective truth. This is subjective. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let it go that long because I can realistically I can go up to a minute for for these stories. That's kind of like my limit for these little bite sized clips. Okay, so all right, so that's where I'm gonna end. All right, I'm gonna end it at 52 and a half seconds, and there's no right or wrong on this. It's just have fun with it. Okay, and I'll delete the, the the rest of the video. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and remember what I said for Facebook. For Facebook, I have to set a different uh, dimension, which is 1080 by 920, and that will fit perfectly on a Facebook story. Now, here's the tricky part, guys. So now that I set that, look at how it's cutting off other parts of the video, right? So it's cutting off um, the, so the other sides of the video. So as long as your face is in the front of it, that's okay. You can leave it just like this. Or, um, or I'm sorry, hold on, 1080 by 1920. I got those wrong. Um, it's not working for some reason, 1920. Let's see, yeah, custom. Um, let's see, 1920 by 1080. 1080 by 1920. I'm not sure why this is not, it won't work for me, but um, let's do 1080. So uh, custom, let's see here, 1920. It will not let me go bigger than that. So I'm just going to do 1080 by 1080. Typically, you should be able to do that, but I'm just going to do the square one for now. I'm not sure what's going on with screen flow. Let's not let me do that. So I'll just do the square one. It's 1080 by 1080. So um, you can see how it's a square. Can everybody see that? Okay. Just hit the hand raise. Can you see that? That's a square. Okay. Philip, David, Sean. Okay. You guys can see that. Okay. So now it's a square, and this is more optimized for Instagram. Can you take the 1920, the, the original YouTube one that we did, and put it on, on there? Yes, but it's not optimized for it. So if I take this square video, okay, and... Um, because I don't need that text anymore. I can just export that out. Okay, I can just export it out. Now pay attention here, just a sec. I can export it out, and I'm gonna export that to my desktop. So bear with me a second here. 1080 by 1080, export. Okay, so now, can you guys see that it says exporting? Can you see that okay? Okay, so that's gonna take about a minute, or maybe a little bit less than a minute. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how this works on Instagram. Okay, and I'll actually give you an example, and then we'll wrap up, okay? So on Instagram, by the way, you can connect your Instagram to your Facebook story. So really, if you want to make this super simple, you can do this just one single time. But I'm going to pull this open and I'll share my screen with you. So let me share my screen from my iPhone. And I'm going to share it. Install. I'm going to share the screen with you from my iPhone. Okay, so bear with me here. Screen mirroring, Zoom, Matthews, iMac. Okay, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. It's coming. It's coming. And that video just finished up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that video... And I'm going to, I'm going to send it over to my iPhone. I'm going to basically share it over to my iPhone. Okay. So let me share that now. And uh, hang on one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. Uh, messages add to people. Let me airdrop that. I'm just not saying, okay, here we go. So I'm doing this thing on Mac, which is called airdropping. Okay. So it's coming into my iPhone right now. And there I have my square video. If you need to send this via Dropbox or whatever, usually Android phones have a certain way. Uh, iPhones have a certain way, but, but airdrop is really, um, it's really the easiest way to go about it. So let me see if I can quickly, the screen mirroring didn't quite work for me, but let me try this again. And let's see if we can pull this off. Stop sharing. Okay, new share. And let me grab my iPhone, iPad. And it's loading, just hang on. Boom, okay, here we go. Raise your hand, can you see my screen okay? A lot of photos of my dog and Catherine. <laughs> okay, you guys can see this? All right, perfect, cool. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. Look at the very bottom right. Do you see my little face? It's tiny at the very bottom right. Um, that's kind of my starting point. That's where I'm at right now, okay? So that's, that's if you can't find this screen, you, that's what you gotta hit. All right, so now if I touch my face on the top left, has a little plus symbol. If I just touch my face, it's gonna pull open. This is, this is the Instagram story. Oh, here I am. Okay, so um, now I can hit the bottom left. In the bottom left, there's a little select images thing or select videos. And so there we go. Coffee, there's really three different kinds of 
Okay, so there's the video. Is everybody tracking with me how I got this here? So then all you got to do, guys, is you can do, you can put like text on here, right? The biggest scam. Okay, I'm going to put the biggest scam about coffee. I mean, I can make this, I can make this way more, I can make this way, way, way more curiosity focused. All right, but this is probably good. Look at that. Okay, pretty cool, right? And if I want to put little like stickies on it, I can put like, I can put a poll. For instance, I can put a poll here. Um, right, so I can put a little poll. Check this out. Isn't this cool? I can put this little poll. Have you believed this scam too? Just hit the hand raise. I want one more hand raise. Can you guys, is this cool or is this cool? Like see how you can get so much more engagement now, okay? See how you can get so much, okay, so a poll is just one thing. If I wanted to add music, if I wanted to add, here's a big hack, I can use hashtag coffee. Okay, so now if people follow the hashtag coffee, it might show up in their timeline and I'll get more followers. All right, if I want to do a quiz, uh, what's your favorite? And then I can put light roast, medium roast, dark roast. Okay, and then you can select one that's the correct answer. Okay, so I would say, what's Matt's favorite? Right, and then they have to try to guess. Okay, and I can create this little poll. Just I, I'm just touching and dragging around on my screen putting this here. Like, how freaking cool is that? Like, pretty cool, right? Or am I just alone thinking this is very cool? <laughs> let's see. Yep. Cool. Very cool. Like the engagement. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. So look, you want to, you want to, oh, I'm getting a phone call. You want to kind of create this and make this, um, like you want to kind of create this and make this and, and then I can hit next and I could send it to people. I could send it to groups. I could share it. I can send it to also my Facebook as well. All right. So there's so much different stuff that you can do here. You can ask questions. You can add like, you know, um, if I wanted to add savage, you know, I could add like little things like this. Okay. So start playing around with this because Instagram has all of these cool little things that you can do with this. And then I can just hit next and I can share it to my Facebook every time as well. So then it would also go right over to my Facebook page as well. Really, really powerful and really cool. Okay. Um, and then you can just post these videos, right? So, so back to, back to the, the screen flow thing. Okay. Back to the screen flow thing. Here we go. Share. All right. So if I had a 15 minute video, chances are I'm gonna have three to six little tiny nuggets or little clips. Right? So I do a YouTube video that says like, you know, the, the top five reasons that people are, are failing online or whatever. And then I could put in these little five bullet points and at each bullet point, I could give a little, you know, here's the, here's, you know, I have five reasons. Here's reason number four. If you want to see all five, again, go to my YouTube channel, but here's number four. And, and then you could just launch into it and you could create four little things for the week. And now you've got your Instagram and your Facebook covered for the whole week in one single video because you're posting every day to those platforms now. You got it? Okay. Hand raise. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? You have, you have content for the whole week, little video, uh, bite-sized little pieces for the whole entire week. You can create it in one day and then you don't have to be on social media, but you'll be on social media. Okay. Greetings and welcome back to day 29. And I can't believe it. We're almost wrapping this up. And as I was thinking through, well, what's the best way that we can possibly think through really wrapping this up? We're talking this last week in terms of ads and generating traffic. Well, a big piece, probably the biggest piece of actually driving really good traffic is how do I get them to close? Like, how do I close the sale, right? Like, how do I lock it down? And a big question that pops into the mind of most people, I get this question all the time, is how do I increase conversions? Well, that's a big piece because generating traffic and getting new leads, as we've seen in Facebook ads and now Google ads, I've shown you in, this, in these modules, look, getting traffic isn't the issue for most people. It's actually getting them to convert and closing the sale. So today, what I'm gonna give you is a Facebook chat follow-up formula to follow up and close sales through Facebook chat. Now, this can be used in WhatsApp. It can be used in Messenger. It can be used in person. It can be used on the phone. I have used this exact script on the phone and closed high ticket sales uh, over $3,000 multiple times, multiple, multiple times. So what you're going to see in this training is a very specific formula. It's a blueprint of how I and clients that I've taught over the years have closed sales specifically through email marketing and Facebook, Facebook messenger, and through just messaging and phone and, and on the phone. And if you follow this, and if you pay close attention to how this works, this can really bump your conversions, maybe two, three X just by not giving up on the sale. So there's, there's a famous phrase. It's called you follow up with somebody until they buy, die, or unsubscribe. You should write that down Buy, die, or unsubscribe. One of those things has to happen. Until then, you do not stop following up with people. So if you're doing any sort of organic sort of message, messaging on Facebook where people are messaging you from Facebook groups or whatever it is, look, you can use this exact formula to help follow up and close more of these people and start getting a result faster. That's the end result of this bootcamp is we want you to start getting results faster. And the best way to do that is to follow up with all of your leads, follow up with people who have shown interest, and I'll give you exact scripts to do that. So without further ado, we're going to hop right into this live training video. I think you're absolutely going to love this. Make sure to take diligent notes. So when I got started and my journey online started in about 2009, I saw a webinar. I was in the basement of my college. Okay. I was like, I was like, well, how old would I have been there? I was 20 years old. Okay. And I was, our, our library for our, for our college was in the basement and I was sitting on a desktop computer and actually my girlfriend now wife of eight years, um, was sitting a, a couple computers away from me. I can still picture the exact computer, the exact screen that was open, everything. And I was watching this webinar as, as a good mentor of mine, his name is Mark was selling and he sold tens of thousands of dollars worth of product on a live zoom webinar. I wasn't zoom at the time, but 
Um, Tyler says he's at college right now. So there you go, buddy. So here's the deal is in 2009, he was selling and I watched him and I heard him sell them. And here's a little ninja trick he did on the webinar. He would call out people who were buying. So let's say uh, I had Tyler on, on the webinar and I, was, and I was, and he was selling this product. It was multiple thousands of dollars. Um, I don't know the exact price, something like $3,000, right? So he had done probably 15 to 20 of these sales. And I was like, holy smokes, that's a lot of money. And he would call out and he would say, Tyler, you just purchased. I saw your name come through in the checkout. Can you tell me a little bit about why you purchased Tyler? And, and he would unmute people. And I was just sitting there like, you've got to be kidding me. I thought all these online people were just scammers who were just out there, you know, steal, essentially just stealing people's money. And lo and behold, um, he was, the, the, the social proofing of that was so powerful. So my journey began in 2009, right around there. Okay. And the journey to, to 2019, right, involved a lot of different marketing strategies. Some of it was more guerrilla style, which is guerrilla, guerrilla, I think that's how you spell it. Um, not guerrilla as in like an ape, okay, like, like guerrilla marketing. Um, and some of it has involved, involved a little bit more automation style. So just advertising straight through the ads and driving sales. We're going to talk a little bit more about like grassroots getting started guerrilla marketing today because I think it's going to be really powerful for some of you who are like, I'm just, I'm not really sure how to get conversions. I'm not really sure how to, how to make the sale essentially. I'm not sure how to, how to close down sales. And, and specifically what I'm going to give you today is, is a four-step follow-up formula. So when you drive leads, let's say through Facebook ads, let's say through solo ads, let's say you drive leads through YouTube videos, whatever it is. And you can either, I mean, you can drive people into Facebook groups. You can call, your call to action can be go to, go to my Facebook group or go to my email list or whatever you want them to do, right? It doesn't really matter, but, but getting them into your community of some sort so that you can follow up with them, right? Now, what's really powerful these days, especially is the use of things like Facebook Messenger. All right. Facebook Messenger is super powerful. Also, Facebook groups is extremely powerful. So uh, I just did a hot seat critique this last week with two ladies. I think they're from the UK, but they essentially teach people how to do um, social media agencies. Okay. And uh, on their bridge page, so if you're not familiar with this, let me just explain what a bridge page is. Okay, so um, whenever you're setting up a sales funnel, okay, usually you have something called an opt-in page, right? And this is just where you submit your name and email. And, and so there's like a little box that says name, little box that says email. Just a quick hand raise for everybody here. Are you all familiar with an opt-in page? You just enter your name and email address. And it's Tanya. Okay, everybody is very familiar. All right, we got a big crowd on here, by the way. So I'm pumped that you guys all made it here live. This is awesome. So the opt-in page, after somebody hits the submit button, right? They hit submit, what happens? Well, that information, that data is transferred over to an email list, which then you can email to later on down the road. That's why whenever you subscribe, for something like a 10% discount or something, those people then email you 80,000 times over the next 10 days trying to get you to buy something, right? So after you submit that though, you're redirected to a thank you page or in affiliate marketing, that's called a bridge page, okay? Now on these ladies' bridge page, what they did is they had just a headline and then a video and then a link to join their Facebook group. So it just says join. And they have multiple hundreds of people now in this Facebook group because they've been building it and, and they can sell it to those people over and over and over again and give value, right? So here's the trick. The other, the other added benefit of that is that they can now utilize Facebook Messenger to privately message these people who have already shown interest, already joined their group and close them into sales. I want to just make sure, can you type to me in the chat? Does that make sense? Why that's so powerful? Can you just type to me in the chat that that makes sense? Why that is so powerful? I just want to make sure Dan says yes. Amir says yes. Does that make, am I just really clear? Just want to be super clear. You'll gain traffic, but you'll also be able to build relationship with people. You'll be able to build a, a relationship and formulate trust and empathy and influence with people and thus sell them. Okay. So, so that's kind of the starting place, the starting ground. Now let me share my screen one more time here. So bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. I'm going to share my screen. Now I'll just be real honest. I don't love doing slideshow presentations. Okay. I'll just be, I'll just be real honest with you. I just don't love it, but guess what? I'm going to do it. So just, you know, if you hate it, like I hate it, just bear with me. I'll try to do a little drawing along the way. And I'll, I'll try to paint for you lots of analogies. I just like, I went through all the slideshow crap in college and I just like, I, the amount of times I fell asleep, I think it was just kind of insane. So um, anyway, can you see my screen? Okay. Just hit the hand raise button real quick and let me know. You can see my screen. Does it say marketers club? All right. Lots of hand raises. Beautiful. Thank you. Everybody who's participating. I appreciate that a lot. Look, if you're going to come on to a webinar like this and you're going to come on to a training, at least give it your full attention, right? At least give it everything you've got. Thank you, Rita. Appreciate that. Um, just give it, just give it everything you've got. Okay. Just give it everything you've got. All right. So um, let me see here. Let me, let me move. I'm just going to move this over on my screen just a little bit. Hang on, hang on. And what, what we're going to talk about, so that the title, I guess, of today's webinar is something called the fortune in the follow-up. The fortune in the follow-up is, is a saying that's pretty common amongst, amongst marketers that essentially just means that's where the money is. It's in the follow-up. Okay. It's not in the cute headlines. Sometimes it's not in the, in the amazing videos. It's just in the persistence of following up, write that word down persistence. It's in the persistence of following up. Okay. So I'm gonna give you a little four step formula. Uh, but before we get too far into that, I want to share a little bit about the importance of follow-up and, and the difference it can make in your business. Cause for me, when I got started in 2009, a big part of my, of, of building my business and getting my initial sales was all guerrilla follow-up more individual type marketing than it was like just launch a $10,000 ad campaign and watch $185,000 flow in. That just doesn't really happen. Okay. And plus I didn't have $10,000, right? Who here has $10,000 to put into marketing right now at this very second? Joshua does. And that's it. Okay. So there's one person out of all of you. So about 1% of you, <laughs> this has got a lot of people on this live webinar, about 1% 1, 1 of you have that kind of money. Right. And so that's usually why people are here. They're, they're trying to figure out how do I turn this online thing into a profitable venture? So let's dive in first and foremost, and let's kind of get into the initial uh, framework, the initial, um, the, well, yeah, the initial framework of the fortune of the thought. So 
what I'm going to share with you today is the three follow-up secrets that will change how you're interacting with either your email list, your Facebook page, uh, or groups, your Facebook audience, we'll call it, and other followers of you and your brand. All right. So there's going to be three follow-up secrets with a four-step formula. Okay. The, the reason guys follow-up is so important is because number one, it's often the missing ingredient. It's usually everything is set up, the funnel, the emails, the everything, and then they miss sort of the personalized touch of follow-up. Most people hate to do it and thus don't do it, right? But the other thing is it gets super fast results. It gets super fast results, okay? The meaning, and what I'm talking about specifically is the ability to use follow-up in messages or in emails or more, even on the phone. The, the results are quick, snappy to the point, and they're usually better than just running cold traffic through to an offer. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second too. And the last piece is that you can get way more ROI from your ad spend. So if you're spending $10 a day on Facebook, if you employ a really solid, consistent follow-up uh, sequence and method, the odds of you getting a much higher return on your investment, much, much better. Okay. All right. So the blueprint to earn more. All right. First of all, here's our three steps. If you're taking notes, write them down. First is market to the masses. So look, you can't follow up if you don't have any marketing, right? If you, <laughs> I mean, if there's no audience, there's nobody listening. Who are you going to follow up with? This is a no brainer, but look, sometimes, you know, don't put the cart before the horse. Okay. Um, sorry, I just lost my slide there. Step number two is to isolate the few, meaning you can give them an offer, you can give them a survey, you can give them a free consult. There's different ways that you can, you make them reach out, okay? It's kind of like getting a, like setting down cheese uh, for a mouse to come get, right? Set down the cheese, let them come get it, and then you can identify or isolate the few people who come and get it. So whether you give them a little survey or offer a free consultation or a free call, or you have a special limited time offer and they have to email you or message you on Facebook for it, any of those will work, okay? Step number three is to sell one-on-one -on -one for immediate results. That can be via phone. It can be via message. It can be via whatever. But there's, look, what most people when they hear selling on Facebook Messenger or selling via like an email conversation or something, what they're thinking of is begging people for money. <laughs> and that's not what we're talking about. I want to teach you today a little bit about how to use leverage, okay? Using leverage and using an, a, a specific offer. I'll give you a couple messages even that you can send towards the end of this that might help you frame it and just figure out how to actually say it in a message. It'll probably transform how you're, if you're currently doing this, will transform how you're doing it. If you're not doing it, then we'll teach you how to do it and why it's important, okay? Okay, so the three follow-up secrets that I want to share with you that, are, that were big for me personally, big aha moments for me, and changed a lot of how I viewed this process. The first being is I don't need a, a huge, big budget with tons and tons of advertising to make good money online. Let me say that again. I don't need a big budget with tons and tons of advertising to make good money. Might be worth it to write that one down for yourself too. Okay? Number two, I don't have to be a sales superstar. It can actually just be easy, and I'll try to make it easy for you today with just a quick four-step formula. Okay, Quick four-step formula. Okay, Secret number three is you only need to understand where the hidden pools of money are. I only need to understand where these hidden pools of money are, meaning you only need to understand where your ideal avatar is hanging out, where your ideal customer is hanging out or playing around, okay? So, so here's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to walk you through, and you guys can ask questions as we go through this, okay? But I'm going to walk you through a very simple Facebook chat follow-up formula, okay? Now, when I do this, I want you to either engage and ask questions or be taking notes as we go. And here's, here's kind of an ideal way to do this. Number one, many of you are marketing and you have either an email list already built or you're working on it. Number one, one of the main things you can do is send out an email to your list and say something like, hey, can we connect? Hey, would you ever want to connect personally? Something like that. And you can, you can spit out the offer to spend 10 minutes with them on a Zoom call or on a phone call. Or you can send them over to your Facebook page. At the bottom of your emails, you should always have connect with me on Facebook. Add me as a friend on Facebook. And then when people add you as a friend on Facebook, you say, hey, how did you hear about me? Yeah, how do you know me? And then they'll say, oh, I was on your email list and I just want to connect. Immediately into the Facebook chat form formula. Okay, got it? So again, there has to be a little bit of marketing involved in order to start the relationship or get the relationship moving. You don't want to just be going out and adding a bunch of random people. And the other way to do that is, you know, go out into Facebook groups. You can do this for free and just post valuable content, right? Say, hey, I made this YouTube video. It shows you exactly how to, how to create a Facebook ad. Or um, maybe, maybe you're like in the, in the plumbing business, okay? And, and you're really good at generating leads for your plumbing business because of what you've learned in this industry. Well, then you can go specifically to, let's say you go over to a, a plumbing business in, in the Facebook group and you post a five minute video about how you got five new leads or 10 new leads to your plumbing business. Guess what? The plumbers in that business are going to say, guess what? You're going to get about 85 comments saying, how did you do it? How did you do it? How did you do it? Right? And in your, in your post, you just say, PM me to learn how I did it. And then if you're selling a course on how to get five, uh, how to get 10 new plumbing clients a month through Facebook advertising, and you sell this tiny little course for 37 bucks, and guess what? You have a hundred people purchase. Well, guess what? That's $3,700 worth of front end sales for your own product. And then maybe you sell them a $2,000 personal one-on-one -on -one coaching or a group coaching package, and you generate an extra 20, 30, $40,000 for yourself over the course of a year right? So a little bit of guerrilla marketing. And then you build on that. How I generated an extra $40,000 in year one of my plumbing consulting business and how you can too. See, it's leveraging results, right? Okay. So let's get into the, let's get into the formula. Step number one is to build rapport. Okay. That really exists in any sales conversation and really any sales, um, in any sort of sales and, and marketing, really the first step is always just constant rapport, build rapport, build rapport, build rapport, right? We'll get into a little bit more of that in just a second, but I'm gonna give you the outline first. Number two is leverage. Okay. Number two is leverage, or another way to say that, I guess, would be to uh, identify pain points, right? Or gain leverage. This is where I was talking about earlier about how you don't want to just walk in and start begging people for money. 
how you avoid begging people for money is you establish leverage or identify potential pain points that exist for that individual, right? So again, back, back to the plumbing analogy, right? So initially, all you're trying to do is just say, hey, John, I see you own this plumbing business in, in Idaho or Wisconsin or whatever. And maybe maybe he owns a plumbing business that's in a town where you grew up or where you have a cousin or an uncle living or, you know, even if you have no connection to it at all, right? Oh, you own a plumbing business in Minneapolis, Minnesota? Geez, I hear it's really cold up there, huh? How are you staying warm on the job? Right? Just little, like, I, look, I'm an introvert. I hate stupid banter like that, but you got to do it. You got to do it. Okay. You have to figure it out. Um, that's just, that's just me. That's who I am. <clears throat> so Kelly hates or Kelly said, LOL, Tyler hates it too. Yeah. So look, but the, but the other aspect is, is if you really don't enjoy that process, like there has to be some piece of you that's like, you got to want it a little bit and, it, and you need to, here, here's where I started to see success. And if I can just be candid with all of you guys here, watch me build rapport here. Too bad I'm not selling anything, but <laughs> watch me build rapport here. If I can just be candid when I was getting started, I had, to, I had to learn the process of enjoying the process. I had to learn to enjoy the process of challenging myself, of, of challenging the way that I viewed certain things, right? Because I view that as scammy or I view that as, um, not scammy, I view that as sort of um, just, just not meaningful, right? And so what I did is I learned to see how those little mini steps of rapport and of just kind of the small talk, shooting the shit kind of stuff really helps to build kind of a layer of trust. And especially if you can speak directly to things that they're passionate about or things that, you know, are, are directly impacting their lives. Like, hey, you're in Minneapolis. How do you stay warm up there? Jeez, you got to be freezing your freaking hoo off, right? Um, and then you establish a little bit of leverage, right? Jeez, Minneapolis, that's got to be a competitive market. You get a lot of business up there? Actually, business is pretty slow. Oh, shoot. Why is that? Now you got leverage, right? And if it's constantly just like no leverage, no leverage, no leverage, they're like, nope, no problem getting clients. I got more clients than I can take, right? Then maybe you, maybe you find leverage and are, well, are you able to scale? How do you even keep like, geez, do you have kids? How do you see your kids? Like all this, right? So whatever angle it is that you're really geared towards selling towards, I'm not saying just sell something just for the sake of freaking selling something, but if you can find the angle, marketing and sales is all about angles that will establish a little bit of leverage for you. Okay. Step number three is to ask for the money. And most people are scared of that. Oh my gosh, I can't ask for money. Just ask for the money. If they say no, see ya. It's fine. That's why you got to make an irresistible offer. Number four is to lead the sale. Some people just ask for money and don't lead and guide the sale to completion. And I'm going to share with you, oh, I, I have some magic for you, okay? I have some magic for you right now on how you can really close that thing in and make it a done deal, unlike what most people do online, all right? You cool with that? Here's just, and if I can just, I'm going to pull open uh, my next slide. What I'm going to do, let me just, um, hang on one sec here. I need, to, I need to make a quick edit on this next slide. But I'm going to give you a few tips as well right now on what not to do, what absolutely not to do. And I want you to just make sure if you're a little newer to the game, if you're a little bit newer to the Facebook space, the online space, I just want to make sure that you take notes on this stuff. All right. So this is my list of absolutely do nots. And these are kind of important. All right. So number one is go right in for the kill, AKA the quick sale. Okay. Try to go to bed after the first date. Meaning now I'm not talking about it. Hey, get your head out of the guy. What, I'm, what I mean is they just want to go right for the sale. Hey, did you see this new offer? It's a hot new offer on how to, on how to you know, generate leads on Facebook. You want to buy it? Right? They want to just go to bed right after the first date. Whoa, 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 whoa there, boy. Not quite yet. Or this is only the first date, right? No rapport, no trust, no consent, right? You want a consenting sale? I should not. I, I, I'm sorry. Okay, number three, treat people like they're just another piece of meat, like they're just another sale. No one wants to feel like that, right? Um, in terms of specifically on Facebook, what people will do is they'll add a ton of friends. They'll add 50, 100 friends on Facebook. Just add friends, add friends, add friends. And as soon as somebody accepts the friendship, then they start spamming them with a bunch of messages, right? Trying to go to bed after the first date and it doesn't work, right? You can't, you cannot, literally, you, if you're going to add friends, if that's a, if that's a way that you want to go about this, which I wouldn't even necessarily recommend, it's better if they request you as a friend. If you're going to do that, just make sure you're only doing like a few a day, like max, but I wouldn't even recommend it. You're going to get marked to spam really quick. You're going to actually, there's a chance that you get blocked and banned completely from Facebook forever. Um, okay. Obliterate Facebook groups with a ton of posts and spammy messages. If you're going to post in Facebook groups, it's got to be good, valuable content. It has to be high level, good, valuable content. Okay. Um, and then people post affiliate links everywhere. This goes kind of hand in hand, but if you're going to go in Facebook groups, if you're going to go in any group, anywhere, you can't be throwing out affiliate links to all these different products. You're going to get marked as spam immediately kicked out. You're going to get a red flag on your account. It's just going to be a disaster. And plus, it, look, the sale doesn't deserve to happen, right? If that's what you're doing, I'm just going to tell you right now, everybody in this world has told you, you deserve to make a million dollars. If that's what you're doing for marketing, you don't deserve to make a million dollars online. You don't. You haven't earned it yet. You haven't become a skilled enough marketer to get there yet. That's why you're here. That's why you're here, right? So that you don't make these mistakes, screw over your entire marketing campaign, and just make a bunch of people piss off at you and create memes about how much you suck in the meantime. <laughs> okay? All right. So your goal in this type, and this can be an email, this can be in groups, this can be messages, this can be WhatsApp, this can be all this stuff. Your goal is to be the kind educator who merely recommends a solution rather than the salesman that everybody tries to avoid, okay? Rather than the salesman that everybody tries to avoid. Now, let me give you our four-step formula and with a few here's how to say it type messages that might help guide you a little bit on top of my whole, you know, you know Minnesota, that's phrasing, whatever kind of thing, okay? So number one, building rapport, right? So a couple outcomes. Number one, find things in common, family jobs, hobbies, right? Different common interests. Maybe they went to the same college. Maybe they live in the same state. Maybe you grew up in the hometown that they now live in. Whatever, right? Give compliments, okay? Seems like you're running an incredible ship over there. Seems like your business is crushing. Well done. Nice, nice work, man. That's, that's incredible. You know, stuff like that. You can share pictures of daily life. And then, and then just giving a tiny personal touch 
goes a really long way. Hey, how was your week? Right? How was your holidays? Did you did you meet up with family? Did you have any did you have any interesting conversations about Trump? Did you talk about impeachment? Are you ready to pull your hair out over your uh, over Aunt Sally who won't shut up about making America great again? <laughs> right? And and just and just have some have some measure of just cool, calm, collected, right? Fun, fun, right? And that's the type people want to do business with people who are fun, people they like, people they know, like, and trust. That's a very common marketing phrase, but some of you probably haven't heard it. No, they like and they trust. And this like factor, ever since the inception of Facebook, that like factor is now worth more than you'll even imagine. People want to do business with people they like. So when Dave recently went out and put out this ad, he put out, he put out a video that was Dr. C More Profits. Has anybody seen this? Raise your hand if you've seen this video called Dr. C, C More, C More, C More Profits. Oh, Sean Lowry, what's up, my brother? Marsha. Hey, Tyler. Okay, so Sean's seen it. Well, here, here's the deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch my screen over right now. I'm going to show you a little bit from Sean Lowry. He's in the house. And my point with the Dr. C More Profits is just simply that uh, Dave's engagement on his page and everything has just gone super far up ever since putting up that. Uh, that video. It's just been a really powerful video. Okay. Um, but let me, Sean, I'm going to pull open your, your profile and just show people just how fun you are. Right. Um, let me pull this open here real quick. Um, and Sean's a great example of this. He hasn't even really fully monetized um, his whole thing yet, but he is getting there. Here's Sean Lowry. Can you, can you guys all see him? Are you able to see this? Okay. Yeah, I'm just pulling him open on Facebook. If you guys don't follow this guy, by the way, I mean, just go search this freaking guy. Some of the funniest videos you're ever going to see, but this guy goes fishing like every freaking day. Listen to some of this stuff. Say, see, oh, you look, check it out. Spotlight on the toe, you kind of see him. I was moving up and down. Like, hey, this wind's one real bad guy. Oh, good. This is my rocket right here. First, first one. All right, so I'm not going to sit here and play a bunch of videos for you. But the guy, I mean, he's, Sean, you're pretty well known. I mean, he posts and usually has, you know, either, uh, I don't know, a couple hundred views, a couple thousand views, lots of likes. Um, you can see his YouTube channel. Let's see, here's his YouTube channel. He's gone from basically no subscribers to about four, almost 500 subscribers in just a couple of months. Actually, let's see how far back to, in, in literally, I mean, I don't know, maybe a month or so, a couple months, something like that. Um, no, no, no. It's been a while, I guess. Um, but most of his growth has come very recently. And he also has a group with, uh, let's see, I don't know how many members are in here, Sean, but um, if you can type to me how many people are in your group, Sean, that'd be awesome. But it's just this, it's Let's Go Fishing and it's this awesome little public group. And um, he's got now a little thing that he does with Bass Casters. It's a little sponsorship thing, right? And he just started creating stuff around stuff that he loves. But anyway, Sean's a good example, guys, of just like, uh, of what I was talking about. Let me jump back over to the keynotes here of just the personal touch of the, of the finding things in common, right? And what Sean is doing, he's almost got 3,000 people in his group. So nice job, Sean. But look, I, I, and by the way, I'm not a partner with Sean. I'm not gonna get any cut from promoting Sean, but he's been in the legendary community now for three years. He's attended almost every single one of our masterminds. And we host a mastermind down in Florida. Uh, Sean attends almost every single one of those. And every single mastermind that I've been to, he's been to more than I have. But every single one that I've been to, uh, I have watched somebody around. Sean, has, Sean is always, always act, asking for the next nugget. What's the next step up in my game? What's the next? He's so intuitive, right? And you listen to his videos and you're like, man, this guy's crazy. He's crazy. Like, where is this guy? He's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. But the building of rapport he does through his content almost. And then someday, here's my thing. Someday there's going to be an aha moment and it'll come at the right time. There's no need to rush it. There's no need to push it. Someday for Sean, there's going to be this kind of aha moment where it all opens up and, and the line to, because right now what he's doing is he's acquiring attention. So if any of you are familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk, he, he says he's essentially, um, what Gary V says is, is right now attention is something that's traded like stocks. So the same way that you can put hundred dollars into a stock of Nike or Apple or whatever, you can place stock in people's attention and it's traded on the internet, on social media daily. Right. And so what Sean is doing is he's kind of put an all in bet on attention. Number one, he actually just really enjoys it. But number two, he's placed an all in bet on people's attention because what happens just like stocks down the road is as that builds and grows, guess what? It's a pretty massive asset, right? If you save just a couple hundred bucks every single month and reinvest everything in the stock market in 30, 40 years, it's like compounding interest. It's, it's something that'll pay you massive dividends in the form of millions of dollars down the road. Except with attention, it's something, it's, it's, for instance, a YouTube channel is almost, or a Facebook group is like an asset. It's almost like building a house. It's almost like investing in the real estate market where down the road in five, 10 years, you might be able to sell that thing at a $50,000 profit and never have to own any sort of collateral, never even own a, a house at all. So all that to say, the personal touch that you can work that into content and be building rapport through your content. That's why Facebook lives are so powerful. You'll see Sean go on a Facebook live from time to time. So anyway, all of that's super powerful. Okay. Number two is to identify pain and gain leverage. So for instance, questions you can ask, are you happy? Think of how, think of how simple that question is. Are you really happy? Are you getting paid enough? So maybe you're selling something around how to make more money with your online business, or maybe you're selling, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, you're selling. Uh, so for instance, maybe Sean partners with an affiliate company where uh, they teach people how to become freelance digital marketers. And, uh, and, and Sean says something like, you know, Hey, look, I, I work out in the woods as a, as a freaking in the lumber yards. What, Sean, I'm not sure what your job title is, but he works out as a, as basically a, a lumber guy. And I learned how to do this. Oh, he's a logger, pa. He's a logger. Um, 
<laughs> and, uh, and, and I learned over the last three years how to build an audience. Now I've got a group of 3,000 people. I have almost 500 subscribers on YouTube. You want to you see where I learned how to do it? Want to discover how I was able to do it? Right? Are you open to change? Are you frustrated with this? Are you open to change? And then guess what? People, yeah. I, yeah, tell me a little bit more. I, you're right. I am sick of this freaking login job. All right, let me tell you more. So then Sean messages over to them and says, all right, Josh. All right, Tyler. All right, Mark. If I can show you exactly how I started my business and give you a blueprint to do the same, and I'm not guaranteeing anything, but I'll show you how I learned how to do it. And it only costs seven bucks to check it out. And you get a 30 day money back guarantee. What would you say? What would you say? Guess what they're probably going to say? Seven bucks. Yeah, I guess I check it out. They might say, is it a scam? <laughs> they might say, it, but most people are going to say, oh, sure. What the hell? Seven bucks. I paid that this morning for my venti frappuccino at Starbucks. What do you got? Right. And then you lead the sale. You don't say, here's a link. You say, here's what I want you to do next. Go here. You give them a link and you say, here's what you do next. You create an account, you log in. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to send you a calendar invite for your private mentor. Pick a date and schedule your first session. Welcome to the team. Training starts tonight. Right. Here's what I want you to do. Go here, create an account, log in, go here, watch the video, sign up. After you sign up, there's going to be an upsell. You can say yes or no to that. Just depends on what you want. Okay. doesn't matter. You don't have to buy anything else. Okay. And then you're going to get access to X, Y, Z training starts tonight. You ready? Now think about that. Now, part of you might say, part of me in that moment says, well, that sounds maybe a little cheesy after you built the rapport, but what they're going to feel, if you snap out of your own mind for a second, what most people feel in that moment is a sense of calm. They feel a sense of uh, leadership from you. They feel a sense of guidance. Most people are too scared to ask for those things. Most people are too scared to say those words right there. And it's why they've, they've perpetuated broke habits forever. I used to perpetuate those broke habits like you would not even imagine or believe. And now I've just gotten to the point where I, I finally chose to believe that humans love to buy, write that down. Humans love, we're coming up on Black Friday. Humans love to purchase shit. <laughs> Excuse my French. People love to buy stuff. It is like the most near and dear thing to our hearts. We love purchasing stuff. We love it, especially when it's attached to an opportunity. Ooh, that's interesting. People love to buy, love to buy. Don't, with, don't withhold the ability to sell to people, okay? And then are you ready for the one big thing you say after that? Who's ready? You want one final thing that will really seal the deal? This message is just, this is one that I love to pull out. I love to pull this one out. And it was taught to me in terms of phone sales, but I use it in messages too. You ready for it? You say this, do you want me to stay here and walk you through the process? Or do you want me to grab a cup of coffee and come back in five minutes and just kind of let you do your thing? Is that powerful? Hey, do you want me to stay here? Maybe we can hop on a Zoom call and I can walk you through the process. It's pretty simple, but you know, you maybe have a question or two as you go through it. Or should I just go, I'll just go grab a cup of coffee or I'll, I'll go grab a beer real quick and I'll come back to my desk here in five minutes. Think about why that's powerful. Number one, you're, you're allowing them the option of either way. But number two, I mean, truthfully, I'll probably just sit here anyway. <laughs> but number two, here's what you're doing. Most people just send out a link and they're lazy. They have lazy habits. Here's a link. Go click it. Buy my shit. I'm uncertain. I'm confused. I'm overwhelmed. So I don't have the wherewithal to tell you exactly what to do. Even if I, like, I just, I'm lost myself. So I don't know what to do with you. Rather than that whole approach. Hey, you want me to stay here? I can fire up this, a quick Zoom meeting. We can actually meet face to face. I can give you a call and I can walk you through the process. Or you know what? I can go get lost and, and let you do your thing here for a second. I'll come back and check on you in five minutes. What'll it be? Because here's, and I want you to write this terminology down. You know what this is called? Does anybody know what this is called, by the way, in terms of sales? This is, this is like the least manipulative way to sell possible, but does anybody know what this is called? There's a, there's a term for it. There's a specific term for it. It's the soft sale. Charlotte, that's close. It's kind of a soft close, but there's a very specific word for this right here. You want to know what it is? It's called the assumptive sale. Write that down. It's the assumptive close. So my assumption is, okay, we've gone from, hey, if I can show you exactly how I started my own thing, it's only seven bucks, there's a, there's a guarantee, what would you say? Yeah, sure. Let's check it out. Okay, great. Here's what I want to do next. It seems like, and, and do you want a really cool line that I've used both on the phone and in messages? I say something like this. I just thought of this right now. <laughs> I used to say this all the time when I was closing, I, I was closing three to $5,000 sales on the phone with people I barely met before. I would just say something to the effect of this. I would say, Hey, look, here's the deal. Um, Joe, you know, we've talked a little bit about, it seems like here's, here's the three main things that you really love about the product. To me, it seems like everything is green lights. So here's what I want you to do next. Did you hear that word? Did you hear the sentence? It seems like everything is green lights. And if you say that in a nice way, that's not condescending it, to me, I guess it just seemed like everything's green light. So here's what I want you to do next. Go here, create an account. Here's what's going to happen next. And if there's objections, if it's not green lights, they'll tell you. So you're not forcing a sale on anyone. You're not manipulating anyone. All you're doing is saying, look, you're still here talking to me. So my guess is you're going to buy something from me. I'm not here just to quickly, you know, to chat with you and catch up with you all night. Like my assumption here is we're, we're going somewhere with this. I've already asked you about the $7 thing. You know, it's seven bucks. I know like, you know, what's happening here. seems like everything is green light. So here's what I want you to do next. I want you to go here, create an account. Do you want me to stay here, right? 
Do you want me to stay here and walk you through the process or do you want me to just grab a cup of coffee and come back in five minutes? Now, some of you, some of you came into this industry, this online space, thinking this whole thing is automated. Well, Matt, why, I, really? I'm going to be messaging people on Facebook. I'm going to be emailing with people like, and closing $7 sales. Like, really? I have a couple, I have, I have some hard words for you. Number one, most people who made any significant money online started just like this. It's going to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's going to be the same yesterday, 10 years ago, today, and forever. The unscalable things will win every time. Anybody can set up an automated funnel and launch Facebook ads and try to just, you know, stand behind the curtain like Oz, like the Wizard of Oz, and just, you know, have a million dollar show. But the real unscalable things, building a tribe, building an audience, building an asset, a long-term business, that's something a small percentage of people sit down, watch a webinar like this and say, yeah, you know what? I think I can pull this off. And then what they do is they're able to turn one advertising dollar into five or 10, as opposed to everybody else who's struggling to turn one into two. I'm not saying you can't do the one into two, you know, whatever automated thing. You can do that if you craft a really amazing offer. All right. If you're able to put together a really limited time offer, that's just baller and it's amazing. But with where you're at right now, if you're just kind of getting moving, just getting your feet wet, right? This type of create content, get engagement, engage with those people and close them up, get into Facebook groups. Those kind of things are the, are the things that will lead to quick results. It'll get your feet wet. It will get your taste, your, your appetite wet for more. And it will start moving you in the right direction. But it's sort of this, there's, there's a moment where your internal, your internals kind of shift away from away from lack of clarity, away from lack of direction and moving towards a, okay, here's where people need to go. I'm going to get them there. That's all I really need to do right now today. I know where I need to send people. I know what my offer is. I know where the, the, the freaking sales page is. And I, I just, I have a way to get there. I have a way to get them there. Whether it's my products, somebody else's products doesn't matter. Even if you don't know what you're selling yet, that's okay. Once you get there, employ these right away, start to get results. Okay. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Hang on a sec. Oh, baby. I got to fix up this mic here a little bit. There we go. There we go. Let's bring this thing up here a little closer. All right. Who's in the house? Gloria. Good to see you. Elisa. Elisa. Jeez. I think I'm jacking that up every time. Can you please tell me how to pronounce your name? <laughs> Elisa. <laughs> Elisa. I just, I don't know. Every time I'm, I'm a little bit, um, I'm a little unsure. Jerry's in the house. Chaz, Ron. Larry's in the house. All right. I like it. I like it. I'm going to pull this open over here. Hang on. Oh, oh. there we go. All right, Eugene's in the house. Mark, Kevin, here they come. Here they come. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Chris, Frankie, right on, beautiful. Good to see you. Good to see you all in here. All right, well, happy, can you guys hear me okay? It's like Lisa, Elisa, Elisa. Yeah, all right, dang, I was on it. All right, um, how we doing, everybody? Type to me, type to me. Hey, hey, type to me, first of all, where are you calling in from? Where are you logging in from? And then, uh, and then, yeah, let me know how we doing. How was the, well, for those of you in the US, how was your, how was your Thanksgiving weekend? Hopefully you got a little time to recover a little time back um yeah where are you calling in from curious just where everybody's from i mean not that i'm a creep or anything but good to see you Ger gerson i think it's pronounced uh steve good to see you douglas gabriel donna good to see you cindy's in the house Chaz, hey what's up my man all right wow okay I i'm also streaming this oh there we go i was also streaming my own face over here and my video started going crazy so i was like geez all right all right all right all right i'm in brazil i live in the uk very cool all right hendersonville Hendersonville, North Carolina, Tennessee, ATO, Victoria, British Columbia. I love it. I, I absolutely love going skiing in British Columbia, snowboarding, I guess. That is my at Whistler. Oh, so good. Uh, ATL in the house. Um, north of Vancouver. All right. Very cool. Love Vancouver also. Um, from the OC. All right. Orange County. I like it. All right. Where else? Where else? Where else? Is that it? Is that it for now? I'm sure we're going to have more people coming on, but all right. Let's rock and roll. Let me move a couple things around on my screen here, and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys this week's been going well. Uh, it's been a it's been a great thirty days, and uh, yeah, I can't. It went by quick. I think it went by quick. Um, I'm trying to adjust this. You know what? I'm just gonna have to. I'll just go for it. Uh, Illinois. All right, nice. Just 17 miles east of St. Louis. Okay, cool. I was just in St. Louis last month, a couple weeks ago. Victoria, at the bottom, down under, in down under. I like that. Uh, in Brazil, I love it. All right, cool. Cool. Hey, um, I just wanted to address some of you have had asked a question about, you know, can we get access to this bootcamp stuff ongoing or for a long time? Um, so I, I don't like to type responses to that because it, sometimes it'll sound mean or mean spirited or something. And I mean, I think you guys know me well enough through this bootcamp that you, you know, I don't really have a, I'm not really a mean guy, right? But um, but part of the bootcamp, what I wanted to say about that is part of the bootcamp's whole selling point, the whole angle was that you would implement things right away and, and start to get fast results, right? And it would sort of train you for a new way of being rather than sitting around on webinars and trainings and all of this stuff, right? Um, forever, it's good when you need it, but rather than sitting around and just kind of playing house on that for all day, 
every day for you know months and months and months. The goal is that it changed your habits, adjusted your habits and, and ways of being, right? So for instance, you know, the, some, the, the typical response for people who aren't used to operating at that sort of level is like, oh my gosh, this is too much. I need this for months and months and months. The response really needs to be, oh my gosh, I just have to really ramp up my, my ability to produce. I have to ramp up my ability to produce at a higher level because like experienced over the last 30 days is just for, for people who have really successful businesses on the internet, what you experienced in the last 30 days is really just the standard operating sort of it, like a motor, right? A motor has sort of a, almost like a pace or a, a, a setting that it operates at. Okay. And so a good example is like a good example is a variable speed motor, right? So there's different speeds that a motor can operate at. It can operate at a thousand RPMs or it can operate at 6,000 RPMs, right? It can operate at full speed or 25% speed. I only know this because we had one of those on our, uh, on our pool motor, on our pool pump. And so I'm not some fancy engineer guy, but, um, but really like for, for somebody like Dave, for instance, let's take Dave for instance and myself, I'm, I'm, I've learned to be in that way too. But for somebody like Dave, like the last 30 days has been really stretching and really like, oh my gosh, overwhelming. Um, for most people, for most of you, uh, that's just the feedback I've been getting. And that's normal. That's pretty, that's standard. The goal of the bootcamp is to get you operating at a new RPM on a daily basis. So, um, anyway, that's, that's the goal. I understand that, you know, you want access to stuff ongoing and, um, we'll think, we'll think through that. Um, yeah, taking diligent notes and implementing what you've learned. Yeah. So exactly. I mean, real learning. So the deepest, the deepest way to learn something is to teach it. The, 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 when you get to the deepest layer of learning a concept is when you start teaching it to other people. That's why we say, learn it, do it, teach it, learn it, use it, teach it. So, um, anyway, I, I mean, look, we might toy with the idea of just giving you access to this for a few more months or an extra 30 days or something, but I really think having this on a daily basis and taking diligent notes, right? So, you know, I, I could give in, we could give into this whole, this whole notion of we need this for forever. We need this a lot longer. You know, we need this for the next six months, but look, the reality is, 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 and that's a tempting thing for us to do because it's the easier thing for us to do. Like we don't really benefit from taking it away from anybody other than like we get questions of why do you, why do you take it away? But you benefit if we take it away, I think, I think, and, and I believe this because you're forced, you're forced into a new way of operating. You're forced into operating at a higher level. And so, um, yeah. And you're forced to actually go through the material and take diligent notes and implement it and make sure that you do it before the stuff is actually taken down. Otherwise you're just never going to implement it. Right. So just a thought, uh, Chris Mason, can you put the videos in date order? What you need to do is go to units into Facebook and go to units. And then, um, yeah, see, I don't think I can share my screen in here, but um, let's see, no, I can't. But um, you need to go into units and then there's day one, day two, day three, and you can see them all in order. So go into the Facebook group. Please allow us access, we need to go through everything and uh, go through everything and implement again. Yeah, you have 30 days. So these things are gonna, I mean, you're gonna have access to these for 30 more days. So to me, look, I, I have empathy. I understand things come up. I understand all that stuff. But the reality is, is like you signed up for you signed up for a thirty day boot camp, right? You signed up for boot camp. Like if I go and sign up for the boot camp in the army, this is kind of how we pitched it. If I go sign up in the, for, in the army for boot camp and I show up and say I need an extra thirty days to finish boot camp, I need an extra thirty days to implement that PT, they're like, what? No, you sign, you're here at boot camp. Like, why'd you sign up, right? So anyway. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Look, I'm not trying to be a hard ass. I'm not trying to be a, <laughs> I'm not trying to be a, a jerk about it, but I am like, I, I want you to have a little bit, I want people to have a little bit of an awakening about what boot camp is, what it's meant to be. It's not meant to be this, like once, you know, anyway, I'll get off my, I'll get off my thing. Um, Gloria, I do not do one-to-one -one mentorship. Um, sorry, I don't do that. Um, I just don't have the time. I, I, I actually love to do that. I used to, but um, I don't have the time. I mean, if I'm sure with whatever you need in terms of marketing or whatever, there's, I mean, you can reach out to, you can shoot me a message on Facebook. And if I can't help, you know, then, um, there's probably group trainings or something within builder all that, that we can point you to or something. So, um, just shoot me a Facebook message. I'll at least connect you to the right person or the right group or something like that for sure. Um, okay, Chris, I'm glad you figured that out. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, there's an old country song, a little less talk and a little more action. Oh my gosh, Chaz. Oh boy. Really, really going on one with the old, um, with that old, old throwback country song. I, I grew up in a very small town in the, in the Midwest, so I have heard that song once or twice. Yikes. <clears throat> um, uh, are Dave and I going to do some kind of wrap-up tomorrow? Um, no, Jerry, today is the wrap-up for the 30 days, for the 30-day boot camp. Um, we, were, we were thinking about doing kind of a joint uh, boot camp thing. It just wasn't in, the, wasn't in the schedule, so or wasn't we weren't able to make the scheduling of that work out. So um, caught you live. Not sure what I missed. Yeah, just to be very clear to everybody, you have a full all of all of December. You have a full thirty days to go back through anything you missed or rewatch anything that you missed out on or anything like that. So, yeah, I mean, you got thirty full days to go back through absolutely anything. Take tons of notes, screenshot, you know, do whatever. So, um, yeah, plenty of time, plenty of time, absolutely.
yeah, I, I'm not saying that we might like, I'm not saying it's, it's definitive. We might just not ever, ever, ever. Uh, I mean, it's within the realm of possibility that it could stay open longer, but just function as if it's only going to be open for the next 30 days uh, personally. And I think both just from a strategic standpoint, I think the, the main feeling of these boot camps and the intention of the boot camps is instant implementation. And um, even, even leaving it up for an extra 30 days was a little bit like, well, I don't know, man, maybe we don't want to keep it up that long. Maybe we just do 10 days. So 30 days was an extension from the original idea too. So, um, Davida, uh, I mean, yeah, if, if you want to drop me like a link to your emails or something or your story um, in, in like a post in this group, um, if I have if I have a little bit of time, I can do a little hot seat for you once the boot camp's done. Yeah, no problem. Um, hey, welcome in, Jason, Francisco, Eli, Wasili in the house. Good to see you, man. Liza or Lisa, good to see you. She goes in the house. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. Happy Wednesday. Good to see everybody in here. Hang on, my video just went crazy. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that you've. I'm glad you've learned a good bit from this from the boot camp. It's. What's it? So, so if you guys have questions, shoot me questions here. Um, <laughs> uh, if you have questions, shoot them here. But tell me, type to me, like what what part of the bootcamp stood out to you most, or what what are you going to take away that's been that's been what's been most powerful? Let's share with each other kind of what's been most powerful. Week one we covered the perfect offer. Uh, week two we covered the the perfect funnel. Week three was uh, the perfect email and copy. Week four was the perfect ads, getting traffic and and converting your traffic into sales. What was most powerful? What what stood out to you? What's what's a few things that you took notes on and learned, or what's you know, shoot me a little feedback. How to tell a story. Yeah, that's huge. You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? Just on the how to tell a story thing, Dave and I have talked a lot in the last probably two or three months just about the power of storytelling and and really how that's one of the unique things that newbies, people who are totally new, can implement, can tell story, and immediately it sort of it sort of just melts away all of the resistance. Just it's a it's a crazy thing. If you get if you can get good at that and just and just practice that more and more and more, it's it's really powerful. Um, let's see. Oops, there we go. How to craft an offer, building your own story, congruency. Chaz, I'm glad that that was a takeaway for you. Congruency, man. Congruency. Oh man. Um, building your own story. How to make an offer. Congruency. It's not just about. It's not about just writing content, but putting everything together is the key to making it work. Yeah. It's congruency around the offer. Yeah. Week one. Um, uh, the need to learn copywriting and storytelling, changing my mindset. And the, the copywriting thing is so big. The copywriting thing is so big, man. I, I I think honestly, my big takeaway. Can I share one of my takeaways? Was um, I, I think it was pretty much around how all of the different um how all of the different pieces are so intertwined and, and are so uh, interconnected a little bit. So uh, meaning, you know, your offer, the copy, the funnel, the, all of those different pieces I saw in a new way this time. And this is the kind of stuff that I just, I, I'm teaching this and have been teaching exactly this almost daily for the last three to four years. And so I just, I, but I pull out these kind of new nuggets internally and for myself. And um, if you guys want a really great way to cement all of this into your brain and into your being, it would be to go teach it. So if I was a part of this boot camp, if I was in boot camp, I would, I would be documenting my whole process my whole 30 day process, I'd be documenting it on YouTube saying, here's what I learned in week one of the Builder All live bootcamp. We, we learned to create our, our perfect offer. And I would just be, I would, I'd be teaching this back to people who on my YouTube channel, on Facebook lives and groups, I'd be teaching it back to people. That's really where, that's really where you do your best learning. <clears throat> the perfect email and copy. I tried to get the 16 word sales letter, but Amazon couldn't deliver. Yeah. I, some other people had issues with that too. I'm sorry about that. Um, I hate recommending stuff that you can't actually buy. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Um, contacting the right people. <laughs> yeah, get it. Yeah, the right people. Hey, Diana, good to see you. All your hints, they're priceless. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, storytelling, getting your content out there daily. Um, hot seat critiques of the Bridge Page videos. Nice. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think that that's going to be changing to top 10 in 2020. Yes, Chris. Uh, I don't know that we have a set date for it, but I would imagine January 1st. <laughs> um, or maybe just, you know, it's probably best to do that today, um, like AS ASAP, just so that it, you know, gets switched over before 2020. <laughs> um, but I don't have a definitive date on that right now. Michael, welcome in. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us live. Um, Francisco, we're just, for those of you who are just tuning in, we're just sharing a, a few of our things that are, um, that are, uh, that, that have been influential or have, have kind of changed, changed our perspective or things that we've learned in the boot camps. So if you want to share something, um, share away. Day 25. What was day 25? I don't remember. Oh, <laughs> the six part Facebook and Instagram ads. Yeah, that was, that's a, that's a beast of a training. That's a full six video training. Click by click through Facebook ads. That's, that's a day 25 of the bootcamp. Um, I mean that, that alone could sell as a product for $47 that, that alone. Um, not that I'm here to brag or whatever, but it's, it's a really powerful training. Uh, Hey Michelle, good to see you. Welcome in. Uh, I learned so many things. The list is long. <laughs> um, find out my writing level. Yeah want to write a book. Yeah. Well, here's the crazy part is most of you, I mean, Dave mentioned this in the copywriting section, but most of you have no clue. Um, just, just how, well, I, I shouldn't say bad, but just like Dave is not a great writer. Okay. Not at all. Not a great writer at all. 
And the cool part about you know what he's been able to do, he wrote an entire book, an affiliate marketing millionaire book. It's not released to the public yet because he got copies made and then went back through it and realized, oh my gosh, I need to redo it. And he rewrote the entire thing from scratch, like hundreds of pages. And so I, I think, you know, for those of you who are like, geez, I don't know if I could write a book or whatever, what he's been doing and working on recently, and I'll just share this on behalf of, you know, on behalf of Dave, is just he's just been getting in a mode where he's realizing that he can communicate so much clear more clearly through the written word. And so he's just gotten the habit of writing and he uses certain tools to make sure he's not, you know, having typos everywhere in his writing or in his at, you know, and he'll go and write an entire an entire off offer letter on, on a sales page. And then he'll just be like, Hey guys, publish this offer. Please go look at it and fix the typos and whatever else. And we'll just go pick through it and find all the type. Right. And so it's just a matter of writing and writing and writing and writing. And I'll just say, you know, from two months ago to two years ago to today, his writing is so much better. And it just, it just naturally improves over time. Just forcing your brain to think about it. So, um, oops, there we go. Yeah. And if I was going to write a book, I mean, I would probably just, just go with a PDF here at first, just get a PDF launched at first and then, and then try to move on to, you know, further beyond that later. So, um, cool. Where's my, oh, here we go. Yeah. What else? For those of you who just came in, Monica, Michelle, tell me what, what's one thing you took away from the boot camp? Any questions you have or what, you know, what stood out to you in the training? What, what's pushed you, you know, what have you done since starting the bootcamp that you typically don't do? What's a new habit that's formed if, if you formed a new habit? Um, yeah. T tell me a little bit about just, just where you at. What questions do you guys have? You guys have any, any marketing you want me to look at while we're live here on the call? Do we want to do a hot seat? What are we doing? What do you guys think? Or are y'all good? Just having a good week. Just wanted to hang out. I'm good with that too. <laughs> What would I focus the content of the PDF on to get started? You know, um, here's my theory. Um, I can take this a lot of different ways, Michelle. I, I mean, I could I could take this away of just like, you know, create a five, a, a, a top 10 mistakes I made when starting a business online. Or, you know, what I usually tell people is, is start with the mistakes that you made because before you've had successes, usually there's mistakes, right? Um, and mistakes, and really mistakes are just kind of like, you know, crumbs on a trail, right? Like mice sometimes follow crumbs or ants follow crumbs or whatever. Um, usually there's a trail of failures that lead down the path to success. So um, creating PDFs around, you know, 10 failures, whatever, that kind of stuff works. But my bigger overarching theory when it comes to like, what should I create in terms of content? Well, if you're asking that question, I would say dive, dive one layer deeper and just say, what do you enjoy? I mean, like, what, what do you really enjoy? Like what, my question, I'm not sure if this is the right thing for everybody or not, but my question has always been this. What, what is something that I get excited about waking up at four or five in the morning for? Or if you already wake up at four or five in the morning, what's something you uh, like when you go to bed at night, you set your alarm two hours earlier so you can get up and do these X, Y, Z things that are exciting to you, right? Is it creating a new website? Is it, so is it, is it designing a new software? Is it creating a podcast? What are, what are the real, like, what are those things that, that just excite you so much you get lost in time and you forget, and then you pulled an all nighter. That's what I would start creating content around because then it becomes easy and smooth and there's less friction. Um, that's it. Um, I thought of journaling on Instagram as I started doing the, the YouTube idea is great. Yep. Um, <clears throat> learn to work from the sales, sales page backwards. Yeah, I'm telling you, Dave is a master at offers and he, the first thing he does for any offer is he goes and writes the sales page every time. Um, bought a house, couldn't follow today. It's moving along. Yeah. Monica, it'll stay open for 30 days. So you got plenty of time. You'll have plenty of time to go through things. Um, uh, brilliant angle on the leveraging mistakes. Um, building a story brand. Oh man. Yeah. Chris, what do you think about building a story brand? You like the book so far? I mean, it is really good. Um, yeah, you can catch up. Of course you can catch up, Monica. Of course you can. Um, meditation. Cool. So Donna, create some content around, you know, uh, three meditation hacks or I, I, you know, I don't know. Um, cool. Not a lot of questions today. Slow moving a little bit. That's cool. It's kind of a dreary little day here in Phoenix. I'm pretty low energy today. Sometimes I get, you know, all, all amped up and fired up and just kind of uh, feeling that, well, Donna, I'm feeling the meditation vibe today. I think that's what I'm feeling. Feeling kind of relaxed, low key, a little bit of a slower vibe today. Cool. I, yeah, I like. I like. There's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of good stuff on here around offer creation. I think a lot of people, at least from the messages I got and from the comments and everything, I think that offer creation thing was really huge. So, that's great. Cool. You guys all good? I, I'm just not getting much questions. So I'm, I mean, I'm cool with that. Um, if you guys want to, over the next you know day or two, you guys can feel free by all means to. Um, to, uh, you know, drop in the discussion here in the group, just, you know, Hey, I want to critique on this landing page or, Hey, I launched these ads or whatever. I'm happy to, I'm happy to go through and kind of take a look at everything. So, um, best tricks to build day after day, email sequence that never ends. 
yeah, you can you can definitely, Monica, you can reach out for sure. On my first Facebook ad, hey, if it's my first ever Facebook ad, Alisa, I would spend five bucks a day. Just, just start out real small and start generating some lead flow. Um, generally speaking, you want to be spending about, so whatever your, whatever the result is for Facebook ads. So if you set up a conversion campaign for leads and you make your conversion event leads, you usually want to be spending two times as much on a daily basis as what it costs you to get a new lead. So I usually recommend like on the low end, spending five bucks a day, because you're probably going to start to get leads for like two to $3 per lead or so, maybe a little higher and on the higher end, $10 a day, just to start. And then just slowly scale that every couple of days, meaning every three or four days, just bump it up another five bucks and just do that really slowly over time. Um, but I would just, I, I always tell people start with a real small amount, launch it out and start to see what works and then adjust from there. Um, <clears throat> uh, I can check the day 27. Um, I'm not sure on day 27, if there was a Facebook, if there was a PDF or not, there was less of them towards the end. Uh, let's see. I can double check that for you real quick since we're here. Um, free traffic on YouTube. So, um, the there there for day twenty seven there was not a, there was slides but there was not a PDF guide rose on that one there was not a PDF there was just slides for it um, I was thinking about leads yeah I usually recommend setting up a conversion campaign at least for leads and then uh, you know, starting anywhere from five to ten bucks a day um, funny Anakin thank you Gloria I appreciate it Merry Christmas to you too I love it that's yeah that's really kind thanks appreciate that um, yeah cool I like it. I was just going to say, Mark, uh, best tricks to day after day. I have a great email sequence that never ends. So, um, yeah, and and uh, we're, we'll compile all the PDFs together into one file and just post it in here. So there's just one massive one, too. Um, uh, Michelle, so it, it just depends. Remember, I, I can't offer you an angle because I don't know who you're marketing this to specifically. So I don't know. Remember, I, I can't help you build an angle um, because I don't know the audience of who you're best marketing to or who you've marketed to in the past. Um, so I, I guess it just depends on that. Lead generation is a sticking point. I feel like uh, I feel that what I offer on my lead magnet might not be of value, or is it that we're so involved it doesn't look that appealing to us? Yeah, Steve, this is a great this is a great one, Steve. Good question. So a lot of times we as marketers become jaded about the value of what it is that we're offering. So you know, after I've sat through fifteen hundred hours of training and I've taught thousands and thousands of hours worth of trainings online, I, I become a little bit jaded about what I know and I start to devalue myself. Don't do that. Just know, just get a good offer in front of people. There's, look, even if I've only generated 10 leads from Facebook and I create a guide on how I made my first 10 leads, there's going to be gurus out there who are going to say, oh my gosh, are you serious? Your first 10 leads and you're going to go market that to people. And then there's going to be this whole massive pond of people who have no idea how to generate leads. We're going to click on that freaking ad. They're going to download their PDF and they're going to message you, Steve. And they're going to say, oh my gosh, I've never generated a lead in my life. I've been trying to figure out how, I, how do I generate leads? And this is actually helpful. I can't believe you just taught me how to do that. That's incredible. Look, I, look, guys, I think the bottom line is, is if you can help people get a result that they're looking for, most people will pay just about any dollar amount. If you really help them, if you really help them get a result that they're looking for. So, you know, for me, it was like for a long time, I, I sold this specific, this tiny little freebie giveaway thing that was generating leads on Facebook for local businesses. And, and because that little tiny guide was so helpful, people would literally share it with, with like people down there, like. They would share it, the link, without any affiliate referral at all. They would just share it with other business owners just because it was like, you got to see this. Like, this is so good. And, and when you get to that place, then when you're like, hey, by the way, if you want to work work with me, it's a thousand bucks. Or if you want a full day of training, it's a thousand dollars. It's two thousand dollars or whatever. You can personally get me one-on-one -on -one and they'll people will pay any amount of money. So just keep that in mind. I mean, the end goal should just be helping somebody get a result. And what is a result that you can help them get, right? Maybe you're just a builder all affiliate. Well, the result that you can help people get is getting a website live in 30 minutes or less. I mean, if you can demo that and show that to people and how easy it is and how simple it is, like the, signing people up for a software, is just, that's easy. Everybody needs a website. A website makes it real. A website makes it real. I mean, if it's an advertising deal or if it's a marketing deal, I mean, just showing people how to get a result and helping them do that, that it'll price becomes irrelevant at that point. I mean, unless you're priced at like, you know, $18,000 price just becomes irrelevant at that point. So, but don't undervalue what you know, especially after going through this boot camp. Jeez, don't undervalue what you know. <clears throat> It's exactly my dream. Cool. I like that, Monica. Cool. Do we have any other questions? If not, we're going to rock and roll. We're going to get out of here. And then if you guys have additional questions or you want someone to look over uh, an ad or look over uh, an email sequence or whatever, you can post it into the group for the next 30 days. And uh, it, you know, if I see it there, I, I'm just not going to make any guarantees, but uh, if I have just a little bit of time, I'll open it up on my screen and create a little critique for you and send it right back and, and post it in the group so everybody can see it. So. Uh, I think we're gonna wrap this thing up. Not a lot of questions. Happy you guys made it on here live. And uh, hey, give yourself a little pat on the back for for making it through the 30 day boot camp. This has been, I mean, this is an intensive. Um, 
you know, we wrapped up with this thing, Dave and I did, and we were just like, man, <laughs> I, I don't feel like I've created something that powerful in a long time. And it stretched, even, I mean, it stretched me. Um, so I was happy to be a part of it with you guys and uh, congrats on being part of the inaugural group. I mean, that's a huge achievement too. So, hey, Drill Sergeant signing out. Take it easy, everybody. Good to see you. Thanks, Monica. Thanks, Michelle, Gloria. Thanks for everybody showing up. Davida, Elisa, Steve, good to see you. <clears throat> Hopefully you all have a, a good rest of your December and holiday season. Uh, Mark, thanks for popping in here, Mark. Good to see you. Have a happy holiday season and, uh, you know, don't be a stranger. Always reach out if you need anything. Lisa, good to see you. Chaz, see you guys. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your holidays and uh, and rock on. So take it easy, everybody. See ya.